Yeah. Hey now, it's your boy PSA Sitch here with another Sunday Sunday show with everyone's favorite heart enthusiast. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfectly done. And harm and the inventor of the harmonica. Disbeliever in the lady penis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can't just say that in the first five seconds of the stream if this is gonna be monetized at. What do you mean? Look, come on, I'm humbled. <laughs> the censors, the oh censors didn't hear that. And of course, today we're joined by Phil. Hi. What's up? Hello, everyone. Uh, lead, nothing lead, too much. Lead singer of All That Remains. I mean, you're still in that band, right, Phil? Uh, <laughs> the band, yes, I am. I am. The uh, the band is is producing music. I just put up a, a clip on of a, something on the uh, old Bird app the other day. Um, but we're being very very. We're keeping it very close to the chest. Um, we're hoping to, I'm thinking we're going to have new music this year. So it was looking, it was for a minute, it was looking like we might not, but now I'm, I'm thinking that we might actually have something for people to listen to within three or four months or so. Amazing. So that would be exciting. Amazing. Yes, that'd be very exciting. That would very be exciting. great. As it's an been, artist. Our or... last record, our last record came out in 2018. So like that came out in 2000, it came out in 2018. Then a lot of fans of all that remains know that our, our guitar, our, Guitar player Ollie Herbert passed away in two thousand uh, in two thousand eighteen as well, um, and uh, you know it, it was a rough time kind of figuring out what to do, how to have the band go on, and then COVID happened, and our guitar player had a baby, and next thing you know, it's been mm -hmm. five years since we put a record out. Right? Who's keeping so. track though? You know, sometimes these <laughs> artistic endeavors take time. We understand. We're not. It's going to be. <laughs> we're, we're here. We're here for you. We understand art. Uh -huh. takes time yes, of you, course you want to get it right so let's uh, and it's going to, the stuff that we have I, I it is going to smash people's heads in i swear to god they're not prepared if you don't know who jason richardson is our new guitar player uh well not new now but our guitar player that replaced ollie when he passed away he's literally the best guitar player on the planet i'm not kidding around anyone that knows jason can verify that he's if he's not the best he's as good as the other best you know so right well, Phil also is a regular on Timcast IRL, which we're going to be talking about today. We got a little and clip also on Pop intro. Culture Crisis. <laughs> pop Pop Culture Crisis is another Tim uh, production. Yes, sir. It's done. Uh, it's a daily podcast, three to five. We do uh, um, like pop culture stuff. You know, it's 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 basically candy. You know, it's like sweets. It's not substantive it's it's mostly like who said something about whatever silly thing or whatever do a lot of uh crapping on the uh the dude that sang unholy uh and stuff like that you know mm -hmm. cool what so what is this clip that we're gonna watch first sitch so um well first i want to say it's funny I, I think phil if i recall correctly you were you, on twitter you were like freaking out about while you were watching this live i think you unprompted or like Sitch and Adam, you guys better cover this. You better have me on the show. I'm, <laughs> so not, I'm yeah, not sure, sure exactly who did, but I was like, yeah, dude. I, someone else said it, and I was like, I want oh, right. to Someone it. else said it. You're like, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, Adam wanted to watch this clip first. Um, we're going to watch the whole thing, but this is a clip from the After Hour show, uh, which is not publicly available. It's a, it's a short, you know, less than 20-second clip that uh, was making the rounds. And uh, it's about, um, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting, contentious topic, I guess. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Maybe it'll be a surprise. Okay, so let's do a three, two, one. Ready? Is everyone yeah. ready? Everyone got yeah. it up? Yeah. Right. Yep. Everyone got it up? Are you everyone? ready for the clip? <laughs> Look, it's up. All right. It's 18 seconds. So, yes. Three, two, one, go. But, make me go look But that for doesn't that make stuff. you gay. If it's a gay. trans woman, you're not gay. If, if you're attracted to trans women, you're not gay. That is gay. Hold on, Seamus. Oh, the after hour show is if, wild. If you, wild. Suck, wild. Wild. If you, if you suck, suck a trans woman's penis, is that gay? It's not. No. You're sucking a woman's penis. Oh, my God. No. That's gay. I know. Stop. Make me go look. Sucking a woman's penis. Stop. All right. It's a woman's penis. But uh, okay, yeah, that was a, that was. Did, was did you want to talk about that, Adam, or was it just the, the plate and let it sink in? Well, I mean, what is there really to say? 
I'm not exactly. but I, I think okay. I think that there there is some value in pointing out that yeah. this kind of attitude, mm. um, the idea that you know sucking a trans woman's penis is not a gay act that is totally brand new and cutting edge. Uh, if it is true, like, and this is probably something that people are going to, to whatever. Scholars will debate this for centuries. Yeah. If it is, if that were to be true, it is cutting edge. So the idea that it's bigoted when you say, no, it's not, is my, is where I have my biggest problem. And I think that's coming, right? I think that there are going to be people that are going to make the argument because Lance so easily made, oh, you're not, it's not gay to suck a, a trans woman's penis. Mm-hmm. Well, there is no such thing as a girl dick. So it's definitely gay, right? But mm-hmm. it, it is, but, but there, the problem isn't how you classify it. The problem, the real problem is gonna arise when people start accusing someone of bigotry and expecting some kind of, some kind of uh, solution from the government. And I don't for one <laughs> second believe that that is outside of the realm of possibility because we're literally talking about sucking a girl dick. Well, okay. Well, I don't, I mean, I don't know how the government's supposed to get involved. They're like, well, if you don't have sex with a trans person and you get fined, I mean, like, <laughs> what do you mean? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not saying that I have a, I don't, I don't know. But the thing is, it's not, not that crazy. Oh, wait, I got it. I got it. Okay. This, this is what, this is what happened in the future when prostitution is legal. Okay. If you ask for a woman and a trans woman shows up and you say oh, no, you're right. then she'll be like, boom, uh, you know, sex Bigotry. discrimination case. Yeah, there well, you sex go. Sex work is work. And next thing you know, but I, and I mean, maybe there's not a government repercussion, but there could be social repercussions. Sure, oh, this, sure, this, yeah. it'll be like, oh, you know, if someone says, you know, if someone says they don't, uh, you know, they don't approve of gay, gay marriage, you get social repercussions and that's more what i'm thinking of than than actual like government coming to your house but there'll be you know i wouldn't be surprised if it's like oh this woman made a pass at him found out he was trans and he was like get away from me next thing you know he loses his job because of or you know a woke companies like you can't do that and again it does seem far-fetched but we are talking about suck the girl dick we've been right, talking about so, that for a while though that in all is, honesty yeah. You have we to, have because well, we're on the since internet since 2017. I mean, Riley <laughs> Dennis true. was talking about this in in 2017. That's true. That's right? a good point. Yeah. Yeah, you're a bigot yeah, if you don't this, suck the the girl. T- we all laughed. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's why I think that it's completely reasonable to be concerned about it. Not, I don't think that it's actually. I, I mean, I don't, I don't expect it now, but like, I don't see any off ramp. Is I guess what I'm saying. Well, yeah. Like I don't, it, I don't it, see where. Go ahead. Well, to be clear, I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't think either any of us here give a shit if someone wants to do that's fine. We're just saying that right. in terms of how you classify it, like I don't. Know, I think I'd be a little bit more lenient than you. I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like hundred percent gay, but I, it's obviously not hundred percent straight either. <laughs> what is what so. is that? What is a hundred? Well, what is so? Gay? What I mean by that is like there are people. You know, you have the Count Dankulas, okay, right, and uh, some other people who <laughs> I I don't know how open they are with this. So I'll keep to keep it on the DL. I don't want to name or shame anybody. Um, who tell me things like, you know, they're into uh, trans women. They're into like, you know, food. It's okay to say Dev. Okay. I, Dev, Dev, there you go. I guess it's, I don't <laughs> know how well known is, it is. No, um, Dev is, is very open about that. Okay. There's so. people that are into, you know, uh, trans women. There are people that are into food and stuff, but they're say that they're hundred percent not into dudes. So there's obviously something happening there, right? There's yeah. something, there's something interesting happening there. I don't know what it is. But if, you know, if that's where you are, that's fine, I guess. Yeah, I don't have any issue. I mean, you, people can do what they want and whatever, but my issue again. It's the is way Lance is classifying it. Like, oh, you know, he's not even entertaining the thought of that there's something unusual or interesting happening. Yeah. There. He's like, no, 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 no. It's just, you know, 100%, you know, if you're straight, you know, 100% super straight, doesn't matter. Right. So. And I think that the part of the reason why it's uh, it could be a concern is because, like you said, the, the, the nonchalance, the way it was just like, oh, of course. And the way that the left behaves is it's ve- as soon as an evolution has been made in the leftist dogma, uh, and if you don't jump right on, they're real quick to cut you down. Look at what happened to D. Snyder just recently. He made a, a comment about, um, well, Paul Stanley and, and D. Snyder both, um, they made comments about trans people and, and surgery for kids and stuff, and they got a ton of pushback. 
Yeah, he unfortunately kind of walked back a little bit of his statement, which yeah. was sad because I thought his statement but... was pretty good. But... I think D did not, though, and I think that that's actually pretty good. I mean, good. Paul Stanley, yeah. 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 He walked it back just to say that he's okay with adults transitioning, right? I mean, that's a. He, he, was, he was kind of vague. He wasn't really clear in what exactly. It's kind of one of these, like, oh, yep. I'm sorry that I hurt people's feelings, you know, comments. Or I didn't yeah. speak, you know, as specific as I wanted to comments without actually, you know, being very specific about what his opinion is. So, yeah. Other people. Uh, me and Adam had an entire uh, side conversation about this. I, I think we can skip it. <laughs> but <laughs> the whole. Uh, <laughs> anal sex conversation. Oh yeah. Anal, I didn't. I didn't even hear about an <laughs> anal sex conversation because I didn't watch the afterward. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Well, you guys it, are right. It's just listen. You can just have in your head that before the street, me and Adam were just talking at length about anal sex, and you can, you can take that how you want to take it. Right. Uh, that 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 honestly fits right into <laughs> my preconceived notions <laughs> <laughs> about you guys. So, exactly. Anyways, <laughs> let's get into the stream finally. Yeah, we're gonna watch from the beginning. You know, it's funny. Um, I I've only listened to uh, parts of the stream. I've listened to the entire stream. Uh, I did hear somebody. I don't remember. For, I think it was like Mindways or somebody. Somebody made a claim, a very strong claim, that Lance only looks bad in the clips, but if you watch the overall stream, he looks good. Now no. I am very skeptical of this claim. Who's, who said that? <laughs> That's I think ridiculous. It was mind waves. So I'm was very skeptical of this claim. So I'm curious to see how that plays out. This is like he looks good in the brand. same way that Illuminati looked good in the video that you guys did with Doomer the other day. Oh, okay, right. So, which is to say, totally not good. Right. This is like debate brain all the way through. I yeah, yeah. it's surprising how little Lance has really interrogated his positions. Is is my main takeaway from this? Like he's, he's ready just... to jump in and debate when he really hasn't even thought about these issues. Well, part of me thinks that that's because Lance is it, it knows that he doesn't have the same kind of uh, the same kind of a uh, fan base and, and draw that like Vosh and Hassan does, and he probably is like, man, I got to do something to get my numbers up, and, you know? Because how many people watch the surf compared to like Vosh and mm -hmm. and uh, none? Yeah, I mean, it's like, I think he has doesn't he have a none. decent Twitch following. I mean, his YouTube's not great, but he's got to be know. bigger on sure. some platform, I assume. But, you know, it's funny when, when I forget who it was, but when he first said that he was going to go on Timcast and I retweeted it, somebody posted, someone on the left posted the meme of Walter White in the car screaming, <laughs> going, <laughs> no, it's no, because they knew it was going to just be this disaster because this is why, you know, everyone makes fun of kind of Lance's intelligence. It's just when you listen to him in these conversations where he's, where he's actually challenged and he can't just give kind of like a talking point, it feels like he doesn't follow the like the normal logical uh, lines that people do in these conversations he doesn't really know how to explain them or follow them properly and i felt like it was the same thing when we had our conversation with him when anyone really has a conversation with him so it, it is kind of shocking that he would agree to go on tim pool i guess he, i mean maybe he's just in a bubble and he never really heard the, the criticism i mean obviously he's going to hear it now but Part of me thinks that he might have bought into all the leftists saying that Tim is dumb. Tim is not dumb. Oh, that's right? like good Tim point. may have mm -hmm. people like Tim may have some, you know, may throw some bombs and he may have takes that people don't like, but he is not a dumb man by right. any stretch of the imagination. He's a very smart guy. Sure, so sure. if Lance buys into it, you know, the left says, Oh, Tim's dumb. Tim's dumb. And then you see all this stuff. That uh, that or the, all these clips that people take make to make Tim look bad. Lance thinks, oh, this will be easy. Tim's not that smart. Blah blah blah. Next thing you know, he's sitting across from Tim, and Tim makes him look like a moron. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So, let's uh, jump into it. So we got some protests in New York City. After a homeless man named Jordan Neely died, he was put in a chokehold. The man, uh, three people were trying to subdue him. And then in the effort to subdue him, the guy died. Uh, uh, it was ruled a homicide. And now you have protesters calling for charges of this Marine. And uh, things are starting to get a little hectic. Police are calling for help as things kind of heat up. But we're going to get into the nuances of that dis discussion. So I'll save a little bit. We do have news out of Russia. They're blaming the U.S. for the assassination attempt, so they claim. And uh, we've got some news. Barstool Sports fired one of their hosts for rapping lyrics that, that contain an offensive word. 
I don't necessarily think it's fair to call what he said a slur because he wasn't calling anybody the word. But, you know, he said the word and then Penn Entertainment was like, you're fired. And now Dave Portnoy is like, I don't know. There's nothing I can do. I sold the company. So we'll get into that, plus a whole bunch of other stories. And um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about the news. Bank, banks collapsing. We got uh, Paul Stanley, the lead singer. I'm sorry, the uh, front man for Kiss is kind of walking back his statement on uh, transgender kids and uh, uh, a lot to talk about. Before we get started, my friends, today's episode is brought to you by Cast Brew Coffee. Take a look at this bag right here. This is Cast Brew Coffee over at castbrew.com. And you can get your bag of Rise with Roberto Jr. and Apple. Good. So Oops, be I show. hit fast forward. So if you would like to do that, become a member with Oops. your friends. Joining us tonight to talk Thank about you. this and so much more is Lance from the Surfs. Thank you so much for having me. It's I, I'm tripping balls being in this room right now. It feels like I took evil acid or something because I've, I've been watching this evil show acid. so much. Yeah, <laughs> just like everything is here. It's wild. It's, it's, it's bigger than it looks like, right? It's bigger than it looks like. And when you're actually sitting in the room, it's actually there's a lot more props than you ever give this place credit for. I thought there was just like some samurai swords and like the occasional gun or something. But there's like it, if that's you, a real Civil War rifle. There's a real Civil War musket. in the That's corner right. Rifled right. musket. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so, like Union the, Civil War. It was uh, never used. It's, it's like, like a museum very, here. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. very cool stuff. Uh, yeah, so so what do you do? Who are you? Uh, I am a leftist commentator. I do uh, politics, comedy from a dumpster fire perspective, and uh, I have opinions, and sometimes people like to hear those opinions, and then they tune in to listen to them. Oh, sounds good. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for joining us. I'm sure we have a lot of opinions to go through. Yeah. We also got the exact inversion of Lance, Seamus Coughlin. <laughs> That's how they describe me on the streets. Uh, my name is Seamus. Anti-Lance? Yeah, exactly. I thought, no, they call him the anti-Seamus, I thought. Uh, but my Seamus was on the show recently, so fr friend of the show here. My name's Seamus Coglin. I make cartoons. Uh, we yeah, call them British. Freedom Tunes. And he's British? Well, is that? Why you always got to take it to an ethnic place with me, man? <laughs> always ripping on me for being Irish. Is, I, was, I, was, I was born here. Uh, but I make cartoons. I have a YouTube channel called Freedom Tunes. Uh, I'm also a podcaster. We uploaded a cartoon by, uh, today, by the way. Y'all might want to check that one out. And I also have a stream on Rumble called Shamer. If y'all want to take a peek at that as well. Now we have Moon Lord himself. I am the Moon Lord. He knows. No longer Weed Lord. I have evolved. I have become <laughs> he knows. one with the essence <laughs> of the vibration and the fabric of reality. So good to see you, Lance. So good to be uh, here. And if you don't know, you don't know. But I am the Moon Lord. Let's get hot. Uh, and I am Surge.com as always, guys. Let's get to it. Let's jump into this first. We, we, you Wait, press, actually, pressing the wrong button this over is, here. I, I, I got to flag this. This is the first time Ian and I have done a show together in almost a year. Since we oh, screamed about, I was yelling at you yeah, about exactly. religion or something. Exactly. Oh, right. alcohol, this is our first show. Too. Yeah, that's oh, our first welcome show. Welcome back, back. Shamus. Yeah, it's great to be, to be here, here, man. man. Yeah, Wait. I've evolved on my stance on religion. Wait, what, what we've also talked off air. We, we, we've talked off air a good bit, but it's uh, it's just funny that it's like, I just realized this is our first episode we're both doing together because I've been seeing you for the past two weeks. Yeah, yeah. We went last time we talked, we're talking about like, I brought up Vice. I was talking about, oh, alcohol, it's a, your vice or whatever. Mm -hmm. I said, I think that was the, the real point of contention. And everyone's like, Ian, you're such a dick. I was like, well, I was just talking to Seamus. Like, we were just talking. Like, yeah, we were talking. Irish. You anytime. can't say that. <laughs> we were talking about, That's racist. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I don't really care. Do you? No, yeah, well, I, I was just, no, I, I was just, it was a discussion about alcohol because I was saying that alcohol is not inherently sinful. Like, Christ turned water into wine. It was his first public miracle. Mm -hmm. I've his, gone his through. His blood was made of wine, right? Well, I've gone no, through. he, if, in tr with transubstantiation, the, the uh, properties of bread and wine remain, but it actually becomes his flesh and blood. I've had like serious eat. problems with alcohol personally, which is probably why I was projecting mm. issues. What were you saying? Oh, I was just asking, like, when you actually eat the blood of Christ, is, is that Christ is inside you? And yeah. Then, and then, but like, his blood is alcoholic. Is that why it's wine? So the properties of bread and wine <laughs> remain, but what we believe as Catholics is that it's his literal flesh and blood. Okay. His, by his body, blood, soul, and divinity. Interesting. So he, so, but he's not made of bread and wine. No, he's not literally made of bread and, and wine. No, I but. Forgot yeah, the, this was this conversation. All right, let's read the like, news. Here we go. Wait, we wait, we also have Serge Dupre. Serge, sure, yeah, we already, we already <laughs> did say did what's he? up. Lance makes the dumbest comment ever. So, Jesus' blood is wine? <laughs> it's like, he's, 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 he's proud of you think that's you think that's for real? You think they really yeah. thought that for a second? You think no, that, he's, just, oh, he's just trying to You know how like yeah. aliens and xenomorphs, their blood is acid? It's acid, yeah. <laughs> Jesus' like, blood is actually wine. You just give him a little cut and you drink and you know It's Thunderbird. <laughs> yeah. Come on, it's something high class. Oh uh, it's Dom Perry. <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Man, Moon Lord. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. All right, here's the story. We got this ABC seven New York police issue. Phil, I sent you the link for the watch together. We're still waiting to see you pop up in there. You call for help. Yeah, I'm getting Outrage it, Outrage continues to grow over deadly subway charge. 
Oh, cold yeah. encounter. Is that cool. The... Oops. Yeah, I see it popped yeah. in. So okay. we're good. Okay. Finally, don't worry. We're finally at the actual important part. Exactly. Good. Yes. Good. Death of a subway rider who was put into a chokehold by a former Marine on the train has been ruled a homicide, and now activists are calling for charges to be filed. They have planned several protests and rallies on Thursday as the NYPD had is has issued a call for public help in their investigation. Jordan Neely, 30, died from a compression of the neck, the city's medical examiner determined Wednesday. Neely is recognizable to some New Yorkers as a Michael Jackson impersonator who regularly danced in Times Square in the Times Square Transit Hub. On Monday afternoon, he was yelling and pacing back and forth on an F train in Manhattan. Witnesses and police said when he was restrained by at least three people, inclu including a U.S. Marine veteran who pulled one arm tightly around his neck. A physical struggle ensued, leading to Neely losing consciousness. He was rushed to Lenox Hill Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. On Wednesday, a medical examiner determined Neely's uh, his death was a homicide. However, that does not mean the case will be prosecuted as a homicide. Okay, that's the stupidest bit of writing I've ever heard. As a murder, they mean. Homicide means death caused by person. It doesn't mean criminal. Uh, so what they're trying to say is, though the, 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 the death was ruled a homicide, it does not mean the case, case will be prosecuted as a murder. That is up to the uh, Manhattan DA's office, which is investigating. But I suppose I, I'm probably being a little bit too harsh because you can, uh, they're not being clear here. You can make the argument there's reckless homicide, there's negligent homicide. And so what they're saying is it's not clear that he will be criminally charged. They probably just should have said. I, I looked at this this morning and he still hasn't been charged as of now. So, mm -hmm. but people are getting upset about it, obviously. I don't know if you have a take on this story, Sitch, or. Well, I mean, I don't think he should. Well, it's kind of a <laughs> you don't think he should be charged i don't think he should be charged right um, okay well that's good i agree and the reason i don't think he should be charged is i i think when you have a situation where the state is supposed to keep a law and order supposed to protect its citizens which it is obviously supposed to do in a situation of public transit right of course um you're gonna have situations where if the state is failing to do its duty to protect people that the private citizens are going to have to step up in these situations and involve themselves. These private citizens are, you know, not going to be legal law enforcement. They're not going to necessarily have training to, to deal with these situations or the proper tools or whatever to, to do this stuff. And so, you know, it's very likely or probably increasingly likely that when a private citizen does engage in a situation like this, that it could, there could lead to an accidental death. Um, and I think only the most insane people and the most racist and race baity people think this is intentional. Um, it's obviously it was an accident. Um, the people saying, oh, he was, you know, we put him in a chokehold for 15 minutes or right. lying. You know, he was holding him for 15 minutes. He, would, he didn't have him Sitch. in chokeholds, you know, like choking the guy for 15 minutes. I believe in the video, as soon as he stopped moving, they let go, you know, and they kind of put him on his side. So it's not like, you know, oh, my God, it's a knee on his neck for eight minutes afterward, you know, situation yeah. kind of thing going on. Um, so no, I, I think because of the fact that the government has, the government of New York or the state of New York failed to do its duty to, you know, have the subway system be safe, you know, you're going to have private citizens intervene and, you know, uh, there's going to be accidental deaths. And I think the state just has to kind of accept that at this point. Right. Or do their job. Yeah. So I mean, I that's, the. I feel like the people that say that they, so you made a, you said that the only people that that say it's uh that say that it is is race baiters and blah blah blah. I They're don't think they, like it's intentional. Like he was like, I'm gonna kill this guy. Yeah, but I don't think they even believe that. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. I think that they're there. I think it's all about power and all about usefulness. Like I don't think that I think that there's very few people that really believe that this guy was like, oh, he's black, so therefore I will. There were two other dudes that were not um that were not you know, pure white guys that were helping <laughs> to hold him down. Yeah. Like, well, I don't know what they, I don't know what they were, they were. I don't know if they were, if they were, if they were. I think one know. was black and one was, I believe, Hispanic or something. Yeah. yeah so like yeah. the idea that this is based on, you know, based on racism is, is yeah. just ridiculous. So I feel like it's just about power and just about political expediency and usefulness. I've heard no, a lot I, I of loudmouth commentators come out and say, oh, this was murder. I mean, I think Lance is going to come out and say that here in a minute. So. That's well, another thing that I that we'll get to in a, I'm sure when he, when he talks about it. when he talks about guns, Lance is like, "Oh, I'm all pro, pro guns, blah blah blah." I got issues with that, man. I we'll talk about it when we get there. But man, do I got issues with that? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I think part of it is, um, you know, when I I talk to you know friends and family and people out who I know don't 
who are just kind of follow like the news tangentially or they follow mainstream media. They don't like get into anything. They kind of see where they're coming from issues to kind of figure out how the media is kind of portraying this. And it's funny because I, you know, when the story first broke, I told some people, I said, I bet you that you're just going to hear from the media that a white guy choked out a black guy for 15 minutes and he died. Yeah. And they're not going to talk about the, the other people. They're not going to talk about the real context, but they're not going to talk about the fact that there were other people involved that helped to do, um, you know, Neely who were not white. They're not going to talk about that. And then a couple of days go by and they, they tell me all the reporting I heard, no one talks about that. They only talk about the one white guy. And so I think when that's the information that's being spread, a lot of these people, you know, I see that's probably all they hear. They honestly think it's just one white guy comes up and just chokes to death a black guy who's just asking for food and water, right? This is what I hear. <laughs> he was just asking for food and water and a white guy <laughs> chokes him out. And if, if someone actually hears that and they believe it, you know, maybe that could lead them down the path to thinking like, oh, this guy was just racist. And, you know, this was his racist intention to do this. It's not mentioned in this story, but evidently he took off his jacket and threw it down like he was ready to fight, which yeah, is a huge right. part of the Like, that's totally confrontational. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the, this, that's not surprising in, in any way, considering how the average person understood the Kyle Rittenhouse story. For a long while, probably still oh, do course. understand yeah. it. You know, it's like they think that still. Kyle Rittenhouse killed still. black people. Yeah, still, yeah. They think that Kyle Rittenhouse killed black people. They think that it was motivated by race, et cetera, all that stuff. And and that's intentional because and it lead it kind of points to my my earlier point that this isn't about actual racism or anything. It's a it's a just about power. It and is. I think that I think a lot of I think that people um, are starting to realize what a lot of people that have been critical of the woke for a long time have been saying, which is when they say racist, it's just to make you afraid and so that you will submit to their authority, whether it be in the, you know, the context of the argument and say, oh, well, they know, so I got to They call me racist, so I must be wrong or whatever. Um, and And real racism is had been going away significantly until the left decided that everyone in America needed to have a critical race consciousness. And now I think racism is actually on the rise. Mm -hmm. when, yeah. when you say submit to their power, I see it in the context of political power. Like yes. I see it as submit by go vote for Democrats because we got to clean up this racist country that we live in. Like it's I really a manipulative thing. It's not, it's not like a boot on the neck type thing. I agree. I think that it's, I, I that, that, that that's what I was pointing to. I think it's, it is that, but I think it's also um, in a smaller context as they want to win the argument in front of the people that are watching. Right. So these these debates most of the time happen with some type of audience. And when you can say you're racist and your opponent is throwing your your argument, the person you're arguing with or whatever debating with is thrown off balance, they start defending themselves. They start saying, wait a minute, I'm not racist, blah, blah, blah. Then you got into a position where they're on the defensive and you know you can press an attack in a in a, a debate or whatever if you reply with you know to you or no i'm not and just blow it away like just blow it off then they lose the oomph and i think that more people they do. do that yeah yeah when they someone's do. like oh you're racist totally. like shut up no it's not it totally whatever. takes the wind out of their sails they're like that's the only <laughs> argument i had <laughs> and the, yeah and then and the bad part is people that are unsophisticated or less sophisticated will say things like Lance. So. <laughs> well, not really. I wasn't thinking Lance in this particular context. No, it totally Lance I was thinking fits. more like I was thinking more like uh like a um what's his name? The uh, America First kid. Um mm -hmm. uh whatever his name is. Uh, the guy that was hanging out. Fuentes? Fuentes, there you go. If someone says you're a racist, he'd be like, "So?" You know, it's like and right. that's a bad thing. You shouldn't respond with "So." You oh, should okay. respond with "No, I'm not." There are too many people out there that are going to that oh okay i see what you're saying think yeah. that racism won't matter anymore and that's a bad thing like this is what unsophisticated people do they'll say oh if i just say so then they'll they'll lose power and blah blah blah. but that's not the correct answer the correct answer is no i'm not mm -hmm. so that it, it has the same effect to the person arguing but it has a different effect to the people viewing now should mm -hmm. i talk about my black friend after i say no i'm not or is that <laughs> that should be the first is that thing off the table be like you should be like, but I have a black friend. <laughs> I usually try. Um, to I usually try to steer clear of that. But there you go. I find no, that's not totally as effective. But I uh, think you should try it, man. 
<laughs> Crendel of that. Thank you for the 20 gifted subs. Uh, Sound to idiot for $20 says, Hey, such Adam and Phil. I'm just wondering when that Illuminati podcast will fall apart through Lance's bad takes here or Illuminati losing close to 100,000 subs since her little drama arc. Is Have that no. true? What? I guess so. That's crazy. I didn't know she lost that many. That's I tried to listen to what? um That's not, the Leftist Mafia. They covered this stream and I tried to mm. listen to it and I literally couldn't because it was like, instead of just pausing it, you know, to give commentary, I guess, because they would, you know, want it to be as quick as possible. They don't want to just, you know, spend all day streaming because, you know, whatever, lazy leftists. Um, <laughs> they, they just talked awesome. over it and it was just like insane. It was just like a bunch of people what? yelling and shouting and just going, oh my God, every second they go, I can't believe you said that. Oh my God. Without actually adding any commentary, trying to talk over the stream, it was like literally chaos. I, could, I just turned it off in disgust. I was like, this is unwatchable. So that's crazy. Uh, Viking got... Vet for twenty dollars says new sub. Thank you. If you're good enough for Phil, good enough for me. Better hear at least one Phil scream before this is over. <laughs> uh, and later on, uh, okay. I gotta wait for my neighbors to fall asleep so that way I can scare them. Nice, <laughs> uh, John. Hey, thank you for the ten gifted memberships. Uh, no step on Snake for twenty dollars says thank you so much for covering this, you guys. I'm glad to finally be able to see the whole thing without having to give Tim Pool a few. <laughs> anyway, S class is the best. Holy cow! Well, thank you. No step on Snake. So I did. I went to Illuminati's social blade page. Yep. And it's just like 10k down, 10k down, 10k down, losing 10k a day. Nice. What the heck? Well, it's good because her content is terrible. The the, the video that you guys made was brutal to her. Thank you. I mean, she did it herself, (laughs) but it was brutal. Your little humor was worked up for a reason. Thank you. I think I feel like you keep moving away from your mic. Uh, I'm changing like... the volume a little bit because I'm I got a cough and and stuff. Oh, so okay, sorry. right. Yeah, because I'm like sometimes you sound fine, sometimes you sound really quiet. So you sound sorry. great. I'm glad you ditched the phone, man. It sounds off. Uh, uh, yeah, so I jumped better. onto my computer. So. Yes, thank you. Uh, Fa, you e- have for twenty dollars says Phil is a mental freedom daddy. <laughs> Submit to the riffs and beats. He probably said metal. Oh, oh, you're right. He did metal freedom. That makes more sense. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Uh, Damn the Bruce for twenty dollars says, based on what's currently available, I believe is enough to charge possibly. But the grand jury is reviewing. Based on what's publicly available, I think manslaughter or negligent homicide makes sense to charge. Um, I think, in a strict legal sense, you're probably right, but I still don't think you should be charged. I agree. Just because is what I said. I think when the state fails to do its duty to protect citizens, citizens have to kind of step up to fulfill the role. And I don't think what he did was particularly egregious. It's not like he was one of these people who. You know, I was like, you know, I'm going to patrol my neighborhood. Oh, there's a random guy who may look shady, you know, bang, bang, yeah. bang. Like it's not, he you wasn't know. wearing hockey pants. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think what this guy did was particularly uh, egregious, in my opinion. So anyway, let's continue. You know, well, the- John A gave gave 10 gifted subs as well, too. So thanks. Thank you so much, John. I yeah. said that, but thank you. Oh, so you much, did? Oh, yes. I missed it. OK, real, real quick before we move on. Another thing, yeah. like this is kind of exemplary of what's going to happen or what would happen if the defund the police sentiment continues oh, to be totally that's a great point push yeah. forward like this is you get community policing yeah this is community policing <laughs> that's a community policing in action everybody it straight up is because you can't expect everyone in the community to know jujitsu you can't right. expect everyone in the community to know how to handle this stuff so they tried their best to protect the other people on the train. It sucks the guy died, but that's community policing. Do you think, and when I talk, I said that on Twitter and the response from people was just, you know, apoplectic because, oh God, he said, it's not community policing. And don't you know, there's all these things and there's all this stuff that has to go along with it. And blah, 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 oh my God. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, yes, this is exactly what community policing would be because there are endless amounts of unsophisticated people. So the people that say community policing, right? They're people that have gone to college and they've read all kinds of leftist theory and they know this and they know that and blah, blah, blah. And then you tell your average Joe that hasn't gone to college or has gone to college and didn't study that stuff. Okay, now we're doing community policing. They're going to take it upon themselves. That's just what's going to happen. Yep. And to think yep. that it's not is absolutely idiotic. It is completely and totally detached from reality and it is perfect for the left. Yeah, Pollyanna. They yeah. think uh, so much of the commentary that I've seen on this is like he wasn't hurting anyone. It's like, <laughs> oh, come, come on now. 
you know, the, there's I, so I go to a lot of gunfight classes or gun classes, and and when you go, you to, go to a lot classes, of gunfights. No, <laughs> I've never been in a gunfight. But you go, okay. but the, when you go to a when you go to gun classes, people think they're gun safety classes. They're not. They're 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 classes on how to use a gun, and you use a gun to be in a gunfight. That's the way it is. So yeah. when you go to classes. They, they give you all this, they, all kinds of stuff. And the things that they tell you about self-defense is you need to have the, you have to be able to prove that the person that you defended yourself from had intent, opportunity, and ability to, indu to induce severe bodily harm or death. So he's, it, he's there. So he has the opportunity. He is saying, I'll go to jail. I'll yep. kill anyone, blah, blah, blah. That's intent. And yep. opportunity, I mean, opportunity, he's there, and the ability, he's got his hands. Like, he's yeah. threatening people, he's literally threatening to attack people. That's enough to, to create, mm -hmm. you know, significant bodily harm or death. Those are the criteria to legitimize self-defense. Now, well, there are those, well, no, no, there's, well. that's, that's, no, th no, I'm, that's what, le those are the legal standards to yeah. legitimize it. That doesn't mean that every jurisdiction will, will uh, agree that it's legal. But to legitimize it, legitimize and legal is different. Mm -hmm. you know well, I, mean? I think there's a the difference between like trying to subdue someone and they accidentally die versus you pull out a gun and shoot somebody with more of an intention to inflict some kind of bodily harm. Yeah, you didn't and intend I, to kill him. As so soon then, as you shoot right. him, then all and, of a and sudden. I, I believe... But then you're only saying that it's a lesser degree. You know, I think I think what the this guy did is a much lesser thing because okay. he wasn't trying to kill him or even inflict some substantial body harm. He was just trying to subdue him. Yeah. And I, so I think that it is obviously different because I I thought I've heard this from uh, you know this from self defense lawyers and things of this nature. I don't think a verbal threat is ever enough to shoot somebody. I thought they actually have to act on it, if I recall correctly. Uh, well, it, it, a verbal threat. No, that's 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 the thing. You have to have all three. Mm -hmm. So you have to have intent, ability, and opportunity. So if you so if I say to you now, I'm going to kill you, Sitch. I have said that. So there's intent. I'm not near you, so I don't don't have the opportunity. Uh, what was the other one? I'm, see, the point is, you have to have all three covered. Right. Yeah. So, so like, okay, if, if you're so standing like, you just, like twenty feet away from me, and you say I'm going to kill you, and you just stand there, right? I can't just whatever I'm going to shoot you. But if you say right. I'm going to kill you, and you start running at me, then exactly. I can because it's like exactly. oh, he's coming because at me, right? the yeah. coming at you is the intent. R the saying that you did is like the intent, and then he's actually acting. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, that, yes. Yeah. Right. 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 That's what I'm saying. So if this guy was just standing there saying something crazy, I don't think you can just blow him away, right? Until Can't he starts making away, a move no. towards someone or something. But anyway. They're going to say, our rigorous ongoing investigation will review the medical examiner's report, assess all available video and uh, photo footage, identify and interview as many witnesses as possible, and obtain additional medical records. Read a statement from a spokesperson for the DA. So we've got video coming out of New York. Protesters, uh, I believe this was yesterday, we're, uh, we're seen in the streets, and the police made some arrests, and uh, we'll get into it in a little bit, but one of our reporters, uh, Elad Eliyahu, was physically assaulted by uh, one of the protesters and had his, his property destroyed while he was in the process of doing journalism. But uh, uh, let's, just, let's just get down to brass tacks here, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of arguments about this one. This is the story of a guy who was having a mental breakdown. I guess the news that recently came out was that he was a subway performer and his mental health collapsed after his, uh, I, th I think his mom was killed, is what they're reporting. And after that, he kind of just lost it. And then he, he had been arrested 40 times. He had once, once uh, punched a 67-year-old woman in the face. And so as he was belligerent and on the subway, reportedly threatening people, saying that he would take it, he, he was ready to die and he would hurt people. This is when the three men subdued him. The, uh, uh, reportedly, the Marine told everyone to call 911 and uh, uh, get the police down there. And then uh, he ended up dying, which has resulted in the left, like AOC, whether or not people, I don't know. I don't know if you consider her left, but AOC. Uh, yeah, she's progressive. She said this was a public murder. And now you've got protesters calling for this guy to be arrested. They're saying he committed a murder. And uh, I think this is actually a really good example of what, what is described as anarcho-tyranny in that so. you had 25 people pushed onto subway tracks in the past year. You've had uh, like a woman get raped on a train in Philadelphia. And we don't hear a single peep from any of these politicians, from any of these activists until someone actually stops the guy. If you go back seven well, kills years. kills him, right? So, so, kills him. He killed him. Sure. Yeah. 
So, so when someone is being violent and then someone right. else acts in self-defense of others and the person dies in the process, now there's all of a sudden calls for, okay, so this, this guy should be criminally charged, but there was no call for stopping the 25 people being pushed on the subway tracks. That, that, that's an yeah. ongoing and, and, and acceptable thing, I'm, I suppose. I, I'm never going to sit here and try and defend people pushing people on the subway tracks. That's a crime. Like, that's terrible. Attempted for, murder. For, yeah, exactly. Especially if they die. So that's horrible. No one's going to be on the other side of that argument. But in terms of, like, the guy who just got killed isn't and you can correct me if i'm wrong on this doesn't in self defense the poor, like the proportionality of what you're doing has to be in response to the actual aggressive actions of the person right it has to be proportional is, sure. is that yeah. is that correct so you feel in your mind that it was a proportional response for him to choke him out to death in that this is where he gets stupid like right off the bat like his first time like actually to start talk talking is like oh so you know it was proportional you have like restra trying to restrain someone is not initially an attempt at killing them yeah. right. right like the the intent was to restrain so the idea that like oh well you know it, he was trying to kill him it's like no he wasn't trying to kill him that happened and that's unfortunate but the intent was to restrain him from hurting someone else and he goes on throughout the whole thing to do this casting it as if the intent was death any self-defense uh scenario or or whatever it's if you're dealing with self-defense, the intent is never to kill. It's to stop the attack. Mm -hmm. Well, like the thing here is, you know, it's always the game, you know, is it stupid or is it intentional uh, maliciousness? Well, I don't know. You know, we're talking about Lance, right? It's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to tell exactly. But it, it feels to me that this isn't Lance not understanding that concept that you talked about, which seems, should be so like blatantly obvious to everyone. It's more like he's trying to do this kind of dishonest thing where he's trying to trap people by skipping that entire argument by just saying, oh, so you're saying it was proportional to kill him, which isn't really what anyone is saying. And I haven't really heard people arguing that. Yeah, I agree that situation because he was going to become such a threat you're, to the person who but, choked him out. But you, 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 stepped up, you, stepped, you made a big leap right there. Which, what, what's the leap? <laughs> the in, you're, you're, you're ascribing intent to the Marine to, to kill. Oh, I'm not saying that he intended to kill him. I'm, I never said that, but he did end up killing him, right? So, so, that, that's, so that's, that's that was, immaterial. So, so, to, well, no, but what is making what has to be material, Tim, has to be, is he doing what he's doing? Are you making a proportionality doing? argument or are you making yes, I'm asking. Well, I'm asking you that because is it what is he did proportional to the threat? Yes. So the yes. threat that he was going it to do. It is proportional to subdue someone mm -hmm. that is threatening other people and saying he'll die in the process. And, and end up killing him, even if that was... You, so, see, see, now you're doing it again. You're ascribing intent. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not ascribing intent. I'm, so, saying, I'm <laughs> saying the result. That's Props, props to Tim, man. Props to Tim. Yeah. He totally pulled it. He totally yeah. pointed it out. Yeah, he saw, well, he saw it right away, which is, which is yeah. you know, again, why I say, like, Tim is not a dumb guy. And, and Lance trying to push this only makes Lance look dumber. I don't think yeah, even think he understands what Tim is saying, to be honest I, with you. I think right. Well, no, see, this is what I, I think he does. I think Lance is just trying to be weaselly with the argument here. He's trying to say, like, oh, you if you accept that it's justifiable for someone to try to seduce someone who's acting crazy and threatening to attack people, then you must also inherently have to um, side with the fact that killing that person is a correct thing to do which isn't necessarily no, intentionally correct thing to do, which is not yeah. really the argument that he was making no so I, I, it feels to me more weaselly than than lance being stupid but you know you're also very time. kind yeah that is true. very very kind well it is wait is it kinder to say he's stupid or kinder to say he's being intentionally dishonest i mean i don't know if that's kind oh i guess you're he's, right i guess you're right yeah you're, you're uh, saying you're the that, mean one i yeah. think it's i think I think it's more kind to say he's not stupid because saying that he's stupid would probably hurt his feelings more than saying he's mean. <laughs> well, no, he's, 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 he's saying he's intentionally lying though, which is uh, yeah, obviously which is malicious. meaner. Yeah, right. Yeah, which is malicious, and that's and the thing is, from Lance's perspective, and this is me, you know, trying to read his mind a little bit, but I assume that his perspective is it's okay to lie to Tim Pool. I don't think he's, that's the way look, the left goes. Well, I don't know. Lance, I, here, I don't here's probably smart like, enough to be lying like this. I agree with you, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if he if it is malicious, mm -hmm. it, if it if you call him if you call him stupid, that's mean. If you say it's mean, he's malicious. He would be fine with that because he's being malicious. I see what you're saying. To Tim, right. to, to Tim he's lying yeah. to the right. Yeah, so right. it's okay to lie to the right because the right are the bad guys, and you and Herbert Marcuse says it's okay, so it's okay. Yeah, right. No. The the reason I think it's more malicious is because of you know Lance's Twitter feed. He just constantly is so dishonest, always clipping people out of context intentionally. It seems like it's intentional because it's so common. 
or just kind of twisting people's arguments in very similar ways, you know, make them say things that they're not saying. So to me, I feel like this is just kind of his, you know, his modus operandi. Yeah. Just, just do try to do this move, which, you know, that's fine on Twitter. Maybe this is a problem that what he's doing now, like, I feel like he would. I feel like what he's doing is he's using the tactics he's using in tw on Twitter in real life. Like on Twitter, he could quote tweet Tim and say, oh, Tim is saying that it's acceptable, you know, to kill someone just because they were, you know, acting crazy on a train. Right. And right. then, you know, Tim obviously can respond on, on his tweet, but who cares? You know, uh, Lance is going to get like a thousand likes on the tweet and no one's going to see yep. Tim's response. But in person, obviously the tactic doesn't work. And maybe that's kind of what's going on here. Sure. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Could be. So this is what happened. The guy said, right? Results, so, results are right. immaterial to the proportionality of action. So the proportionality of action in your mind was justified to what he was doing, his actual actions. He, he on held the, ground. the guy on the ground while he said, call 911. And 9 killed him. And but, choked but, him out the other you're, you're doing it again. <laughs> no, you keep so, saying I'm doing it again. I'm saying this you, is you the are, end results. I'm not saying. Do either of you guys know if Lance knows what consequentialism is and if he considers himself a consequentialist? I have no idea, but uh, I know. I've never heard him talk Bosch about it. Bosch always brags about being a consequentialist. Yeah, which is awful. Like that. You know, it's funny because, and, and I think Kyle Rittenhouse is going to come up a lot in this conversation, but when we had a conversation with Lance about Kyle Rittenhouse, he kept doing the opposite of this to like a, like a, a weirdly pedantic view where he's like, no, 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 each factor, he's like sitting out, each factor in this case has to be, you know, analyzed in a very specific way and then combined to get a moral result. Like he was trying to do like this super yeah. like, you know, uh, we're going to put everything through a lens here. And now he's like, no, 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 we're just going to skip to the end. You know, he's guilty. He's bad because he killed someone. He doesn't have the uh, the intelligence octane to uh, carry <laughs> that that argument through where you have to go and piece it all right. together to make it make sense. And this is what he meant to do. So, Maybe he didn't. I don't know. I don't know what's in his heart. Right, right. Neither do you. None of us know so, what so, he meant to do that yes, day when he woke absolutely. up. Look, and now he's insinuating that. No, he really did want to kill him. <laughs> yeah. Right. If someone is threatening other people, you are allowed to subdue them. And yes. then would it be like an involuntary manslaughter? So, that... see, you're, 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 you're... No, 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 but this is what happened. It's to the point of death. So you have it's to... Not it's not a criminal... If, it's, if, it's not... If, I'm if, not saying he intended to kill him. That's a difference, right? But if uh, he ended up dying as a result of that, was that proportional? Yes. It, he, he needed to be killed. No. Or he could have killed see, someone else. Hold on. Stop that. You, can't, you, you keep trying to say needed to be... No. No, but no, no, that's no. What... Well, okay. Here's what Lance should ask if he was trying to be a little more intelligent. Is it... Oh, because what he's trying to ask is... Is it if someone's acting crazy and you think they're a threat? Is it okay to subdue them um, intentionally to the point, you know, like indefinitely, even if it leads to them dying? Right. Sure. I think that's what he's trying to ask, but he can't quite get that question out because he hasn't really thought this through clearly. Yeah. Stitch the idiot whisperer. <laughs> Listen, I try. <laughs> okay. I can empathize. Okay. Good faith carries in the house. <laughs> what happened? The Marine, that's, that's the end result. You're saying the Marine tried to kill him. No, I didn't say that. Then why, you, you why are saying that I'm saying that. You you're putting say, words in my mouth. I'm saying that's what ended on, up happening. Let me respond. Then so, why would so you say they, needed to be killed? Because why did you what say he did to, to him, killed? his choke out ended up with the guy dying. So uh, that was the right. end result. So his proportional response to what he thought was a threat was that I'm going to choke him out. I'm not trying to kill him, but I'm going to choke him out. Whether or not he dies is going to be something that we're just going to remain to be on the cards, right? This is chance. We'll leave it up to chance so, here. So you are making a huge leap right there. There's no leap, hey, Tim. Yeah, what he's you, doing you are, is yes. that proportional. Is choking someone with the possibility of death. A choke a, with the possibility yes, of death. Is. Yes, Okay, so, that, okay, so let, that's, let's, that's I'll your sentence. Let, yeah. let, let, let me tell you. So any attempt to physically intervene with someone has some amount of risk of great bodily harm. If you grab someone and they trip, or you push someone to push them away and they trip and they fall and they smash their head and die that or that at least that's a possibility so the, the idea like anytime you physically intervene there is a a some risk of death the risk is variable depending on what type of intervention whether it be a you know you're trying with a gun or with your whether you're trying with your hands or whatever but there's some kind of risk so lance saying Oh, well, there was some kind of risk. It's like the only thing that completely and totally alleviates that is not getting involved at all. If, yeah, this, no, if this homeless guy like beat somebody up on the train, I think Lance would still be defending him, though. Like, that's a sad thing. Yeah, right? no, I, I think you're right. I think 100%. You're right. But uh, no, that's a really good point, Phil. It's kind of like, um, like, like if someone punches you in the face, right? Or say that they move like they're going to punch you and you punch them first and you punch them in the face. And you know they the way you hit them and the way they fall they die right yep. 
you know, Lance would be like, oh, well, is it, he was going to punch you. Is it okay for you to kill him? You're like, well, I, that wasn't the intention to kill him. Exactly. That wasn't to hit him once, exactly. you know, but sometimes things happen and, yeah. and they just go in that direction. But if you're going to have like a legal and moral conversation, you can't just, I don't think you can just look at it through the end results. No. You have to look at each step along the way to see how you get there. Correct. Yeah. And, and another thing is, um, I ah, never mind. I go ahead. I lost it. Consequentialism is a tough debate because people often conflate like I think of consequentialism as is like the ends justify the means as long as the outcome is good you can do anything which is much different than looking at the consequences of of actions and seeing how something turned out yep a lot um, of people always conflate the two and it bugs the shit out of me because they say, you know, if you're if you're putting together some strategy that you think will have a good outcome, they say, you're a consequentialist. And I'm like, well, no, I'm saying I'm putting together my strategy with uh, the, the idea that the ends don't justify the means. Like that's a I, completely different way of looking at something. Yeah, and another problem with consequentialism is, I mean, that's what got all the people killed that communism is killed the whole argument is it doesn't matter how many people end up dying because we're going to the communist utopia and once the communist utopia is here then all of those deaths would have happened anyways and it'll be worth it yeah yeah mm -hmm. so i don't know if lance is a consequentialist so i don't know, yeah, I don't know. he's a dummy <laughs> i don't think he's yeah, I don't think he's thought through what his philosophical moral principles are i don't think know, so enough either. to get to answer that yeah uh, J Mac, our surrogate father. Thank you so much, J Mac, for the fifty gifted memberships. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Daniel the Bruce for twenty dollars. Thank you, Daniel. Says Phil and Adam. You guys are old enough. Wow, careful to remember oh. Bernie Goats. How similar or different would you say this was to Bernie Goat shooting the street toughs on the subway in the eighties? Uh, Bernie. I would have to Google Bernie Goats. I'm not quite old enough to remember. I don't know who that is. So yeah, I don't I remember do either. Oh, well, we'll look and talk about it after. So if uh, someone tried illegally entering my home, sure, I will use whatever force necessary to stop them from illegal entering my home and illegally entering my home. Right. I have the, the legal justification in the state that I live in to use whatever force necessary to stop someone from entering my home illegally. Now, you can't invite someone in. And there's actually some some legal barriers here, like. If someone actually walks up to your house and the door is open and they walk in, that's actually not an illegal entry. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is to a certain degree, but it's like trespass. Sure. It's like your door was open, there was no obstruction, and then you'll make an argument about entering the domicile could be considered fourth degree burglary, depending on which state you're in. If they actually open the door and enter, they've now committed felony burglary. And you are entitled in West Virginia to use whatever force necessary to stop someone from illegally entering your house. That doesn't mean you just intend to actually kill someone. So in terms of we're out in the street, someone is threatening someone else. You are legally entitled to subdue them. Now, when even, the, even if that sub like even yes. in the act of doing that, you could kill them. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because uh, Wait, did he say you're entitled to subdue them. I don't know. is threatening someone else. You are legally entitled to subdue them. Now, when even, the, even if that sub like even yes. in the act of doing that, it could kill them. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because uh, where you're going with it is like what 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 sub what what act of subduing would be permitted in your mind then? Like holding his hands tightly? Uh, one that doesn't have a possibility of death, I would say. But, because it, give, it, me it, give, give me one. Give me one in your in your in your in your martial arts expertise. Um, zero, absolutely zero. Okay, so, yeah. so yeah, but see, this is a problem. It's kind of what you were saying, Phil. Like any physical interaction can potentially lead to someone dying in some way. You know, he, if he helped, like if he just grabbed his arms, right? You know, what if he flails his body and he let go, you know, and then the guy lets go and then he smashes his head into the wall and dies, right? The you the know, velocity I mean, of your head going to concrete is enough to kill you right exactly right now obviously there are certain things you can do that could be more uh, potentially dangerous sure. than other things but it's just lance isn't really addressing or making any of these arguments he has like these very shallow positions that he can i feel like you can just say on twitter and he just thinks that these will work in a real conversation and obviously he's finding out that's not the case right yeah. he died so therefore he's guilty <laughs> Right. right. Well, because Lance is biting the bullet. Like, well, he Lance is accepting that like, he could someone could go to stop him. Right. Lance is he just admitted that it's fine for someone to go up and try to stop Jordan Neely, you know, and subdue him. He just has a problem with the end result. Right.
Yeah. yeah, which is completely and totally unknowable because we're human beings that, you know, live in linear time. Right, unless someone does something that is um, especially, you know, obviously dangerous. There's, 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 and I think I can contend that no one here has any, right? Or, well, or, sorry, I, I, am, I, am I in a judo I've room? I've watched a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Uh, Sharp elbows. <laughs> but, but no, none of us have black belts. We don't know this shit. We're just well, a bunch of people but, who talk but, on the internet, but not right? Going, going, going black belts, I mean, I have hostile environment training, and I have okay. some minimal martial arts training. Minimal, minimal, minimal. I didn't, I, I've, done, uh, okay. uh, I've done some kung fu, taekwondo. So once again, there's and, no experts here to and talk capoeira. about this. Yeah. Uh, so certainly we'll contend. I am not an expert. However... If someone is threatening harm against another person and three people find it reasonable to subdue him and the person dies, that person was in the process of committing a crime. If you lose your life in the process of committing a crime, I'm not going to blame the victims for this, right? Would you blame the victims for this? When you're saying victims, you mean the people who killed him? The people who are being attacked. But were they attacked prior or did they try to subdue him? So do, do we have, do we have footage before no, the event I don't begins? So, so, so in New, York, in New yeah. York, for example, if you go up to someone and threaten them, you've mm -hmm. committed a crime, Right. You've committed a criminal act of violence against per another person by threatening them and going up to their face. It's called menace. Is it? Like when you, if you, if you, if you're walking around intimidating people, it's called menace, and, mm -hmm. and it is illegal. And there, you can like it's a you know it's a super light misdemeanor. You know, you're walking around looking angry and and you know being like what to people. It's and scaring them. That's <laughs> that is illegal. Definitely in a place like New York. I mean, if you're trapped in a subway. Oh, that's, that's so awful. You know, can you, like, I saw another video um, of a woman. I think it was a woman. I don't know. But it was this crazy person in these, like, they were wearing super tight blue pants and a weird, like, puffy white thing. And they're just rolling through the whole subway car, yelling at people, blah, blah, blah. Sits down next to someone. Someone tries to get up and leave. And she she literally grabbed the woman's hair and made her sit down next to her. You know, like, it's wow. like good grief, you know, and that kind of stuff is unquestionably illegal. Yeah, it has yeah. to be because you don't you're not going to be able to have a a, a, a a society that feels safe and feels you know good about living in the city. If you, they have to worry about God, what if this homeless person sees me and, and or, or what if I make eye contact and next thing <laughs> you know, I'm running for five blocks from this, you know, right. Dude right. screaming about the turtles. Well, and people forget, too, because when we say the word assault in common tongue, you generally mean the action of attacking someone. But in, I believe in, in most states, assault just means the causing someone to fear that a yeah. harm is about to take place to them. Yeah, and battery physical. is the actual, you know, touching them. Oh, wow. So it, it, so it is yeah. assault if you're you know, threatening people. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's assault, and you're exactly right. Battery is the physical beating right. someone. But, uh, but Tim said something that I actually, I hear a lot of people that are discussing this and kind of defending, uh, I, I don't know, remember, I don't know the guy's name who actually choked him, because everyone just focused on the victim's name. But um, a lot of people say this when they discuss this, and they, I think they should really stop. And it's this idea that like, oh, three different people on the train decided that this guy's a threat, so therefore that's a justification yeah. to subdue him. That's not a good argument. Yep. And we all know why that's a really bad argument. Because that was the argument that Lance and the other people were giving against Kyle Rittenhouse. They were saying, oh, all these, pe all oh, these people, all these people, all these people in this massive mob, they felt like it was their duty to like stop and subdue Kyle Rittenhouse, right? It's like, no, no, just because people think that, you know, they can do it doesn't mean that's just justification. The justification hey is whether the person's initial action uh, was criminal or not. Like if, if Kyle Rittenhouse wrong. Hey guys. Guys, wait one second. I gotta, I gotta let my dog out. I'm gonna so sure. keep going. I'll be right back. Go for it. But um, if, if Kyle Rittenhouse had done something wrong, right? If he actually was, you know, if if you know, obviously Kyle Rittenhouse didn't. But in a hypothetical scenario, if Kyle Rittenhouse like, you know, was just running around like shooting people, or he just murdered people in cold blood or something, then those people would have been justified to attempt to subdue him, right? Yeah, that's of the course. difference. Is that Right. So that the difference isn't really like what people's perceptions of, you know, if you could have 20 people could say, oh, I think this person was doing something wrong. So we get to subdue them. But if the guy wasn't doing anything wrong, that doesn't matter how many people thought that. Yeah, there was 20 people in Kyle Rittenhouse situation. Right. Dan Daniel Penny is the guy is the Daniel Marine. Penny, yeah. Right. Jordan Neely is the guy who is the who died, who died. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the Michael Jackson impersonator, they're calling him. Man, they are really. They're trying to do George Floyd 2.0 with this They guy. really are, right. They really are. And they're really pushing the Michael Jackson impersonator from 
I don't know. It seemed like that was from like ten years ago, or something. Like yeah, this. yeah. Just like, to, you know, he wasn't he wasn't doing that right now. It's not like he was in the middle of doing. I don't think he was. It didn't seem like he was doing a middle of a Michael Jackson thing, and this, you know, all of a sudden he starts threatening people. So right, yeah. He moonwalked badly, and the whole <laughs> car was against him. So yeah, it's a it's a completely <laughs> impersonation of Michael Jackson is so awful. <laughs> this thing's this sucks. <laughs> Get rid of him. Grab the pita. Oh yeah. No. Um. And so you're saying at that point you. What? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You have the ability to proportionally respond with so, a, violence. A, yeah, actually, there's a there's a video of this. Uh, Myth Informed has it. Seven years ago, this man was called a hero for defusing violence by putting another man in a chokehold. A man in the subway was getting up in people's faces, and he was threatening them, and another man got up behind him and put him in a chokehold, and he was put on national television, and he was celebrated as a hero for doing so. So th this is what I'm talking about, a narco tyranny. I feel like you're latching onto this completely from a point of... Uh, uh, you, you a big problem with this is because the we don't have footage of the inciting incident. Oh, of course. Yeah. So they can paint it however they want because right. they don't have him getting out of control. Right. And, and, I, and, I, and I knew as soon as I saw the the videos because it or the pictures, because the picture, they always, they always show the same picture. It's always him being choked and then they put uh, Penny's face, you know, Daniel Penny's yeah. face right there. It's like white guy choking out black guy. But if you had a video of him like, throwing off his jacket and telling people that he doesn't care if he goes to jail and, you know, getting up in people's faces. Suddenly, you know, I feel like a lot of this situation would defuse. Is, is does, deep fake has, it, has anyone talked about putting subway, putting cameras on the subway cars? I thought like, about that. I, 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 I actually, I was kind of shocked because I assumed that there was, but then I thought, well, maybe they can't because people destroy them. So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, probably, I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah. Cars. And I assume, you know, there's people that they would spray paint them and et cetera, et cetera. Right. So maybe maybe it wouldn't be possible. Because that was my first thought. I was like, how are there not cameras on the subway? And I thought, oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, that's... Maybe, that, maybe that is. <laughs> there's no cameras on there because, you know, vandalism and stuff. Right. Right. But it'd be nice. You don't have knowledge on proper uh, uh, technique for subduing an individual. Nor not, the none of us do. Nor the legal expertise. Yeah, none but, of us do as but, well. But see, see that, that that's kind of an absurd thing to just outright... Well, well, look, I'm going to say this guy committed a murder and should go to prison, but I'm not an expert and neither are you. Therefore, he should be convicted. I, I never said that. I'm, I'm, I'm actually asking questions because the, these are things that I don't fully understand about. Is it legal for to him to do what he did? Yes. Is, is, That's it, why he it wasn't is proportionally charged. legal. Yes. Okay. That's why he wasn't charged. He was released. However, in this day and age, I, I don't. Uh, I'm going to be about here's my bad faith, Barry, over here. I don't believe lance at all here i think he 100 percent does think this guy is guilty he's not just asking questions this is just kind of like a, i'm just asking questions here i'm totally yes. innocent yeah this is a retreat position you know for the conversation 100 percent. Oh, yeah. and also this I'm, I'm gonna bring it up now like he talks about um no actually no i'm not gonna go ahead it'll come up go ahead age what's I'll likely wait. going to happen is a narco tyranny People go out in the streets, they protest, and the police say, for political reasons, we're going to go find this guy and we're going to arrest him. But I don't know. It depends. Unfortunately, we don't have footage of what happened before the chokehold. That's what I'd like to know. But yeah. if there's enough people on the train that are, are witness to what was happening and they're like, yo, he was threatening all of us, then mm -hmm. I and think there the were. cops are not going to mess with that and guy. And that's what was reported. <clears throat> and there were three men trying to subdue him as he fought back. So there's, 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 like, there's, there's no debate. It makes me wonder if Lance is aware of, or at, the, at this point, if Lance was aware that like the mayor had like clapped back at AOC for being like, "Yo, what are you doing?" You know, it's it's not clear. Oh, did he? I didn't know that. What did the mayor? Yeah, say? he did. He the AOC made some tweets, and the mayor was like, "Yo, you can't do this or whatever." So nice. there's there is inconsistent messaging from the, I think the ideological left, and then the actual like. I suppose I would say reasonable Democrats, but even though they're they're being led around by the nose by the extreme left, um, mm -hmm. I still think that they're people that are basically useful idiots and uh, that get led around. And I think Adams is probably just that. He's probably a useful idiot, and he understands that you can't throw people in jail for trying to defend themselves. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I thought people were, I mean, I don't know if it's true, but I thought people were criticizing Adams pretty heavily for they felt that he was too soft on crime. Um, so if he's, if even he's pushing back on AOC with her remark, which I tweeted about, which was, you know, she was really ratcheting up that this was murder yeah. and seemed to be making, you know, racial insinuations, which a lot of people are doing. I mean, that's good if he's like, you know, this is completely irresponsible for you to do this. So. Yeah. What does she care if New York burns <laughs> down? No. 
Yeah, she, she lives in D.C. now, right? Whatever. Yeah. That this guy was acting violently and threatening people and even said he was prepared to die. At that point, you have what, what could be a terroristic threat. I think, I think if a guy got on a train and screamed, I'm going to cause harm to people and then said he was willing to die, you'd probably want to stop him because there's signs all over the subway saying, if you see something, say something. And I suppose we could go the route of uh, uh, when, when Luke Rutkowski had that video, there was a guy in a subway with a knife stabbing people and the cops said, we're not going to get involved at all. Oh and then some guy had to try and intervene himself. It's funny, that guy's a hero. Yeah, that was, I think, oh yeah, here it is. Matt Walsh retweeted Alexandra Cortez's uh, tweet from six hours ago and asking specifically, what are they supposed to do? What are people supposed to do in this situation? Are they just supposed to sit there? If someone's screaming, they're going to they're gonna hurt somebody. You just sit there and wait until they actually hurts the person and then you respond. And I'm just, I'm just curious, you know, honestly, Legally, no, you don't like I mean, when it comes to self-defense and stuff like that, you don't have to wait to be struck again. It's the uh, the intent ability and opportunity. If they exhibit intent and they're looking like they're going to, you mm -hmm. can defend yourself up to and including deadly force. You don't have to get shot before you can shoot back. Right. You don't have to get stabbed before you can shoot someone. You don't have to get punched before you can defend yourself. Right. Yeah. Don't the, be a victim. Well, yeah. and I think I think it is a good question to say for the people that are criticizing this. You know, what should you do? What what should have should people just sit around and do nothing? Like and the thing that's annoying is because I feel like I mean I, I feel like there's so many situations that I've been in where everyone just stands there, right? And I'm the person that has to go act. Because everyone's <laughs> yeah. just kinda standing there like the fucking <laughs> you know, I don't mean like I'm like the fucking hero, like you know, doing things. I mean like you know, just like to, me again. To, to go get to go get someone or to or to go do something to try to break up a fight. I feel like so many situations where I just see everyone just stands around like fucking, you know, sheep, like lemmings. They just kind of stare and you know, they're not really thinking. They don't know what to do in the situation. They're, and you know, so you need someone to just kind of act sometimes in yeah, situations totally. and to kind of you know, prevent it. And I mean that's you know, We've seen a lot of these videos where people are getting attacked on subways or in public transit or something in the street. And there's a bunch of people just walking around and it's just, it's horrific to me that no one acts. And so, you know, I think people should act more and should, yeah. uh, you know, try to prevent this sort of behavior. Agreed. Question. Uh, we have the Daily Mail from October. 25 victims have been shoved in front of subway cars so far this year. That's uh, two victims were killed. Where, where was the protest? Well, you know, where was no. the video footage of it? There's video, there is video there footage is. of it. Is it public? Yes. Public I love video and I'm not, I can't I play it on end. YouTube. But, yo, there's video footage of people being pushed in front of trains. And, and, and where's AOC? Where's any of these protesters? Nowhere to be found. Anarcho tyranny is that when the criminals do it, as explained in, uh, what was it, Solzhenitsyn, the, the, Gil the Gulag Archipelago, when a criminal does this act in the Soviet Union, they didn't. That's just a criminal. That's what they do. But when you, the citizen, defend yourself, you knew better. But so you're blaming. The point that Tim's making is really, really good, and I, I think that there is. I mean, everybody knows that I'm a big James Lindsay fan. I think James Lindsay's basically like nailing all this stuff on the, on the, you know, nailing it on the head. And the idea that it's, that it's hierarchy not hypocrisy is something that the right needs to understand mm -hmm. it doesn't do any good to be like look they're hypocrites look they're hypocrites the hypocrisy is the point because they're trying to demoralize you they're trying to make you feel like oh i don't have recourse so i need to just shut up and obey that's the intent is is obedience and if you live in a system where you can't rely on the government to have set rules for everybody, no one knows what they can and can't do. And then your the, the whole trust system falls apart, but you end up with, you know, or that was one of the problems with, with the Soviet Union is nobody knew what was and wasn't really illegal. And that is a, that will destroy your society. That'll bring the levels of trust down so far that you're, you're it'll take you generations to recover. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly. the intent because happy happy societies don't have revolutions. Well, I think that's the, I think what you're describing is the outcome. Um, it might be the intent for some of these people. I like, I don't think this is AOC's intent or a lot of the, you know, bigger public figures who. No, they're just useful idiots. Yeah. That I was, think they're that just was the term in the Soviet Union. Yeah. Who, I think there's a couple things going on. And I think it's a, I think it's a, actually, it's a very good question is, you know, why is AOC, why are these other people, you know, why are they not commenting whenever someone gets pushed in front of a train? Why are there no protests on this? You know, there was a really, uh, screwed up video 
of the guy who like walked up to the homeless guy and he just stands there and then remember he pulls out a gun and shoots him. Yeah, I just put um, that up on my Twitter page yesterday asking about context and it was apparently the guy had sh they got into a fight at a gas station. He'd already been shot in the back when he's sitting on the ground and apparently he's begging the guy for his life as the guy's sitting there trying to clear the jam and then he yeah, smokes him. Right. Or, yeah. It, or and it's like where is the insane levels of outrage for these like heinous acts? And there, you know, I think there's a couple things happening there. I think one is that I think AOC and a lot of people on the left don't want to ever, ever put a spotlight on a black person committing a crime because they're so afraid of doing that will justify racism against black people. I think that's I, the first thing that's happening. I think you're mind. right, but I think it's less about the color of their skin than it is about the political opinions of people because they're going after uh, Clarence Thomas real hard right now. And he's well, this is, pretty this is, dark. Yeah, but that's, I'm not saying they don't ever want to criticize a black person. I'm just saying in terms of the, when the convergence of black and criminal comes into play, they're so afraid of, of promoting that negative stereotype that they don't want to ever talk about any, anything related Does to that. Does Clarence first Thomas thing. add to the black criminal stereotype? <laughs> no, exactly. That's, that's my want... point. He doesn't. Fair, right. fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but so the, I think the second thing here too, is that since a lot of people on the left, they're, they're so hyper fixated on we need to fight against uh, systems of injustice from like the top down way. So that when you have a criminal do something, it doesn't stroke their moral outrage because they're so outraged about like powerful people, what they perceive as powerful people kind of enacting violence against less powerful people. And they view criminals as like less powerful in kind of a twisted way. Yeah. So like they have this like weird, like um, they're not just, um, they're not emotionally charged about seeing, you know, those sorts of incidents is the way that other people are, especially people on the right who have a much stronger moral intuition towards, you know, maintaining order and structure in society who see these actions of just violent random acts of crime and they just instantaneously become, you know, angry. Yep. Yeah. They think society did this to these people and these people are enacting revenge. Yes. Justified yeah, revenge point. even. Right. Yeah, he right. was just asking for food, right? Because society shit on him so much that you know put him in this situation. Yeah, it's not yeah. it's not the criminals' faults. They were victims of you know the environment yep. and you know blah 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 blah. Yeah, hundred percent. Those moral intuitions are just completely in conflict, <laughs> constantly, <laughs> constantly in conflict. But it is a great point about the the racial stereotypes. They're just terrified that stereotype is going to become prominent again. Yeah, because um, cause again, I mean, you'd think it's like, you know, if people are get if, if you, know, you said 20 people are get pushed in front of trains and stuff, like, that's insane. It's totally yeah. insane. You know, where I would be like, where's the outrage for that? <laughs> get the get the protest there. And then they might say like, oh, well, you know, no one is saying that those people shouldn't go to jail. That's why they're not protesting. It's like, well, yeah, but shouldn't you be protesting that the state should do something about that? That they should be protecting the citizens? Shouldn't that mm -hmm. be what you're protesting? So. People are saying though that they should have done nothing and just let it pass. Well, that's what, which um, is another form of being a victim. Yeah. Well, it's funny because that's that's kind of what Emma, of uh, is her name right? Emma, the the, right. the lady yeah. co-host on Sam Cedar Show. Yes. She had this insane uh, rant about how you know she's been on the public transportation and she's been shoved and hit and you just kind of have to expect it and i'm like what the fuck like yeah, no I mean, you don't what kind of unreal. attitude is this I the idea that you agree with that yeah the idea that you must accept uh violations of your, of your personal yes. space and stuff just because you want to live in a city f that i mean yes. not that i want to live in a city anyways but still yes if, listen if someone is crazy or can't participate in normal society without being violent they shouldn't they have to be removed from the streets you know, and put in jail yeah. or put in a mental institution. And if our society is not doing that and, you know, violent citizens are going to have to take the law in their own hands, then unfortunately you're going to have incidents exactly like this. Yeah, what do I, you guys, what do you guys think about like bringing back the uh, institutions? What do you, as an you mean like the mental like, wards? Yeah, like the yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know enough about uh, to, to give a good opinion on that. So. Fair Something enough. needs to be done, though. Obviously, we need to get these mentally ill off the streets, and incarcerating them in prison is not really the thing to do. No, yeah. no. Yeah. I don't know.
Kudos C for not bringing attention to this specifically. So as Blaming. in like, or are you saying that she, you, she's, 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 she's hypocritical because she doesn't talk about the people being pushed in front of trains, but she's talking about this now? Is that what I you're don't, saying? I don't, I'm not saying hypocritical. No, I'm saying my, I have a question of why, why now? Why only when people are victimized and they defend themselves are they are we now upset about what happened you on the subway? Keep saying victimized. We're talking about a poor homeless person <laughs> who <laughs> yes, may, may have been having uh, an episode and died in what like ended up being the struggle. That, that's uh -huh. so why. There's a whole lot of like imagined scenario in that. Yeah. Of course. A poor homeless. Yeah. This yeah. poor homeless. We're talking about a poor homeless. He doesn't guy. mean poor he doesn't like no. Like, Financially poor, he means like this yeah. unfortunate yeah, pity, individual. Pity him. But you don't know that that he wasn't yelling. Everyone, there was no video prior. Multiple people said that he was yelling. So yes. what do you mean this poor homeless dude just trying to sit down and not do nothing? You know, like. Right. Like, He's just trying like, to stay out of the way, Phil. He didn't do nothing. You know, it's like, come on, man. Give me a break. Well, it's exactly what you said, Adam. This is, you know, the, the moral intuitions are, for a lot of people on the left, is to instantaneously side with the person who's poor because they view this person as a victim of society society yeah it's our right. fault it really is it's daniel well, Penny's well, fault the guy who joined yes. the marine corps and yeah. you know it's probably started a family it's his and also, fault I, I mean i don't know i mean lance is canadian i don't know where he lives i don't know what his interactions are but i think that you know it's possible he's just never been in these situations where he's had to interact with crazy people on the street and it's just it's, it's very scary they're stabbing yeah. people in los angeles it's yeah. nuts it's nuts. Well, I mean, the famous case in LA did, that turned out to not be a ram stabbing, right? That was uh, intentional. That was actually in San Francisco, and it was, yeah. yeah. The that d didn't turn out to be random. But there are, ra yeah. I mean, I told you about the one in Target where the guy went and got like a Target yeah, that was knife. Wild. That was yes. <laughs> it's totally intentional. I, I, I am confident that there are enough stabbings to be able to say, "Hey, there are stabbings." <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Why are the people who were subduing him victims? What what makes the victims? He, he, of this? he assaulted them. So you have that on camera that he assaulted them first. <laughs> According to <laughs> all the news reports and the police and the witness statements, can he, we see the footage? I want to see. I haven't seen that yet. I think we can show. Look, Lance doesn't believe anything. It's like <laughs> no, of course. Look, sh show me the DNA evidence here. It's 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 all tactic. It's all tactic. Do you think? Do you think a a New York jury would convict this guy i'm not sure that they no. would. i'm terrified that they might well, though no well maybe i know, I know. i'm <laughs> terrified i'm terrified of that if it becomes super political you yeah, know maybe no all it's gonna take is the people on the jury to be or, or people on the jury to know two people that like you know we're late for work because that of the Kyle protests Ritt that kyle like, rittenhouse journey yeah. jury was out for too long for my comfort to be honest yes. with you i i agree but i and and i mean i guess yeah, to be to be totally fair, it, it it's always a risk, right? You yes. never know what the jury is going to be like. Oh so fair God. enough. I don't ever want to be in a situation where I have to be, you know, on a, a be judged by a jury because God only knows what's going to happen. But I do feel like New Yorkers don't play around when it comes to the subway because yeah, all the people they all know. know they've all experienced yeah. this. They're yeah. like, no, this is. I feel like New Yorkers would be like, nah, dude, he didn't write it. He didn't <laughs> yes, mean to do it. Totally. Get out of here, you know. Because what 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 would happen if they did convict him? No one will ever help anyone on the subway ever again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's li that's exactly what would happen, and that will only make the subway more dangerous. Yeah, I no, don't think I, they're going to charge hope. him. I don't think they're going to charge him for that I, reason. Well, I don't know. I, they could be pressured politically in the charging. I'm not sure. I mean, I, if if this didn't blow up, they wouldn't have charged him. Obviously. Sure. Yeah. We'll see. Oh, the well, choke well, out. Okay, so according to the news reports, the witnesses, and the police, mm -hmm. he went and threatened violence against people, which is assault. And right, but you're saying he specifically threatened violence against the people who subdued him. Do we have evidence of that? I it's, mean, it's, it's one thing for he, him to he, be in a train being like, I'm, I'm upset. You're not winning an argument. It does not matter if he's, if he's threatening violence against the people that subdued him or other people. Lance is just asking questions, man. <laughs> Come on, Phil. Lance is just, he's the detective Lance here. He just wants to get to the bottom of this. Impartially unbiased Lance. What was the name of the um, Lance's debate partner in that horrific Lauren Southern conversation? D the oh, God. Tales? God. Detective Tales? Detective Tales. Is Lance, is Lance channeling the spirit of Detective Tales? Oh, that's it. Yeah. 
He's probably got an earpiece in, getting well, <laughs> updates from Detective The Tales worst right person to get take advice. Well, and also Lance knows this is kind of a BS argument too, because again, this goes back to Kyle Rittenhouse. Like, of course, Lance Lance would never have argued. Well, Kyle Rittenhouse didn't threaten any of the individual people that tried to subdue him, so therefore, you know, they were not justified in chasing him. I cannot yep. wait to talk about the Kyle Rittenhouse part. That's what gets to it. God. That's what's so fascinating about this because it is just complete political bias. It's like when my team yes. does it, you know, I'll make every excuse in the world for it. <laughs> when their team does it, they're guilty. Hang them high, right? Yeah. That's... No, this is this is the perfect example of just how moral intuitions affect your thinking. Right. It completely yeah. blindsides you to hypocrisy and not being morally consistent. Of course. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the whole point. People forget. That's the whole point of being morally consistent, having principles. Is is a way to check yourself of to make course, sure you're not yeah. falling into that trap. Yes, to avoid your own political cognitive biases. Yeah, right. Which is tough. I mean, obviously. Very. Yeah. yeah. Argument here. I'm, like, I'm not trying to win an argument. You're being I'm, I'm awfully pedantic. You, awfully pedantic. Did, <laughs> yes. Why like, would you use pedantic in this in this form? As, as if, in, like, if, I'm trying to get to the root of this problem. No, right? no, no. It's absurd to imply that if a woman, if a guy walks up to a woman and says he's going to harm her, that another man can't protect right. her. Right. And so this is why I'm asking: Did he say to the people who subdued who subdued him, "I'm going to harm you. Yes, I'm, I'm going to hurt you." That's immaterial to us. That's the implication he that he's making. He's such a weasel. <laughs> Yeah, and Tim just said you you know you if if a guy walks up to a woman and says I'm going to harm you, someone else can intervene. Right. And then he says, "Yeah, but did he did he did he say he was going to harm the people that were were intervening?" <laughs> no, it's like, like he, he lit doesn't Tim even... liter yeah, literally just said, "Hey, this is the situation here." And then he's like, "Yeah, but what?" It's like just it's like he's not even hearing the words that are coming out of Tim's mouth. I'm sorry, the woman has to step up and subdue him. That's the, <laughs> the yeah. rules, okay? That's right. Um, I don't care that you're 130 pounds and he's 250. <laughs> he calls you out on the subway. Get in there. So, so in the chat <laughs> uh, asked, no, he hasn't been charged as of yet. No, no. So not yet. It's no. still an open question whether he will be charged. I, I, I think I heard that there's a grand jury. Oh, no. No. Oh. That's what I heard. Oh, I I agree 100% with Sitch. I think like to the letter of the law, he's probably guilty of unintentional homicide. But Manslaughter, yeah. in, in the political context, I just, I don't, you can't charge him. You just well, I can't political. charge him. I'd say in the societal, cultural context. Well, I, well, I mean, I, you, you ha we have to be able to defend I guess ourselves. I right, yeah. We have exactly. to be able to defend ourselves. It's necessary for our, our society to be able to defend ourselves yeah. and our property. It really is. Would it be the security context and the current security context? Um, Maybe, I don't know. know. Regarding the grand jury, there's a New York Post article that says a grand jury could be called, it didn't say will, could oh, be okay. called by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office as early as next week to determine whether to indict, Pe to indict Penny, a law enforcement source told the Post. So, Can you explain what a grand jury is, Sitch? The people that say is there enough evidence to go it's forward? It's supposed to be like the... an impartial set of people that uh, look at the evidence, right? Well, they're, they're supposed to. I, I believe it was the people that make the determination. They are just you know people like a jury that make the determination whether the state has enough to even you know prosecute. Yeah, in the prosecute. First place. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to Which be obviously an the standard to take is, politics out of it, right? Right. And they always say you can indict a ham sandwich because the the bar is significantly less than whatever the crime is, which makes sense too. Hey guys, Sean's in the chat and he says that he's not guilty by the letter of the law. Maybe not. I don't know. So I, I would be interested to hear Sean's take on that, but anyhow. Well, you can argue anything in a court of law, obviously. I mean, there are certain, there are certain, you know, points of disengagement with self-defense. So I don't, you know, it's whether or not he Any, met those. If, as soon as you can safely disengage, essentially what what it boils down to is as soon as the threat stops being a threat, mm -hmm. then you can no longer use force. And in a lot of a lot of times when self defense uh, cases are are argued, a lot of times or not maybe not a lot of times, but there are times where the the right to defend yourself comes and goes throughout the interaction. Well, the, right. there was a there was a stop where the train literally stopped and the doors opened and many people left. That's the point of contention that attorneys will argue. They will say, listen, you could have evacuated the train 
with everyone else. So you didn't need yeah. to continue subduing him at that point. So that's the only... If they're in a car and there's no stops or anything like that, they're in a contained space, I think, yes, you have an argument, but... Mm -hmm. Oh, the car stopped? Like, they stopped? There was a stop, yeah. The car stopped oh. and the doors opened. Uh, several people left. He stayed and continued to subdue the people until the police arrived. So, well, it's also, it's to... hard because, I mean, the video that I saw, it's literally just like the last minute or two of the interaction. Yeah. We don't have a, like, if you had a full video to see exactly how it all went down, I think you'd have, we'd have a, a better sense of seeing exactly what was going on. In terms the guy of started recording. Look, the guy started recording after the stop. So obviously I think yeah, somebody obviously, was thinking, right at the end. yeah. Ahead. Well, somebody was thinking, well, maybe we shouldn't have done, maybe we should have dragged him off the train or something, right? Like, well, it might I'm not have been possible. I mean, because again, we don't know what it, like, if, if they're on the no, ground, I totally agree. Like I that, totally it, agree. You know, you can't just yeah. drag someone off a train that doesn't want to necessarily be dragged off a train. All so. I know is from a self defense, I mean, that's a, that's a, a conundrum, isn't it? That sure. stop, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope, I hope uh, Sean's correct because I don't think this guy should. Be charged. I don't think he's guilty. So I hope that legally he has protection. But John thinks he's going to get charged. <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, I think he will politically because for political reasons. But sure. But who knows? Mithram six for five hundred Kazarkazarks. Thank you. Says the real question we should be asking is how exactly was the guy threatening? Without knowing that, it's it's in my opinion impossible to say the chokehold was justified. Obviously, people who subdued him. Obviously, the people who subdued him will say that was necessary. Yeah. No. Obviously, that is the that is the key factor here. Is that what was exactly the threat, what was going on, you know, if he pulls off his jacket and throws it down the ground and he like gets up in someone's face and he says like, you know, uh, you know, give me money or give me food, give me water. I don't care if I go to prison. Right. You know, that's very threatening. If he just throws his jacket down and says it to nobody, he's just kind of standing there staring out at nothing. And he says it, you know, that obviously would hurt the self-defense claim. Um, right. So yeah, that is important. Uh, Lucifer Doman for 22 Canadian says, Phil is the best guest for his breakdown. He is the world's worst communist, but he keeps showing he's a good man sending love from Vancouver Island. Worst communist and good man are, are synonyms, aren't they? Yeah. True. Totally. Thank you. I appreciate it. I am, Gotta I am be a, a bad terrible communist, communist to be a good man. That's right. Uh, J Mac, our surrogate father for $50. Thank you so much. J Mac says, I really hope you guys pull up ContraPoint's Stockholm Syndrome tweet regarding the Neely incident. I almost feel sorry for these lefties running defense for inner city living. I went to college in San Francisco and you ignore a lot but there are limits i didn't see contrapoint's tweet so i'll go look for it while we're watching this uh what's your now, first obviously thought for 22... contrapoints has stockholm syndrome right yeah, right <laughs> uh what's your first thoughts for 22 canadians says guys we all know lance has trouble counting to 10 on his hand but watching this is next level sad i just hope he went home and opened a big can of jerky to cheer him up what kind of jerky are we having tonight the uh, old old trapper there you go. Yeah. I still have another uh, Bob's alligator jerky from Sammy G that I was going to eat. Nice. Spring, so. Nice. You got some gator For, jerky. Yeah. It tastes just like meat. It doesn't really have a specific alligator flavor. So. You've had regular gator, haven't you, Sitch? Being in Florida, you have to, right? Uh, I've I've had alligator jerky in the past. I've never had non-jerkied alligator. So uh, I don't know what alligator meat tastes like in a more pure form. I'm not really all that excited to try. I am curious. I'm, I mean, I've had frog. Frog is actually pretty tasty. Frog legs. To my Frog's shop. not bad, yeah. So, you want uh, the one hundred percent alligator jerky, right? That's just straight alligator. Yeah, it's one hundred percent. No filler. Yeah. No filler. Just gator. Got to get that gator taste. I'm assuming a lot of it's from the tail. I have no clue. Cyborg uh, for twenty dollars says, "Is someone familiar with choking people?" <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this guy is fucked. Oh, oh no. Choking someone and blocking their air blood for 15 minutes is unreasonable, and you should know that would kill someone if he has any formal training, which he, you know we think he did because he was a Marine. Well, it depends. As I said, if we had a full video, I'm assuming, I'm assuming here, I could be wrong. I'm assuming he did not hold the guy in the choke position for the entire 15 minutes. I'm assuming that he put the guy in a headlock. Other people were trying to subdue him, and you know the choke was on and off. I'm assuming that was the case, but I don't know. So, I mean, if someone just goes up and starts like full on choking someone for 15 minutes straight, well, first of all, they would die. But I mean, it wouldn't take you 15 minutes to choke someone to death, right? So, yeah, you assume he was letting him breathe and just subduing right. him. So, but I believe uh, I know Cyborg and uh, uh, Christian and some other people who are like the jujitsu people who've been trying to get me into jujitsu. 
assuming that's what you mean when you say you're familiar with choking people and that you're not like a, a serial choker. Uh, Anonymous Cow for $20 says, it's, it's reprehensible when you think about the left's response to tragedies like this are to use it as a vehicle for their pet projects. Every solution I see is that we need uh, medical care for all. How does that help stopping people from being victimized? Well, they try to make the argument that like, oh, you know, if, if we had better health care, this guy would be in a, a mental institution somewhere, which I don't know if that's the that's case. That's bullshit. That's totally yeah, I, bullshit. Unless, is... unless the state had the ability to hold people against their will, that's not the case because a lot of these homeless people – like they have the opportunity to go to a homeless shelter and they yeah. may choose not to. And, and so I think a lot of people services. on the left don't understand that. Element. The vast majority of our mental health or our, I'm sorry, our homelessness issue is because policies allow people to choose homelessness. Right. There are a right. lot of people that don't want to do the things that you must do to live in a home. If you are on drugs, and you do not want to quit the drugs, you're not going to be able to get off the streets. Yeah. Period. Right. If you yeah. if you've gotten to the point where you're on the streets because of drugs and you don't quit the drugs, you're not getting off the streets. If you choose not to quit the drugs, you're choosing to stay homeless. Like right. if you choose and then on top of it, there's a lot of people that are like, I'm really not an ambitious person and I'm I just have a more free life like this. And I think that the left is really it's almost like they're children they don't they don't think anyone thinks differently to them i saw i i tweeted this the other day and i i was asking or, and it asked about people's thoughts there was a guy that was a homeless guy just sitting on the side of the street and some dude some you know just drove up and started filming him and the guy's just sitting there flipping him off and he's like what are you why are you flipping me off he's like why are you taking a picture of me and he's like well because you're here and blah blah blah. he's like yeah i want to be get out of here and then he starts fighting with the guy and it's like the dude actually just told you that he wants to be homeless and he does not sound like he's doped up, like he's mentally ill or whatever. He just sounds like a guy saying, right. leave me around, leave me alone, beat it, stop filming me. I'm living my life the way that I want to get out of here. And there's a significant portion of the homeless that fall into those two categories, people that don't want to do the things that they need to change their situation and then people that specifically choose to be homeless because they don't want to live in the in the society that we live in yeah right well i i, miss, I think a lot of people don't they don't really understand that they see homeless people they see crazy people in the streets they assume oh this must be because there's nowhere for these people to go and i mean the only the only reason that i know otherwise is because many years ago i remember there was like a homeless person that we'd always see and my father tried to help this guy once. And it was like, you know, he could get this guy a decent amount of benefits from the state, you know, and like money and, and mm -hmm. you know, welfare and things of that nature. But it was just, it was such a, it was so difficult because he didn't want to, he didn't want to stay at a homeless shelter. He didn't want to stay anywhere. So it's like, how does he actually get these benefits? You know, he, he wanted to kind of do what he was going to do. And it was kind of making it impossible. He, the guy with himself was putting himself in an impossible situation, essentially, uh, to yeah. be helped. And eventually my father gave up. And I feel like, you know, people don't, they just don't understand that. Yeah, so it's and I really issue. think that's a lot because people don't understand that other people think differently to them. It's like they didn't, it's like they haven't matured past. Right, because they're the like, point. well, I wouldn't want to be on the street, right? Exactly. And it's like, you know, it, it takes time for children to mature to the point where they realize that other people have different motivations. And it's like these people have like a stunted maturity. Right. Uh, Calsum, Cal, Callus Moore and Rex for $25. Thank you. It says, finally catching Phil live on something. Phil, you need to do some sort of collab with Phil and Selmo since you're both Phil and both rightists. I am a, f I'm a fan of Pantera. I'm not so sure that I want to collaborate with Phil and Selmo at this point. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. This is, Phil and Selmo did a big old Zeeg one time, and I'm like, I don't want to be attached We to talked that. about that last time you were on the show. Oh, that's <laughs> right. I forgot about that. Yeah. No, I like Pantera, and maybe the story came out that is true, but you know what? I don't uh, need to do... Uh, you don't need that in your life, huh? Yeah. That's right. You know, I don't need that. I don't need that kind of attention. Right. Yeah. Claim and proportionality. Okay. If this guy was threatening people, right, and then someone said, I'm going to stop you before you hurt someone, mm -hmm. that is legal self-defense acting in the defense of others. That makes those people who are stopping the guy threatening people, the victims of a violent individual who is trying to cause harm. Yeah, I, I just find it fascinating that there's, there's, a, there's an, an effort to defend the aggressor in this circumstance.
right? Oh, so you're suggesting that the guys, even if the guys that were choking out weren't the ones being threatened, that they're still considered a victim because they stepped in to defend other people? Well, I'm, I'm saying outright that if you're on a train and there's a guy, you're on a train, you can't get off that train. You are you are trapped, yeah, right? I, I, I used and to a live guy in this get, area, by the way. Guy, I used to live in Flatbush. I used, so, to, I used to take these trains every single day. I have seen this. I have seen this and worse. I have seen people in the middle of episodes where I was like, this person could potentially either harm themselves or harm me. It never crossed my mind that I need to choke them out to the point of potential death in order to protect everyone else on the train. That never even entered my mind. So that's why I'm asking. But see, this is, he frames it so dishonestly because he never, he says, I never crossed my mind that I should kill somebody. It's like, well, that wasn't the intention. Right. Again, the intention was just to subdue the person. Look, I don't know what Lance is talking about because I have, like, I've never had to be in that kind of physical confrontation situation at all either. But I tell you what, there have been more than a couple times where I'm kind of like, you know, my hands on my gun because something weird's going down. Right. You know, like, uh, you know, and I've never had to do anything, but it's like, yo, you know, and you're just paying attention and looking close and ready right. for, you know, something that might happen. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, I don't think anyone here thinks Lance would ever, you know, no, step course. up at any point and do <laughs> something about anything. So, you know, he's kind of got victim. Not even to protect face, but... himself. Yeah. Yeah. Feet don't kill you... me now. <laughs> do you have specific footage of him threatening the very people who subdued and ended up killing him? But why does that? Wait, why did he finger quote subdued? Like, what? <laughs> What what do you what is the finger quote there? They literally I, subdued I, him. It's not that's not a contentious thing, is it? They subdued him. It is for well, Lance. I think I think that he's saying that they or he was implying that it's a it's an attack, not trying to subdue. I see, I see. It's oh they okay. they're attacking them. So it's it's to delegitimize the idea of subduing someone that's aggressive, because right. he wants people to conceive of it as an aggressive attack against a right. man that was having an episode that should have been dealt with. Uh, treated well, with empathy mm -hmm. and, and, and Lance he keeps trying to bring it back to this where they was was he threatening the people that subdued him and I feel like in a, in a lot of this conversation uh, a lot more with Lance but I think it's true with Tim as well there's a lot of this like afraid of kind of stepping in traps so it's it's like this oh you know I can't directly address whatever the the framing that the other person is saying in the conversation is because you just got to tell Lance straight up, like, and maybe he's about to, I don't remember. You just got to tell Lance straight up, like, it does not matter if he was directly threatening these people or other people. That doesn't matter. I don't know why you keep bringing this up. Yeah, like, who he was threatening do doesn't matter. Lance, it's yeah. that there was threatening. There was menace going on. He, right. was, threat he was threatening in general. And so... You can defend someone else who's being, yes. you know, threatened or assaulted. Or assaulted. Absolutely. So, Even in New York. <laughs> Even in New York. Matter. I don't think there is footage. But like, there is what, no footage what, what is it? All right. Well, then that's all I want to know. Well, what does right. it have to do with what I said? I don't. I, that's why I understand your 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 thought. Because process. I would think that the proportionality being that you ended up killing them, even if that was not your intent, I understand that you don't think he intended to do that. Fine, but even if that was it, were they like threats to him in the immediate like present? Were they, were they on the verge of committing an act of violence towards him? That why did he bring up proportionality and then go on to say, well, it's not about proportionality where they threats to him. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it sounds like he's trying to say you would be more justified in using deadly force if you were threatened versus someone else, which is not true. That's irrelevant. No. So <laughs> Required violence that ended up in death. But it's not a requirement someone threatens you for you to act in defense of others. Right. So your, your question is kind of in, a, in, a, in, a, in an unnecessary direction. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll elaborate. If you're on a train and you're trapped... Hold up. Where's that face? Subdued, who subdued him. I'm going to harm you. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm going to hurt you. That's immaterial to a self-defense claim and proportionality. Okay. If this guy was threatening people, right? And then someone said, I'm going to stop you before you hurt someone. Mm -hmm. That is legal self-defense acting in the defense of others. That makes those people... Who are stopping the guy threatening people, the victims of a violent individual who is trying to cause harm. See, I, I just find it fascinating that there's there's a there's an, an effort to defend the aggressor in this circumstance, right? Oh, so you're suggesting that the guys, even if the I guys that were choking out weren't the ones being threatened, that they're still considered a victim because they stepped in to defend other people. Well, I'm I'm saying outright that if you're on a train 
and there's a guy, you're on a train, you can't get off that train. You are, you are trapped, yeah, right? I, I, I used and to live in this area, by the way. Guy, I used to live in Flatbush. I used, so, to, I used to take these trains every single day. I have seen this. I have seen this and worse. I have seen people in the middle of episodes where I was like, this person could potentially either harm themselves or harm me. It never crossed my mind that I need to choke them out to the point of potential death in order to protect everyone else on the train. That never even entered my mind. So that's why I'm asking you, do you have specific footage of him threatening the very people who subdued and ended up killing him? But why does that matter? I don't think there is footage. But like, what, 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 what is okay. it? What all right, is, well, then that's all I want to know. But what does it right. have to do with what I said? I don't, that's why I understand your, your, your thought Because process. I would think that the proportionality being that you ended up killing them, even if that was not your intent, I understand that you don't think he intended to do that, fine. But even if that was it, were they, like, threats to him in the immediate, like, present? Were, yeah, they, were they on the verge of committing an act of violence towards him that required proportional violence that ended up in death? But it's not a requirement someone threatens you for you to act in defense of others. Right there. Like, this is this right. like, oh, uh, <laughs> like he's sitting there. So your, your question is kind of in a... In a in yeah, a, I, wish, in a, I wish Tim would have let him sit do. on that and just like just be silent until he responds. Yeah, so. totally. But yeah, sorry for going back so far. I'm new to the okay. controlling, can, but yeah, um, like totally. If you, if you, instead of trying to scrub on the line, if you use the arrow keys, it'll go back like 10 seconds. Five ah. seconds, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Even on a Mac? Uh, no, Macs don't work on anything. If you, if you so. press the arrow key on the Mac, I think your computer will explode. So. <laughs> okay. How about you guys control that then? Yeah, okay. Okay. In unnecessary direction. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll elaborate. If you're on a train and mm -hmm. you're trapped in a box and someone is threatening violence, yep. then yeah, you're a victim. Because so I've been a victim multiple times. Then yeah, I was I, I was yeah, in these yes, subways. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's the craziest see, see, thing to me. But I, I, but I, 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 I don't feel like a victim. I, I've I've never been hurt. I, I never was hurt by people who were going through those kind of Other episodes. Other people have been. Listen here, Epictetus. Knock it off. <laughs> I, I'm not saying they haven't. I'm not, I'm not saying this is a good thing. 25 people were pushed in front of trains. Okay, so these 25 people were pushed in front of trains. How is that directly related? Were these people also going through episodes? Were they also people who were homeless? Were, did they have mental illness? I mean, were, 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 like, I, I would say anybody shoving here? someone in front of a train at random is like going through an episode. You know what I mean? The correlation is that crime and murder on the subway has been increasing or has at least been apparent in the press, but I don't see you caring about it at all until it's the aggressor who gets who gets killed. No one, I think, on the left is going to defend this stat that you're playing. Then why put a guy in prison for finally saying? He's literally been defending it this whole time. What the fuck is he talking about? Well, he's not defending people pushing people in front of trains, right? Well, no, he's defending this. Um, he's defending this homeless guy who was accosting people on the train. Right, but you can't make so it, so the Tim Brick. So okay, we have to remember what the conversation is. So. Lance said, I've been in situations like this and I've never been assaulted physically, right? Never been, right. or I've never, you know, been touched physically, right? And so the counter to that is, well, it doesn't matter if you've never experienced that. Other people have experienced that, right? Correct. And here's the evidence of it. So it is a potential threat. You of can't course. pretend, Lance, that it's not a also, potential threat because it's never happened to you. Doesn't doesn't lived experience matter? Yeah, there you go. Um, but but then Lance kind of changes the subject a little bit to say, well, what, well, this guy wasn't pushing people in front of trains. Well, it's like, well, that's true, but that wasn't why that Tim brought that up. Tim brought this up to say, just because some, you haven't experienced something doesn't mean it doesn't happen. And thus it should be a potential threat that people hold in, in their mind. Right. Yeah, so. of course. Stop killing people this is like tim if i approached you today and i was like hey do you know what goes on in rikers island have any of you done a show on what happens in rikers island how they hold people in rikers island do you we, know what we, we he's aware that the subway is not rikers island right i mean yeah this is a terrible <laughs> example that like, what do you i mean let it go but it's still dumb not you, rikers island specifically but we talk about prison reform all the time okay and how okay do you know about bail reform and the fact that people die in rikers island waiting waiting to have their day in court because they yes. can't afford it and we do talked you, about it and, and you've but done entire but, shows on that and you talked about how people literally die in prison yeah, while talked, they're waiting for that we, shit we talked That's about terrible yeah, okay. they don't just die no, they're they just killed die. they just die of exposure <laughs> Like just, they're killed by other people. The problem right. that he's talking about is like a problem with the with the actual prison, like guards and and the prison security. Not, you know, like the people don't just die. What? Right. But this is this is irrelevant because yeah, the point, exactly irrelevant. The point of bringing up like, well, wait a minute, why does no one care about you know when uh, people on subways are attacked, 
right? That's directly correlates to this situation where someone is trying to presumably prevent someone on a subway from being attacked, right? That's it's a direct comparison. You're saying, well, why do you only care when the person who's the potential attacker is stopped? Why do you not care about other people who are harmed or even killed on the subway at all? Why is there no outrage about any of this stuff? So to compare this to like a completely different subject matter is a complete whataboutism, irrelevant, yeah. horrible analogy. Dodge. Okay, so we talked about one guy who got wrongly arrested, lost his job, was kicked out of his apartment, went to Rikers for three months only to be released and then told, sorry, there's nothing you can do about it. The city owes him nothing because they considered the prosecution not to be malicious. But this is the problem, man. Like, we, 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 we talk about stuff like this all the time. But 20, the example this, you just gave me was not me talking about the systemic problem of people who are poor being in Rikers Island before they... Was before they get to trial that's, they die before they get they're not released you just gave me a story of someone who was released prior I'm giving to you an that. example of a specific show we've actually talked about someone wrongly held and had their life destroyed okay now of course we can we can we can go on further and say yes people have died yes they the have. system is corrupt and my point is this when we talk about stuff like this like wow in october we talked about 25 people being pushed in front of pushed in front of train cars you guys just shit all over us and ignore these problems then finally when when <laughs> no three guys ignoring this i told you no one's on the other side of this no no one is, no no, no, no one is pro push where, people where, onto trains. Where's your protest? Where's your protest? Where's my protest? Yeah, where's your protest? Where, where's your Rikers protest? We had it on the show, but you, you don't you watch did a the protest? show. You did an actual protest. We, you, we, you guys stood up and, do, and then walked we, to the streets or what? We don't go on the streets ever, but right? I'm, you not, do. I'm not blaming you for not talking about that, Tim, because this is like, this is the problem of like, you are judging someone based on absence, based on your absence of caring about something. Why haven't you talked? Okay, so the whole defense of like, well, no one's defending people but getting pushed in front of trains is not the issue. The issue is, it's, this is a selection bias. Why is it that there's a selection bias by some people, a lot of people on the left and the mainstream media, where they do not cover stories of people being attacked on the subway, people being pushed in front of trains, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there's an inordinate amount of focus and coverage on this one specific incident when a guy who potentially could got, you know, could have become very violent uh, is stopped by a person. Now, I think it's primarily because they want to push a race narrative. That's the real reason that this is being talked about. You know, if it was a white guy and a black guy was doing him, I don't think the national media would give a shit about this story at all. So, of course not. Talk about this, Lance. The fact that you haven't talked about this means that you don't care that's, about that. That's not, that's not, not true. The, the question is, though, does Lance know that they're pushing a, a race narrative? Do you think he's actually conscious of that? Um, I mean, I think he pushes the race narrative. So. Yeah, but <laughs> does he... So is it just invisible to him? Is it just like, you know, he's swimming in the water and doesn't know what water is? The yeah, whole it's, race it's narrative to... thing seems he believes that. Right. No, no, no. You you are you're correct, probably, in terms of mm -hmm. it's invisible in terms of like when I talk to someone on the the left who will say, like, oh, all the Republicans do nowadays, they always just cry victim, cry victim, cry victim. You know, mm -hmm. and they, they try to, you know, use the victim status. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Like, that's been the go-to move for the left for, you know, 10 yeah, years, forever. 20 years, Still, forever, yeah. right? And it's and it's super big right now. And then they they look at me strangely and they say, but well... But it's true. <laughs> they, say, they say, Sitch, you know, what are you talking about? Where do they do that? And I'm like, what do you mean? The entire narrative right now is to say that people on the right or, you know, people that don't follow whatever the, the left dogma is are racist. That's the victim narrative. You know, right. they're like, we're the victims of of systemic racism and systemic oppression. And then they kind of like, oh, like, like you can see there's that the, like the light bulb goes <laughs> off in their head. And they're like, oh, and it's exactly what you're saying. They're in the water and they didn't they didn't notice it. Right. But they also say, well, that's real, though. That's, that's the sec that's the follow up. They say, yeah, real. that's real. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. We are the victims of their racism. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but no, but it, it's, it's 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 mostly white liberals saying that or white shit lib saying that so they're not the victims they're yeah they say they quote they say they are the victims right yeah. right mm -hmm. vicariously the victim yes <laughs> <laughs> right true though that's not what I that's said. the implication of what no, you're saying no, no, no. right now my implication is instead of helping us deal with this when we talk about it you make up garbage about us and then post nonsense on the internet what have i brought up garbage about people pushing people to trains this is the most no, no, random I'm not example talking about you saying i'm saying he literally said, you make up garbage about us. And then Lance goes, when have I made up garbage about trains? Right. <laughs> like, no, you're talking, he's talking about how people, or Tim is talking about how the left treats Tim, which is true. Like, 
because Tim's the biggest podcast on the, oh, you know, in that sure. hour and stuff, you know, it's like they're, they're ruthless or, you know, relentless. And it's like, uh, you know, I catch crap just for, just for being on the, on the show. And, and so the, the idea that they don't is ridiculous. And so Lance just trying to deflect and be like, what are you talking about? Trains. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, I'm sure Lance has got a dozen tweets targeting Tim Pool. A thousand yeah, exactly. tweets targeting Tim Pool. What, what are we talking? What are we talking about here? Yeah. Good faith, Gary's on like ten there. Saying you you don't talk about it, right? I'm not criticizing you for not talking about it. I'm saying finally. When there are people who are like, we've had 25 people pushed in front of trains. We've had two of them killed. I'm not going to let this person hurt somebody. It's y'all saying that person should go to prison. So like, how is that solving the problem? You guys are making it worse. Your our, protests, your support for the criminals make this worse. So our solution to this, if you're asking, when you're saying you, you mean the left, right? Our solution to a lot of this you're, is that you're, we... You're speaking in support of the criminal, so I'm saying you. Okay, so I am saying that the solution to a lot of this would be investing very heavily in things like healthcare. Like getting and making Such sure that people bullshit. have access to it and not cutting the restrictions, like allowing people to have access to healthcare, not as a requirement based on how much money they have, based on their income. I... I... I so hate this argument because it, <laughs> they they do have access to that health care. They would yeah. just have to commit themselves. And no homeless person is going to say, yes, commit me to the mental institution. I need therapy. They don't do that. They'd rather be on the streets. Sure. This is just such a dog shit answer. But allowing them to get the care they need, that would have gone a long way to preventing the problem. Listen, Adam, I figured out the solution. It's not going to I figured out the answer. Anything. Vote. Everyone's got to vote for me to be mayor of your large city with homeless and your problems. Okay, okay. here's the solution. So easy. Okay, you tell you tell the people that are like the people with the, the massive mental problems and you know the massive drug problems. You say, listen, we're gonna build a new homeless you know institution, encampment, <laughs> encampment institution, right? Uh, there's a rule though. Oh, and we'll feed you. You know, we'll provide all the basic necessities at this place, mm -hmm. right? Free drugs. The rule is you have to stay here. Okay? okay. You can't leave. You can't wander the streets. As okay. long as you stay here, we'll give you all the drugs you want. Okay. You can have all the drugs you want here. Right? Yeah, no. There you go. I, that might work. Problem solved. That if might you work. offer if you offer people jail with drugs, they will take jail with drugs. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm, yeah. That's that's yeah. So just I mean you don't want to like, call it jail, right? You don't want to call it jail. I, they don't they will not care. Jail, they don't <laughs> call it you don't call it jail for everyone else. They don't give a crap. If you say jail but free heroin, they're like, let's go. Yeah, yeah. that's what that's what that's my solution. 100%. That would get that would get these people off the streets, right? And yeah. and it would also probably kill them. So well, listen. <laughs> You have I a mean, high turnover rate, okay? It'll help, <laughs> it'll help with the taxpayers, you know, you know, they want to pay like otherwise you have to keep expanding the facility, right? But this yeah, way, and as you long, know. And as long as they is like you can leave whenever you want, but you have to go through a detox and, and clean up before you can leave. So to get yes, out, you have right. you can leave whenever you want. You yes. can leave anytime. And you'll be you'll be you'll be monitored so that way, you know. I don't know if you don't have really to do monitor. drugs. You can stay there and not do drugs, right? It's just yeah, awesome. yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And and if you want to leave, you can leave and, and clean up and and get a job and and of course, your life. I of mean course. the drugs and, are kind of selling me. The free drugs, I think, is well. And if, I mean, and this isn't. I'm not saying I'm everyone here. I'm not saying everyone who's homeless or has mental problems should go here. I'm saying for the for the select population that refuses to go to other facilities to get help. This should be like it's well, an option. If yeah, it's an <laughs> listen. Option. If Canada is going to be like, here's your option to kill yourself. Yeah, <laughs> here's right? my option. Okay. Totally, absolutely, great point. Absolutely. Okay, here's Perfect. my option. <laughs> Get wasted. All right. Get wasted. Roll the dice. See how long you can last. All right. Turn it into a game show, man. This would be yes. great. Yes. There you go. The go lottery the makes money for the state. Why can't this be a reality television oh show? Oh my God, you're right. We'll film it. It'll be a... Dude, no, that's it's just two, too, two that's hours too in, and it's and two hours into the stream, and we have solved that problem. We wow. solved the problem of, of crazy homeless people on the streets. Yeah. Free jail with it. drugs. It's yes. all about drugs. It really is. Drugs are really the answer for 90% of life's problems, I find. <laughs> okay, let's not go overboard. Okay.
problem like this and future problems that are going to happen. I have mm -hmm. no idea what's going on with the 25 people who've been pushed in front of uh, trains. If it happens to be because people have mental illness, this is a tangible solution that we could work towards. This is something that I'm, are you against that idea about investing heavily into mental health care? Someone said in the chat said fish tank for society, and it would be even better if we had, you know, CCTV that broadcast the craziness oh inside the drug jail. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see the show Super Jail? That old cartoon. I love that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's Super amazing. Show. I loved it. It was awesome. And that's kind of what I imagine it being. What's like the name crazy. of the guard? I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, Gladys? No, that was... <laughs> It was tons of public health care. Well, then yep. there, there you go. So that, here, that's here, a I'll, much better line. So here's right? my issue. My issue is when this story came out in October, we talked about it and we said, why is this happening? What are the solutions? What are the problems? When this story comes out now, mm -hmm. you completely ignorant of what's been going on in New York side with the criminal. And so people like me are flabbergasted that we've been focused on the, 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 the issue of crime, the issue of mental health. The entire time, going back several years, because and, one, and this is why I left New York, because of because two cops got murdered outside of my apartment, and then what do we hear? Protesters in the street defending the criminals. You keep saying criminal. The, I have a problem with criminalizing people who are homeless or people who are poor or people who are mentally ill. And then no, no, suddenly, no, no, no. I'm, and, not and I'm not saying he's a criminal for being poor. I'm saying he's a criminal because he threatened people with with harm, like he's, incitement to violence is a crime, just like AOC says, right? I really want to see the start of this video footage. I want, I want to see the moment where he was threatening the very people who tried to take yep. him. See, see, Lance just cannot it. believe. Lance cannot believe that this guy did something wrong. Right. right. Yeah. Well, and he keeps no. circling back to the, I want to see where he, th where he threatened the people that took him down. That's irrelevant. He keeps going back to that very dishonestly. Yeah. That, or, look, either you accept that the witnesses... That well, and also, I don't remember if, if this information was known at the time of the stream, but we know now that the guy had... You know, 40 arrests uh, I know. in the past. Oh my God. We know that one of them, which is very weird, was like for kidnapping, but it's not clear because he only got like four months for it. It sounded like he like dragged a child down an alleyway or something for like briefly, but just pretty fucking bizarre that, that happened. And then obviously he had a, a, a he had a warrant out for his arrest because for he breaking punched a 67 year old lady in the face. Yeah. Broke yes. And so Right. And so the idea that this is like, oh, listen. This was just a homeless person having a bad day. I started yelling. And then someone, right. like, this is what they think. They think this was a homeless person who was just having a bad day. He was upset, you know, and he was at a breaking point because his life was so bad. And he was just venting his frustration. And then some evil white Marine came and choked him to death. Like, that's what Lance thinks happened in his yep. mind. Yeah. These people, they would never harm a fly, Sitch. They're yeah. just innocent homeless people right. looking Except when for he did. food. And, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. Except for the other 46 times when he did <laughs> and was let out right. on no right. bail. Right. The media and the police say this is what happened, or we can agree. No one has any idea, so there's no point in even talking about it. I like. I think the interesting um, maybe confluence is that you are mentioning preventative measures sure. are, are a way to go about it. What do you think about defensive measures? Like people should be armed and ready for this kind of thing, regardless <laughs> of the prevention methods. I, I mean, when it comes to defensive measures and people should be armed, I, I'm, I'm going to probably be on the exact opposite as the rest of you because you're, you're probably very pro-gun here, right? Oh, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just making, yeah. <laughs> We don't have the same problems in Canada that you do in the United States for mass shootings, for mass gun violence, for that kind of stuff. You have 30 I mean, million people, don't you? Is it 30 million? Okay, so by ratio of the population, Tim. So if you compare ratio of the population, Canadians to America, we don't have mass shootings like you do. No one else does. It's a uniquely American problem. The, the mass yeah. shooting thing is a uniquely American thing. Obesity is pretty heavy here. Well, too. well it's, it's, it, it, I don't think it's problem. fair to say uniquely American because there are mass shootings in many other. He just was talking about, oh, I'm going to come down against self-defense, but... There's also the argument that he's going to make later. He's going to say, oh, yeah, I love shooting guns. Everybody loves shooting guns. Mm -hmm. Well, he's, and he's an anti-gun right now. The same yeah, right now. Yeah, and he's yeah. going to go on to say, oh, you know, I like shooting guns. Everyone's shooting guns. And this goes, this speaks to um, a broader point about the left. The left likes to throw out the, uh, you know, under no pretext, shall arms and ammunition be taken from the uh, proletariat and or from the working mm -hmm. people, or whatever the Marx quote is that's essentially uh, pro-2A. They, they imply that it's pro-2A. But what they don't tell you is under no circumstances would any of them ever support 
self-defense, which he's, he's saying no here. Vosh argues against Kyle Rittenhouse, but then talks about how he likes shooting guns. The left does that all the time. And it's because they don't believe you have a right to defend yourself. They believe that you should be armed to overthrow the state. That's it. Now, I, as a pro 2A guy, think that you should be armed for all of the above, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be a tyrannical government, whether it be, you know, someone breaking into your house, either of them get the same treatment, in my opinion, right? That's what the Second Amendment's for. But the left doesn't believe in the individual. The left doesn't believe that you have a right to defend yourself. They just look at you as a useful tool because they don't see you as a human being. They see you as a member of a group. And the group should be armed to be able to harm the other group, that being the bourgeoisie, but they don't believe that the individual should be armed to defend the individual's life because they don't believe in individuality or mm -hmm. they don't think that the individual is worth saving. I, so, I have a slightly different take, um, which is that shoot. I I agree with like the group, what you're saying about the, the group element to it. Um, I think part of it's like, you know, you and a lot of other people on the right who are more libertarian minded, you view a person attacking you personally and the government attacking you is like it's triggering the same uh, threat detection in yourself. You're like, this is a person infringing upon my rights. This is the state infringing on my, on my rights. I think since a lot of people on the left do have this kind of non-individual group view, they only look at it like, like oh, the government is powerful, right? Yeah. Or the police are powerful. They, they, they represent some institution, and so they are a threat. Because they mm. think threats, and this is what I feel like constantly when I hear a lot of leftists talk about it, they feel like threats can only come from one direction, from the power, the quote, systemically powerful down. Sure. Like this yeah. is their argument for everything. They say like, yeah. oh, we can be racist against white people because they white people have the systemic power. So they don't view a lot like criminals and homeless people. They like, like they just cannot conceptualize them as being a, a threat because they don't have systemic power. Yeah. I think there there's probably substance to that too, or I think that that's a a mm -hmm. a, a valuable understanding. I guess right. they they do frame violence as self defense. Like I think they would frame like that trans shooter as self defense because obviously you know. Well, I don't know if most would. Well, no, I do. I do think that. the type of people that Phil is talking about do frame like yeah like the, the, the whole really point of people, yeah. talking about a trans genocide is to yeah. frame violence on any uh, towards anybody who's skeptical of transgender ideology as self defense that's yeah. the whole purpose of it right well also um i mean they they do it's not like guns are illegal in canada you can own a gun in canada so, you could own some really cool guns. A buddy of mine just got a Chris Vector that you can't even buy in the U.S. because it's considered a short barrel rifle. Yeah, so I'm not sure what, I'm not sure exactly what Lance is proposing here. Does he think that gun law should be stricter in America than in Canada or something? Like, I don't know. Got some, got some good news for you, Adam. Lance isn't sure either. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The country. Oh, there is, but it's a uniquely but, American problem that it's disproportionately happening here. Well, mass killings yes. aren't a uniquely American problem, but mass killings done with the use of firearms is much more uniquely American. I don't think anyone's going to debate that countries that have fewer firearms are going to have fewer people killing each other with firearms. It then becomes a Australia has more per capita than the United States. No, is that more, per capita? That is not true. No, no I country comes close to the United States. List of countries by no, no, no. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, that was a mistake. Sorry, El Salvador, and, and Venezuela. When, when you're yeah, so, yeah, so when you're is there if I just you... finish my thought? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so, so my basic point uh, Yeah, that was is... way, way off. Uh, the United States is not the most. It <laughs> is one well. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right? It's pretty bad. This, the United States is the top first world country. Like, <laughs> pretty you know, high on the list. So not a great stat to pull up, but okay. I love that. I, I love that Adam picked up on that too. Shames goes, can I just finish my point? And he starts and then Tim's like, Whoa! and then Tim, <laughs> cut, Tim totally cuts him off. And he's like, well, he's Tim. I got to kind of shut yeah. up. Here. You kind of got yeah. me like, and it, it happens, but you're like, whatever, it's fine. Yeah. This list is terrible. El Salvador, this, like all these first ones, this is where there's like 20 kidnaps a day. <laughs> right. Right. Well, the, but though, to be fair, like, you know, America's what, 4.4. The other ones are like 20, 70 30 like like they're significantly oh, higher. okay okay so, so. 
one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, ninth. El yes. Salvador. And, and so of all the other countries in that list, which of them are considered part of the G20? You have to compare countries that have similar economic systems, similar economic like uh, societal uh, you know, structures. The United States places number one when you compare them to any other G20 country. Yeah, no, so yeah. it's true that as far as developed nations go, the United yes. States does have a much higher rate of gun violence. I don't deny He says societal structures like the U.S. is extremely... Uh, we have a lot of different kinds of people and stuff. A lot, most smaller countries are m far more homogenous than we are. So to call it a, the same societal structure is probably wrong. Mm -hmm. Probably flat out wrong. Sure. Yeah, that's a fair point. Deny that. My argument more is guns. simply that other nations do have higher rates. Depending on the nation that you're looking at, there are still uh, a pretty decently high homicide rate in a lot of developed countries, and there are a lot of mass killings. In the United States, those mass killings are generally carried out with firearms. But according to CDC studies, firearms are used to prevent more violent crimes each year than they're used to commit. So it's a much more complex argument than simply saying the U.S. has more firearm deaths, therefore restricting firearm ownership would prevent those. Let, let, me, let me ask you, too. What, sure. Do you know what, con uh, what country has the most grenade attacks uh i only know the answer because i saw you type in it i think right. sweden right i actually didn't type that I, in i, I, okay. I, I searched I, I, for, I, I, by the way I, decently I would have no high idea. murder rate was a very clumsy i don't, don't want to i don't want to cheat so i saw you type in it but yeah i did so not i, I didn't know i, did, that I didn't type in sweden i okay. typed in most grenade attacks by country sure. and sweden is the only thing that comes up wow. <laughs> and uh i'm offended personally mm -hmm. and i think that we need to do a whole lot we need to get our numbers more widely available yeah absolutely i'm kidding disavow disavow Kidding. Come. That is random. Um, yeah, Sweden has more grenade more attacks than any damage, other country, right? but grenades are illegal there. Why are there okay. grenades? I've got a feeling. Why, why, but, why are there grenades? Because you can smuggle them over land bridges. Or, I mean, not land bridges, but smuggle them over land, then you can. It's easier to smuggle them over land from other, from like crazy parts of, of uh, yeah, but I mean, Western Europe. Can you do that here? I don't think that it's as easy to get them here. I think that they're. I don't you think can't it's... get them through Mexico or something. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think that grenade so, attacks. Really? So I think that they're. I, they really are grenade attacks in in Sweden. Um, yeah, but, but uh, if if there was a grenade attack, I think obviously there would be more grenade attacks. A lot of this is just being driven by the copycat nature of yeah i beings. think you're right i think yeah. you're completely right it would take okay. two grenade attacks in a week and we'd have you know 50 of them in a month because people get once someone does and i think that's with like a lot of mass shootings it's all just because it became the meme from columbine that of it, like, course it, it yeah. becomes an option people like can conceive of right yes so totally that, it, this used to be or the mass shooting in its modern form or modern conception started out with people at the post office it used to be called going postal. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, going, going postal. postal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is a good point. Yeah. And then the Columbine boys changed that. Let's change not get school, the grenade yeah. thing going, okay? But it's like, let's not. Okay. <laughs> let's not do that. Yeah, people are going to trace it back to me making a dumb that's joke. That's terrifying. It. That's literally, that's so terrifying. Look, it's bad enough to be shot. I don't want a fucking grenade dropped in my lap. To be honest with you, I mean, yes, if the grenade's right near you, but a grenade is less effective than rifle. If if, if a grenade was more effective oh than rifle, if a grenade was more effective than rifles, that's they'd, scarier. They'd be giving a lot more grenades to the people in the military and a lot fewer rifles. Oh, okay. Uh, and Andrew Clark sent me the form to run for city mayor in Portland. <laughs> he nice. apparently he liked my my idea so much of uh, you know free drugs for the homeless. <laughs> so. We're halfway there in Portland. Jeez. I'm halfway there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, Sweden. so oh yeah, I would love to answer this question. So, if yeah. we're going back to guns and, and the U.S. versus Canada, when I said that there's a G20, uh, if we look at all the G20 countries, the United States disproportionately by ratio of the population has way more gun deaths, way more gun violence, and a lot of that gun violence, by the way, is people killing themselves. Just so we're completely yeah. clear. Yeah. But if you look at it in the framework of Canada has a very different set of rules for firearms than the United States does. You can still have a firearm in Canada. You just have to take a two-day course and you get a license and then you get gun training and then you have the ability to buy guns. And that way, everyone has a license. They know how to use firearms properly. They're not just going to be running around the streets, pointing to them and then all that kind of shit. And but you that, can also that, control for that. But that's, can... not, that's not what's happening in the United States. If everyone in America knew how to use firearms properly, our murder rate would be way higher. Oh yeah. Because if you look at you look at all the you look at a lot of people that are that are getting into gunfights, they are not skilled with guns. Right? <laughs> if you're shooting a handgun, you're supposed to be you you should be holding it with two hands. Every gunfight you see on like World Star is a dude with one hand. You know, and it's like if people were well trained how to shoot guns in America, 
there would be more deaths because you'd have more There would be people. more intentional deaths, though, but the yes. the bystanders are the ones that are getting blown away. Like, we see this all the time in Southern California. It's like some innocent person sitting in a bullet. car that got blown away because they were trying bullet. to shoot some other guy on the sidewalk. Yeah, but that's still going to happen. Bullets don't stop just because they go into someone. They go oh, out the other side and keep of going. Of course, yeah. So so the, a lot of times the, the, the innocent bystanders are shot not because they were wide left and right, but they were shot as the bullet left the person that was the intended target and oh, then okay. goes into gotcha. someone else, what I'm saying, you know? So anyways. I gotcha. It's like people just running around randomly, like No, I'm not saying that it is. It's, but, it's, but I'm it's, saying that the, that is in my the, in my opinion, that is a better system. I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to take your guns away. Hell no. Uh I think guns are fun. Uh we all love shooting guns. I like having a second penis. I'm <laughs> Look at that. Second penis. Is that what it is? Is it the big question though is is it a lady penis? Is it or, a lady? Or a man penis? Do you, wanna, do you wanna suck the, the lady penis or the gun penis? Yeah. I was muted. I'm sorry. That's this is this is the point that I was referring to earlier where he talks about guns being fun and I want to have guns and yeah, blah blah blah. Right. But he's not pro self-defense. So essentially it's a it's a different fundamental understanding of uh right. you know what the right. second it's Amendment just is a, it's a toy. Yeah, which is exactly what you it's were like talking about. It's like a sex about. toy for him. Well, he's not <laughs> even, he's not, he's kind of not, he's being too cowardly. He's not throwing out what is his actual position here. Because he was complaining about the fact that it seemed like there are too many gun crimes and guns in the U.S. But now he's saying he doesn't want to take them away, which, okay, that's fine. But like, what exactly is it that you're advocating for here? He doesn't want to I'm take just saying. a position. Look, yeah. it's easier not to, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> of course that like at the end of the day if you look at how it works with canada this could be applied to the united states federally you, you could have a program a federal program where you have to have a two-day gun training program you tax the gun producers and the weapons you, manufacturers you, and then you get them you to pay for it so poor people could uh, afford this program right but you can't do that because gun ownership is wait is he saying he wants more poor people to have guns is that, what, is that his point i'm so confused well that's good i think you know All obviously right. This guy I mean, that got choked could, out on the subway, if he should have had a gun, right? right? He could have protected himself. I mean, you could, listen, that's fine to be a favor of that. I, I don't think Tim's going to get a lot of support from the left in America for the uh, get more guns in the hands of more poor people plan, but okay. Based? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> is, a, is a constitutional right. Or I should say, gun ownership is a human right guaranteed protected against government moment. infringement. I'm all about training in schools. I think the public schools should have gun training for kids. Like they used to. They used yeah. to, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gun clubs. We, yeah. I, I would highly advocate for more training, but you're just suggesting that you can't force it on people. The Constitution, <laughs> uh, clearly, and, and according to the writings of the Founding Fathers and to, uh, I think, Heller versus D.C., uh, gun ownership is a human right, and mm -hmm. the Constitution protects against government infringement of that right. That being said, we got the NFA, we got the, the, the updates to the NFA in the 80s, so certainly gun rights have been infringed to an, to an absurd degree. You know what? Not to mention, back in the uh, uh, days when they, when they codified the Constitution, people owned warships privately, and Halliburton, Northrop Grumman. Well, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure even in Heller, they said you, can, they said you can't take away people's rights to own guns, but that doesn't mean you can't. You can regulate it, yeah. Yeah, you can regulate them. I'm pretty sure they said that specifically in Heller. Yes, yep. they did. And the only reason they said that is because the government will never take away its power completely. But the logic that they're using to get to that point mm -hmm. necessarily requires them to say, actually, it means anything. Like they, they leave themselves room in the decision because they have to leave themselves the power to have some kind of gun laws. But if you if you go by the argument they're making, like when Scalia talks about it, he just kind of out of nowhere says, well, of course, there's the power to regulate, but he doesn't actually articulate why. Right. But that could just so, be a failure for Scalia and, and whoever else I assume was the right the right wing justices for their whatever their argument was that they couldn't they didn't spend the time or they couldn't articulate a, a logical chain of command for whatever they well, were arguing for. Well, yeah. If, and so if they can't articulate a, an actual argument as to right. why the government should have the power to regulate then the government doesn't have the power to regulate because the because regulating is infringing well so, i mean but, i don't know historically if, are, are the government you... has been able right. to regulate though and that was the the contention in heller was it was yeah. a, a historical reading of the constitution right 
Uh, I'm not. There was all sorts of gun regulations. Like they had in what they bring this up. There have been. Yes. Yeah. They bring this and, up in the case. Like historically, you know, they had entire townships where you couldn't carry firearms. You had to leave your yeah, firearms outside of the, the, the township. That's a regulation. Unconstitutional by today's standards. Yeah. Yeah. But and it also, was constitutional back then, obviously. Well, I just, it wasn't challenged. I don't know if it was deemed constitutional. Yeah, it, the the thing is, a lot of the pe a lot of people make arguments against the Second Amendment, saying that they created a right, right? They they there was this right, and that the, there were there was there was this absence of a right, and mm -hmm. the Supreme Court stepped in and created a right out of nothing. But that 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 implies that you're not free first, mm -hmm. because it, because for them to create a right. That would have to imply that you weren't free to do something beforehand. But if you're free, by by the if there is no prohibition and you live in a quote unquote free country, then it should be assumed that you're free to do it, right? You you live in a free country. There's no prohibition of, uh, on walking across the street, so you must be able to walk across the street. You live in a free country. There's no prohibition on owning ice cream cones, so you can own an ice cream cone. Why would that be different to a gun? Yeah, but are you, so are you just saying like? I understand like the natural right philosophy, but are you saying that from a from a perspective? I, are you framing this like from a perspective yeah. of that there is that we have like some sort of idealized free country where everything is free, and then you use that as your base, and then from if, using that as a base, you then start to pick away at, at certain things that are deemed if, too dangerous or unacceptable. Yeah, because if you're talking about it in in the 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 framers' conceptualization. The, the idea that you were free, according to the framers, essentially was we can do whatever we want, right? So long as you're not hurting anybody. There wasn't like, there wasn't the idea of this regulated state or this, this regulatory state that has to manage your life. Now everyone's so used to it and everyone assumes that you have to ask Right, but the whole thing with, the whole thing with, with a lot of like gun control is under the threat or perceived threat of harm to other people, right? Like if... You know, if we live in a society where people weren't harming each other with guns, you could no one would give a shit, right? It's the question of like, but oh, the, should people be able to run around with you know Tommy guns but, like they used to in the, you know, in the heyday of the nineteen tens or whatever? Yeah, probably. You know, well, people down. So there, there may be you, you're making an argument about whether or not people should be able to now in modern society. That's one thing. But if you're or you're talking about um, the actual intent and and the the constitution and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. if they're saying. Or if you're making the argument by what the con when the Constitution was written, as in the the original intent of the Constitution, which is what their the history and tradition, the history right. and tradition and the intent is what they go by. If you go by the intent, then it's supposed to be that you're free to do this, and they must pass a law to take that freedom away. Right. No, I, I understand. So, yeah, I understand that. Argument, so, so I get. So that's that's just the point that I was making. So, anyways. Yes. Well, I shouldn't say Halliburton. They're, they're, they're a construction thing. But uh, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Lockheed. Uh, th these companies are private companies that build nuclear weapons. So we, we basically where we're at right now is that private corporations with no accountability can have the most powerful weapons of mass destruction in the world. Okay. I'm, I didn't hear this part. This is a really stupid argument. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a really stupid argument. Just because a private company... First of all, actually, is this... Is, is I don't know the nuclear how weapon true argument? this is. Do do private weapons manufacturers? I'm assuming if they if they are producing nuclear weapons, they're producing them for the government with government oversight. It's not like right. They they're can't like, just oh, we're sell producing these to... and selling them on an open market. Somewhere. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I don't know all of the countries that I don't know that all of the countries that have nuclear weapons actually have the infrastructure to create nuclear weapons. So it is possible uh, or maintain they... them. Maintaining yeah. them is expensive. Yeah, but I can guarantee you that they're not buying them. So like. If, if there's a, let's just use Israel, because we all know Israel has nukes, right? Yeah. Um, just hypothetically, if Israel doesn't have the capacity to, to build nukes on their own, but they have to buy them from the United States, I can guarantee you they're not buying them directly from Lockheed Martin or whomever. They're buying them from the U.S. government. Right. So it's a highly regulated thing. I just, I don't know, this is a weird example for him to We use. just made laws that we can't sell certain high-end chips to certain countries. Like, th right. that's it's regulated. ITAR. We could, yeah. there's, there's laser, there's like, so I have like lasers for some of my guns and you can't buy the, sell those to, um, other countries. It's ITAR is the name of it. I forget what the acronym is. Yeah. But, there's all kinds of regulation about what you can buy and sell. So yeah.
especially in the realm of technology. So, mm -hmm. is, but is Tim saying that they can just sell nuclear weapons on the open open market? Or? Well, he's not saying that, but it's sort of it's just it's a weird argument because he's kind of saying like, well, you know, why is it okay for these private corporations to own the most powerful weapon in the world? But it's like, well, but you I as a U.S. citizen can't, right? But I don't think they can. I can. I'm guessing here, but I'm he's, almost certain that if you were to look into the law here, I don't think that Boeing or whoever can just make a nuclear weapon and just sit on it and say, well, this is ours now. Yeah. Right. Uh, he's he's probably going to make the nuclear weapons uh, argument as in that sh they should be covered under the second amendment and i take issue with that because of the point of the second amendment is to defend yourself and the country or defend yourself or the country from tyranny right. uh, nuclear weapons are going to destroy you there uh, especially if you're trying to use them in de defense of self like you can't use a weapon to defend yourself the only mm -hmm. nuclear weapon you can only use a nuclear weapon to destroy you and whoever's trying to attack you and everybody in a 50 mile you know whatever but um so so the idea that it's to be used for self defense i don't know that a nuclear weapon is for that i think that a nuclear weapon is actually more for political use than actual in the real world use not that i think that the threat is what makes nuclear weapons necessary yeah and, I agree. And, yeah. and i think right. that they i think that you could make the argument that they might not be included in uh in in the second amendment because of the fact that first of all you need a state infrastructure just to make them and and well up, i mean take them it, and also right. they don't they don't apply as weapons of, for defense you're not defending anything you're destroying right. it well it's it's one of these things where like um if the court ruled in the past, right, if the court ruled and said, well, our interpretation of the Second Amendment is that it allows everything, right? Obviously, the next day, the legislature would pass a law that says private citizens can't own nuclear weapons. So sure. it wouldn't really matter. It's not like it's not going to be allowed to happen regardless of how we interpret it. The only reason yeah. that there isn't a law is because it hasn't been interpreted that way yet. Um, and if it and if if we did, if we did have a society where anyone can own a nuclear weapon, I don't know why anyone, especially anyone on the right, would ever advocate for this, because all you would get from that is a world where all the rich billionaires own nuclear weapons. I mean, you really want, you know, Jeff Bezos and George Soros to have nuclear weapons? <laughs> like, right. I, know. I don't know. It just seems like a weird, you know, so many people are so concerned about like the elites and the elite control over the world. And it's like, okay, so you want these people to have nukes? I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's very I suspect mean, to me, but... I understand the argument that he's making that it technically it's a weapon. And so that means that everybody you know, right. that is covered under the second amendment, but they, they say the same thing about like, like uh biological weapons. And it's like, well, that's gotta be covered. It's like, no, yeah, just because you yeah, throw the word weapon on, it doesn't mean that it actually is a weapon that, you know, you would conceive of like a biological weapon. Isn't something that you can control. Like anthrax happens naturally, you know, not that you want to get it, but it does like, so these things aren't like, the idea that just because humans have managed to turn something into a weapon doesn't mean that like doesn't mean that everything that's got the name weapon attached to it is considered a weapon. I can't conceive of an, an a living organism as a weapon. You don't conceive of dogs as weapons. You know, dogs aren't protected by the Second Amendment, but a dog you can sick on someone. Sure, sure, you know? right. So I, I don't see how a like a, a bug or a virus could be considered. A, well, I guess uh, they would say because it says arm, you know, arms. Yeah, right? it, yeah, and that 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 is a you know. You don't tend to think of like a dog as like your armament. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a very autistic reading of the. I know, uh, yeah, I understand. <laughs> you know, but like, I just don't think that it actually, you know, I don't think that it fits. You know, sure, so. sure. Them and the government, and like, so the con, like, I just it doesn't follow we, either. We, either the people have the power. Or they don't have the power, right? We've abdicated it to corrupt organizations. And corporations are not people. Right. Let's be clear. Uh, these, this, regarding this dude that choked the guy out, I think what's going to come up is, was it, was it adequate force or was it too much? And I feel like if he had punched the guy in, directly in the face, mm -hmm. that would have been worse. Because although, it, like if they got into a fist fight, because he could have fallen backward and hit his head. At least this, he was in control of the guy's body. It's, ter it's really sad that the guy died, but... I feel like this was like a very low level amount of force to apply to someone that was threatening to but kill people or hurt people. Why? Why? Why That's did the three people for me and find it necessary? He to try was and probably stop this flailing guy. and kicking and but, but, screaming. But what, you know, who we, knows? We, so it, it's it is hard because you mentioned there's no footage prior, but something happened that resulted in three New York people who are likely not conservatives to decide this man must be subdued. Yeah, three people. Yeah. 
So, so when it comes to the idea of proportionality, I'm like, if three New Yorkers of all people were like, this guy's got to be stopped. That's kind of crazy to me because, look, I'm, 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 a, I'm a gun nut, right? You, you, my, my view is people have a right to defend themselves with a lot more force than people in New York do. But if people in New York felt they had to stop him, these people, you know, I, I doubt these guys are conservative. There's like no conservatives live in New York. It's like 20 percent Republican. And if they are Republican, they're probably moderate, right? Something must have happened. But, that, but I don't even need to sit here and say what could have or what must have. What we know, what we choose to believe based on what the police, the media and the witnesses have said is that this guy was threatening people with violence and said he was prepared to lose his life over it. Three, three men then said this man must be subdued and they subdued him. And then the guy died, which sucks. It's unfortunate. Did he get a cause of death? Was it was like a compression of the neck. Yeah. So, so you've got a massive platform here. A lot of people watch you all the time. And so what you say, obviously, and advocate for is going to affect a lot of people's lives. If this is a problem that genuinely concerns you, why isn't it something that you would frame and want to advocate for more resources for mental health access? And, and why don't you just let me tell you how to run your platform I like know, a lefty so, would run it? <laughs> so disingenuous. Hey, uh, Lance, you know, not a lot of people watch your stuff for a reason. Maybe you should let Tim run his, his channel. Yeah. Just saying. And, and bring that up on a regular basis. And I'm not saying, and I'm sure, no, okay, hold on, Tim. I'm sure you've done it before. I'm sure you've had specials we do it a before. Lot. I'm what? We do it a lot. Okay. Why isn't that the focus? Why isn't, why isn't today, hey, by the way, everybody, this horrifying tragedy happened on the New York subway. We got to talk about this. Yeah. Here's, here's our angle. Because our angle is we need to invest in mental health. We need to invest in giving access to public health care for can, Americans. First of all. Uh, well, that's a shitty thing to advocate for since it's never going to work anyway. So. Yeah, and you, you'll know he'll, he'll, he'll sit there and say, oh, you know, we're, you're, why aren't you advocating for mental health and blah, blah, blah. In this case, but. If someone and, and he says it's all about systemic problems and da 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 and then if someone or and then when someone actually goes and, and carries out a mass shooting, they're mm -hmm. like, get the guns, get the guns, get the guns. It's you know, never never talk about anything other than gun right. confiscation yeah. or gun control. Totally. You know, it's like if they everything is systemic except for gun control, which actually boils down to these are just the way that we want to operate the levers of power because they're they're using that as as just a way to attack your right to self-defense and stuff when it comes to the issue of violence in this country conservatives have been screaming about mental health for decades reagan is one of the ones that like gutted the institutions in america when I mean, uh, yeah reagan's one of the worst presidents this country has ever had no fault divorce how about that James? yeah no, no, gun uh, control yeah who I, I don't know why republicans like that guy there there I, the reason that they like him is because of the way that he stood up to communism but, but, look, but i totally agree that right, he had right. a lot of really bad policies and but, i'm not a but, stan but but conservatives have taken the stance of gun violence and mass shootings as an issue of mental health mm -hmm. and then the left takes the the opposing but do issue. they invest in that do they vote for it well, of course not. The Republican Party's garbage. When, yeah. when I look up the votes <laughs> of the Republican Party, they're not voting for amendments that are actually going to uh, like give people more access to mental health. But but well, look, but, man, but, you're but, but, but that's but that's where you have but that's where but, you have an but opportunity. You, but you don't want to yeah. come onto a show where we say the Democratic and Republican Party should be dismantled and, and obliterated, and then make an argument that one side is bad. One, I'll, I'll sit here and be like, bro, if you want to have a, 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 a make a list of every single member of Congress who should be removed from office, I will put all of them, but like four. One problem is that when people advocate for mental health. Well, uh, okay. I, I just got up and I just came back, so maybe I missed the context here. But it's not really fair. Um, you can, I mean, you can be on one side of the, of partisan issues and be against both parties. That doesn't mean that you're like an elite centrist just because you hate both political parties. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of that advocation is more drugs, that this new drug will fix your brain. But I'm of the belief that less drugs allow you to fix your, like, sometimes for, for no, very short periods of Ian, time, you might need something to help, the dark but then side. you don't want people long term. <laughs> I don't want them on psycho, but, you know, crazy pharmaceuticals that make them go, you know. Right, right, right. Well, and and, and we, we have to bring up, uh, often this medication actually increases suicidal ideation and, and aggressive yeah. thoughts and things like that. But I do want to answer your question. You said, why isn't that the subject of like the show today? Yeah, or, or the premise or the frame. Right, right. Because when we do talk about this stuff on like a normal day when news breaks of like 25 people push in front of trains sure. uh, or a woman was raped on a train in Philadelphia and we're sitting here saying like, what is going on in these cities? What are the failed policies that are resulting in this? We talk about it all the time. Today, we're talking about the fact that protesters went out in New York and physically assaulted one of our friends. There's, there's a better answer for this, which is what we said. The thing is, Lance doesn't want to hear the answer, which would be that people would have to be committed 
unless you do against my, their uh, will yeah yeah unless you do my everyone gets free drugs strategy <laughs> the other solution is people are committed against their will like this individual which, which is the correct strategy them. that is the, the everyone gets drugs is the strategy i think i think we should of course say. yeah because yeah, it's yes. voluntarism yeah exactly yep. but yes the thing like with jordan like jordan neely as again lance thinks that they're just these resources are not available and they are yeah they just don't want to use them friends Especially, and reporter i don't because... know if you saw the abortion part of the debate but he completely yeah, yeah, like in, in that yeah. in that part of the debate he's like no you you have to have ultimate freedom to do whatever you want so obviously yeah, right. he's not going to be in favor of people being committed against their will which is what you need right. and bodily what autonomy we, yeah. and what we had uh you know when uh we had mental institutions right. we're throwing people in there right and left right because they're crazy <laughs> motherfuckers get them off the streets Right. We don't want to deal with them. Because he simply filmed them, and they are demanding criminal charges of the guy who tried to stop the violent offense. See, that is anarcho-tyranny. That when you have ongoing crime... Does Tim say this anarcho-tyranny a lot, Phil? You're, you're on the show regularly. That's... Yeah, he, he talks about it fairly regularly. Yeah, I've, I've heard it somewhere else, too. I heard it before Tim had ever mentioned it. Um, but essentially, the, the you guys are familiar with the idea, right? Yeah, it's basically anarchy creates tyranny, right? Like everyone's yeah, yeah. terrified because there's no rules. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. No, I get it. I totally get it. So, when you have victimization, people being killed and a woman being raped on a train, we we talk for a year, 2 years, 3 years. When the when the riots happened in 2020, we had Michael Tracy's reporting showing all the riots across the country and the mom and pop shops that were putting up signs saying please don't hurt us. We talk about it nonstop. And then one day, someone on a train, three guys say, we must stop this man. Maybe because they were like, we've seen too many people die on, on these train tracks before. And now we've got leftist protesters saying that guy should go to prison for it. And AOC calling it a public murder. I'm like, yo, AOC, I didn't see you call out the public murder in the subway trains. And again, maybe it's ignorance. But the problem I see is this is why I refer to the left as NPCs or a cult. There is complete ignorance to the problem ongoing and then a hyperpolarization in a single moment in the wrong direction, which makes the problem worse. You know what's so wild is the other side feels the exact same that's way on, on, on the, in the other we're direction. Not not in the opposite direction. Except yeah. we're not conservatives. In the exact same... You see, okay. that's the problem. Okay, so, okay, I, so is Tim... it all right if I jump in with something, all right? Because yeah. I, I've been reluctant. He's a conservative. I, yeah. He's a moon lord. And I'm a I, I've also I've been reluctant to interject because I don't want to just dogpile. Uh, and so I, I didn't want to get in on it. Oh, no, a I'm, huge here, part of that I'm here argument, for the dog pile. I, I, I signed you're up. You're not, I'm, I promise. I'm sitting yeah, I promise in the chair, not. right? This is where Ye sat and Ye sit here. Um, <laughs> no, I'm here for the dog pile. So I think when you talk about mental health and trying to solve the problem of mental health in this country, that is a deceptively simple way of putting it, right? Every single person in this room would have a very different idea of how that problem should be solved. And I Free agree drugs. that right now Republicans aren't doing a whole lot to talk about <laughs> mental health issues. <laughs> at least with respect to whatever New York. You know, mental health issue that this specific person is dealing with. But, 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 but New, that's York, because... New York is not a Republican place. No, no, no. I, I totally agree with that, too. But I'm saying he was saying, well, I don't Republicans do more to advocate well, for mental like health treatment. My point, however, is that I think the kind of advocacy you'd see from conservatives on how to solve the problem of bad mental health in the United States would be a much different set of policy prescriptions Great than you point, would Prayer in public schools. <laughs> okay, that that's not a good point, but Seamus' point is very good. <laughs> What do you mean? Seamus is very smart, too. You don't think yes, Seamus yeah. would advocate for prayer for, public For schools? prayer public school to defeat uh, mental crazy illness. homeless people in the streets? I don't think that's to the defeat, solution he would advocate for. No, no, for. to defeat mental Seamus illness. Would. Seamus would I, advocate I don't think so. Look, yeah. the nation would, that would, prays together stays together. <laughs> you guys may not agree with the idea, but Seamus would probably advocate for it. He's very Catholic. No, we've, no, no, no. We've got to... Look, he, he, we he have to stop for, the Civil War. We need prayer. He might advocate for prayer in school. I don't think he wouldn't advocate for prayer in school as a solution to stopping crazy homeless people running around the streets. Okay. He would definitely say it couldn't hurt. As the official <laughs> representative for atheists in favor of prayer, I think prayer in public schools. No, stop it. Get out of here. It could get us on the right path again. <laughs> get out of here, you dirty atheist. Want. So, so one example like, of this, well, right? Actually, what Ian said. So, what Ian said. So. And there's a number of different directions you could take this in. My fundamental belief is that we live in a culture that encourages man to live in ways that man is not meant to live. And you just see negative health outcomes from that, both mental and physical. However, when you look at traditional... I think Dude, that's true, look, whether or not you believe in whether you believe, you believe in God. I think that he's onto something there, too. Sitch, have uh, you seen this part? Uh, no. I mean, we're going to get very close to the prayer part. 
Well, I but I, I agree with the. I mean, a lot of our mental health problems come from the fact that humans evolved to live a very different way than we're. Oh, I totally living. agree. I mean, it's, yeah, it's definitely 100%. true. Um, 100%. Now the question is, I would argue that most, of, not every way, but a lot of the ways we are living, even though they're not "quote unquote" natural, are better <laughs> than, than we were when we were living as hunter gatherer tribes. Having health care, like having hospitals, that's better. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. I, so. I don't know that that's the the way that people are referring to when they talk about the things that are better, though. No, but I, that's my problem with how people do refer to it. Because usually, yeah, like totally. when people refer to it, they like in their mind, there's a magical cutoff point somewhere in the past where, like, that was the way that was more natural. And it's like, well, no, nothing that we're doing was farming isn't really natural for humans to do any either. We had well, evolved for hundreds of thousands of years as hunter gatherers. That's where most of our biological evolution pointed us in that direction. So. Yeah, but most most people have a really weird and and corrupted uh, under understanding of the word natural. Anyways, of course, like, uranium's yeah. natural. I'm not putting yeah, yeah. It on. <laughs> chemicals are natural. It, right? Yeah. Arsenic is natural. Lead's yeah. natural, and you right. still don't want your kids to be playing with like yeah, it's true. It's true. Stuff, yeah. You know, something good, something's natural doesn't mean it's good, right? right. Exactly, and right. and you know, marketing and stuff. Tell like that, that to the right. red pill community. Yes, prayer the whole public school is natural. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably right. Yes, right. But psychological definitions of mental illness and how we used to treat it. Back in the 1950s, you had about 500,000 people in the United States in insane asylums. By the 1980s, it's about 100,000. Okay, so without even adjusting for the increase in population size, there's a significantly lower number of people who are committed. And part of that is because the requirement to get somebody committed involuntarily to a mental health facility at that time was they can't take care of themselves. Involuntarily is the key word in that sentence. Well, it's Today, interesting because... I mean, what he's saying is true, and that's a really good point, and that, that it has a lot to do with why there are a lot more crazy homeless people in the Of streets, course, yeah. You know, uh, than there was in the past. But it's weird because it's kind of like a it's kind of like a divergence from the standard, the more standard, uh, very pro-individual liberty freedom uh, right-wing position. Yeah, And it's course. because you have like this convergence of two different um, conflicting ideas of, well, I think people should have individual autonomy and freedom. However... It's conflicting with well, we also need to maintain law and order in society. And, right. You know, if people can't participate in society, then you know maybe something needs to be done about it. Well, their freedom the... affects my freedom, obviously. Exactly. Right. Exactly. One of the problems that comes up when it, or that that arises when you talk about people with these kind of, with significant problems that might need to be taken off the streets or whatever, um, once you put them into a a you know a facility and get them on a regular schedule of taking the proper medications and stuff like that then they start to feel better then they start thinking <laughs> i don't need this shit and they're like back out on the street not taking their drugs that like they're supposed to and so they start feeling weird Relapsing. and the next thing you know yeah. they're yeah they relapse and that my, my ex-girlfriend um was is a was nurse like in, that in a, dude <laughs> My ex-girlfriend was, was is, is an APRN in Connecticut. She's a nurse practitioner <laughs> that that works with these people. For God's sakes, um, uh -huh. she, she's a wonderful person too. I, I we have nothing bad to say about her. Um, but she deal, dealt with this stuff all the time. She would have people that were, they it was always someone that had mental illness and an addiction because there's so much overlap in that community. Yeah. And once you get people on on drugs for their mental illness and they start feeling better and they and you get them off their drugs for a little while, they start feeling better. And they're in if they're not in an actual home, like a place where they're under control or, or under supervision, they relapse. And, and it, it's just, you know, back to square one because they're back on drugs and whatever, you know, how mm -hmm. much of it is social circle, though, like part of it is take them out of, you know, their druggy clan. But right. Don't yeah. they just relapse back into that druggy clan, and that's the problem? There's that's a that's a huge, huge, huge part of it. That's part of the reason why like stuff like NA and AA have sponsors, and it's so important that you immerse yourself into the program and and you make friends right. with people in the program, and you have have people build a support. social social support net. Yeah. That's yeah. If you're if you're an addict, you need a lot of things to help get out of it most of the time. Look, I'm feeling uh, better. I'm going to go get my friends clean. And then the next thing you know, I'm doing drugs again. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Let me help you clean up after we go ahead and boot up this. One uh, last you know, time is always exactly. the... It's always the... Right? One uh, last time, right? For good old time's sake. <laughs>
Uh, e half for twenty dollars says Lance lives up to his name. He needs things rammed into him at a high rate of speed <laughs> by a heavy hitter for him to get it. There you go. Wow! 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 Yeah. That's a good one. Metaphorically, though. Metaphorically. Right. Yeah. Uh, Snowy for twenty Aussie bucks. Thank you. Says I think what's important is that the person choking the person was just not acting self defense. It was the duration of the whole twenty seconds is enough to knock someone out. Well. If you're I trying mean, to knock I'm assuming out, right? there was something, you know, was he trying to do a, I mean, maybe he was trying to do a blood choke or an incendiary accident, an air choke or, you know, whatever. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, I think in a lot of situations, it's easy for people to kind of Monday morning quarterback when you're not in the situation because it's not, I'm assuming what happened was it's not like he was able to just go up, grab him, and he put him in like the perfect, you know, choke that he wanted to get him to. More like he just put him in a headlock to try to restrain him. He might not have been trying to actually make him pass out and then, you know, things go awry for 15 minutes. And that's the situation, right? Well, I'm so. assuming he was resisting for 15 minutes. Otherwise, right, he, exactly. Yeah. Right, right. So, and it's kind of because I'm assuming in his mind, he thought, like, well, I'm going to hold this guy back. You know, the police will show up and then they'll deal with it. And it right. just took them forever to show up. So, so much of the force is depending upon how much resistance a person is giving, like, obviously, right? Right, yep. which obviously, if they're crazy, they're not going to just sit there and let you hold them. Absolutely, you know? yeah, absolutely not. Because the, as soon as you grab them, they're crazy and already worked up. They're thinking, "Oh God, this guy's trying to kill me." Yeah, right, exactly. They're not, in a, or they're already not in a state of mind that's normal. So, hundred percent. Uh, Derp for one hundred dollars. Thank you so much, Derp. That's very generous of you. Says tired of the abortion debate. Well, we're not there yet, but we will be. It's about how much value is placed on human life. I believe conservatives value potential more, while leftists prefer current value. Baby can't do much and can be easily replaced, but can grow to be a valuable member of society. Interesting. That's, a, that's an interesting point. Um, I think there's a little bit that could be part of it. I think there's a little bit different moral intuitions happening, but we'll talk about that when we get to the abortion part of the conversation. Uh, cameraman 502 for $20 says the government can regulate anything. It needs to meet a certain threshold, depending if it's a fundamental right or not. Guns are fundam fundamental because of the second amendment. So the threshold is strict scrutiny. There you go. Where, where yeah, but the, that, that idea only comes because like, because we have a bill of rights saying these things are things that the government can't do. Like there was an argument against the bill of rights initially saying, if you put the bill of rights into the constitution or you make a bill of rights, then there's going to be people that are going to say, look, these things are what the government can't do at all. That implicitly means all these other things the government can do, you know? And so it, it comes down to the way you perceive of you know, of freedom. If you if you assume that free means government, you know, you're free to do whatever you want and the government can only do the things that are listed in, specifically listed in the Constitution, then that's one whole way of looking at the government. If you assume that the government has the right to regulate anything at all, that's a whole entirely different way of looking at the government, at right. freedom, at, at the man's relationship to government, where government gets their power, you know? I mean, it's right. it's... It's a whole different worldview. Right. But I think you're talking about more of a philosophical base as opposed to, I, I think cameraman was talking about like a, a strict legal base. Yes. Okay. So fair. he's saying like legally they have the right to potentially, you know, regulate all these various things. So fair. Uh, good faith, Gary. Oh, look at that. It's good faith, Gary for wow. $20. Nice to <laughs> Says I'm a bit see. behind, but I heard my name. So I thought I'd say something. <laughs> I wonder how Lance would feel if he hadn't eaten breakfast yesterday morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Thank you, good faith, Gary. They have to demonstrate that they are a danger to themselves and others first before they can be committed. Now, is someone not being able to take care of themselves necessarily the perfect indicator of whether they need to be committed to one of these institutions? I have no idea. However, what I do know is once we push the goalpost all the way in the other direction and say they have to demonstrate that they are a significant danger to themselves or others, oftentimes they don't get committed until after they've already hurt somebody. So it's a much more complicated situation than saying we just have to throw more money at this system when we don't even have a, a solid definition of what good mental health is and also at which point someone should be committed. So I, th I think the, 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 the important point, going back to what I, I agree, uh, this is not a conservative show, but if you are in a cult, you wouldn't know that. You, if, you, would, you would only hear what the cult says. So, so here's, here's This is so based. I love Tim <laughs> Pool for doing this. I totally love it. <laughs> He's basically saying, Lance, you're a fucking cult. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I, in my opinion, it's 100% true, obviously. Like, of course. You know, 
know that I'm a I'm a James Lindsay kind of fanatic or whatever. Um, you're in a but, cult, uh, Phil. You're in a James I mean, Lindsay cult. <laughs> I know, right? Um, I it's it's just that the it really does fit the uh, the the way that the left behaves. That they, they the way that they look at anyone that's not on the left. Um, you, you only get that from. Uh, from yeah, the far far right ideological purity testing for everyone. That's yeah. what it and is. The, and the far right's not a cult because they're they're all openly religious. <laughs> Look, they have a signal that they give. They're like, "Do you believe in the lady penis or no?" <laughs> like that's a, that's a signal. Like if you can believe in the lady penis, then you know, like <laughs> you're in a cult. <laughs> can you imagine if like the code is like dudes just walk up to another dude and just goes. I got a vagina. <laughs> and, and it's like, that's how you know you can be like, oh, okay, we're we're in the cult or whatever. Or girls just walk up to it's another a girl. It's secret like, handshake. I have a penis. You know, it's like, hey, I'm I'm in. Right, yeah, no. <laughs> Here's what I have to respond to that. If, if an objective person, say an alien, just showed up and looked at your channel, Tim, and went through all the videos, and you were to ask them, pull them, is this person and his views, where would you place them? Most likely they would say conservative. That's, that's going to be that's my... No, they, they wouldn't. They would. They would say that he's he was centrist, pretty like pretty centrist. You know? Well, are they a progressive yeah, alien? alien? I mean, <laughs> is the alien I mean, AOC? <laughs> Wait, what country is the alien from, Lance? Yeah. That would have been a great answer or great reply to one. Actually, but, wrong. Yes. but more because the guests that come on not tend just to even the guests, but the way they're framed, the thumbnails, the the words that you put in red, and the you know whether or not you're supporting or going against one either the Democrats or the Republicans. That's but just hey, you, you tell me that you guys don't like the Democrats and you don't like the Republicans. I love Tim. I don't know if you guys heard him, but he's like, "That's for clicks." <laughs> <laughs> that was so perfect. Do you hear that? Sage? I mean, he's like, for, I mean, it's not clicks. to be like, it's not to be crabby about it, but you know, that's what it is. Oh, it's true, but. Like, Tim is not as guilty as some are with the clickbait, obviously. I mean, a lot of clickbait going on with some shit. Yeah. Do, really? I mean, <laughs> I, I... Well, okay. There was. I, he, he's doing he doesn't a lot more have live a lot of... Him, but, I mean, he doesn't have, there. like, the, you know, the SJW screaming in the thumbnail or anything. Okay. He, he does... <laughs> I think that his... I think that his headlines are sensational mm -hmm. to get attention, but I don't think that it's, like... I don't think that his stuff looks like a lot of other YouTubers like with like uh I think it looks more I think it looks more I don't I don't know. I don't want to say sophist a little more sophisticated. sophisticated. Mm. Yeah, you know like if it's if it's if it's got like so you're I mean here this is a comedy show so you've got like, you I, oh, know, yeah, the, yeah. The, the cartoons of you guys and stuff etc. Okay, like, listen, 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 listen. Hey. <laughs> But, but but you know that's the thing it's like hey this is a comedy show you can poke fun and stuff tim tries to go with a little more of no i agree i totally agree tim, with you phil you yeah, know tim right. brings in congress people and stuff. Serious. Not, um we are exactly well i'm not gonna we're not gonna be talking to you know any congress people but um let's all be real here tim is very very aware of his Absolutely. audience and the metrics and he's talked about this openly so what are the metrics in terms of like how to you know frame things and how to get views and stuff like this yeah absolutely so. yeah i mean i think that falls under look the fact, he's an enlightened like, centrist in the and he's got a big audience we should be uh -huh. able to have a big audience uh-huh what I do you mean that's, that's i think it's covered by the fact that tim's smart you know okay <laughs> I'm trying to be nice because Phil's here, Adam. Why? <laughs> trying to put. I know what you're doing. Oh, I know what you're okay, doing. okay. Let's move on. This is not a Republican I watch your show, you guys. I know, I know you know, but, you know, but Phil like, is. I don't a, want to get you look, in trouble. Phil is a regular viewer. <laughs> like, no, no. I, Phil I, is like I, a super. That's fan not what I mean. Show. I don't want to get you know? Phil in trouble. Okay, that's what. Oh, I mean. Okay. I, I I'm capable of disavowing. Okay. Okay. We're not going to get anyone in trouble. Look, I love Tim Pool. I just literally said I love that Tim Pool is calling Lance out like this. Yeah, well, I like this. I like this. This is look. This is at good. least I, Tim I, understands. Like he knows the left and right uh, dichotomy. He even in this yeah. references moral foundations theory, right? Moral intuitions. He he brings up in this. Sure, he knows mm -hmm. what's going on. Look, he the, I. I heard Tim Pool reference CGP Gray's film "Why Are You Angry?" I think it is the one that yeah. that does uh, basically Everyone. lays out the study. Yeah, that you know, angry stuff gets more shares. 
Yep. And that is like the when you listen to a Tim Pool video, man, he is just pissed off. Like <laughs> Yeah. It's hard for me to listen to. Yeah, uh, look, I'm a mellow guy. Okay, I get sure I get triggered sometimes, but Tim, I mean, he takes it to the next level. I feel like I'm being accosted, <laughs> <laughs> and I just I think this is why these videos have like three hundred thousand views every single clip because Tim just takes it to the next level. There I mean, go. poor Jank. Jank's trying to do the same thing, but nobody's buying it. <laughs> I just I feel like Tim Tim knows what's going on and I don't know is that bad? You can't have an impact unless you have an audience. And Tim, I don't think it's. I think it's pretty clear that and and, and people are gonna people can say what they want to say, but I don't think that there's any doubt that Tim Pool is a net positive mm -hmm. for the the discourse in the United States. I think so too. Um, or, or vote for them. I don't. Big, big well, no. Uh, I don't vote for party lines, lines personally. We do like. Okay, yeah. sure. Okay, sure. But there's a lot of right wingers who watch you, right? So you. That's what I mean when I say you do have a voice and you do have an audience of right wingers who are going to vote at one point or another. See, this is so. This is so meaningful here. Like all Lance cares about is the Winning politics elections. of it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Don't you understand? It's it's insane that you're actually catering to right wingers. They should have no content to watch, Tim. <laughs> what are you doing? You're a terrible person, Tim. They should be banished to the wilderness. The chat's saying, saying, of your that, audience Tim is, the chat's saying that Tim is Alex Jones, and there, I think that there is probably some truth to that. They're saying that he's no Alex Jones, but I think that there is some Alex Jones influence on Tim. I really what, do. What, what do you mean? What's that mean? I, I think the way that Tim, you know, you Tim get fired up. I think that Tim allows himself to get fired up. I think that I, I don't think that Tim's like being disingenuous, but I think that Tim allows himself to get fired up and doesn't restrain himself because people respond. And that's I think he picked that up from Jones because I feel like he d does that more now than he did five years ago. We need or we a need, few years ago. Look, we need just need to be angrier, Sitch. We really <laughs> we need to up our game. We need to get really yes. pissed yeah. off. Yeah, get yeah, real gotta, angry. Yeah, there you go. Get rid of the marijuana. Bring in the amphetamines. <laughs> <laughs> You're so stop bad. smoking. You're stop so smoking bad. weed. Start doing blow. Get oh, on no. it. Come on, boys. We do not endorse any of this. You're so bad, Phil. You don't I'm a libertarian. I mean, I'm not <laughs> opposed to this strategy, to be honest. <laughs> Most of the people who watch this, the largest faction is libertarian. Okay. The next largest is would be considered traditional liberal. Oh no, no, I think. Uh, but along party lines, who are the libertarians going to vote for? Not the libertarian party. Most likely, like, they're going to vote the for whoever. Not the come on this show and say abolish the police. One of the two, Republican or yeah, libertarian. Yeah, most likely, usually. yes, one of the two. So that's why I say, Tim, for the people who watch you who are Republican leaning, why not frame it that way for them so that they can actually start pushing more money into that? That's why I'm here. Ah. That's basically true. I think in a lot of ways. That, that's what Moon Lord does. So you here's, said, here's, here's what I think. I think you're in a cult. Right. Okay. I, I think the cult is derived from algorithms on, on social it's media. So, good. so you only surround yourself with this loud noise. We saw a really good example of this with that uh, Sisson guy. Is that his name? Harry? I don't know. Sisson? Harry Sisson. Yeah. Sisson. Those two guys went on the Tim Dillon podcast and he said, please, no, no, don't clip this. Okay. I will lose followers. I can rag on Trump all the time and like people still watch the show. Uh, Seamus and I can have an argument over me being pro-choice and him being pro-life and people still watch the show. And if I pull up all that's sides, because pe that's because people are there for Tim and not there for Seamus. Mm -hmm. Like, like if, if Tim, if Tim were to go on to like a, sh like Seamus' show and be like, I'm pro-choice, people would not be like, oh, he's still cool. Like the, the fact that, that he's pro-choice, I think that, I think that the, the, yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure that this is all that com compelling of an argument from Tim. I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. So. Do I mean, With 3,770 ratings, Tim Pool. Sorry. What? Do you think people are not going to watch a show just because the host is pro-choice or pro-life? I mean, no. I think that, some I think obviously, that but I think there are. I, what I think the argument I'm making is people on the right do tune out from people as much as people on the left tune out. Right. So if you say something, if you if you're not servicing your audience, people tune out. I think then that's true both on the left and the right. The left probably is is more uh, more likely to police uh, the audience and and be like, yo, you're you're stepping out of line. But I do think that it's a phenomenon that happens on the on the left and the right. I guess is what I'm saying.
Well, there are certain people that want to watch content that is like ideologically consistent with their beliefs. They watch, 100%. you know, Daily Wire, or Ben Shapiro, or whatever. They're just going to get arguments in favor of the things that they're in favor of. But I feel like there are certain content creators like Tim Pool, people are watching because they want to see the two political philosophies interacting with one another. And you don't see that on the Daily Wire. You really don't. You see That's, just a constant well, critique of, yeah, of I mean, leftist I mean, philosophy. Sort of. They Like just today, uh, the, the Ben Shapiro weekly show had uh, Glenn Greenwald. Well, I, so. I mean, I do, I've seen this on the Sunday show, but not on like the daily, <laughs> yeah. you know, Ben but, Shapiro but news he broadcast. Did they, did they actually talk about Glenn's complaints on the right or was it Glenn doing his whole America's bad? Oh, look, he agreed with the it. Right with me. It was, it was, they were, they were extremely amicable and it was not. Well, no, uh, you could, they could disagree without like shouting at each other. I just, well, no, yeah. I mean, I mean, they, they were, they were, they were staying on topics that they mostly agreed on. Okay. Is really mm -hmm. kind of the, the was the the it wasn't uh, a situation where they were where t where Ben was bringing up things that uh, were were you know would cause a problem. Because I do I do Glenn. feel like there is uh, an element of grifting with Glenn because Glenn, yeah. Glenn is like a fucking socialist and yet he knows where his audience is and I feel like he tactically doesn't talk about certain issues. I mean that I. I suppose you could be right. Um, I I used to be under the impression that he was a socialist, but I mean, the fact his, that his husband talks... is like in the Brazilian Socialist Party stuff. Right? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, and again, I, this could be my own biases, but mm -hmm. I feel like socialists like they don't like free speech, and he's very pro free speech. I think that the, in my opinion, socialists when they say free speech, what they mean is you know it just just like everything else. The, right. the free speech is for the people that are not in power and people that are, quote unquote, in power don't get free speech. They must be suppressed. And I don't get that from Glenn. Now, again, this may be my bias, but that's mm -hmm. kind of the vibe that I pick up. So I don't know. That's I don't I feel like that's not socialist. That's liberal. Um, No. I, well, regarding the free speech thing, I mean, Glenn could be there are socialists who are like the. The, an the anarcho socialist who would be very triggered by free speech, even though from our perspective, we would say that that's an absurd position to have. Um, but he's definitely not liberal. I mean, he he always tries to frame, this is one of my big problems with him, he always tries to frame wokeness not as a leftist problem, but as a liberal problem. And I do think that's intentional from him, that oh, he's framing he? it this way intentionally. Yes. And I've gotten to Twitter arguments with him about this. Oh wow! Yeah. I would, I would, I didn't, I was totally unaware of that, and I would be extremely interested in seeing it. Because well, actually, he said like, he would come on the show, but then he kind of ghosted. He never us, responded so. after that. So I mean, we're a much smaller platform than you know what he's generally on. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean that's my big problem. So to me, when when he always frames wokeness as a liberal problem, I'm like, okay, he's not like he's a. There's a lot of mainstream people who are either mainstream left, mainstream right, right that don't understand the ideological philosophy of wokeness, and they don't understand that it's socialist. And so they might say, oh, libtards are left or whatever, right? But he, yeah. being a socialist, or at least was one, and his husband being a socialist, should know better than to specifically point the blame of wokeness at liberals and not leftists. And I do think he does know what's going on. So, Yeah, I, didn't, but, I wasn't aware of that, and that, and that would have a significant impact on my opinion of him because right. the idea that wokeness is liberal is... Uh, absurd yeah to the totally point absurd where it makes me question his ability to contact reality good i've poisoned him i poisoned you against him i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> well it happens it's so weird when content creators are so right on certain issues and then so wrong on other issues yeah they well, should run their, their ideas by me yeah there you go everyone has their you know their specific philosophies so i'm sure people feel the same way about us in certain yeah. avenues so well, no, we have no ideological commitments. What are you talking about? That's true. Yeah. I'm so openly amazing. ideologically committed. Mm -hmm. I, I make no bones about it. Anti-communist. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we do have that kind of that is true. ideological that is commitment. True. Yeah. yeah. I, I will be unfair to communists proudly, <laughs> and I will happily do it because they must lose because if they win, millions die every is you time. Is UBI communism in your eyes, Phil? universal uh, yeah. basic income is I mean, it at this at this point yes everything well yes because anything that comes from the government has strings attached you don't get mm -hmm. anything from the government without the government saying you must do this so yes because just because of their the 
just mm. because of the the rules they're going to put on the the UBI. So it, it'll end up being communist. It'll be oh, you can get UBI, but you can't use too many. Well, why rules. why can you just why can you just turn down the UBI then? If you don't well, want the strings, just say I don't want it. Well, I mean, I you could, mm -hmm. but how many people are going to do that? What are the strings going to be? You would. Are the, the, the strings are the strings are going to start out by being so small, you know, because income tax was one percent, and it's only going to be on the top. It'll be like the strings, blah blah blah, and then it'll continue to increase and increase, just like the just like just about everything else. You know, the government starts with something small, and then it grows and grows and grows. It's a small incremental, uh, right. you know. Blah, blah. God, you could just turn Duke in the chat says, I need a cute communist girlfriend. I do not. <laughs> I promise I do not. I mean, you could change her, Phil. You, she's fixable. Yeah. I can't you say her what capitalist. I'm thinking without breaking TOS. Look. Oh, no. <laughs> I hear good sex cures communism and cute girls. That's what I've heard. Word on the street heard? is. Yeah. Yeah. Word on the street. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a centrist. Communist. But you think I'm conservative because you live in a bubble. Right. So because I'm too far left. The Overton so, window is too far away is what you're yes. saying. So like when yeah. I go hang out in Washington, D.C. Right. And I do. I go to National Harbor or I go to Baltimore, Maryland. Life. I'm in Baltimore. I don't know why places. you do that. In Washington, D.C. Uh. The people who come up to me and are like, hey, man, I'm a big fan are not conservatives. They hate Donald Trump. In fact, I was at a poker table last week and a guy said, I just hate Donald Trump. Man, I can't stand him. I wish somebody else would run, but I can't vote for Joe Biden. You, I, I think you're surrounded. This, we, we talk about this quite a bit. Sure. If, if All Sides has nearly 4,000 uh, people rating me and the re end result is centrist, if I'm actively pro-universal health care, not to the same degree as like Bernie Sanders, I believe in private health insurance, and I'm pro-choice, I am absolutely not a conservative in this country. I've listened to your debates on pro-choice, though. You're pro-choice from a Tim Pool's perspective. I I'm pro-choice say... from a traditional liberal perspective, <laughs> as, as but traditional not, liberals not have from been. what people who would define themselves as pro-choice would say, right? Like, you concentrate very heavily right. on, Listen, on the ninth-month abortions and baby guillotines and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. You, I, I remember watching you debate Baby guillotines? Of, yeah. Okay, so baby guillotines is my own personal interpretation and joke of it. But you were talking about how women... I love that he talks about this and knowing what's coming. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's I, so beautiful. It is kind of hilarious to, to understand that Lance is the one who opened the door to this disaster in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Like, oh, okay. Good well, job he's there, buddy. he's framing that if you don't if you don't accept ninth month abortions, you're not pro-choice. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, well, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> I, and, I think and, a lot of pro-choice people would disagree with you, Lance. Uh, this part's going to be so much fun. And uh, how how like disgusted you are that women may have an abortion in the ninth month, right? Or or even a viable baby a vi of a viable baby that and, could. And I, I I wanted to scream at that time, being like, women who have abortions in the ninth month, they're not doing that because they got bored, or all of a sudden they're like, oh, I don't care anymore. They do that because it's a fucking tragedy. Like statistically, women who are getting abortions in the ninth month, it's because there's a medical complication that could kill them. False that's, argument. That's why they have to do it. What do you false mean false argument? False. That's, that's, I already that's said, the real world. I already said viable. I try again. What are you talking about, Tim? I'm, I I'm already saying, said abortion I, okay. of viable fetuses oh at nine God, months. This is ridiculous. Do you, know, so, do you know what viable means? Yes. yes it means it, the baby can survive it can on its survive own without on medical its own. complications. Absolutely. And Why the legalize women and the, abortion of viable fetuses at nine months when the baby could just women be Women are not getting abortions at the ninth month for pleasure or because they want to suddenly do it at for kicks. No, that doesn't happen. Why it's a tragedy. It? It's Why a legalize tragedy it? of Why the highest. Because, because there are medical operations that could kill the mother and they need to get an abortion. Why legalize? I just told you. That's the reason. Why? At, so, so, all right, I'm, I'm, I'll try and break it down for you. If Can the baby survive? So, okay. So the question was, if it's not happening, right? This is always... A, I, think I know. The, yeah. Yeah, if I it's not it. happening, you know, why make it legal, right? It's, Be this is always the sort of, you know, shell game that's being played here. And so uh, Lance is saying, well, you know, it's still going to be legal because of medical reasons. And it's like, okay, but that wasn't the question. The question was, obviously, there could always be medical exceptions you know, to have an abortion if the woman's going to die or be injured or whatever. Yeah. The question is, should, why should it be allowed without a medical exception, right? That's exactly. the question. Exactly, exactly. It shouldn't be, obviously. Yeah, the well, you'd hope, right? I think the left gets into problems with the abortion argument because they try to make the argument an argument that is satisfactory to the right, and their belief will never be satisfactory to the right. It's like, Which, mm -hmm. what do you mean? 
Well, that's what we do. What's the argument that you think is satisfactory to the right that they're trying to make? I don't uh, think that that, that, that they think abortion's bad. <laughs> That they're like, oh. oh, abortion should be limited, and that you know we want right. to, we worry about it, and we care, and da da da. The only thing they care about is making sure that the woman has the right to end the pregnancy. That's the abortion. That's the argument on the left. Everything else they do on the, oh, it's not happening, and da da. All the argument and stuff like that. It's all, it's all fake, and that's why it falls apart because they just don't have the oomph, or well, because the argument that they they believe isn't satisfying to the right, and the right's answer is. Well, you're murdering people, and they have no way to defend themselves, and they don't want to be seen as murderers. So it, it's a problem with their self-conception and the way that they actually see it. Because well, I mean, they, I'm sure there are people who, I mean, I'm sure most people, you know, they're not in favor of, you know, fetuses or babies dying, right? Well, I mean, it, if you're, if like, you're, mm -hmm. that, I mean, I don't know, if you're in favor of abortion, like, so... I have a I'm a pro choice guy up to the the tenth like the first trimester or whatever and I have an extreme my opinion is totally unsatisfying to people on the right like the people that are totally pro life they're like it's of murder course, and yeah and I'm like I'm like I understand what you're saying I don't think that I don't I understand that it is life at conception because you can't say that it's not you can't say that it's not a human these are all fallacies like it's not I can make it's, arguments you can <laughs> say it's not a person though um, you can maybe say it's not a person but that's not good enough because pro-life people are just that pro oh of course no you know it's not. so yeah so i know that my my point is never going to satisfy totally satisfy the right and i just say look I know you're never going to be satisfied, but I think that abortion up to the in the first trimester is a net positive for society. And it's kind of gross to say that, honestly, but I do think it's true because unwanted babies, they have unhappy lives almost all the time. Not mm -hmm. not entirely all the time. Not, you know, not not like there aren't people that are. You know that that end up that have you know were unwanted by their parents that got adopted and blah blah. blah. I understand all that and and the rights arguments on that are true and good. And I want more people to put babies up for adoption. And I want more people to use contraception. And I want more people to not get pregnant in the first place. But and that's all I got. You know, like but I do think that like society is better with fewer unwanted babies. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Plus, so, baby killing is like a blast. I mean, <laughs> look, Cannibal Corpse wrote a whole record out about it, butchered at birth, and it's one of their best. So I only say the baby killing thing because it's like uh, I'm just so tired of people saying, like, if you have a reasonable pro-choice position, you're a baby killer. Because yeah, like I, I would go, t you know, twelve weeks or whatever, and they say consciousness comes in at what fifteen to eighteen weeks or something. So I'm oh, like, that, sure, make it. Yeah, make it very conservative, you know. I thought that consciousness weeks. didn't I thought that consciousness didn't start until like you had f like f formative memories that you could remember. Uh I think I'm trying to remember cuz we looked it up. I think consciousness they believe starts incident coincidentally around the time the uh, you know the original Roe v Wade uh, ruling was like 18 20 weeks or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. So and and that's my that... cutoff is consciousness cuz to me that's the that's a it. key issue is consciousness not yeah. formation of the of the brain like once you once a once the the actual like cerebral cortex is act, is starting to really form you in my opinion I, I think that if if i understand correctly it's it's a little down the road you have time to uh, actually have an abortion before that actually happens and i think that once the brain's in there like hey brains are what make us human you know that like mm -hmm. all that we are is our is inside of our brain so if your brain is fully formed you're definitely fully human, a, a person. You know? Yeah, obviously that's fully formed, sure. Right. Hit it up. Do it up. Okay, fine. I'll do it up. Okay, I did. Let's, let's, let's talk about a baby. The baby can survive on its own, yes? Sure. Okay. Abortion is defined by Planned Parenthood and the law as terminating the life of the, of the baby. Correct. Why terminate the life of the baby if it can survive on its own? Because it could kill both of them. That's why it is done at that stage. So how could do you kill how one do you get, or the other, the and they have to make the tough decision and at how that you, point? So how do you remove the fully formed nine month baby at that point? Oh, I, I don't know the science of it. I, I, I've never performed that operation. So before. shouldn't the law then be? We know. If the baby must be removed and it is alive and capable of survival, all actions must be taken to preserve the life of the child and the mother. Uh, I would say they'd probably choose the mother first, right? 
why and, and and this is such a strange scenario how often do you think that this happens and all of a sudden they're like the baby could have lived you could have done it why did you choose the other option it's like this is a tragedy of the highest order because they want to have the kid at nine months pregnant a woman is on her way to give birth so it's like it's the worst possible fucking I'm thing sorry, that could happen to her th that's not always again i, I said i didn't want a dog pile no, but no, that's the i mean that's it's statistically not true there have been surveys done on women who had later abortions and for a, a pretty large sum of them, it's because they were not sure whether the father of the child was willing to commit. And then when they found out he wasn't willing to commit, they would have the abortion. Uh, and so there are different stats you're going to find for different points in pregnancy when it comes all the way along to nine months. I don't have the statistical uh, data on that. However, I do know for later term abortions, there are reasons other than what is traditionally considered to be a medically necessary reason. For example, some people will say that... Um, a negative mental health outcome is a reason to abort a child later in pregnancy. So if the woman is depressed, they will list that as a reason for why the child had to be terminated to save the life of the mother, which is certainly not the case, very obviously. Uh, and to the point of what Tim is saying, when we say there's no such thing as a medically necessary abortion, the principle behind that is... If there is an operation which is necessary to save the life of the mother, mm -hmm. and then she miscarries the child as a result of that operation, which was necessary to save her life, that's not an abortion because nobody's intent was to go in there and end the life of the unborn child. And so if a woman's having complications where she has to deliver early, you deliver the child early, of course. And if you're at a point in pregnancy where the child isn't viable, that's, that's a, a horrible tragedy. You still do what you can to save the child, but you can't always save the child, and we understand that. But to go in and rip the child apart to end their life is never something which is medically required even though an early delivery may be but, what, but are there situations where if the baby is in this is so harsh uh in its complete form that even trying to induce early pregnancy could kill the mother so they have to break the baby's body apart so that they can get it out without killing the mother i've never heard of such a thing so and th th there are there are letters by the way signed by, signed by literally thousands of doctors so, who have well, so let, okay, let me ask let me let me ask wait, can I just say one thing so 88 percent of abortions are in the first 12 weeks 88 yeah percent of abortions less than 1.3 percent of abortions take place near the eighth or ninth month. how many abortions is that is good that? marker well, well how, how many is that? i, I don't What's know the actual number? numbers 13, this is the percentages. 13 000. Okay, but we're, we're talking about less than 1.3%. Well, hold on, 13,000, that's the number of people who die from gun violence in the U.S. each year that aren't suicides. Gentlemen, so that's I am 13, not 000. here to justify abortion when it happens as in it's but a good thing. No, no, no. I don't celebrate Brother, it. You're I'm, saying I'm, it doesn't not, happen. I, no, no, no. You're saying I'm it doesn't happen. It, doesn't it happens happen. 13,000 times. I said it's extremely, there is 338 million Americans. I'm sorry. The numbers are going to be a little daunting. Yes, the numbers will be high. Well, I, I'm, I'm not here to celebrate I that. I don't understand your, your argument then. My argument is that there's a lot of human beings. If 13,000 people die from guns, we have a problem, right? If 13,000 people die from guns, we have a problem. Yes, of course. If 13,000 yeah. late-term abortions happen, is that a problem? These are completely different things. Well, how so? Okay, so if someone dies by a gun, are they being shot? Were they killed? Did they kill themselves? Was it a suicide? Was it a that's gang a good, violence a, thing? Who knows? That's a good question. In, in, Can in I the, clarify? The case this is totally debate brand like stalling, trying to think yes. of the right answer on the fly. Yeah. He well, realizes he's totally stuck in it. Well, it's funny because Lance brought up something that I would argue is irrelevant to the point. He, the first thing he brings up is, well, it's not happening. Well, right. who gives a shit if it's not happening or how how much it's happening? That's not the question. The question is, should it be allowed morally, yes or no? Of not course. how much it's happening. Like, if, if there's an action that is immoral or moral, why does it matter whether it's happening a lot or happening a little? little? Like, sure. to me, whenever someone says, well, that's not happening, that's kind of like a weird cope thing of, totally. well, I don't really want to defend this thing because of optics, <laughs> even though you know, <laughs> I want to defend it. So... It's funny that by kind of bringing up what I would call a debate tactic to say it's not really happening actually landed Lance in even hotter water totally. because Seamus brought up that, well, I mean, if it happens it is to 13,000 people that, that died of the gun violence and you think that's a, you know enough to levy gun crime legislation, then why is it this not a big enough deal to change you know the laws in society? Yeah, exactly. So. He totally stepped in it. Now he's trying to wiggle his way out, and it's great. But it, but it was so weird because good. I don't even know why... And this is where I think Lance gets, you know, a lot of the thought was like Lance is dumb because I don't even know why, like it's, why would, what is the point of even going down this train of thought? Like you just say, listen, I think that if a woman is going to die or have some massive medical complications, you know, obviously there should be no limit and when they can get an abortion. But beyond that, 
and maybe Lance doesn't believe this. Maybe he is literally in favor of people being able to have abortions until the moment of conception or something. Which he is, is insane to me. Beyond that, you just say, no, I don't think a woman should be able to have an abortion like right up into the moment of her conception. He, the, point, insane. the point is to make fun of Tim Pool because this originally began with Tim Pool has an insane pro choice. Uh, oh, you're right. Take. You're right. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So he like he's basically criticizing Tim Pool, saying, look, you're pro choice, but not pro choice enough. You have to be willing to say, you know, we, we can have an, uh, an abortion in the ninth month, you know, if the woman decides that's what they want to do. Well, more specifically, now that you said that I forgot, because his, his train of thought was originally you, Tim, fixate on all these hyper edge cases, right? So that's why he's making kind of the weird argument the way he's making it, which kind of lands him into yeah, the hot twisting water. and turning to defend some position he doesn't. I mean, I'm assuming maybe he does have it because I know I've seen the clip where he basically defends abortion up until the moment of birth, which is so he fucking defends insane. Like doing meth on while you're pregnant. He, oh, no, he says you shouldn't. So I don't know. It's we'll say it's it's. It's He's hard to tell how much of this is like debate brain and what is real. And, it's you know, all, how much look, is... it's all debate brain. And it's just, it's so juicy. It's like so <laughs> great. <laughs> He's also the guy talking about like when he says uh, baby guillotines, what he's referring to is abortion at the moment of death. And he says, everyone's against it and I'm against it too. And then he goes on to say, well, you know, up to the moment of, you know, if the, if the mother chooses, it's the mother's decision. Like in the exact same argument. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah what yeah, are you yeah. talking about? Those are contradictory, they, dude. You can't right. accept both of <laughs> Yeah, because he's going to be he's going to come in a minute or two. He's going to say, you know, it's the mother's choice. And then the argument that they're trying to get across is if the baby can survive. Right. Why are you saying that the mother should have the right to kill the baby? True. Right? So if it's yeah. eight months and, and the baby can survive, you can give it a cesarean section, uh, give them a C-section, whatever. It's it's totally going to survive. But the mother says no. You have to kill it. You know, it's like, or, or, you know, there's something going on and it's like, look, the baby has to come out now, you know, whether it be the umbilical cord wrapped around the neck or whatever. And it's like, well, the baby has to come out now. There are and laws the like, for all these it. exceptions where the mother's life is in danger. There yeah, are you know, all these laws in favor but, of that. But he's, his, his point ends up being whether he, even though he says it's not is it's the mother's choice. And if the mother says you must kill the baby, then you must kill the baby. Yeah, it's, right. Yeah, right. It's monstrous, well, and there's you know there's memes of of like where there's of of his face. Holy shit! I'm advocating murder or something like that, and and it's right. literally what he's doing. Well, and if Lance was you know smarter, there are arguments. <laughs> you know, asking, like, there are arguments you can make, which I mean, there was a we even covered this a while ago. There was a story where I forget what state it was. A woman was trying to get she needed to get an abortion um, for medical reasons, and because whatever state they were in was very restrictive for medical reasons. Oh, they reasons. wouldn't give it to her. I remember like, this. it was so difficult yeah. for her to do it. She ended up, like, going fucking blind or something. Because that, like, whatever the health thing was causing her to you know, lose vision. And essentially, they didn't, you know, she couldn't get an abortion until she was basically blind. And it was, like, really horrific. Um, and so, like, there are a lot, like, there's an argument you can make about, well, you know, maybe in some states, you know, the medical exceptions are too strict or whatever, you know, blah, 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 blah. But I think, I think this goes back to my original theory. I think Lance is just so used to only... I mean, he used to do debates a little bit, but not so much. And I think the only time he interacts with people that disagree Twitter. with him is on Twitter. <laughs> and I think he's just so used to framing everything through Twitter arguments. Because it'd be like on Twitter where you'd give this very dumb, vapid, like, you know, well, a woman has bodily autonomy. Boom, right. send a tweet, right? And you wouldn't have to, like, like explain yeah. it or defend 20, that position 20,000 likes. <laughs> Yeah, 20,000 likes, right? And then now suddenly when he's like in a situation where there's like a person that he has to contend with and he gives like some very simplistic shallow take like, well, wait a minute, that's contradictory. And he's just not used to having to, you know, talk to people. Yeah, you can contradict the hell out of yourself on Twitter and there's absolutely no ramifications whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, especially when there's a block button. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Did you, uh, did the surfs block you, Phil? Yes, oh, yes. okay. Because the, the 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 how did I do uh, tweet that he put up, I answered with the clip of him getting owned that we're about to see. I said, this is how you did, Lance. Thank you very much for showing up. <laughs> if Surfs gets big, he's going to be totally insufferable. Like this guy oh, could be I, easily worse than Bosch. I think he might have blocked me partially because I ratioed him too. Oh, mm. okay. Well, it's weird because he famously would always brag about never blocking anyone. And now he... Oh, he did? Away. Really? But yes. I thought he was blocking people who had the blue check mark now that's when it started yeah before when he when he had a blue check mark 
He would famously <laughs> brag Did he about lose how he never his? blocked anybody. Oh, okay. Um, and then when he lost his blue check mark, he suddenly got all pissy and sour grapes about it. He's like, I'm going to block everyone with a blue check mark. Anytime anyone says to me anything about the blue check mark, I say, I got golden platinum records too. Shut the fuck up. T <laughs> the. Oh, I know. You bragger. Look at you. <laughs> Matt, Matt Binder has his blue check mark. What happened there? Because he was on a tirade about how, you know, there's no way in hell he's going to pay for his blue check mark. Elon is being like... chaotic good about handing out the blue checks. He's just throwing them all around at people and who knows who gets them and who knows who doesn't. So I mean, you I think, think Matt Binder got one from Elon? He hates so. Elon. Well, that's the well, point. I think that's the point. I, listen, okay. here, here's my conspiracy, okay? Elon has a network of spies <laughs> who go around <laughs> and they find the people that complain the most about refusing to buy a blue check mark and then he gives them a blue check mark just to troll them. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. The, that's brilliant. That's the game. Well, Surf didn't get one and Matt Binder did. So no. I thought Matt Binder <laughs> just paid for one. That makes it even funnier. Well, Matt, Bi Matt it Binder is hilarious. On, he's on like MSNBC sometimes and he's on like TV a little bit, I think. He's been on well, MSNBC. Surf's, uh, I think he's been on Joy Reid's show. No way. Oh, you're right. I forgot about yeah. this. We talked about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Really? Which is hilarious yeah. because yes. I, I can't imagine. Like, I, I know people on the left like have that whole solidarity thing and stuff, blah, blah, blah. I can't imagine anything more damaging to your reputation than being on Joy Reid's show. <laughs> <laughs> Joy Reid is really bad. To certain really people, bad. obviously, but to other people, that's like he's a made no, man now. No, I mean, well, I mean, she, I'm talking about her, her cognitive abilities. Joy Reid? She's a yeah. racist. She's a giant racist. <laughs> well, yeah, but she's stupid, too. Yeah. Listen, okay. Like real stupid. dumb. Everyone's stupid but the three of us, okay? Yes! Uh, <laughs> yeah! See, oh, I don't want to argue. I, I need to answer this. In the case of late, yeah, but, yes, but in the case of late-term abortions, more often than not, when statistics say, and they when they are polled, they say the reason that they are giving it is because it's a medical complication that could result in the death of either okay, the mother right, or the child. Right, right. So, so let's, uh, I should, can we make the argument then that um, the use of guns on people are uh, allowed? The use of guns of people are to, to end their lives is allowed. Uh, so that's that murder. Argument? You're describing murder. So if Colorado, for instance, passes a law saying there is no medical requirement for an abortion, is it is it wrong to to to, abort, to kill the baby? You're talking about you're trying to compare murdering someone with a gun to a woman having to make a medical decision that could basically preserve her life. No, no, no. Or, I said not death. not a medical reason. That's what that's what I'm saying. For, she, for, should she have a, the ability to have an abortion for any reason? Yes. At nine months. At nine months. I, I would say at nine months because it only happens according to the stats based on a uh, complete medical necessity because murder only happens once in a while we should just let it go right this is why he, he's struggling here because he's like oh boy i just said baby guillotines are bad and now i'm gonna have to say baby guillotines are okay how does that well, how does it even compute it's it's weird because i think what's happening in lance's head is that he thinks he thinks that the most important thing is that he has some sort of like consistent it's sentence he can give Right. That is ironclad and in, in like an ultimate position where he says, you know, a woman has the right to bodily autonomy. Right. And so he has to, but he realizes that that's stupid. Of course right? it is. She could the, be I mean, a murderer. First of all, almost any position taken to extremes are stupid. But it's yeah. like he's not smart enough to realize that or to make a, a cogent argument about that. So he's like, I can't violate this, like, you know, bumper sticker. So yeah. I have to, like, twist myself into some horrible position that's even worse. The prime directive. Woman can always choose. <laughs> yeah. Woman can make any decision. Right. <laughs> right. For any reason? Yes. At nine months. At nine months. I, I would say at nine months because it only happens, according to the stats, based on... <laughs> Uh, complete medical necessity. She has a right to do it. No, 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 no. She on, have on, a right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Colorado legalized abortion in up to nine months with no medical reason required. Do you agree with? I, that? I agree with that decision. Yes. So, so the baby oh could God. survive on its own, and the mother is legally now allowed to just end its life. She has the right if she wanted to. Is, you're saying so in Colorado, and I'm. It's not I, a trick question. You're. No, I know. To I know. That. But I, but I'm asking. But I'm asking you because you're the one who brought this up. I don't know what Colorado. You brought it up, Lance. So if you were saying that in Colorado. Women have the ability at nine months to get to have an abortion for any reason. They they could just decide the Elective, reward. yeah. Okay, I think they should have the right to do that. But the stats show that they're not doing that. But they should have a legal right to do that. Yes, it's their body. It's <laughs> the, their the, choice, the, of course. Yeah. So this is what I do, I disagree on. Oh.
That's such a horrible argument. Oh, the stats show that no one's committing genocide. Well, should they have the right to commit genocide? <laughs> well, the, yeah, but they're but not doing the, it. He did bite the bullet. He said he thought women should have the right to get an oh, abortion for any reason at nine months, which insane. is such an insane argument. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a wildly extreme argument. You know, the mid the, like overwhelm i forget what the stats are like you know 95 percent of people that are pro-choice do not believe like fucking you know I saw the day before you should get an abortion they were in front of congress so arguing this position yeah they had like that, it, that fr crazy it freaked person. me out i was like yes. what the hell yep 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 so it's just well it's the same thing like with colorado i don't know is the colorado thing just like an is is that just a crazy reaction to the crazy anti-abortion laws that are being pushed in a lot of these states where there's not even like rape or incest exceptions Oh and so my. now we have Colorado's like, well, we're going to go the other way. We're going to be like extreme in the other direction. Like, is that what's happening here? So I now America has two choices. They're like, uh, no abortion, even in the case of rape or incest, or abortion Super <laughs> until the ninth <laughs> month. Yeah, it's like, yeah. we can't have a happy medium. Why are we well, trapped in the middle of this? Right. The reason we can't have a happy medium is because the, the left violated the safe, rare, and legal. Mm-hmm. Like the the re that's the totally the reason the right had chilled out about it and for the most part I really don't think it would have become what it was there I don't think there would have been the kind of push if it wasn't for Michelle I Wolf making completely the completely disagree I know the 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 right started this Phil they're the ones that overturned Roe versus Wade with the yeah. of Supreme Court that's what started yeah, I, this I, I I don't think that I don't think that the I don't think that the overturning of Roe versus Wade is what started this. I think what started this was when abort, when shout your abortion and we should be proud of our abortions. And I had 10 abortions mm -hmm. made people on the right say, holy shit, they're fucking monsters. Mm -hmm. F them, save the babies because right. people want to kill babies just cause. So, like the, and, and I think that if that, if it had remained just safe, legal and rare, I don't think there would have been the stomach for the for getting rid of abortion because the people that are so pro like most of the pro lifers that I see nowadays it's like it's like boomers or Gen Z. There's not a lot of millennials or Gen X that are pro life. I don't. We feel have a like bunch it. of pro lifers in our audience. They're all. I'm not saying that there are none. Time we bring They're all boomers. Yeah. Seamus <laughs> Seamus is not a boomer and he's totally pro life. So I, I'm. I, I'm I'm not saying that there are none. I'm just saying that I feel the the I think the majorities are in the because the people my age, the gen in Gen X and the millennials, mm -hmm. we grew up with these safe, legal, and rare. We're the people that agreed oh, yeah. to safe, legal, and yes. rare. And, yeah. and I think that a lot of people are like, no, the the left will always continue to push left and and they're never gonna be okay with it. It's it's uh it's mm -hmm. it, or they're never going to be okay with this. They're always going to keep going. And I think that had it stayed at safe, legal and rare, I think that conservatives could have stomached it, not been happy with it, but I don't think there would have been as much of a push to get rid of it. So, and I certainly yeah, don't think yeah. that the arguments that are being made now about getting rid of it entirely would have as much force behind them. Right. I, I think the, the phenomenon you're talking about, you know, this sort of pendulum effect, I think that definitely is happening in certain areas. I think this is really happening in a lot of the, the woke areas, you know, with the, um, I think it's happening a lot in Florida with, you know, pushing back against CRT being taught in schools, pushing the back to let books be banned from libraries, school libraries and things of this nature, uh, pushing back on what can be taught in sex education. And in this, in those situations, I agree with sort of the logic of, you know, the left, especially in education, the left has pushed things so far that it's caused like this whiplash effect or will cause a whiplash effect from the right to go kind of, they'll, they'll go against it and then they'll go against it too far in the other direction. So I think that that's definitely happening. I don't think that's happening with abortion specifically just because the people on the right who have been trying to push against abortion have been doing that nonstop for 50 years, you know, ever since Roe v. Wade was passed. Like it's been a nonstop effort for a lot of people on the right to do this. So I don't think, well, I know what you're saying, that there were people who, you know, I've seen all the videos of the fucking crazy feminists bragging about their abortions and all this shit. I don't think that that, I think that it was used as kind of like something to promote a cause, but I don't think that's what, I don't think that's what caused these situations. If in a hypothetical world, all those videos didn't exist and Roe v. Wade still got overturned, I think you'd be seeing all the states that are kind of doing these very extreme anti-abortion laws would all be doing them regardless because- 
you know, that's what they they're trying to appeal to a, a very specific part of their constituency that they think gives a lot of money and gets a lot of votes out for them. Fair. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> this is why Phil's great. Yeah. Now, well, because because we can disagree without having to beat each other up. No, you just say I'm just right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not disagreement. Yeah. That's totally. And I, I think fair enough. Fair enough. I think if the baby needs to be removed from the woman, there's no reason to kill it. You know what I mean? Like you could just C-section and then put it up for adoption. But I'm something. telling you that doesn't happen. But it, but but it does. But but even, it, but it, it, but, it's but hold so, on, hold on. Like you it, might be it, able to bring up anecdotes, but the stats don't I didn't, say that. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like why allow it to happen? I just don't understand. Are 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 you well, arguing? Because, Wait, because hold on, hold on. Because... Are you arguing you oppose it? And you think it's morally wrong, but you think it should be legal? I, I think that women should have the right to decide what they do and have bodily autonomy over their own body. We're not talking about her body. We're talking it about... It is her body. We're of talking about... It's at nine months. Even if it's still inside her, it's still her body. Even if it's a viable baby, it's still her body. we're talking about the removal of the baby. That is so crazy. That is so crazy. Well, I mean, this is weird because... Well, so, I mean, I, I, you know, the, the way to have this conversation is to keep saying... Just be like, okay, we need to throw away this. It doesn't happen. That's irrelevant. Stop bringing it up. The amount of times it happens is irrelevant to the conversation. Totally, totally, okay, yeah. stop. Hypothetically, it. happening is still. Yes. We can okay, talk that's about all that. that yeah, way. it yeah. doesn't matter. Because because to say like, well, you know, you think that something is immoral and people shouldn't do it, but it should still be legal. I mean, I'm sure that's a position lots of people have for lots of things. Sure, totally. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people believe certain drugs should be legal or certain actions should be legal, but they would never, you know. Well, you know, people could say, oh, you know, I think pornography should be legal, but doesn't mean that they're going to use it, right? Right. People totally. shouldn't do it. Yeah. You know, there's lots of actions that you could believe you wouldn't do or immoral, but still, you know, the right. law yeah. shouldn't prevent Veganism, you for instance. There you go. <laughs> there you like, go. veganism, veganism should, is, is immoral, right? but I mean, it should be legal, right. obviously. Veganism right. is totally immoral because it actually kills more animals than... Uh, than meat eaters do because they kill because the, the vegans get acid. so triggered when you talk about the immorality of veganism because their whole yeah, the, argument is based on oh it's immoral to do what you yeah. guys are doing how many mice have to die for your salad oh you know, yeah how many rabbits are killed how many rabbits are poisoned or killed when, you know to to prevent your to, so you can get your uh your out of season tomatoes you if know? you no, wait. if you Listen. had a nine month abortion on a vegan mm -hmm. would that be justified would that be like if you could genetically tell if the baby was a vegan? If it's a vegan, it likely would be communist. So that's moral. That's morally acceptable. There you go. Are you saying that there should be a, a three fifths rule for commies in our? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm no. I'm apprehensive about three fifths rule. So why don't we just say yeah. 100 percent of communists get aborted? Okay. Um, in a video game. Um, so regarding your, your vegan argument, but it's a little different though, right? Because it's kind of like, oh, you know. There's a difference between like I'm gonna snatch an innocent an innocent animal out of the forest and I'm gonna kill it and eat it versus this animal attacked my vegetables and I have to kill it in self defense right Oh yeah it's a self defense you're defending the vegetable's life against it <laughs> self defense that's yeah. a good one I love it maybe yes the forceful removal of the baby or forceful so she chooses to have that she no, no the baby climbs out on its own and plays peekaboo no, no you, you you just wave a bottle in front of the woman's vagina and it climbs up to get the bottle. this is so insane this his follow-up questions are just so like just trying to squirm out of this anything yes. to put the brakes on wait yes. the baby comes out on the baby's pulled out forcibly right <laughs> It's an abortion, of course it is. <laughs> Fucking moron. Body. We're talking about nine it's months, even if it's still inside her, it's still her body. Even if it's a viable baby, it's still her body. We're talking about the removal of the baby, yes? The forceful removal of the baby, or? <laughs> forceful. So she chooses to have that. She the woman have the right. says the baby must be removed from my body. Why kill the baby if they're removing it? I don't think they should do that. I would, I would, if, so if they asked me, if they asked me, Lance, should I do this? I would say no, but she should have a right. Yes, of course. It's her body still. No, no, that no, that no, doesn't no, listen, stop. Listen. At, so, like, the woman is pregnant, the baby is viable and capable of surviving on its own. Sure. And she says, before it hits, before it breaches oxygen, kill it. Do you think that should be allowed? This is, again, the baby guillotines. This is why I brought that Which up. Which you but, just but, but asserted. You, you said it was okay. This, this is it, not the real it, world. But it does. And, and if the argument is that it doesn't happen enough for you to care, that's fine. You're allowed to believe that. Sure. What I don't understand is it seems like you, you your position is a rather shock position where you recognize there is something inherently wrong with taking the life of a baby that could survive on its own, but you also but I, you're also taking the tribal position of women should be allowed to do it anyway. 
No, no, no. If you were to ask me, Tim, hey, Lance, do you think it's a good idea if this woman who's nine months pregnant, suddenly she got bored with the pregnancy, she doesn't want to have it anymore, but the baby's viable? Do you think that's a good thing to do? I would be like, no, of course then not. Make, then yeah. why should it be allowed? Because it's still her right. It's still her body. <laughs> but Bodily autonomy doesn't stop at <laughs> my morality. Tim, it's not my removed, choice. Right? It's not my, yes, but that's not why my choice. Why kill it? Why but kill it? That's her choice, not mine. Why kill the baby? <laughs> ask her. So Ask it's literally, it's so obviously murder, though. It's so obviously murder. You're like advocating for, oh, it's, you know, she should be able to murder the baby. He's, yeah, it's literally, he says, oh, I don't believe in the baby guillotines. And then he says, well, yes, I believe in the baby guillotines. He yeah. literally contradicts himself in the argument that he decided to engage in. Well, only to, to only dump, to come. No, 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 no. You're not being fair. You don't understand. He, he meant he doesn't literally believe at the doctor's office there's a baby guillotine there. Okay. He's like, yeah, you could kill him in other ways. You know, stick a gun up there and start firing, but not the guillotine. It's just too much. All of this was just to come at Tim Pool's abortion position. Out of nowhere, it was completely unrelated to the conversation. Yeah. This, it, he chose positions. to go down this fucking path that he didn't even I, have like like a line in his head, like a road in his head that he was going to follow. Dude, course. I think that this is the actual exemplifying part that shows how dumb he is, mm -hmm. right? Like not just yes. that he had a bad argument or or got talked himself into a corner, but the fact that he brought this up, then mm -hmm. contradicts himself, and then goes on to do what he's going to do. We someone was talking, or, or we were talking earlier about you know about how he did throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. This is as bad as I said. Yeah. This is every yeah. bit as bad as I said. He like, and to think that people on the left are saying that he did. Oh, okay, I know. It I is know. absurd. Cope, yeah. Just absurd. It's, I share. I share a tweet with. With Sitch, uh, the majority report, Tim Pool's claims he is not conservative, shredded by Lance from the serfs. <laughs> it's like, who, who is defending I this believe, guy? I can't believe that anyone on the left would share anything from this. Everyone on the left should be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who Lance is. I don't know who the serfs are. I don't know who Tim Pool is. And I don't know what show you're talking about. <laughs> That's what the standard answer from everyone on the left should be forever. Deny, deny, deny. Who deny, is, deny, who is deny. that guy? No, they think he did an excellent job. They're That's probably rude. all in favor of nine-month abortions now. <laughs> no, so so here's your visual image. This is what happened. So Lance is talking to Tim Pool, and he says, fuck you, Tim. Get ready mm. for this. He walks away. He comes back. He has a bag of like 20 rakes, okay? <laughs> and he says, I'm going to get you now. And he throws all the rakes on the floor. But he throws them all around himself. <laughs> And he circled himself with the rakes. He's like, now I'm going to get to Tim. And he just yes. runs straight at Tim and just hits every fucking rake that, along the way. That's very that's exactly, what, that's exactly what happened. It's like, Lance, what are you doing? That's Why did you do this? He's setting traps for himself. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. This is so enjoyable. Tim's abortion or Tim's pro choice position seems pretty reasonable to me. That's what's insane to me that anyone wants to attack that. But his pro choice is, I think it's the same as mine. I think he's okay in the first trimester of course. and then after that he yeah. shouldn't, you know. Of course. And that's the reasonable position. It's like, look, you know. But look, he, he can't have a reasonable position because okay, he's he's like a bunch fool. of beta killers. That's what I'm going to say. Then. Look, he's, he's, all Lance cares about is dunking on Tim Pool. This is his right. modus operandi. So he's got to attack right. where he can attack. Even where he can't attack, he's got to attack. <laughs> Mike. My damn dog is looking at me to go out, and now's the best part coming. So well, we can wait. Um, okay, hold on. I'll be right back. I'm sorry. Sure. Okay, so my, my point is simply this. We're going to wait. You don't need me to be shocked. <laughs> He's like, fuck you. We're not waiting. Are we supposed to wait? Do you go to Super, super Chat to read? Yeah, I'll read a Super Chat. Uh, PC for $20. Thank you, PC. says, I think part of the reason those on the left are extreme pro-choice is because they don't have families. My views on abortion became more conservative after my son was born. Harder to distance yourself when you have kids. Yeah, I mean... I don't think, I mean, I'm sure that's true to an extent. I don't, we looked at the polling. I don't remember what the numbers were, but I know that the overwhelming majority of people were pro-choice are not in favor of this, like, you should be able to abort the baby till like the moment it's born, you know, position. This is a radical position. So I don't even know why Lance would tie himself into this not to do this. It doesn't, well, like, I, what I is mean, the I, point of doing this? I thought it was a radical position until I saw that 
congressional hearing on it. Yeah, but that were, lady that they had was a radical, insane person. That they, I don't know why they, they were chose still that speaking. Person look, they were still speaking for Democrats in front of Congress. I know. And it made me think: Is this the the mainstream? democratic position well, like, on abortion now it's i i think i think there's like a concept creep here which is that people want to have a easy pithy argument to make right and so they're like it's the woman's woman's right to bodily autonomy like that's like the dumb right. easy bumper sticker and so they just well, they heavily fixate on on just kind of like we can only make this one really stupid vapid argument and the straw man argument the left makes about the right plays into that. the The right is only interested in control controlling women's, bodies. You're women's right. That's bodies. It. Yes, you're right. You're you're 100 right. That's yeah. why they got that lady to show up, and that's why they hit, they fix on that argument because they want to attack the right and say the right is sexist. They just want to control women's bodies. You're yeah. completely right. That's yeah. the tactic. Yeah. Even though, the, well, the right it has religious reasons for why. Most of the people I know that are pro life are pro life for religious reasons. Sure. So, right. Yeah. Okay. My apologies. I, I'm sorry. It's I'm, okay. We don't allow apologies well, on the show. It, so, it's so. and it's funny because we were talking Fucked about this unclear, <laughs> and I have to give I have to give Phil credit because I said um, I hope Tim brings up you know because Lance keeps saying bodily autonomy and I was like I can fucking guarantee you that oh, Lance has argued in favor of vaccine mandates. Okay. Yeah. Of so course. how does bodily autonomy uh, square with that circle? And so course. Phil, I think a credit. Phil actually super tweeted uh, yeah. Tim. Super I think tweeted. Fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he, he sent him that question. So thank you, Phil. Yes. You I know, you. you know, he's all about forced jabbing. Forced the jab. Of course is, he is. That's what Lance is, is in favor right. of. Because it's collective good versus individual good. Bo collective the, rights versus individual rights. Right. Woman wants to kill her nine-month baby. You know, bodily autonomy right but you don't want to get fucking the vaccine yeah vaccine right oh that's so out of proportion like literally a dead baby versus you know someone not getting vaccinated right those are not moral equivalents no. at all. <laughs> like, but that's not why my choice kill it? Why but kill it? that's her choice not mine why kill the baby ask her so, Ask her, okay. her. so my, my point is simply this. You don't need to be shocked by it. You are allowed to have that moral position. I think most people in America would, would prescribe that to be, uh, would, would ascribe evil to that. Sure. The, the, but that's, the, that's the, what... <laughs> they would call you evil, like, Lance. Christ. It's like, listen, Lance, you can have that position. Now, everyone thinks you're fucking evil if you do, but you can have that position. <laughs> it's oh so great. God. That's so funny. So good. Yeah, uh, you can describe you would, evil to whatever you want. That's up to you. That's your choice. The, the idea that you would say doesn't mean that she should the woman be wants the baby removed, mm -hmm. and then in the process, instead of letting the baby live, remove it but kill it. Right? There's no reason to do that. There's no. You can give the baby up for adoption. You can drop the baby off on the on the doorstep of a I, post office. I agree with you. I'm, so, not, I'm not. I'm not disputing that. So why that. legalize? Even if it's one. One. Why legalize? You see, this is the craziest because thing. Because her autonomy should not be cut off based on your morality. Because you don't think that idea is good. You don't like but it. But the baby's that's, been that's not because should... Your morality is not murdering a baby. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Like the idea that your the idea of your morality is don't murder a baby that could survive. That is the most monstrous possible position to take. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Body. Well, that's that's if it was removed from her body and it was still viable. Right. And that's where the baby guillotines come in, because I don't think this happens. I don't think women on the ninth month get abortions with viable living children and then be like, I don't want it. Kill it. I don't think that happens. You, I mean, you don't have to think it happens, but statistically it does, because your entire argument is this only happens for reasons of the health of the mother or the health of the no, unborn no, no, child. I, I said, so you believe I, it I said the statistics show that at the ninth month, if a woman is going to have an abortion, it's tr typically because it's a medical complication that could either endanger her or the child's life. And what I he still says typically. Typically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is there are doctors who will reason. justify that by saying the medical complication is she is depressed. That is literally one of the sure. reasons. And Seamus just totally destroys him here. Yeah, what yeah, if she's Seamus depressed? Great. He's great. What if she did what if her husband her would be husband just left her at the altar and then was like, Oh man, I can't have this baby anymore. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Get it out of me. It's insane. It's insane. Yeah. Not only sure, get so out of me, but has to be dead. 
Like, not only does it have to get out of me, but you, you can't just get it out of me and give it to someone else. Get it out of me, and you must kill that. We just, That's what he's arguing for. Look, I just want, I like, want a 12-week... I want it just like a 12 week cutoff or a 15 week. I just want it resolved. I just want a law that just says, you know, you can't go past this date. And even, I don't even care about the rape and incest because I feel like if there's rape or incest involved, like you're going to be even quicker to get on it, right? Like you're not yeah, going to be waiting till the eighth month when you have a rape or incest case. The rape and incest stuff is all BS because as soon as you say to anyone, well, if we make exceptions for rape and incest, what do you say? They say no. And so it's like, okay, so the rape and incest is not an actual argument that you care about. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that's why if you do just like a 12 week cutoff, you can say even, you know, even in cases of rape and incest, you got to get it done in the first 12 weeks. Like otherwise so, you got, yeah, you're dealing right. with a human being. Right. Yep. Yeah. So the latest, well, this is from last year, but I think the latest like massive pew polling on it says, 71% of Americans believe uh, abortion should be legal in some cases and illegal in other cases overall. 8% mm -hmm. uh, say it should be legal for everything, no exceptions. Um, and 19% say it should be legal with no exceptions. So the overwhelming majority of people say it should be legal with restrictions. 8% uh, say it should be completely legal and 19% say it should be legal up until baby guillotine. It's like... <laughs> That's baby guillotines i'm still surprised that's 19 percent. that's higher than i would have thought that's because they bought into that stupid argument that republicans just want to control women's bodies right that's right. that's the perspective most... that they're coming from yeah. i feel like the the left's arguments about what the conservatives want are so offensively they're, stupid uh, <laughs> they are they are definitely... and and they're always you know i mean you guys obviously are aware that the the center and the right know what the left thinks generally and the left has no idea what the center and the right think. Um, of course yeah generally generally but there's your uh standpoint epistemology for republic <laughs> <laughs> in surveys of and another reason that is yes, given yes, is yes, that yes, i know the man who i was going to be with okay okay but seamus i gotta stop you because this is a nebulous argument that doesn't get anywhere and and i can respect the point that uh if, if you go to uh, a left, if you try and look this up, you're going to find left wing uh, uh, sources and right wing sources that will co contradict each other. So my question is strictly on the legality of terminating the life of a child. We, 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 I can sit here and pull up. Oh, Thank hey, you, here's yeah. one. Women uh, abort Down syndrome babies late term rather frequently. I think that's wrong. I don't think that someone's life is forfeit because they have Down syndrome. But uh, your argument is that they do. That's I literally don't. aborting because the that, 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 that's a strong. No, 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 no. Like, is that because they can't offensive. detect it until late? Is that what's going on? Possibly, I so. but I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, it's like, I mean, un unless it's, I, I don't know how, if they can tell how severe it is or how severe the Down syndrome will be, but if you have, there are people with Down syndrome that live, you know, that live lives that to an outsider look like they're happy lives. No, nah, I get rid of them. They, could, <laughs> they can check that stuff because they can do genetic testing in the first 12 weeks now. I'm certain of it. Well, if they, if they're aborting babies just because they have Down syndrome, I think that's all, that is akin to boarding based on IQ. Well, they're they're doing that. If they're doing it late, they're doing it because they didn't have genetic testing done in the first twelve weeks. I kind of feel like that's on them. Like, if, I I want this like cut off at twelve weeks because it's kind of maddening that people are doing these things on you know conscious. Ba conscious fetuses or babies or whatever you want to call them after 12 weeks it's kind of crazy it says 11 to 14 so it's kind of close oh it is for the yeah. genetic testing uh that's what it says screening for down syndrome can be performed as early as 11 to 14 weeks okay so if I they see. do it at 11 weeks and they miss it and then all of a sudden you're you're one week off yeah i, I yeah. still feel like i still feel like we're kind of missing the point that screening for gen, uh, down syndrome is akin to like doing an IQ test mm -hmm. on the baby. I'm aborting any baby under 110 IQ. I don't know. Look, if we can <laughs> if we can scan for IQ, I'm like just abort those babies, okay? Yeah. Like, just keep we, rolling the dice till you get a high IQ baby. Man. We are heavily into comedy show. Well, no, this <laughs> it's it's strange. It is strange, but I think you know, in the future, 90 percent of pregnancies will be done through IVF because of this screening yeah, process there's gonna be we're you don't even put the yeah you don't even put the egg you don't even implant the egg unless 
like after you've already done all the screening. Right, but that wouldn't it. be an that wouldn't be an abortion question because you're not killing anything. It's of not course, yeah. You're selecting pre life stage. Right. So. But the, the the old school version of that is screening after you've already right. got what you got. Right. Which is a giant investment. I mean, you've already invested fourteen weeks in this fetus. Why are you against re rolling, Phil? <clears throat> <laughs> I want to re-roll my character, my baby's character, right? I was talking about, I said something about that today because, or the other day, because they successfully did a brain operation on a baby in utero. And I really, what the wow, I, I forget what I tweeted it the other the day. Hell was wrong? A, what, like what? I don't remember what it was, but I, I tweeted it. And, or, and the thing that I said was, and it was a little offensive, but Just I said we roll at this point. Jeez. That's exactly what I said. I was like, you know, if it was the if it was on the left, I feel like this would never have happened because they would have just aborted the baby and tried again. You know, <laughs> I don't think. Look, yeah. oh, there's a problem. Abort it. We'll do another one. And it's like mm -hmm. really, really, really dehumanizing. Is it eugenics if you're if you're doing it at the level of the individual? Because I kind of feel like I mean, when you even marry someone you're if, you, if you're looking at eugenics from this individual perspective you're engaging in eugenics because you're picking a certain bride over another bride yes but just all eugenics is not built the same right Right. no the eugenics that is bad is like the third party eugenics where they're basically deciding well i mean because okay, you honestly, eliminate like, free will okay. right right honestly you know say they could somehow theoretically iq test you know babies you know, people, you know, saying, oh, my baby's not smart enough. I'm going to start aborting it. You know, that'd be pretty fucked up. <laughs> that's going to so, happen, though. That's, that's totally going to happen. happen. I don't think that's going to, first of all, I don't think that's going to happen because I don't think it's detectable. I think what would be more likely is, you know, what you were saying, where they'll just, you'll they'll be able to figure out how to make babies smart before they were born. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. I think that's more likely. Yep. They're going to pick the right egg. I guess actually to do that, that would have to be detectable first. So I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe that would. But I'm saying, is. Like people will come out and say picking the right egg is eugenics and that's bad, but I it don't, is eugenics, I disagree if the individual mean is that it's necessarily yeah. Well, no, well, it's it's one of those things where like the term has um, such a negative connotation to it, obviously, right, obviously. associated with Nazis and you know all these other shit. Um, Nazis screwed everything up. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they really, really did. blew. Like they made everything a gigantic pain in the dick. Everything political. Fucking Nazis. Yeah. yeah. That um, and slavery, both of those things have made everything such a massive pain in the ass. Yeah, you know, yeah. See, that's the thing. If we get time machines, we got to go back and we got to stop Nazis. And we got to stop slavery, not because that they were wrong, but just because they made having conversations today more <laughs> difficult. Okay, that's the real tragedy. Look, <laughs> we need the people. That I, as much as I understand history is history, the people that have passed away that have passed away, I am concerned with now because I am alive now exactly. and we are alive. Now. Yeah, listen, I don't care. Listen, it doesn't affect me personally, right? So. <laughs> but you know arguing with assholes on twitter that does affect me personally <laughs> it's very painful it is it is no the, your argument is that women have a right to terminate a baby for any reason at any point yes it, it, they right. should have the bodily autonomy so, to make that decision so what i'm yes. saying is in the circumstance of down syndrome i think it is wrong to terminate a baby's life at nine months simply for having down syndrome but you would agree she is legally allowed to do so i, I think she should be legally allowed to do so whether or not i think that's a good idea is irrelevant well, then there's the clarification i think yeah. it should be illegal okay I don't, I think. So, so there are limits to how much bodily autonomy women should have. So, yes. Yeah, right. Uh, so that's, so, okay, yeah. so that's your sense. The pro choice argument, because you're pro abortion. Yeah. Right? It's, it's not bodily autonomy when it's like someone else's body and a baby is a someone else. So. Well, that's why the whole people that just blindly say bodily autonomy is stupid because it's like, well, okay, the, the, the other, the counter argument is that, well, it's not just that person's individual body. There's another person, another body yeah. that's in, you know, in the body. equation that you have to kind of you know deal with and yeah. to just pretend like it doesn't exist is ridiculous yeah so. that's why personhood is so important it's the russian yeah. well, doll the, thing look there's a right, person but, in that person there you go but that's why the conversation <laughs> the, the the real conversation i'd argue kind of stems more around like well when you know what exactly is a person what how do we define where personhood begins and you know all these sorts of of questions. course yeah yeah you know? I mean, I think they should. I think abortion should be up until you know third year, honestly, mm -hmm. in case you get an effective kid. But yeah, what are you gonna do? Sure. Pro, pro choice traditionally in this country put limits at around like fifteen to sixteen weeks. Meaning, if the baby is dependent upon the body of the mother, then it is the body of the mother, and she has final say. If the baby is viable, it can be removed in in a process that ends the pregnancy but doesn't end the life of the baby. That's kind of like 
the compromise where the baby gets to live and the woman no longer has to be pregnant. There seems to be this amoral argument where, well, but it just kill the baby anyway, which doesn't make any logical sense. That's the pro-abortion side. So if you go back to the 90s, if you go back to safe, legal, rare, et cetera, if you even look at Tulsi Gabbard in 2020, that's where I'm at. Conservatives are pro-life outright. Seamus would, would argue abortion in any capacity should be banned yeah. entirely. I'm in the traditional Democrat position. But you see, there is a tribal, amoral, illogical position of just let them kill the baby regardless. I don't, I don't see any logic there. I, I don't see how that makes sense morally or ethically or, or you, just mathematically. Right. So you said I'm pro-abortion. What I'm against is forced birth. And I don't think the state should be forcing women to give birth against. Forced birth is the biggest BS phrase that i've heard in a long time yeah that's controlling women's bodies no because if you just if you just leave it alone that birth is going to happen right like, yeah there yeah. is no force necessary no force required right just do not intervene and the birth is going to happen the, the 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 fact that they call it forced birth is just like trying to say uh anti-choice it's a phrase that's actually BS, you know? Sure. So it's I like, a, um, you know, I have the... a big problem with forced birth because you know what? Yes, I am pro forcing a woman to give birth to the human being right. that is inside of her. Yes, I'm pro forced birth. You're an idiot for even trying that. <laughs> yeah, it's well, it's, you know, this is the way these political conversations go. Everyone tries to define the opposition in the most negative way possible. That's why, you know, if you look at the two sides, what is it? We have pro-life and pro-choice. You know, one is like I'm in favor of life. The other one's like, I'm in favor of choice. And then they refer to the other side. You know, as like, oh, they want to control women's bodies. Oh, they like to kill babies, right? And so yep. forced birth is just yeah. Only one of them is of right, that. though. Only one of those is true, though, because the I want to they want to control women's bodies is BS. The women are in control of their body when they get pregnant, unless well, no, they're, they're raped. both no, they're both correct-ish, right? So like. Yes, one of them, you know, the pro-life side wants to limit restrictions on women to control their body. So that, I mean, that's true. That's not the fundamental reasoning behind what they want to do, right? And then you could say, well, they're killing a baby. Well, so that gets in the conversation of, well, how do we define a baby? But even if we do define a baby in whatever way that they want to define it, the primary reason for people to get abortions is not to kill the baby, right? So they're both kind be... of defining each other by th by their own moral argument which doesn't make sense because both positions have different moral arguments that they're arguing from or different moral positions I, that they're arguing from i i i am unconvinced but let's move on okay <laughs> damn it uh lance has a perfect stoner look and i couldn't find, <laughs> I couldn't I find paused, the blunt fast enough. Yeah. when it. i paused it, i noticed that but i didn't want to say anything and i was looking for it. the blunt i'm like where's my blunt my god my this is well, perfect where's my blunt the whole the whole argument too that lance is making the um woman's right to bodily autonomy that's not a quote illogical argument in terms of it's logically coherent it's just a fucking stupid and crazy argument <laughs> But it's like technically logically coherent. If your principle is women have a right to have choose their bodily autonomy and that's the ultimate thing, then I look mean, women have I rights guess. to the women have a right to be a murderer. Come on, don't <laughs> obviously. <laughs> right. Of course. Right. All women should be murderers. <laughs> Against okay. their will, which is what your position and your position is as so, well. So, I, so I'm, I'm against that. I, 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 think, I'm, that's, I think that's I, creepy I, I big government shit. I, I right. don't think they should be forcing them and, and turning completely them into agree. these viable wounds I against their will. I, I completely yeah. agree. I'm against forced birth, just like you. Cool. Except my difference is that if the baby's at eight months and can survive, they can take the baby out as if they would have an abortion, but not kill it in the process. If it's a viable womb at eight yep. months, is it, yep. is it viable? Yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. Oh my God, months, dude, you know it is. How does he not? Yeah, how does he not know that? Dude, this guy he's doesn't lying. know. He nah, he's just in the dark about any of the stuff he talks about. Nowadays, you can pull a baby out like at the end of the second trimester, and and like, well, it still can survive. Whenever I've heard Tim argue this, I understand his position, um, but that uh, they don't do that in these states. <laughs> is there any state that does this? Or they say, oh, you know, abortion. We'll take the baby out. Yeah, we'll take the baby out and put it in an incubator. I don't, does any state actually do that? I don't I think don't anyone know. does. I think they just, they just kill it. I, right? I think, I think that, I think that he's he's looking for he's looking for Lance to take a position more than actually find. Uh, right. No, but I mean, like this has happened. always been Tim's position. Is you know, they can um, take why, the baby out. They can take the baby out and put it in an incubator and then give it up for adoption. But well, I like. I don't position, know if any state though. actually ever does that. 
But I, it's a I good know, position. It should be. It is a good position. Yeah, maybe, maybe it could be something. But like, if 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 we get to the point where we can actually gestate a baby in an artificial womb, mm -hmm. abortion should be be outlawed. Period. Well, yeah. it's easy to say that now. Until we have like all these unwanted babies that end up, right. you know, fucking over society because they're yeah, all yeah. or something. That is, <laughs> like, that is, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, so yeah, I don't know. Like, I like, I understand what you're saying. Like, morally, like, I'm morally, like, yeah, yes, that makes morally. sense. But I'm like, well, how's this going to actually happen in reality? Yeah, because I was I just know. earlier saying that I am pro choice because unwanted babies are a problem for. I, I, I understand right. you're so, right, but yes. the, the emotional, the the gut in me says. It's if you can save a life, you should save that. Life. Yeah, I, I, agree. I agree. You know, because like I'm because I I am an agnostic, and I unless really they're on the subway yelling at people. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Does that um, mean I could just <laughs> like continue to make my own babies and give them up for adoption? I could just put like a hundred Adam babies out there in the world. Oh my I, God, Adam! Mm -hmm. This is the ultimate red pill strategy. <laughs> I know that's what I was just, thinking. Just, just keep pumping like, out the babies and giving them up for cucks. adoption. I'll be, I'll be yes. creating all these cucks. Do yes. you take care of my baby, you cuck? Oh my god, we gotta tell Rolla. We figured out. <laughs> I the know here. the secret. Yeah. Oh, we need I the artificial the womb. I yeah. saw some of it. I didn't watch the whole thing. Is he nuts? <laughs> I mean, that seems... depends upon your perspective. Because, like, he seems like he's nice on the internet and stuff. Like, I, I, I'm back, I haven't tried to, like, a back and forth with him, but he seems like he's nice, but he does seem like some of the stuff that he says, I'm like, you really believe that, or are you trolling people? Look, you know, I, like, some of the shit he says, I'm like, that can't be serious. Mm. I don't know if the... Look, I read all our comments, and I'm not sure. I feel like maybe the comments gaslit me a little bit and now i'm actually i don't really even know what his position is on the on the cucking thing like i feel like maybe we we're just talking past one another on definitions no. people thought we were talking past each other on the cuck thing we were not well there no, no on the, I'm, on the, i am i would like rollo to make his position on the dual mating strategy clear that the dual mating strategy means two guys because that's that's my big strategy? question. Yeah. He has this thing where there's a like all women have this dual mating strategy where they're looking for looks and resources, right? Which I agree, obviously. Everyone he, I think he, he is says they're for looking that. for alphas and betas, right? Right. But he's like he's saying that they're looking for that in two different people. And I some people in the comments are saying no, he means they're looking for that and if they can achieve that in one person that's optimal scenario but two people is backup scenario okay you're not okay you're not you, yeah. didn't, you missed you didn't explain it <laughs> okay okay his theory is the alpha fucks beta bucks dual mating strategy which is the idea that women will have sex with a quote-unquote alpha chad to have right. their genetic uh, material to produce the offspring but then they'll try to marry or settle down with or cuck essentially right. a beta someone who has a stable job or something who's nicer Right, you but people can test that, that in the baby. in the comments. That right. that's what he actually means. Well, okay, but so then, so then we when we talk, that was the original theory, right? Right. But then that's when we David kind of Buss's this, theory. It kind of, yeah, it kind of evolved. Now, I do think he, I, I believe he did say that you know theoretically, if a woman could find a person who is quote unquote the alpha who is you know physically attractive but also has a stable job, that they would be fine staying with them. That right. Way. I don't think he was contesting that idea. Right. Yeah. He was just saying what he was saying was that. Women have this innate. It seemed like he was. Well, actually, maybe he was contesting that because it seemed like he was saying that women have an innate, innate desire to marry a quote beta, but to fuck an alpha and to have their baby. So actually, mm -hmm. I I think you're right. I think that was. I don't think he was saying that the woman wants to settle down with one person, but I, right. I don't know. Maybe he wasn't clear on that element of it. I don't like. I don't. I. But after our talk, I assume that that was that he meant two men. Two, it was a two men strategy, but I think after he, yeah. people in the comments responded, that, that enough, was my interpretation. Um, yeah, that was the, my the, interpretation too. Right. I just don't want to mischaracterize his position. Sure, obviously. sure, sure. Yeah. Um, but the thing that the other thing that we were talking about the, that I think people were uh, contending was he said he was saying that um, all stepfathers and all people that adopt children are essentially cucks for yeah. doing for engaging that behavior. Yeah, which obviously we disagreed with. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that you can say everybody and all, but I mean, I some of like, them are cucks. <laughs> some well, stepdads I mean, are cucks, I, the, right? The thing that I, well, the thing that I'm thinking is like I I wouldn't want to father someone else's kid, mm -hmm. right? So like I'm dating a girl and she's got a kid, but like 
Mm. He's like seven, right? So right. it's not like I'm going to be dad, you know, I'm Phil, you know, right. and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, she asked, she asked, my girlfriend actually asked me this. She's like, would you date a woman that was pregnant? And I was like, no way. Like I would right. net, like I could not date a woman that was actually pregnant with another guy's kid and then like have a serious relationship and, and like I just couldn't do that. Like I, I right. it, it's just the wrong time. If I dated her, would I date a woman with a child? Yes, I obviously do. Um well that makes you a I, cuck though. And I don't I don't see that how I'm the cuck because I'm not supporting the child. Well, if you got I, married, like, you would be, right? I well, I mean the, the child's seven, so no. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're I've financially supporting the child, right? Well, I, I mean, no. I mean, I, again, well, if or emotionally if, if supporting were, the child, because right. I mean, you'd be the role model for the child, right? No, the kid's got a dad, right? Well, let's, let's say, well, the, but the dad is dad, right? He's out of the picture. Well, okay, but now you're changing everything. <laughs> well, no, I don't. To me, that to me, that's not really that's not important to the whole cuck dynamic. First of all, to be a cuck, classically meant you know you were unaware of the parentage, right? You're, the the woman. Or whomever is trying to pull a fast one on you. Okay. Right? Yeah. And so like to, to walk into a relationship where someone already has a child, you know, it's not, it's not really a cuck. But secondly, you know, what I was, you know, it's kind of the the, the process of, of this conversation was, I don't know, I, I, I think, well, I don't, I don't want to relitigate. It's going to be like an hour long conversation to relitigate this. We, you can watch yeah. it on your own if you want Let's to hear get, the yeah, cuck stepfather conversation. No, I want to, I want to, I want to hear, I want to hear Lance make a fool of himself. Let's yes. go. We're getting off topic. Yeah. He's six. after 20 after weeks. Bro, your whole 20, position after, yeah. is that women have a right to kill the baby even if they end the pregnancy, but, and there's no logic there. The, the logic is that I don't think you you agree with forced birth at a point. How? I, I, how? At eight I months? Don't. At eight months, Tim Pool thinks forced birth is fucking cool and poggy. Stop making I, I, stupid bullshit. But I, 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 no, at, at beginning of the second trimester, <laughs> I think uh, forced birth is cool. Well, he's not addressing... Tim's point. Tim Forced is saying birth. <laughs> Tim is saying Fuck. and I don't know if this is Lance doesn't understand it because most people do don't make the argument Tim's making or Tim's just, or Lance is just being intensely dishonest because you know with Lance always it's you know stupid or dishonest, right? Um he's not cuz Tim's position is well if you can take out the baby and put it in an incubator and give it up for adoption, why would you not do that over killing it? And Lance isn't really addressing that specific he's calling that forced birth, but it wouldn't be forced birth even by Lance's conception. Right, because it would be the same or similar process enough as it would be to abort the baby. You still got to put tools up in the woman's, you know, you know, hoo ha to get the baby out of there, one way or the other, right, alive or dead. So, no, 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 hold on, hold on. That's what this is. Nonsense, nonsense statement. Because I already said I agree with you. No, no, a woman should be able to end her pregnancy whenever she wants. A woman could end her pregnancy whenever she wants. Say it. Tim Pool said a woman can end her pregnancy whenever she wants. Yeah, I should mention giving birth on both ending a pregnancy. Make up something fake. Tim Pool agrees with forced birth is a false statement. You're lying. I have already said I believe that women have a right to terminate their pregnancy to a certain amount of time. At eight months. You then, the line. No, that, I didn't. The, yes, you no, just said that. You're, uh, well, if the baby is viable, that she shouldn't have the right to be able to terminate it. To right? kill the baby. Yes. I yes. said she can end the pregnancy whenever she wants. And ending the pregnancy can be giving birth or aborting the or baby. Or a C-section that keeps oh, the baby so alive. She has, to, she has to be forced to, to give birth against oh. her will in so, a C-section, but the baby is viable and they give it so off. So how, right? how do they remove so the hold baby? So either way, the baby comes. Forced to give birth against her will. He's, Tim is so on him because he is, this is exactly what he does on Twitter, so that you're totally right. Like, yeah. he just completely mischaracterizes someone's position. And Tim is like, I'm going to corner this guy. He always does this. He always lies and straw mans people's positions. I'm going to make him say <laughs> my position so right. everyone knows so, it. I think so Lance is, is so out of touch here that it's just like, he's just wanted to say, you're for forced births. And it's like that's the end of the NPC dialogue tree. Of course, in the conversation. He's like and then just like repeats straws. again and again and again. Because I feel like when he finally said it this time, Lance is finally like, "Oh, he's saying something different." Like he sort of finally maybe clicked, but then he's still going to try to say like, "Oh, well, it's still forced birth," because he doesn't want to look like he was wrong in the previous part of the conversation. So. That's so good, though. Comes out of her. This you're saying right. that. So, so, you more, you're saying, so you literally want forced so, birth. You literally. So one thing that I'm, I was, I'm really happy about. With this is I let Tim really went after him like this. I didn't realize that Tim was as uh, aware of of Lance and stuff and how and the search mm -hmm. and stuff. I knew you know mm -hmm. I knew he knew where they who they were, but I didn't know if he like 
was aware of their stuff and and how and dishonesty how it, is on Twitter. Yeah, you think know. you think this and is the, deliberate? Like he knew what he was going to do? Oh yes, because I think that Tim Tim knew he was going to get Lance because oh, okay. um wow. because Interesting. because because most of the time Tim most of the time when people come in Tim comes doesn't do a whole lot of research on the person because yeah. he wants to have like a, a a natural conversation he wants to learn about him and stuff so he doesn't do like a ton of background and stuff like right. that and I didn't and he was obviously ready for Lance Lance is right? notorious like he was, <laughs> yeah he was notoriously like, bad faith so like I'm I'm super happy that he was you know and and because I would have bet I was I was also ready had I been on the show <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't know that I don't know that I would have done as well as Tim but I would oh, yeah. would have been equally as aggressive and I'm familiar with Lance enough to know um and so yeah I, I just wanted to say that this is well, this is the this is exactly what I would want to see Tim do so it's funny um supposedly I, I tried to listen to the leftist mafia comment on this because i was curious what they'd say and it was like unwatchable um yeah because they talk over the, they don't pause stream and talk about it they just talk over it and shout and just say nothing of value they don't actually address any of the arguments at all because oh they're all my idiots God. um but one thing that was the only thing that was interesting is that before they actually watched the stream matt binder claimed that lance told him that when lance first sat down in the studio before the stream started Tim pulled the gun. You know, he has that revolver and the sword behind him. Mm -hmm. He pulled that gun off the wall and started cleaning it in front of Lance. No way. <laughs> and Lance is like, oh, is he like trying to threaten me with this? That's like, badass. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I, you I know, that look, was funny. they're they're in. Uh, everyone knows that. Oh, actually, no. I'm not going to say this because I'm not sure what people know. Go ahead. Okay. okay. I, I don't want to. You know, I, I don't want to dox anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, no, uh, no, I don't know what you mean. It's but best. Okay. It's best. But, uh, yeah, don't say anything. Don't, don't get interrupted. Look, the the whole point of this is for he's gonna Lance. listen. Wait, he's gonna land. Tim was gonna pull off. He's got the, the the revolver, like the pistol there. He's gonna pull it off. and He's gonna be like, "We should have a duel <laughs> at sundown." Like, Let's Lance. settle this. Yeah, the old fashioned <laughs> he throws the way. glove at him. No, he Lance's goal here is to say that Tim Pool is in favor of controlling women's bodies. Yes, right. That's exactly right. what he's trying to do. Literally no, wants to force women to give birth again. So, well, so, okay. so, I just so you're saying she, yeah. you're, you're saying she should she, they they should use the the, the 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 tools to rip apart the body and pull that out. Whereas I'm saying they should just take no, the baby. No, I'm saying out. she should have the right to decide what happens to her body. That's it. Okay, but I, so if <laughs> all right, either way, the child is coming out. You're making this argument about forced birth. Either way, what is in her body is going to be outside of it. The question is, is it okay to shove forceps into the skull of the small person who's inside of her and then tear them apart limb by limb to get them out? Or should we say, no, that's not an acceptable way of delivering a baby. You shouldn't kill that unborn child. How is that for either way it comes out of her body? Either way the child comes out of her body. It's not as if there's one scenario but, and, where and the for, pregnancy but, but, magically but, disappears and, 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 and the body. Right. Forced birth is a nonsense plot politics yeah. statement. But, but yeah, but in your scenario, she's being forced to give birth against her will. Like she can't she's decide. already pregnant, dude. I know, but you, we're not talking about just, forcing her to okay, do anything. She's endorse, pregnant. But then endorse that position. I just, did. Stick stick by it. I know, you, I reject the there's no such thing as forced birth. They're saying you can't kill that baby. Let me let me tell you how fascinating this is. Look at that. He wants Tim to endorse the position because then Tim is saying, Yes, I can. I want to control women's bodies. You yes. got me, Lance. Yeah, yes. because she the has the baby inside is her. so yes, she does. fervent yes. about yes. legalizing the killing of a baby at nine months that I can sit here and say I think women should be able to terminate their pregnancy whenever they want. But if the baby is viable, there's no reason. No she reason she has it. she has to be forced to give it. Then she has to be forced to give birth <laughs> and then give the baby up. Is what you're saying? Give and birth. Is, define. Yes. Okay. So so that is forced birth, right? So so so, so she can, she can. You're so right, Sid. He's completely at the end of the dialogue tree. Like that's where it ends. Control yeah. women's bodies. That's yeah, the well, last leg of the tree. Yeah. And he finally he he finally understood what Tim was saying, and now he's like, oh, I can't just say, oh, I misunderstood what you're saying. Okay, fair enough. He's like, right. oh no, I have to pretend weasel. Like, like yeah, I have to weasel. I have to pretend like I'm still right here. So no, you're still fair for birth. He Especially keeps, when looking he brought it up. Yeah. yeah, he keeps trying to get Tim to to say something and, and and consent to stuff, um, and I feel like that's that's he's looking to be able to tell his friends he got a win. Yeah, totally. Yes, he's that's looking exactly for what he wants. You're completely yeah, he's right. looking for the clip. He's like, if I can get this, then it'll be worth it. If I can get this, <laughs> then it'll be worth it. If I can, get... that's seriously because yes, if he can get a right. clip, it would go all over left, all over bread too. Blah blah blah, right. and Lance would look like a hero. This yes. game is but, so yes. weird. This game is only exists in the social media. Uh, I know, sad <laughs> ecosphere. He's like, I want that clip. 
of Tim Pool yeah. saying, I, Timothy of Pool, and <laughs> Contr- in favor I want to of control the forcing of Alberta against the women's. And I, Tim saw it. Like Tim knew. Tim was Tim was to, like yeah, was like, totally on. Like and so I mean it, it's just it's there's these are small nuanced things that people might not realize. But like that that's why like I think even though people give Tim a lot of grief, like Tim is good at this stuff, awesome. and that's awesome. par, that's exactly why. And this is also why Lance is bad at this stuff Listen, because what, he's aware and he and he's losing. Lance has all the subtlety of a chainsaw. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah, because if he was subtle, he would he would maneuver Tim there and wouldn't have to, and wouldn't have to sit there. Yes. And be like, do this, do yes. this, do this. You right. know that scene in American Psycho where he's chase where, uh, where Patrick Bateman's running down the hallway naked with totally, the <laughs> totally. That's him. That's him. He's like, running that's, after that's Tim. The Just way admit it. After Tim Pool, he's like, get back there and talk about fourth first. <laughs> Say it. Say it. You want to control women's bodies? You say want to it. Women's bodies. <laughs> say it. I got a cold, and I'm listening to myself laugh, and I'm just like, God, it sounds like I used to, like I sounded when I used to smoke. Oh no! <laughs> Sorry for sounding like an it's 80 fine. year old smoker. You That's okay. Fine. We love you. You sound great, Phil. Yes. Can't Thank decide you. to terminate Define it at, at eight birth. or nine months. Define give birth. You just said at eight months if the baby is viable. I say she... eight months. Define give birth. I'm, I'm trying to understand what you're saying by forced birth. What, is, what does birth mean? You just said when she is at Can eight or nine it? months. Okay, so she's at eight or nine months. I said viable. Okay, so it's viable. The baby's viable. She should have to give birth to it in some capacity. C-section, whatever. Define birth, and I can answer your question. Birth, the, the, the removal of a child into the world from a mother's womb. If the ba- so how do they do that? Uh, the woman pushes the baby out. So then what would you call an abortion at eight months? Is an the woman, abortion. Is the woman pushing the baby out? No, it's most likely a medical procedure done by a doctor. And what is that medical procedure? An abortion. Like, but what is that? What is an abortion? Yes. Like, what? How, what? how is it done? Yes. I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure how it's done in eight months. I know, I know, to, earlier, oh I know earlier on it's usually done with a, a series of you're, tools. You're I, more, I don't know how it's done in eight or nine Okay, months, so, so your moral argument is forced birth. I'm trying to understand what your position is. If you don't know how an abortion... I mean, I, Tim is actually being a little bit more charitable than he should have been with Lance because Lance already bit the bullet. He already, his definition of birth was just a woman, you know, producing a baby out into the world. Right. You're like, well, if you pull a baby out by force and kill it, it'd be abortion. <laughs> is that not having birth under your definition, Lance? Right, yeah. Like, you don't even need to do this. And it's done. Mm-hmm. And are you in favor of forced birth? Am I in favor of force? No, I'm against well, force birth. But you think that women should have to expel the baby, right? It's, it's completely fine for me not to know the medical procedure of how abortion is done to stand up for the rights of a woman's body. I, I don't need to know how people <laughs> oh perform abortions directly. But, but remo- I, I'm remo- not going to lie here. I'm not going to pretend a, a, removing that Removing a baby from a woman's body is birth. Oh, oh okay. so you're, you're saying it doesn't count. It, no, 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 it, no, no, it's I'm birth to, of, a different, of a different nature. I don't think you have a definition, and I'm trying to understand what you mean by forced birth, but if you can't define the removal of the baby in a different way, I don't know what you're saying. Birth, birth, Tim, like the birth so of is, a child. So is a C-section a birth? Uh, sure, yes. It, it, it is a form of, of extracting a living child uh, that is viable to live in the real world. Um, there you that's go, how you define Lance. Birth. Extracting a living child to live in the real world. No, I would define birth as someone giving birth. They are pushing the baby out of their body. I'm so, going to so use right, the so word think... to define the word. It's so funny. Lance accidentally stumbled upon a loophole. He could have tried to argue. Well, it's you know a living baby, right? And then he for, didn't realize it and went back to his old definition that traps him in the conversation. Because if you killed the baby inside, it wouldn't be a living baby. Right. Yeah. I thought, yeah, but he didn't figure that out, so. He was, Lance is just stumbling around. He's stepping on every rake. Okay? He's so trying. The out and they turn the lights off. And He's he trying to get every rake. <laughs> I think women should be forced to do that, right? You don't think women should be forced to push babies out of their body? But the baby is in their body, so it's got to come out somehow. So you're going to take it out with a C-section? No, I, I don't know. Okay. But, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out what you mean by this. So that would be forced birth. So She's what, forced to give a, and make a child, a viable child, live in the real world. I mean, right, right, so when you're so pregnant, that, the baby's right, going to yeah. come out of you yeah. at some point. That, that's the Either point. we rip no it apart what or happens, you give birth The baby naturally. is coming out of the woman, right? Yeah. Yes. I so there's, 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 no, there's no being in favor of that or not. It happens, period. Yes. Okay, so what's your... Can you give the baby puberty blockers and then keep it in there for an extended <laughs> amount of time? <laughs> I'm keep curious. it there forever. I'm How's curious. Point. What's my point? Am I in favor of a natural process by which a woman has to have a baby removed from her no matter what anyone does, says or does? 
Your point is that at eight or nine months, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Tim. You are wrong. Yes, I'll stop you right there. <laughs> because, because when you keep saying eight or nine months, that's not what I said over and over and over again. Viability is after six months. Vi uh, viability yes. is. Okay, that means that there's so more soon, than a 50% chance of survival. It's not six months. So as soon as, soon as, 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 soon as, as, as the weeks. baby it's is not six months. So as soon as the baby is viable, Tim, as soon as the baby is viable, then it's okay for the woman, even if she doesn't want to have it anymore for whatever reason, she should have to be forced to have it extracted from her. And, and then live. Is that correct? Is that your position? I, well, it's not forcing the woman to have a baby live if the baby's already alive. You see what I'm saying? Like, you right, can, so, so, so you're, you're, okay, here's so we're, we're here's talking about semantics. I got a, I got a, semantics. I got a compromise semantics. for it. I got a compromise sure. for it. It's not right. semantics. We'll tell the mother we killed it, but we'll sneak it off and give it to someone else. Does that work for you? No, because I still think she should have autonomy. She should have the right to do it if she wants to. <laughs> of course, you she should kill the baby out she's she already born? I don't want her to kill a baby. I want then her to have- why do you keep I, saying it? Because he wants her to have the right to kill the baby, though. Like, <laughs> yeah. why doesn't he just say that? I That's mean, parents should have the right to, as I said, abort their child up to three years. Yeah. That yep. should be the new rule. I mean, that's a controversial position, so it's, I hope you know. Well, that. listen, there's a lot of terrible twos out there, and maybe they'd be less terrible if they knew, you know, they could get aborted at any moment. <laughs> of course, yeah. You know? Straighten up, kid. More. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That really, that really makes that old uh, Bill Cosby uh, bit about, I'll make another one just like you. Uh, that really makes it. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Check out Bill Cosby himself. It's an old right. 80s. Listen, thing. I brought you into in this world. <laughs> exactly. I'll make what, another one just what, like you. Hold on. What kid has not heard that? Do parents not say that anymore? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. My parents never said that to me. Oh, really? Oh, I man. knew that. My parents well, said that to me all the time. I, well, you, yeah, you were a little fucking I was monster. A, I, bet. I was a holy terror. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, I know that my my mom's parents said it to her, so she was extra sensitive to not Oh, say that's <laughs> holy cow. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. She felt yeah. guilt. She's like, I will not. Do this to I will not emotionally torture you like my parents tortured me. So much of my raising, and I was hyper aware of this. So much of how I was raised was directly because of how my mom hated the way that she was raised, and I'd hear wow. about it constantly as a child. Wow, wow. What my mom just told me that if had. I, my mom just told me that if I was first, there wouldn't have been a K, which is my sister. Hmm. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I don't think the terrible twos. I don't think two year olds think logically so i don't think you can threaten to abort them and they would act behave any better i think i mean you don't know until you try oh that's true we good need a point. double blind study on this good <laughs> point good point you, remember, <laughs> you have a study you to remember? back this up adam? You remember what i don't was, yeah do you remember no what it was study. like when you were two adam come on yeah well on. i yeah i do remember it was terrible <laughs> terrifying I want her to have the ability to choose. That's different, and that is a fundamental. You... I want her to have the ability to choose murder. <laughs> like, <laughs> part of this, the baby's out of her body, right? Forcibly. In no, your no, 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 no. Let's, 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 let's say she... twenty-four weeks. The woman goes to the doctor and says, "I want this baby out of me." And the what, doctor, what, what if she says, "I don't want to have this baby"? I don't. I don't want to have this baby. Okay. Okay. And the doctor says, "I will remove it." Okay. Uh oh, the baby's alive. What do we do? So you forced her to give birth? No, 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 no. She said, doctor, I'd like an abortion. He says, you got it. Step and so right he's, up. he's lying to her. No, no, no. He does the abortion and it fails. And an the baby, abo an the abortion baby. is terminating a pregnancy. So, so there's, no exactly. such thing, there's no such thing as a trick abortion. You can't no, trick. They're, they're called failed abortions. <laughs> failed abortions yes. where doctors like trick yeah, right. women into no, taking the no, babies No, 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 no. So when they- How is Lance Performing have- stupidity. I forget. Someone on Twitter, I think, I think it was Layman or someone said that like, how, how does Lance- He's a public figure who has political conversations as his job. I know. And he's so unaware of so many issues, so many like very basic arguments and issues relating to this. This question. is performative stupidity, man. He's just. No, I think though. he honestly doesn't know about this, about failed abortions and kind of the complications that arise from such a scenario. <laughs> why even? Why have these conversations? Hassan is never coming on and it bums me out. Hassan, yeah, because I t I know Tim's. In oh Biden yeah, and stuff, yeah. And, but after after this, Hassan. after oh this, you're right, yeah. This Hassan is... is never gonna go on. Well, okay, after Hassan this Hassan, all he has to do is like not have his pants fall down, and he'll look like a genius. <laughs> <laughs> so, I Maybe this is good I, for it. I don't know that Hassan can make that uh make that guarantee. <laughs> that, uh, well, it is kind yeah. of true. Lance has brought all of this on himself. All of these yeah. topics, even the trans topic, which we haven't even got to yet, he's the one that brings it up and dives in. I told you, he threw. He goes into the room. He throws all the totally. Around. No, that's a perfect analogy. And then he's like, "All right, Tim, now come at me." And Tim's like, "No, you come at me." And he's like, "Okay." <laughs> he's like, "Now that I've stepped on all the abortion rakes, 
here's some trans rigs for you. <laughs> There's not even more rigs. Second wave. <laughs> you thought I was finished, fool. <laughs> like he's got two black eyes. Yeah. <laughs> he's bleeding from his mouth. <laughs> Round two. Seen nothing yet. <laughs> Perform the abortion, as Seamus explained. They stick metal tools into the brain, scramble it up, and rip its body parts Delicious. apart, okay. and then pull it out chunk by chunk. Okay. When the babies are smaller, sometimes they pull them out, but the babies don't die. They survive, mm -hmm. right? So my question is, in the instance of a failed abortion, oh, so what should be done? A failed abortion being that the, the child is living. It's yes. outside of the mother. Yeah. At that point, you cannot kill that child. That would be murder. Oh, okay. <laughs> Agreed on that point. <laughs> right. Yeah. So then where does the mother's choice come in to before, kill? Before that procedure takes place. So she she has a choice to choose what she wants to have done with her body. If, if, <laughs> if she goes to a doctor and the doctor is like, I'm going to perform an abortion, which the assumption would be that I'm about to terminate the child, but then he just secretly sneaks the child out of there. That's not performing an abortion. You're, you're just being deceptive yeah and the doctor would should go to prison if they did something like that in my opinion i think well, you go to prison if you should go to prison if he performs an abortion <laughs> snap yeah i heard that <laughs> yeah. opposite surprised. perspective so there's also something that none of us know because has i don't no think any of us are medical but but lance keeps doing this thing where like he, again he did it again because because tim asked very specifically you know what do you what about in a, in a failed abortion situation mm -hmm. and then lance keeps reframing it like well if he sneaks it out of the the woman you know, if, he, if if the abortion doctor, like he puts like a little red curtain on top of her vagina and he says, and now I'll make this baby disappear. And then yep. he pulls it out of the side of her like the lie. No, it's the you know, like, that's not... Some, yeah. Sometimes the tooth fairy comes in and, and yanks the baby out when oh, the woman's of sleeping. Right. <laughs> Everyone knows that Bigfoot is very good at smuggling exactly. fetuses out of wounds. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Santa Claus, too. Yes. He wants to place blame on everyone but the woman. Well, no, he just, he refuses to engage in what the argument is. He has to keep reframing, attempting, very as the subtlety of Patrick Bateman the Chainsaw, refrain the argument in some way he thinks gives him an optical win, but it's so blatantly dumb and obvious. Totally. No tact or skill that it's just, it's <laughs> awful. I, I oh, can't believe, awesome. I, I can't believe. No tact or skill. <laughs> Essentially, I can't believe that like uh, Mindwaves or whoever it was, I think it was Mindwaves, was like, oh, Lance actually won this conversation. I'm like, what? What fucker? What are you talking about? What conversation? Yeah. Oh, no, we haven't got to the part, the part he wins where he pulls out the left-handed chart. That's that's the winning chart, right? Yeah. He pulls out yeah. a chart? Oh, I was just He pulls listening. out the little left-handed graph that all the idiots point to. Oh, know, man. Talk about trans issues. That's not good. It's not the doctors. The the difference on the physiology of the female body uh, giving a nine month abortion, having that happen, or the actual birthing process, whether by C section or natural birth, uh, it might have vastly different consequences on the female body. So that's something to take into oh, account. Oh, so well, so wait, wait, wait. Remember the Born Alive Act? Yes, that was a Republican mm -hmm. position, wasn't it? What was yeah, what was well, that? Yeah. So th there have been a couple of different born alive acts in different years. But what they basically say is that if the abortion fails, it is not legal to kill the child. Well, that's good. Wasn't like wasn't that. that Republicans were trying to pass? The Republicans a law? were trying to pass that. That was one of the only things Obama voted on in the Senate. He voted against it. Oh my God. Obama <laughs> voted against it. Against but it. But you yes. would be in favor of that. In favor of what? The Born Alive Act. I'm not completely in familiar with it. So uh, if I was is born alive after guys, an attempt abortion, I don't know why you're why I'm at, even here, man. I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It has the same protection of law and degree as a newborn. Um, yeah, I would be okay with that because at that point, it's a it's a, it's a human. If you're killing a person that is alive outside of a womb, then that's murder, right? Yeah, I yeah. agree. Can oh, I ask you another? Another good observation here is Lance's content is exclusively focused on dunking on right-wingers not really examining the issues or or the policy choices so I, I think he only understands the perspective of straw manning right-wing positions is he i mean would you consider him a grifter do you think he believes now i mean he doesn't obviously he doesn't know his positions well but do you think that he kind of believes them what do you, you know what i mean i, mean, I don't grifting is always tough for me because I don't necessarily know. I mean, what you you just mean grifting as being dishonest? Like I think of I, grifting as being dishonest. Like he's yeah, not really like a I, leftist. Yeah, exactly. I think I think a grifter is someone that lies about their position because it's profitable. 
I don't think he really has positions. That's my point yeah. is that his position is really how do I dunk on Tim Pool? How do I dunk on Ben Shapiro? How do I dunk on Sargon of Akkad? Like he has yep. these content creators that he goes after. And his content is based on making their arguments seem ridiculous, which doesn't really address the, you know, the positions, right? Like if your goal is really just to make the other person's arguments seem ridiculous, you've got a lot uh, of different constraints. And if your goal is to understand the actual issue, like they could literally be right on the issue and you're yeah. dunking on a position that's correct, which I think happens a lot. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah. So this is why when they're talking about the abortion stuff, all of these other people have tried to understand the per understand the position, understand, you know, the left wing position and the right wing position. Lance is completely lost because he doesn't understand either of those positions. Like yeah. this all came up basically trying to dunk on Tim yeah. Pool's totally reasonable pro choice position that you shouldn't be able to abort babies at nine months. Yep. Yeah. Which he wants to say is that's a crazy position, Tim. Of course, that's, the woman should be able to commit murder whenever she feels happen. like it. It doesn't happen, Adam. It doesn't happen. <clears throat> it doesn't happen, but it should be able to happen if she feels <laughs> so inclined. And the thing is, like, the, his argument is almost like I'm principled, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. similar to that. It's like, I don't want to say no because I think she should have the right, but I don't think it's right to do it so i would never endorse it it's immoral but she should have the right but at this that so that in, implies that i'm a principled believer in the rights of women but he's not a principled person no and it's it's very clear on on most of his stuff that he's not a principled person so i don't understand like why well i mean so it, it just rings empty to me that the whole like oh well you know i want this because this is the principle of it and but my right. morality says this. It's like it's like you don't have a principle or a morality because you're on the left. So like it's all subject. <laughs> well, it's all subjective. You know, it's all it's it's all subjective. And 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 if he's a consequentialist, like he's looking for the victory of the left and and you know quote unquote progress towards the uh, the ultimate progressive utopia that they're looking for. So then there it doesn't matter the principles. All it is is does it further my political goals? You know. Well, to, to be fair. That is the principle. It's not that they don't have a principle. Okay. It's just it's not a principle towards consistency of a, of an ideal of a thought or something. The that, principle that is, is right wing or bad. I yeah, think that's that the only power. principle Lance is working under. Sure. And Tim, he perceives as a right winger. God, we haven't even gotten to that. That's amazing. See, that's this good. is not a gotcha. We, we agree I, on that. I, that's great. I, I, I want to ask in good faith. So yeah, of course. You believe that the moment after the child is outside of the birth canal. Sure. that they are now endowed with human rights. Yes. However, when they are inside of the mother, literally anything you do to them is acceptable because they're inside of the mother. Oh, oh no, I don't think anything is acceptable, <laughs> but I think the mother should still have the choice, ultimate uh, authority over what happens to her body. But wait, there's wait, wait, a wait, child wait, inside wait, wait, of her hold body. On, hold on, hold on. Not what her. about yes. meth? Uh, like, should she be allowed to do meth? Yeah. Uh, I think if someone is doing meth while they're pregnant, that it is completely acceptable mm -hmm. for something mm -hmm. like... Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what the name of the service is in the United States. Child for, services? I guess child ECFS child services. would be... Oh, yeah. well, it's her body, though. Yeah, it's her body. If she wants to do meth, what's the big deal? Uh, the big deal is that it's, she's intentionally trying to kill a child. <laughs> Hold on there a minute. <laughs> yeah, I see where we're going. I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. Yep, I see where we're going here with my favorite. <laughs> yep, I see where we're going here. It's like... He, he, oh, he immediately man. knew he stepped on that. That rake was so large. Even Lance was like, oh, no. <laughs> he, like, he's just like... Fuck the clip that I wanted. I just gave to Tim. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes, you're right. You're right. Hold on here he's a like, second. He's like, yep. I just literally did everything that everyone was afraid of. I yep. just did. I but then she's trying to everybody right. kill a child. What do you think an abortion is, you fucking moron? <laughs> oh, God, it's so good. He, like literally that's he's just like what the reason he got on a plane and flew all the way there and stuff he just gave to tim pool wrapped up and tim, yep. and tim's response is just hold on hold here. on there a minute hold on, hold on partner <laughs> look, look at that face rewind it and do the hold on there a minute again hold on partner <laughs> you done fucked up now 
That's, what's the big deal? Uh, the big deal is that it's, she's intentionally trying to kill a child. Hold on there a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on there a minute. I mean, what yeah, is an so good? What is an abortion bad. if it's not intentionally <laughs> trying to kill a child? I know. I mean, especially oh like, especially like at nine months or eight months. Oh or, God! I mean, you got that a big old belly at eight months. Hold on, months. partner. Though <laughs> 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 so I will say, I will say, uh, Tim could have been a lot meaner. Of course oh, he could have. And he didn't. Oh, so you, so you have know. to give even if you don't like Tim, you have to give Tim credit. He could have been super fucking mean. You know, this could have been like you fucking buffoon, you stupid fuck. I like, know. Yeah. Nobody like I would have never insulted him, but I don't know how like Seamus and Surge and, and oh I don't know how Seamus and Surge weren't like just exploding. I I like Ian, I I kind of feel like Ian might be like, well, what? And just be like confused for a you second. You would have been like, what the fuck? I, I, yeah, I would have been like, oh my God. <laughs> so abortion, abortion by meth is wrong and illegal, but abortion by doctor, now that's different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, interesting. That's completely yeah. different, okay? Yeah, well, you don't want the woman to enjoy the process too much. <laughs> they, I mean. Who's, who's controlling women's bodies <laughs> now? Jeez. Man. All right. Yeah. yeah. I see where we're going. I don't. I don't understand what you're saying. It's her body. It's her if body. She wants to do meth. What's the problem? Well, first off, doing meth is illegal. Period. Doesn't matter if you're doing it with a child or not without no, a child. Not an organ. So, methyl and dioxin, MDMA. It's a Maybe type it's of meth. alcohol. Wait, then. sorry. What? Not crystal meth. meth. Crystal meth There's is legal in organ. No, no it's not crystal. <laughs> Hold on a second. Did I... <laughs> MDMA is a kind <laughs> of meth. Methyl and dioxin, <laughs> methamphetamine is yeah. uh, e ecstasy. That's a kind of meth. There's also crystal meth, which is not legal. Is MDMA happening? is legal in some places for therapy sessions. I don't know if it's legal for yes, it pregnant is. women. Okay. It is. Where's MDMA? Where's MDMA legal? Well, I'm That's right. I'm Who cares? There. That's not. This is irrelevant to the argument. I'm moving I, there. I, Oregon decriminalized possession. Oh, in you were right. But I don't know. If but that's... I'm just. I, okay, okay, dude. So like, De sorry, decriminalizing so, possession is different than legalizing crystal meth. You know, you. you know those two things are completely different, right? Uh, if well, you're, it's a question if you're, whether you can charge. Tim, Tim totally left. Let him off the hook here. He should. Did he not come back to it? I don't think he does. Yeah. Oh, come on. He let him get away. He totally let him slip through his fingertips. Look, he, he was literally <laughs> impaled on a rake there. And Tim <laughs> helped him up. Oh, right. wait, wait, wait. So, oh, hold on. Yeah. What? So, so, when you, so when you decriminalize a small amount of drugs, that means if uh, you're caught with that drugs by a cop, that means if you're arrested, you cannot be charged for one gram. Okay. He's Lance, so... this is, Lance is like desperate. Like, I have to change the subject. Change like, the subject. I know. Enough, they'll forget. Okay. I know. He's so desperate to change yes. the topic. Look at that. That's the face of desperation. Right there. He's like, like okay. okay, let's talk about drugs. Let's forget I ever brought a portion <laughs> up. I'm two that, grams, whatever that what is. legalizing is. No, this is decriminalization, not legalization. We there, never said legalization. Thing, legalization is a semantic term. It doesn't mean anything. Yes, it means Either that, it, it, there's, no it means that there's no longer a prohibition on that product. Okay, so if a woman does meth, she's Thank legally allowed to have it, right? Is she legally allowed to do it or possess it? Who can I mean, what's the difference? <laughs> Well, God. two very different things. You can be legally allowed to possess oh, of course, and not be legally allowed to take things. drugs, for example. Alcohol. So she does alcohol. Can a woman chug a fifth of vodka while pregnant? Uh, yeah, she can legally. But do you think she has a right to do so? I think she has a right to do... Yes, she has a right to do it. I don't agree with it. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and heroin? Uh, it's illegal. I, I Actually, I don't <laughs> think heroin's illegal. I think heroin actually is was legalized. I think it's controlled, He's... but I think that one specifically was oxycodone and other drugs. So... She she has a right to do it. Whether or not I agree with her doing it, that's completely different. I don't agree with a woman who. So wait, so so Lance actually thinks that a woman. So he said no, originally he didn't, he but now he's saying think. that he does. He doesn't think that think. a woman should be able to do. You yeah, know, he's drugs literally changed his position last without thirty you know, seconds the, caring about the child. Yeah, yeah that's pretty wild. But, but the changing of position is is like it's what he's been doing all night. Yeah, flip flopper. Yeah. This guy flip flops have... worse than Romney. I don't even, but the thing is, it's like, I don't even think that it's, I like, I, I think it speaks to your point earlier. It's not flip-flopping. It's, it's, it's the, that there is no principle except for, you know, power and, and winning and, and figuring out a way to make the, and, the right or Tim and, Pool look bad. 
This is more like dodging, though. This is like dodging and weaving and trying <laughs> yeah, to like yes. not Fair get enough. pinned down on anything. Uh, Fair enough. Fair enough. Look, Sitch and I get in this mode where we just want to zero in on you know the substance of what we're talking about, and people constantly dip and dodge and weave. Try to change like... the subject. To... Well, this is what this is literally our conversation with with Lance that we had. He would refuse. Any framing that you try to put an argument, he just refuses to engage with any framing whatsoever. Right. You, you know, and this speaks to the fact that he doesn't actually have a position because when you have positions, you just go in and you explain them. Of course. Right? Like, so yeah. that's why that's why I was so, so I can clearly articulate that my position on abortion is unsatisfactory to people that are pro-life. Yes. I can articulate totally. that. And I can back that up. I can say, I know you're not going to be happy with this. I know this is not going to be good enough for you. This is what I feel. And I'm okay with us disagreeing. Lance isn't articulating a position because he's not actually, he's not, he's not, doesn't have a position. If you have positions, you don't have to worry about being slimy and dodgy and stuff like that. You just say it and then you're consistent because that's what you think. It's like, it's, it's, yeah. it's the same thing about lying. You don't lie because you have to remember your lie. Like that's the yeah. that's the best reason to not lie is you never have to try and figure out what you said. You can just be like, I don't know, this is what I think. And then next time you say, I don't know, this is what I think. And it happens to be the same because it's what you think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Lance is terrified. Was, uh, Lance is terrified his position is going to be the same as Tim Pool's, so though. That's what he's trying yeah, to avoid. Totally. Mm. That's what, that, to... that is one of the things he's thinking. I think there's probably a bunch of things going on, which is part of the reason why he does so bad because yeah. he's he's not prepared for this and and you know et cetera et cetera. But but yeah, yeah. if you just go in and tell the truth, it's like it comes out, you know. Abortion at nine months. I think or that is, that is like lie. why the fuck. But it's done that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Are we going? Mr. George Peterson. I did know. But I think she has the right to do it, right? But do you think it's ethical that she like? Oh, it's I don't think it's ethical. No, of course not. Because some some things it's unethical, but she has the right to do it. Well, I mean, again, be... people can. There are things in our society we think are unethical. People still do, right? Right. Yeah, a lot of people think pornography but just, is it, unethical, but they don't. Right. Yeah. But most people would agree. Like, okay, we don't even have to use baby a killing though. Such <laughs> if there's a if there's a sleep medication that a woman takes mm -hmm. um, regularly. And then when she's pregnant, the doctor says, listen, if you take the sleep medication, it's going to like totally fuck up your baby. Right. And she's like, I don't give a shit. So she's pregnant, right? <laughs> like, like, obviously, we're like, wait a minute. Yeah. I don't think that should be allowed. Right. Sure. Yeah. So Ethically, it should be. You know, I'm against it ethically, but she should be allowed to do it. <laughs> no, exactly. Okay. Legal that are unethical, in my opinion. True. And should those be made illegal? Uh, I mean, that's a very broad question, right? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry. Things. Personal use of methamphetamine is allowed. It's a, it's a civil <laughs> citation, like a traffic <laughs> ticket, not a criminal citation. <laughs> so allowed maybe is, a, is hyperbolic. <laughs> Look at Lance right suspicious. now. Look at his, <laughs> did you yeah. see his face over there? He's like looking down. He's like, oh, crap. <laughs> very suspicious that Tim is so interested in where meth is legal. <laughs> not, not saying anything. Uh, oh, it is a yeah. civil citation to be caught using uh, methamphetamine in Oregon. You get a ticket for it, but not, not no no crime. So I, I just looked up the Born Alive Act, by the way. It says this bill is deliberately misleading and offensive to pregnant people and doctors and nurses who provide their care. It is another attempt by anti-abortion politicians to spread misinformation as a means to get a warped political end, to ban safe and legal abortion. It's an entry point to try and make abortion illegal. Where did you read this? Okay, well, well, no, hold, this hold on, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't care. I mean, <laughs> wh who, who cares about the Born Alive Act? My, the question was... I if if an abortion happens but the baby survives, can you kill it? And he, Lance already said no. So I, I we're done with that. So he would, yeah, 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 for sure. So and any other political arguments, anyone left, right, or otherwise trying to change that? No, 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 it's irrelevant. Once the baby's born, it's it's a baby. So yeah, so it has, it has the same rights as every other human at that point, right? This is it's this an is, American. This, this, this is an interesting. I, I think this this falls in line with the idea of anarcho tyranny that we were talking about. The, my my view of the modern left is that their positions are nothing but chaos. There, there's wait. So we never get. So he never gets no. a full statement on the doing math. He let him pregnant. get away. He let him get away. Such. Damn, come on. <laughs> there's no logical pathway towards preserving life, uh, improving people's lives. It seems to be only. It's like it's like it's like yin yang, right? There's one side that's talking about long term planning, that's logical racist. thinking, and improving the world, and one side that takes the inverse position, no matter what.
For instance, 25 people push in front of a subway. Nobody bats an eye. One guy, three guys try to subdue a man and now they want prison. That's like a weird inversion of what the law is supposed to do. The law should stop the people who are pushing people on the trains and protect the people on the train who are being victimized. But the left's position is the inverse of it, right? Are you asking me for like a, I mean, a, an affirmation of that? Because if you ask no, me, no, I'm just what, saying like that's my view. So and that was the end when of my you statement. when you say the the left's idea are all chaos, I mean, if you really wanted to boil down what the left is fighting for, especially myself, it's expanding freedom. I I, I believe in freedom. I love freedom. I, I'm sure everyone here likes freedom too, right? You're well, all about freedom. Like, I love democracy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> for exactly. Freedom. It's like when it's like when it's what like when leftists talk about democracy they don't really mean democracy they mean the democracy of the people that are in the left mm -hmm. they exclude everyone that is not in the left that's what mao did that's right? good politics oh. man <laughs> yeah but he talked like when when and when the left does it here mm -hmm. they mean the same thing oh when yeah you hear the when you hear the democrats talking about the republicans are after our democracy the republicans are excluded from our democracy of like, course it's the outsiders trying to come after the the in group, and it's totally the same thing that Mao did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's bro. terrible. They don't, and he's Canadian, so I don't. Whatever he says, <laughs> even worse. Canada's so, got some messed up stuff going on up there, man. Of course, yeah. I heard that Lance had like the jab seven times, <laughs> just, just to be sure. Just to Is that make what you heard. Just to make sure it worked, yeah. To make sure, yeah. yeah. Okay. You got to how do you define yeah. freedom exactly? So for me, I, I believe in a democratic process where we don't have tyrants, we don't have dictators, we don't have kings or queens. We have the ability as a democracy to be able to vote for who we work for, or sorry, who, who our leaders are, right? Like we want to be able to vote for our president, our prime minister. I, I, I believe in that fundamentally. But my other thing is I want to expand that freedom into the workplace because we spend about eight hours a day every single day in our works, our jobs. I want to expand freedom there. So people who work at their jobs for eight hours a day have the ability to vote for things in their lives, better health care, better working conditions, whether or not their boss is corrupt and stealing from all of them. I want to expand that. I want to expand freedom into other parts of life. That's, so that's, you, that's a fundamental belief for so me. So what do you mean by stealing from them? Uh, stealing wages, for example. Like actually shorting someone's check and so like, so the largest form of theft in america right now is wage theft if you look, I had it happen to me i sued i i went to the national well, labor you. board and we won how does it happen yeah. as you should so there's a ton of ways. not paying overtime not paying overtime yeah. uh, bosses uh simply just garnishing checks or garnishing wages stealing tips or thinking that tips are justification to pay them lower salaries and stuff like yep. that yeah all of it bullshit and when you look at theft every single like you look at the stats right cars being stolen jewelry all that Wage theft blows everything out of the, like they're not even comparable. I got, you know, I like got it's one down here and then it's like the other one's fucking all the way got, up there. I got a story for you. So uh, I worked at a company. I get a paycheck. I'm good at math and stuff. <laughs> and so I look at it and I'm like, hey, there's a problem with my paycheck. And they go, no, it's good. And I'm like, no, it isn't. There's a problem with my paycheck. Fix it. And I, and I, I very quickly was like $67 missing. I want it fixed. And I want it fixed now. And they went, uh, give us a few minutes. Came back 15 minutes later, handed me a check. I looked at it and said, are you joking? And they were like, huh? And I was like, this is wrong. I'm not an idiot. Fix my paycheck. Went to a couple other employees. They said, I said, let me see your paychecks. I looked and I went, come with me. Walked right to the National Labor Board in Chicago and said, this is what they did. They took our statements. The, we went to the company and we told them we were going to form a union because of what they had done. They fired us on the spot for doing it. We sued them. Nice. And then uh, I'll give you air quotes in saying we won. What actually happened was after six months of being out of work, they said you can get retro pay, which will be $7,000 each, or we can go to fight and then I'll give you your job back. And I'm like, if they give us our job back, they're going to retaliate against us. No, no, that's illegal. And I was like, oh, come on. So we won the fight, but it really means they were able to fire, fire us to stop us from forming a union. So what would be a yeah, good so, better example of expanding? Sorry, Seamus. Oh, no, something? no. I just want to make the point. Uh, I'm not, I, I haven't seen the stats on wage theft causing more in losses than all other forms of theft combined. I'll just have to take your word for that. And I'm willing to grant that for the sake of I think that's this discussion. True. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm willing to grant it if that is the case. And at the very least, for the sake of argument, 
I certainly don't agree in involuntarily democratizing all workplaces. That's probably a much longer, interesting economic discussion. Happy to engage in it with you guys, too. And I suspect we would all have different views on it. I don't know if you want but to go to other issues or if you we want do. to talk I, about that. I, have a I would very like to talk about that. Talk about as well. Budweiser. Yeah. You're going to move to Bud? Budweiser. I, I, I do want to talk about LGBTQ+. We got to do it. So why, here we, why, why and, here. and Budweiser opens that door. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, why the Anheuser-Busch CEO yeah. has finally disavowed the Dylan Mulvaney yeah. ad. In private to investors, though he's not made a public statement, sales are down 26%. They're going to be giving out free cases of beer to distributors, and they've vowed to spend millions of dollars in marketing. But uh, the boycott is particularly effective, I would say. And there's videos now coming out of people at sporting events where the Bud Light is just behind the counter totally full and everyone's buying other brands. So uh, did Ian and Seamus both just leave at the same time? <laughs> yeah, I don't know where they went. But they, they ran just for both it. Leave. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's 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 jump into this. What are your sure. thoughts on the on the Budweiser thing? Uh, my thoughts are keep going. You're doing awesome, all of you. I, I mean this to every single person protesting. And so here's another point where he is just, it's he's saying that he agrees, but the reason that he agrees is is totally the antithesis to the point. You know what I'm saying? Which is like when he does the, uh, when he does the, uh, what he does with the, the Second Amendment, where he's like, oh, I think people, you know, it's like he, he, he agrees, but he's agreeing for a, 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 a different totally, reason. Yeah, a different reason. So, and we're and, trying and to do like a, like a bit. It's like a setup in a bit here. Yeah, so and right. it, I feel like that's just totally dishonest. And and he doesn't pull it off in any kind of compelling fashion either. When I watched this, I wasn't like, ooh, that made it made Tim look bad. I was like, well, God. I don't know if it's dishonest. I feel like it's like a failed. He's trying to be like cutesy, and it's not Maybe, working. Yeah. Right? It's like, mm, okay, like, yeah. okay, buddy. A failed gotcha. A failed cutesy gotcha. It's a failed cutesy. I don't know. It's a yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, it, it's an attempt to look clever that kind of fell on its face. Yes, yes. Yeah. Bud Light, fuck yes. I am so here for this. It's fucking amazing. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, Bud, Bud, Budweiser sucks. Anheuser-Busch sucks. It's a massive multinational corporation. They're absorbing... super anti-LGBTQ+, so it's been beautiful to see. <laughs> I love it. Oh, they donate so much to right-wing Republicans Agreed. who push anti-LGBTQ laws. So Anheuser-Busch getting taken down. Oh, man, I, I'm so here for it. Keep Me going. Me too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they think that they can pay off Republicans, they can hire GOP aides, right. and that is going to be satisfactory for their customers who are upset with them as a brand. So clearly what we can see, where I think we agree, is that Anheuser-Busch is a faceless corporation with no real values that is willing to, willing to spit in the faces of the little guy if it earns them a profit. They're a trash company and nobody should buy their products. The left and the right both agree. Here, here. Unity for once. I hope they fail. Same thing with Disney. Keep going after Disney. I'm Absolutely. For it. Take Disney down. I'm, I'm all for the right wing taking on Disney. All for the right wing taking on Anheuser Bush. Yes, of course. These are terrible fucking corporations. I'm all here for it. Um, by the way, the Daily Mail is like the number one source on the show, right? Like every single time you pulled it up. Because that same site that you showed me, All Sides Media Bias, it has the Daily Mail on right wing. And I know that you yourself, when you, yeah, when you pulled it up. Yeah, they're actually fantastic. The but, Daily Mail. But if you use them as a primary source, you understand why I'd say that like- We this... don't use them as a primary source. Okay. What happens is when we when we pull up stories, I'll, I'll go to like CNN, The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, Fox News, ABC, mm -hmm. and they'll each have like 300 words. And then you go to the Daily Mail after doing a search on, on key elements of the story, and the Daily Mail will have like seven different versions of all breaking down different components. Okay. Like if you scroll down the Daily Mail, they often do these special sections where they have entirely different stories within the story, providing more context. Like for instance, this story from the Daily Mail not only talks about the current story with the CEO, but it even goes all the way into all of the context going back to the commercial that was, was released, the, the, the sale drop at 6% in the first week, to, to the, the video. It, it, it like covers like literally this. every, even as a That's photo of the VP and her husband, yeah. how in-depth this story is. So it's like if I'm going to pull up a single article, I can pull up five ABC, CBS, New York Times, or I can just pull up this one that has seemingly everything in it, including Kid Rock, including John Rich, including Bud Light being poured into a dumpster. Yeah, it's so a it's, aggregate. it's a massive aggregator. Yeah. But oh, honestly, I, I have no problem with y'all going after uh, fucking Bud Light. Uh, have a time. Go nuts. Um, I have a really big problem with what I feel on this show is a lot of anti-trans hysteria and fear mongering that takes place. You want to like, open that book? Uh, he just let the right wing source go. I had no idea that that was the situation with the Daily Mail. And I I feel Lance didn't even comprehend what Tim was saying there. No, no.
The yeah. idea that the Daily Mail has these much longer and more intricate stories with much more information, I think, is telling. I don't know why they're listed as right wing, but for Lance, it's well, just like... Well, they are, like, but they could, doesn't mean it's necessarily like a bad source for what you're looking for. Right, but for Lance, it is, obviously. Lance is sure. like, right wing. This is evidence that Tim Pool is right wing. This is his well, main source that he always right. uses. Yeah. Well, as we said, the whole point of all of this is just to look for the gotcha. Of so. course, yeah, yeah. But he lets it go. He's like, okay, that's I didn't get him there. Let's move on to trance. Here's a whole new level of rakes. Yes. I have that book at home. We can talk about that in a second. Yep. And I'm totally comfortable talking about that book. I've read it. Um, Should it be in schools? I want to talk to you about the trans issue, though, because right, right. and that's, right, what, no, no, that's why I ask about the book. Okay, it opens we, can, the we can get to the books and the schools, the curriculums, and everything that the Florida's taken away. But you are. You profess to be kind of like fact-based, science-based, right? Yeah. Like, like you pull up. I've, I've noticed you want to pull up stats and figures and stuff like that. Of course. Why is it that you push propaganda when it comes to trans people? Like what? That is so far beyond the pale. Like what? Okay. Let's start with gender-affirming care. Mm -hmm. Gender-affirming care. You're very, very against. I've heard you call it what, the mutilize, the mutilize, like I mutilation. It, I don't call it mutilation. I've never said that. That's what you say on your show. I do. No, I, don't. I don't know if he does. I call no, it mutilating I don't. children. I yeah. call it child sex change. When you were talking about Dwayne Wade moving his family, you... someone in the crowd said, why are you mutilating your son? You cannot make a penis out of a forearm. Mm -hmm. You cannot make a vagina out of a penis. Mm -hmm. You destroy the existing body part to do so. And that is just a true statement. Dude, it's so experimental, the stuff that they're doing. It's like yeah. crazy. It's super experimental, and you yeah. and you do like you destroy the forearm of a girl to make a fake penis, a neo penis, and you mutilate, you destroy the penis and gonads mm -hmm. and 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 pelvic area mm -hmm. of the male to turn it into a neo vagina. If an adult wants to get these operations, I think that they should be, I think they should be allowed. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think so. Mm -hmm. um, children you could change that is your the mind. most what you could change your mind well i'm not 100 percent sure if it's wrong to i i'm not sure where i feel the state should intervene because i'm I, not sure what the science is about your brain when about in this particular context you know what i mean if there if it it seems like because i hear so much so much different information it seems like most people that have gender affirming uh, care, whatever, you know, surgery to change to the opposite, to, to make believe they change to the opposite sex because they never do. You're always trans. You're never the opposite. You know, you're never you never actually get to you're always becoming you're not actually arriving. Um, so I don't know if if I think the state should say you cannot. I don't think that anyone should. And I maybe I sound wishy washy like like Lance, but this is your own body. It's not someone else's body. So this is why I feel like it's, it's acceptable. Um, I don't know if the state should, should allow people to, um, but if the state's going to allow people, it should be only adults. I don't think that children should be given any kind of, um, for any kind of drugs that prevent or delay puberty. Mm -hmm. I think that Everybody should have to develop into an adult body before they are allowed to change, you know, or to attempt to change or, or, you know, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Um, but I, I just think that you have to be an adult to be able to make that decision. And I'm not 100 percent that I, I think that you should probably have to start transitioning at 18 and then have to wait until your cerebral cortex is actually finished developing in your mid 20s before they actually do the surgery. Okay. Okay, I think Nazi. That's safe. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, Sitch is not in favor of people transitioning without having gender dysphoria. So I mean, yeah, I don't that's care not, what the age is, but that's not too far from Phil's position. It sounds. That was a quote from someone else. I didn't say that. But I then, call it. But then you made and it. And I've, I've explicitly said, I don't take the right agi agitator approach of calling it mutilation because that's not effective in having a conversation. I will plainly call it a child sex change as what it is. Okay. I'm not going to call it gender affirming or mutilation because I don't think those things accu accurately explain what it is. Okay. So f when it comes to gender. I like that position that Tim has because I don't, I don't think the gender affirming stuff is useful. So mm -hmm. hey, I don't think so either. Uh, yeah. Affirming care. 
Zero to about are, ten. Are you talking about child sex change? No, I'm talking about gender affirming care. But Zero to about ten years old. The answer is yes. You got to define it, okay? Because if you're talking about something different, tell us what you're talking about. All right. So if someone is trans and they are young, and until they are about ten years old before they go through puberty, gender affirming care would be in the form of you using different pronouns, preferred mm-hmm. pronouns, and allowing them to dress differently. Yeah, I don't care about that. Do you have a problem with that? Does yeah. anyone here? Yes, I do. I don't. I don't. Okay, so both of you don't. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so do, do you accept that there is no surgery being performed on children at that age? I have a problem with it. it seems like gaslighting to me. From well, zero to about 10, there's device. nothing, there's no hormone blockers. What's that, Sitch? Well, it's not, because I used to think that ha- having socially changing your gender Right, so pre-puberty blockers, you just change your clothing and what, and refer to your a different name and all that stuff. They used to think that that was a neutral thing that didn't have an effect of pushing you one way or the other, but new research shows that it no, it does push you more towards of course not it does. desisting. Right? Yeah, because the consistency bias that people have. Of course, yeah. So, I mean, so you can make an argument that it's know, a form of that. gaslighting people into transition. Right, that's the first level of gaslighting right there. And, and Lance here is all in favor of that. He's like, yeah, let's gaslight children. This will be a good idea. Because <laughs> he knows nothing about human psychology. Right. That's why he's a victim of it all the time. <laughs> There's no puberty there, blockers. There, there is hormone blockers. I don't think surgery is happening on okay, kids so hormone, under, under 12. So hormone blockers aren't given to children until they go through puberty. That's not true. We, we actually pulled this up with Destiny. He actually he actually called me out. I was wrong about a stat. Okay. What we found was 47,000 um, cross-sex hormones. I think it was something like 17,000 puberty blockers and like 2,000 double mastectomies for girls after wow. the age of, uh, of 13 or whatever. But, wow. Uh, so pu- that doesn't pu- apply to anything I just pu- said. Puberty blockers were, were preteen. Uh, puberty blockers. Yes, puberty blockers. They, they have to. They to have someone. because they have to give them the puberty blockers before puberty starts. Yes, of course. Right. So, so you, okay. So you're just reaffirming what I just said. From zero to ten, till about you're about to go through puberty, gender affirming care only comes in the form of using different pronouns, using different names, allowing them to dress differently, and that's it. And you don't have a problem with that. Wait, Lupron too? Okay, so we'll get to Lupron, but up to that point, you don't have a problem with any of this yet, right? I, I'm saying, I, and, like... and, and you agree that there is no surgery being performed on children at that age. Zero, zero let, to ten. Let, let, I'll just, let me just start from the beginning so I can make sure I'm, I'm getting what you're saying right. Yeah. I don't care if parents call their kids names or whatever. I, I, I care about medical or surgical intervention. Okay. So that doesn't happen until about the age of about 16. That's the average age for... That's, that's act, but, but you're, you're wrong. Okay. Like, and, and, and look, we, we had Destiny on the show. We went into great detail about it. There are girls who are 13 who are getting this done. And there was a study. Actually, it was, it was Canadian, I believe, 12 to 17 they had several hundred surgeries performed. Okay, so again, I'll, I'll I said, I said the average age, but if you want to say that there are people who get this at 12, that could be the case. Who would have it? I think let's let's start with puberty blockers, Tim. Mm-hmm. Lupron, you, you both have a big problem with Lupron? I don't know a lot about it, but I consider it a medical treatment. Okay. So yeah, yeah, we shouldn't be uh, giving Lupron to kids. So you don't think you should give Lupron to kids? Why, why don't you want Lupron being given to trans kids? To, because there are it's, no it, trans it, it, puberty kids. blockers that inhibit so the I have a I have a problem so with the phrase trans kids. You like you don't have an adult conception of your of a, of what sexuality is until you're at least well into your teens, probably got to be over 18. I know that when I was a teenager like everything was a mess and and there is no way that I should have been given that kind of uh that kind of authority over that kind over. of question. Yeah, are, that kind of look, question. Are you a woman, Phil? I mean, that's another thing. It's like I don't believe that a man can be like, "Oh, I'm a woman." No, you're your body. Like your brain is not. I don't believe in a man brain and a woman brain uh, being in the wrong body, right? Like the yeah. the brain that's in your body is the right brain. That's the brain that's supposed to be there. You know how I know? Because that's the brain that's there. So I, like the idea that it's a, a, the wrong brain or the wrong, it's a woman's brain or whatever in a man's body, I don't buy it. There is, I just listened to a Chris Williams podcast and I can't remember the research he was talking to, but he, he brought up the brain pattern thing. And I guess they can look at the architecture of the brain, just not fMRI, but just an MRI and determine within a like 99% accuracy male from female brains but there is, there are some outliers. There are some male brains that are seem to be more patterned female. So there oh. is, there is some, some research that shows that 
you know, these are the people that are probably well, going to have persistent right. gender dysphoria. But it doesn't go the other way. Like, there's so, not a lot of females that have a male pattern brain, which is interesting. Uh, yeah. So, I agree that the framing that people say they have, you know, they're the they're born in the wrong body, right? Mm -hmm. It's a bad framing. Terrible okay, so, framing. Because yeah. of what you said, Phil, like, you know, you're born the way you're born, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but I'd be careful with the way that you phrase it because that doesn't mean that necessarily people can't have structural issues with their brain that causes them to have, you know, medical illnesses or other biological conditions, right? Um, so, like, because obviously you can be born with problems in your brain that makes you, you know, uh, more prone to anxiety, makes you more prone to depression, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, all kinds of different shit. Right, or yeah. in this case, you know, it makes you more prone to having gender dysphoria or something. Well, the um, interesting thing about the podcast, I never really heard this before. I want to read mm -hmm. this guy's book, obviously, but he was saying this is why traditionally gender dysphoria was overwhelmingly a male to female thing because when you look at the brain, there's more of these... Um, female pattern brains in male bodies and they don't really see a lot of the male pattern brains in female bodies right. wouldn't right. That and that this is also they, there's also that... a like um a sex difference between men and women that women are more likely to fall for a social contagion because of their uh you know f building social networks is kind of a thing that women do more than men so that's why they think there's obviously the huge uptick in women uh, having gender dysphoria. It's not really them having this other pattern brain, but it's a, a, a social, right. contagion. social contagion. Go ahead. Wouldn't Phil. the what you were talking about with the uh, um, with the male brains being like female brains? Does that I, and correct structurally? Me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, which but, is weird. But, <laughs> like I, well, yeah, but well, but think of it like this, right? Like? So like. Well, we, we, um, the male is where evolution experiments, mm -hmm. right? Women are the, when it comes to, right? Like that's what the, <laughs> like, the bell curve thing is, right? What do you mean by that? Well, yeah, what, that well, is so, funny. So, what do you mean? <laughs> so women are more, uh, women, so when it comes to like intelligence with women and men, mm -hmm. men are the ends of the bell curve, right? right. So yeah, totally. There's, there's, there's more, more extremes, extremes yeah. with men because that's because that's where evolution is experimenting. There's more difference among men than there is difference among um, women. Even I don't know if women it's, I don't know if it's that evolution is experimenting. I, I, I thought it was, I'm trying to remember, I think I remember Brett Weinstein talking about this. Men are generally, they're more extreme in all avenues and that's part of why they live less than women. Yeah, shorter. So it's kind of like, you know, yeah, you know, typically on average stronger and, or, you know, like women are more stable, I think. So I don't know if it's like evolution, like, like, I don't, I could be wrong. I don't know if there's a tendency for, for some reason for male babies to have, to be more prone to genetic deviations than women. I'm not sure if that's, that's true. That's what I was, under, I could be wrong right. again, but that's could what be. I, was I, under the, I was under the impression that because evolution kind of figured out women, all right, this works for women and women get pregnant and more women get pregnant than men or more women have babies than more men. More women have. do get pregnant than men. That's for sure. Well, it, wouldn't it, be, it, it could be, I mean, there could be something about the Y chromosome that makes it more, uh, vi like more prone to, uh, fuckery than having okay. two X's. And maybe that's the issue, but I, I don't okay. know the answer. So I, again, this is, this is just, I don't, I don't have a lot right. of deep understanding of this. This is something that I'm, I'm questioning here, but like, yeah. if that's the case, so then there's more deviation in men from like the standard of men, then that would make sense that there are men with more men with women or more men with women function. More men that have gender dysphoria, more men that are gay, more men that well, are. Well, I, yeah, I, you know, I also wonder, yeah. what are they, what are they, what's the birthing? What is the process called where you go from like a fetus or a, like a cell to, I, I can't remember the name of the, the vocation, but they all, Fetuses start off as female, right? I think I thought that that might be part of it, because no. all look no. there's all I think all babies are or all fetuses are not sexed until there's they're like not sex, but they don't start as female. But that's a different. I wouldn't say they start as female. Well, no, I thought all I thought there's like a shot of testosterone, and then all of a sudden the well, it becomes okay, I guess male well, or female. Well, we're talking about chromosomes. The original chromosome. No, I, obviously the, the chromosome at birth. I mean, at, at conception. Right? But the fetal development is 
is identical. Yeah, the field development. Well, it's more like neutral, isn't it? Until... Right. Well, okay, but I just want to say, so going back to the male-female brain, which is kind mm -hmm. of important, because I'd be curious to see the, the guy that you're talking about. You have to be a little careful, and I don't know if he does this, but you have to be a little careful with the male-female brain study uh, things in regards to trans because I believe, this is what I remember learning about a million years ago when I was in my psych classes, they said that when they would do brain scans, not for trans people, but for gay people, they would find that uh, gay people would very often have brain structures that would be more aligned with the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. And then, so the so the problem, so the question I'd say is, okay, so when you're looking at the brain scans of trans people, you'd have to make sure you're controlling for, number one, the person hasn't done hormones already, because presumably that could change the brain structures, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then number two, are they straight or gay according to their birth sex? Because you'd have to eliminate that element from it. Right. So it'd be very difficult, I think, to kind of control for those, all those different things, all those different variables. But yeah, it'd be next to impossible, obviously. Well, you'd have to scan specifically the brains of uh, people that didn't take hormones and people that were, after they transition, they're still straight according to their birth sex, right? So if it's a, if it's a man transitioning to be a woman, he still, or she would still be dating women, right? Right. So, are you thinking FRMI or because this was just MRI? This is just like the you know, they can take the brain out of the head and tell if it's male or female, they're not yeah, using right. it like a scanner. Yeah, you can, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, well, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. I don't know if they could do that though with um, sexual orientation. Well, I'm just saying, from, from what I remember, mm -hmm. the they said that. Uh, men and women that were gay, their brain scan, their brain structures would be more aligned with, or more like, I don't know if like 100%, but just they would be more leaning towards the opposite sex. Right, right. Right. So it would be a man's brain that would look like a female brain. Yeah, it would look more yeah. like a female brain. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Right. Though well, I'd be curious because when I saw that study, they didn't talk about like, you know, um, is this only apply to like femme gays? What about, you know, butch gays? Like, you know, I'd be be curious to kind of do like a very extensive thing. I, I don't think anyone, I don't know if anyone's ever done very extensive work in this field because I think a lot of people are kind of afraid to touch this area. But I mean, there's not a whole lot of incentive to disprove what the left is pushing. Yeah. And I think there's also a fear of like, um, you know, oh, why are you doing this? It's fine to be. Well, at least the time yeah. that I was looking at this, it was, you know, they weren't really talking about trans, they're talking about gay. So. It'd yeah. be more, it'd just be more like just to know it, to know it instead of like, oh, you're trying to fix the gays, you know? So. Yep. Yeah. That, well, yeah, that's, the, that's, that's exactly what I mean. The incentive is not right. to find the truth. The incentive is to affirm. That's why. Right. Because I remember like when there was this talk about whether a gay gene could be found, there was all, immediately it becomes a conversation of, you know, they're going to try to, are they going to try to fix the gays or something? So. Yeah. Because like the whole, like if you, if people have gender dysphoria and you could cure gender dysphoria, would you cure gender Obviously, dysphoria? Yes. The, you no, should 100%. No, 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 but, right. but the, but the, yes. but the left would say that's the trans genocide. I know. Cause that's so, idiots. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Right. Cause they're trying to relate it to being gay or something, which is exactly. idiotic, but so. function and development of their body. And more importantly, I think my view is uh, built upon what we've seen out of Europe already. Right. So, Earlier on, maybe a few years ago, I was more agnostic on the issue until Sweden, Denmark, Finland abandoned this and the Tavistock Center got, su got shut down. Mm -hmm. And the data they released said this actually caused more harm than good. And then I was like, well, OK, hey, how about that? And for some reason, in the United States, they're still hell bent on moving forward with what we can already see from, you know, better countries with better healthcare systems saying no to this, right? Okay, so I can address those individually because I have the explanation as to why that happened. When it comes to Lupron, zero to 10 is about the age where gender affirming care only comes in the form of different names, pronouns, stuff like that. We, uh, we can all agree that's completely fine. But we the can't. I move. Oh, I just yeah, no, I just <laughs> You but, but three can agree, but I, Seamus is like, no, no. <laughs> Don't. No, fine. Okay, fine. But it's their show, so I just want to concentrate but, on, and, on and, that for and just I'm, one I'm, second. I'm, my, my position is more just like, I don't know, man, like social therapy stuff, uh, 
they say that uh, after puberty, desistance rates are between 60, 65 and like 92 percent. OK, so, so that's so, completely false. I, 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 I'll I mean, get to that. We have to we have to do oh, this. Come piece, on, bro. We have to do this piece by piece first. OK. Oh, let's well, let's 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 get let's get through loop. Hey, I first. just I just proved you wrong. Uh, studies Should show uh, 10, 10 follow up studies found desistance of 61 to 98 percent. Yeah. Can you can you click on the Wikipedia? Article? That's the one that we're always citing. Mm hmm. Pickle? And you go to Wikipedia because they're going to affirm Oh, you're, you're missing the mic. Can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Missing the mic. But... Uh, what are the studies? Where, where are we talking about? I would uh -oh. like to know if you are taking uh -oh. these studies specific. Well, because I have each one of them written down here, and I'm, I'm quite curious. Is the Drummond study one of them? Is the Wallen study? Is Stensma, the Swedish study, a part of this? Is is that a meta study? Sitch, the 61 to 98 percent. Well, okay. So each, yeah. Well, yes, because <laughs> each. <laughs> because Does each study doesn't right. the, each study doesn't give a range of 60 to 90 each study gives a much smaller range but if you take all the studies it's combine them it's a 60 to 90 it is a meta study basically it's of funny course. because yeah. tim like totally goes bonkers on meta studies but the first thing he cites is a meta study so it's sure kind of funny it just just so I'm on the same page, a meta study is a study of a bunch of studies, right? That's exactly yeah. Yes. The correlation yeah. of a bunch of different studies. Yeah. Right. Okay. But all of well, those and, and studies be, were and, before and, they had puberty blockers and stuff. Go ahead, Sitch. Yes, all those the sixty nine percent was pre puberty blockers. And right. also, I mean the the range of years is very massive too, because like some of them are in like you know, the early or mid two thousands and some of them are in like, you know, nineteen eighty, right? So Right, yeah. Yeah. You know, okay. it's, it's a very but the fact that the range is so broad, 60 to 90 percent, I mean, that should make you very uncomfortable. Just that, the, that means that they don't really have a solid, they good, need solid more study. You know, study. Yeah. yeah, they don't have a good, solid study if it's like 30 percent, you know, leeway there. So, right. so because of that, wouldn't it, would, wouldn't it make more sense that the meta study is more accurate? Um, I mean, meta studies can either be more accurate or less accurate. I, I don't, I don't know if you can give a blanket statement on meta studies like that. Oh, so then that's anyway. so that's why they got all caught if up. If the studies it. are bad, the meta study is going to be bad, right? Exactly. Like, and if you're sure. including bad studies in your meta study, obviously it's going to reduce the but signal of the good stuff. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Isn't the point of a meta study to to make sure that you're you're getting you know the the best study, the average of the best studies, kind of? That's yeah, well, yeah. You would hope, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean it happens. So. Yeah. Look, I'm not. I'm agnostic on meta studies here, so yeah, I, I, don't I think just you can think be it's for funny. or against meta studies as a concept. Right. Okay. I just think it's so. funny that Tim is so against the meta studies, and the first thing he cites is in fact a meta study. I well, just, he's studying uh, a statistic. He doesn't know right. the statistic comes from a collection of studies. Right. Right. Gotcha. So. Yeah. This the 2011 study. Probably. I don't know. Well, uh, no, we should know. This is incredibly important for no, what we're talking it's, about. No, it's not. This is 2018. <laughs> this is uh, Gender Dysphoria and Adolescence Current Perspectives in the National Library of Medicine. Okay, scroll down to the conclusion of this one. Just like Want to get the mic again? Oh, sorry. sorry you can carry it around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Move it. I got to get gotta get used to this. Yeah, dog. No. I know. Scroll down to the conclusion of the study. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to at least skim some of the what, what the numbers and reference are to like the, the reference while you're the, skimming i when i think of a little kid like being outcomes, like a little boy being like disorders i'm a girl the parent i i would hope that the parent would be like you can be you you can pretend to be whatever you want you can be an actor you can play a girl mm -hmm. but i get afraid when a mom's like he said he's a girl that means he's trans right so f for this it's not a process. It doesn't exist in which someone can say hey i'm a boy i'm a girl and then they go into a doctor's office and like well Phil, What's you're up? muted. Got on mute, but Phil, sorry, Phil. sorry. He said it's like he's like he said he's trans, so it's my chance to get attention on on the internet and get social points. How dare you say that? No I... one would ever transition unless they really were trans. Absolutely. Yeah. See, if, if you some... look at um where you for, you pause it, it's the right place. It says right after the, the footnote it says twenty seven evidence from the ten available prospective follow up studies from childhood to adolescence reviewed in the study by uh, Restori and, and Stensma indicates that the 80% equivalent of children who meet the criteria for gender uh, dysphoria. So, What does that mean? GDC and the GDC recedes with puberty. He's saying from the, they're saying from the 10 prospective studies, 80% of the children who met the criteria then went away once they went through puberty. The, that's why the, the feelings of dysphoria went away when they went through puberty. Yeah, that's that's why nothing should be done before pre puberty. Yes. The idea yes. that there are trans kids is a lie and it's all about. Well, it could theoretically kids. be, but we don't know how to determine. 
Well, there obviously are because there's trans adults. So obviously some of those adults were kids at one time. I, the right. idea I, that you can determine though when they're kids, I think is ridiculous. No, I don't I don't think that that's the case. I think that the sex the your sexuality develops mm -hmm. o over I mean if it's I think it's if it's a mental illness, right? Like dysphoria, mm -hmm. I don't know that that I think that that probably doesn't actually develop until you go through puberty because there's well, all no. kinds of changes and stuff that happen in your brain. Right. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm, if there's studies that say I'm wrong, fine, but I don't think there is any evidence that there are actually trans kids other than dudes dressed up like women that say, no, really, there's trans kids. I well, see what you're saying. With the, with the sexual orientation thing, I believe that there is strong evidence that shows that when people transition, their sexual orientation generally doesn't change at all. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I, did I say sexual orientation? No, but you were talking about well, when you said like sexual development, or what was the phrase? What was the word? I, maybe I, I meant I meant the development of their brain and their ideas right. about their own sexuality and 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 stuff like that. Well, okay, I, I, so right. So the like, question would be, because boys play, you know, or kids play, like so boys play like their girls, and that or boys could play like their girls and not be trans. Of course, of course, obviously, of course. Um, but so the question is, there is strong there is strong evidence to indicate that gender dysphoria. Is biological so the question would be for children that think they have it and then it goes away when they go through puberty did they actually have it and then the process of going through puberty because it changes your brain like fixes it or alleviates it to some degree or is it that the kids that think they have it and they go through puberty and then they don't think they have it they never actually had it in the first place they just thought they did right yeah. and we don't know the answers to these questions and that's kind of why I agree that nothing should be done until after puberty because of these numbers and, and the lack of information we have on the subject is scary, I think, for us to be yeah. kind of going down the path of affirmative care model. Yeah, yeah. because the, because it, it if you're wrong, it just screws up kids, you know? Sure. There's so many suicides and stuff, and it's like, I feel like we're, I feel like that we are erring on the side of what the left wants because the left is the aggressive screaming protesting blah 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 stuff as opposed to erring on the side of what is actually safe for the life of the people that possibly are trans and stuff right right yeah well but i mean it's the thing like if if, if the assistance rate is i mean it's 60 to 90 right it's more than half like there's no <laughs> there's really yeah. no justification at that point and, and the follow-up to that is from the study. I, I forget if this, I should get this study on, on hand to have it. Because I saw a study that said once they want, like the studies that they've done for desistance rates after they give kids puberty blockers and gender affirming root, it drops from 80, from 60 to 90 to like 20 to 30%. Right, yeah. Which it's... would either indicate one, either our doctors have got so much better at weeding out all the people that don't have it or what I think is more likely is just that the actual giving kids puberty blockers is preventing the dis the natural assistance from occurring. Right. Yeah. It's you do you do years and years wow. of consultation between uh, a I, doctor uh, and, just, and and between like a therapist and between the patient itself. I'm just going to read this. Sure, of course. Adolescence is a crucial time for. Sean wanted me to say, uh, Lance presented a literature review, not a meta-analysis. And it's the same one that Lawrence Hunter, uh, Hunter Avalon trying to pass off. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. Hilarious. So, so it's basically just like a bunch of articles. It's not even yeah. really a study. So <laughs> thank you, Sean. I'm such a fan of Sean's stuff. He's so Sean is great. Funny. Yeah. He's so freaking funny. God, Sean he kills me. Anyway. We're we're all pro, you know, Salem witch trials around here, so he won't come <laughs> on the show. He doesn't like <laughs> he doesn't like our position on being anti witch. Excuse me. Identity and psychosexual development in young people with gender identity concerns. The outcomes of GDC have been discussed in terms with its of its persistence and desistance. For most children with GDC, whether GD will persist or desist will probably be determined between the ages of 10 and 13 years, although some may need more time. Evidence from the 10 available prospective follow-up studies from childhood to adolescence, reviewed in the study by Ristori and Steensma, indicate that for around... Oh, it is 80, Steensma. I was right. I asked if this was Steensma. Okay. I, 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 can, 80, I can answer this 80 one. 80% of children who meet the criteria for GDC... Right. The, but you said you said 2011. Oh, so there's multiple Steens, uh, Steensma studies. They've actually built upon each other. Uh -huh. And the problem with the Steensma study, unfortunately, is that they actually ca uh, characterized people who were not trans in that study, they didn't compare people who were trans to people who were trans and then no. detransitioned. They compared yeah. people in the general population. What's your 40, source? What's 40, your source for that? 
the actual author of the study has come out since and said what, that what can, and I, said what can, that the what study can I, what can i pull up to confirm that okay like because look i pulled up a study that so this isn't accurate <laughs> Um, even though this is like a, a talking point we hear a lot, I don't, and I'm, this, does Tim, I mean, does uh, Lance produce something that says this? Uh, I don't think so. No, not at all. Um, and it's, you know, Jesse Sigal, Signal, Single? I always say his name wrong. Jesse Single. Single. Um, who, single, yeah. Who unfortunately has left Twitter. Oh, um, has he? Did the, did, did trans people run him off? Because I know he was like putting up a valiant effort against Yeah, trans. he just got, he, he. I mean, oh, I understand. He argues with people on Twitter a lot, and he just was like, for my mental health, I'm just leaving Twitter, and he actually did leave Twitter. It's like he can't, it's like yes. the catnip, he can't not, right? Well, it was, yeah, exactly. And it was, yeah, it was also, it was double unfortunate, because I think he didn't just go from Twitter. I think he deleted all his tweets, which is really bad, because uh, his Twitter feed was a very good source of information, including he uh, actually emailed and got responses from Steensma, personally. Mm -hmm. And Steensma kind of goes over a lot of these... Um, tall tales about his study the other tall tale is that um you know they they base the desistance numbers on not actually following up on on kids but whoever just stopped calling like the doctors or something and seems to explain that that's not the case and he kind of goes through all this stuff and says like oh, all these things are misnomers and at the end of it Steensma says and i, I saved the tw i have a picture of it on my <laughs> computer because i knew he was going to delete his twitter feed seems actually says um he thinks, according to his research, he thinks he underestimated the the desistance numbers. He thinks wow. the desistance numbers are higher. So, mm. that said a wow. thing. You've made a counterclaim. I'll love. I will pull it up. I've, no, no, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so go to because I don't know who Steensma is. Okay, so well, Steensma, and the problem. Uh, I'll say one more thing because I had this written down. Forty five point three percent of the people did not reapply for treatment. They counted that as people who were. This happened and we didn't say anything, but when he, when they said this Steensma, he's like, oh, I know Steensma. It was like, oh, I know this one. I'm ready. Okay. Like, yeah. he was, it was, you could hear the like excitement in his voice. He's like, oh, cool. I'm not going to get smacked around. Right. Well, he just said, he, when they weren't in fact, he Sorry. just said the, the second talking point that I predicted he'd say, like, oh, well, you know, they were just, yeah. they consider kids that didn't call back as desisting. It's like, no, 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 <laughs> that's not what happened. And Steensma <laughs> confirmed that's not what happened. But. Okay, so, well, Steensma, and the problem, uh, I'll say one more thing because I had this written down, 45.3% of the people did not reapply for treatment. They counted that as people who were detransitioning when they weren't, in fact, doing that. Um, wait, so, can, can, go, can, can wait, can I ask you something? Yes, yes, go, 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 okay, so, yeah, 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 yes, yes. And you're saying he lowballed the numbers. The numbers are much higher than he actually did in the study. He was being conservative. Well, he didn't lowball them. He just said he, I forget why, he gave some explanation why he thought the numbers were a lower estimate than than what, what was reality. Right. Ask yes, for the source. Let's do things in order. I'm going to respond to what trans, you just said. Trans I, I advocate. Need to, I need to respond to what that you just said right now. That last point is kind of important to respond to. Okay. We're literally talking about desistance. Right. If they're including people who desisted, you'd have to to get the number of no, those no, no, who no. desisted. They, they included people who did not reapply for treatment. They counted that as someone who was desisting. That's just someone who didn't show up again. That's, 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 that's the, the, yeah. the, the, Well, first of all, as, as Tim will bring out, that could be evidence of desistance. Because if someone starts the transition or, or you know, who thinks they have gender dysphoria and then stops... The treatment right it doesn't 100 mean they just no no lance says they all went to a different doctor <laughs> right right but you don't even need to argue this because again as i said this is a talking point that has been debunked by steensma himself thanks to jesse single right he says that it, it comes from that the way it's written in the original study is kind of vague it's not very clear um and it can kind of be led up to misinterpretation but no they did follow up and all these the they didn't just st they didn't just write these people off as including them. They did follow up, and the people did desist. That has been confirmed by Steensma. Oh, really? Wow. Yes, hundred percent confirmed by him. You do that's not literal desist. No, it's, it's not. It's it's not that. That's no, no, literal desist. Not, not whatsoever, Tim. That is someone who has decided they just don't want to go talk to that doctor or experience things with that doctor. They could have gone off to a different doctor. They could have done something else. But that is not someone who has verifiably said, "I was trans. I'm no longer trans." So, me, that's me, just what? people who did let not me pull show up. up. Your thing. Okay. And you're saying it is verified that they did. Actually yeah, Jesse Single, them. he right. emailed uh, Seensma and asked him this Perfect. exact question, and Seensma said, no, it's just people misinterpreting the study. So suck it, Lance. Suck yeah. the lady penis. Yeah. And so go to transadvocate.com slash... I'm not going to... Uh, uh, I, need, I need a study or something, not an advocacy this, website. This, okay, this, I, this, I pulled up a scientific study for you. you. I'm Tim. not pulling up a nonprofit Good job. advocacy So group. this is an interview with the person who did the study in this article. I have pulled up a scientific study for you. And you the person who... Wait, wait, wait. What did he... What was the source? Did Tim say what the source was? Because I'll pull it up. 
study for Thank you. you. I'm just people who did not show up. Your thing. Okay, so go to transadvocate.com slash. I'm not going to. Uh, uh, I, need, I need a study or something, not an advocacy th website. Th this, okay, this, I, this, I pulled up a scientific study for you. you. I'm not Tim pulling up a non profit. Good job. Advocacy so group. this is an interview with the person who did the study in this article. I have pulled up a scientific study for you. And you the person who it. did, and I'm challenging you with the person who did the fucking study. And, and you're, and you're telling me to pull up an advocacy website, which is not on par with the scientific study. But it's, it's featuring the person who did the scientific study. Is there study. a counter study saying this is not correct? Okay. If you, uh, yes. An over I, I do, well, even though Lance is wrong, uh, you know, as I explained, um, I do think if you have an interview with the person that did the study, that is, that could be given as like viable evidence. That the study is being misinterpreted. Obviously. No, it's on an activist website. Right. Well, what could be? You'd have to look at it because it could be that the activist website, you know, misinterprets oh, yeah, they... whatever he said. Right? Sure, sure. So, for what about? Like, oh, okay, sure. Let, let me pull that up. Okay. Can you like can, I, can, look? If I pull up the net, the NIH, sure, and then you say go to transadvocate.com, sure. you Let's understand why this. I'm not. Let's going do, to do this. That. Cool. Cornell University. I'm not, I'm not going to Breitbart for my source on dissidents. Okay. Sounds good. Cornell University. Did what's, a meta study. Let me. They, what's, they, what is it? Okay, Cornell University did a meta study on fifty-five Can different studies. Can yeah, I pull just it? start looking up Cornell University meta study on detransition. Cornell University did a meta study on fifty-five different studies on detransitioning. Of those fifty-five, they found fifty-two of the studies showed that people detransitioned at a rate of less than four percent. And of those people who did it, the reason they detransitioned was social stigma. That's fifty-two of the fifty-five. Okay, wait a minute. How do we go yeah, from desistance totally. to detransition? These are two completely different things. That's that's exactly what she, that was one of the things that Sean said too. Hilarious to look out for too. Sean was like, "Oh, because no, I never got this part." In the yeah. video. So wait, is, is is the study he's talking about? Is it a study about uh, detransitioning, and he just mix it up and thought it was about desistance? He just pivots. Okay. Interesting. Five. The other three of those fifty-five. The they didn't show a net negative effect. There was desistance or people that never transitioned in the first place. They just yeah, they have they get they fulfill the criteria of gender dysphoria, but they never um, and embark then on it treatment. Goes away. Right. Well, I don't know technically if it includes people that detransition. Yeah, but I mean, it, could, it, it might. It, it might mixed, actually. Right. It's like it's like it, it does include people that detransition, but people that detransition, like you don't have to transition. But detransition means specifically that you just did transition and then stopped. Right. right? Gotcha. Was not a single study of the 55 that Cornell University looked at that showed detransitioning or gender affirming care being a bad thing for trans people. If anything, it was a net positive. This is a meta study of a whole bunch of studies. I have another meta study. So wait, but I've, hold on. But I'm, try, I, I just, I'm trying I wanna, to pull up a scientific study to confirm what you're saying. Yeah, I also just want to ask a question about this too. Sure. So you're mentioning that this is a, a meta analysis of studies yes. on people who have detransitioned, but by definition, right, this is taking into account people who went through what puberty blockers, hormone replacement therapy, in, in and each physical it, so surgeries. It, sure, for in each study, it was different things. In mm -hmm. some of the studies, it was people who were going through. Uh, yeah. So I guess did no one on Tim's did they all miss it? Because I, I pulled, I found the study. It says. Of our of 56 peer reviewed studies, 52 of the studies, 93% found that gender transition improves the overall well being of transgender people. Um, the other 7% reported mixed or null findings. Uh, none of this is about, it's about trans, it's about detransition. This is not about desistance. So this so it is has a completely, nothing to do with it has nothing to do with desistance with, rates. No, it has literally nothing to do with desistance rates whatsoever. No. Hilarious, but I guess no oh, one got it. Hilarious. <laughs> I guess nobody got. It. Well, you know, detransition, yeah. desistance. Sure, they both begin with D. Yes, that's, that's fine. That's true. That's true. Puberty blockers, some had hormone therapy, but a lot of them in one form or another had received gender affirming care. They were trans when the study first uh, tried to identify these people, and then it looked at them years later. And how was this sample collected? Because almost every single issue or almost every single study I've seen from trans advocates on this issue use a convenience sample rather than doing some kind of controlled, oh, randomized test for right, the treatment. So, so this is a meta-study of a whole bunch of other studies. Okay. So you would have to go between each study, because at the end of the day, I don't want to fall in this trap that me and Tim were about to do, where each of us starts saying, like, well, I have a study. Well, you have a study. Well, I have a study. We could do this all day. So we should look at metadata, right? We should look at compromising data that looks over a whole bunch of studies. A second metadata study that I want you to look at, Regret After Gender Affirming Surgery, A Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Prevalence. This went to Canada, the Netherlands, Belgium, UK, Italy, USA, Brazil, Sweden, Singapore, Germany, Norway, Ireland, 
Serbia, and it interviewed between 27 studies, 7,928 trans patients. It showed a less than 1% look, look, look. Right, regret right. rate. So can I also mention something? Desistance and demonization. I have another meta okay, study. Okay, I got to address this right now. There, sure. there is a problem we are facing in that you are saying a lot of things, and I can't pull up any sources. At the very least, all I did was Google searched it. I pulled up the two studies that were associated with it and said, here's what it says. I have not given you my personal perspective on it. You have now given me your personal view on it. No, I, I've given you the studies. These are two meta studies. I have a third two meta study. Studies. Is there only 55 people in this meta study? Is it? No, no, no. There are 55 or 50. There's 51 study. No, there's 51 studies, not 55. Okay, 51 I mean, studies. one of the studies might only have 55, but overall. So it's probably at least... A hundred people. Well, no, there's hundreds of people, or not thousands of people, in all these studies combined. Right. But uh, again, this has nothing to do with assistance. This is all about detransitioning, right. which was not the question that anyone was talking about. The meta study is about desistance. The first, the thing, the point that Tim brought up was about desistance. Desistance, yeah. Right. And specifically, the point that he specifically brought up was about desistance in children who did not transition at all. Right. Yeah. Right. This those, are our, pre, those are our numbers, yeah. Right. This pre, pre before that was even blockers, an right. pre cross sex hormones, pre social, um, you know, socially uh, transitioning, right. anything like that. Right. And then Lance pivoted to detransition and brought up a meta study with 55 studies. Right. But Lance is so dumb, he might not realize that he's talking about something different. I'm not sure. So, of course, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Could you cherry pick studies? Like, look, I want to do a meta study. Of course, yeah, you could, theoretically, yeah, sure. yeah. So um, I don't gonna... know if that now. I don't know if they did. You know, but look, they're activists. Theory. Of course, they would. Well, I don't know if the people that did this meta analysis, because I've seen this meta, this meta analysis gets cited all the time, and I've kind of, I spent some time look through it, but I don't really care enough to look through the entire thing. So, right, you know, I don't know if they did or not, but. Let me please pull them up. I can't find what you're the talking about. The first one is Cornell University. They did a meta study. What's of 70... the name of it? It's Cornell University's meta study of 72 studies on gender affirming care. 72. Of that, 55 of the studies were directly related to detransitioning. Met... What, what a meta study on? I just want to flag that what, what's the title? What's the title of the thing? are two different things. Right, right, right. Well. What... Look, look up uh, Cornell Corn... University. Medis... Cornell University. What does? So to to lay into your point, Adam, this uh, study that was done. A new analysis was conducted by researchers at the What We Know Project, an initiative of the Cornell University Center for the Study of Inequality. Okay, so now what so do you he, think about cherry picking? That, that that makes me think this maybe maybe is a little bit biased. So maybe like, the I'm most sure. cherry picked meta right. study in human history. It could be. It could be a little bit. I mean, it's the you know the Center for Inequality, right? So maybe. inequality. At least it didn't say inequity, right? No. no. <laughs> research say about the effect of gender transition all, or on gender trans well-being oh here we go i found it nice and the third one the third meta study that i want to bring up is a u.s study it's a 2015 u.s okay, transgender so, study but, but, but this isn't this isn't a scientific research paper that's peer-reviewed uh no this is a meta-analysis of scientifically researched uh, papers Did you that's that from what okay, we but, know but, dot inequality but hold, dot hold on like do we have a standard on why we why should why should we we should there's, accept there's, your... if you want to know their methodology there's a click here to view the methodology thing you can find that out for yourself right there but this is not a peer-reviewed scientific paper this is a meta-analysis tim uh, okay, of, so I, of I, peer -reviewed I, I, I scientific it. papers i reject it all right okay so... is, is this is this a meta-analysis or is it a literature review this that's might a... be the literature review Sean that was talking about yeah yeah maybe okay so if you want to check that out, bro. Right. Next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna tell me ivermectin is some cure because of a meta analysis. This has nothing to do with it. No, 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 no bro. This has nothing you to do can't with come. You can't come to me when everyone tries screaming about ivermectin because of a meta analysis that I reject and say I don't think it works. You, you can go and then story. have someone We're from the left come ivermectin. to me and now claim ivermectin. meta analysis is effective. No, the point is this. I said give me a study and you cannot do it. I am on my way to give you a third meta study. A Those combination aren't of cities. These Those are aren't studies. No, if we go study to study okay, back bro. and forth, Tim, this is going to take fucking forever. So one. let's give look. Give me one. One study. One study. One study. One. <laughs> do I'm giving you two. Give no. me one. This is embarrassing. I've got like embarrassing. You here. can't give me one study. Okay. I've given you two, and I didn't even make an assertment. I googled it and pulled up what you I found. You want individual studies I instead of meta analysis, which is ridiculous. But sure, here's individual studies: the mental health outcomes in transgender, non-binary, non-binary youth receiving gender affirming care from February twenty fifth, two thousand twenty two. This shows. Let me, that... let me type it in and pull it up. For yeah, you. yeah, but I can explain to them while you're doing the, your own research. Can you, can Kids you, who I need, receive I need puberty you to tell me blockers what the name is so and I can pull it up. 
Mental health outcomes in Mental transgender, health outcomes in trans transgender and non-binary youth receiving gender affirming care. February 25th, 2022, peer-reviewed study. The findings, kids who received puberty blockers and hormone therapy had 60% lower odds of moderate or severe depression and 73% lower odds of suicidality. Here's another individual study for you. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. That, that, that does not, nothing to do with desistance. Do you, do you want to go back to desistance studies? That's what I was asking you about. Oh. I, I Google search got desistance. It. Go Wikipedia Tim. has two studies that say it's 61 to 98 percent. You said that's wrong. I said, what's is, your source? Is, yes. You didn't give me one. I did on the spot. You gave it's, me it's a okay. meta-analysis we're on camera, so you, that is not peer-reviewed. It's not a peer-reviewed source. Oh, I didn't it's, get it. If no. you want to go back and forth, Tim, on single studies, like I said, this can take forever. So it, 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 it Do you not have a single forth. study? I've named you tons of studies. No, no, no. You've given me a meta-analysis, not a single study. A meta-analysis combines other studies. Do you understand so how what, that works? Yes. So of that, the so 55 what your studies argument that it looks, is, no, of the is 55 that you've got 72 at, studies that have drawn a conclusion, and then someone that looked at them and made a different Tim. You're saying that out of 72 studies that found a conclusion. No, 55. It's, 50, it, it looked at 72. 55 talked about detransitioning. I was, I was, it, was a, it was a hypothetical number. 51. 51. You're, you're yeah, looking at a bunch of studies that have come to conclusion. It, it, they were talking about desistance, not detransitioning. Like right, he's but, still doing that. Right, right like, but no one noticed the. Well, no one. Tim didn't look at. Here's the problem. Tim is too debate print in this moment, because if he wasn't, he could look at the study that Lance is talking about, and maybe he would have noticed the study is not about desistance; it's about detransition. Um, I says again, I don't think you can be just anti meta studies, right? You can have good stu meta studies, you can have shitty meta studies. You can have good literature reviews, you can have shitty literature reviews. Um, but I don't think you can just like blanketly make an argument against, you know, the concept of these things existing. So conclusions, of course, that are peer reviewed. Oh, and as you said, Adam, it's not really good because Tim is citing a meta study in the beginning of the distance yeah. numbers. So not a great, but okay. Dude. And you're saying, but someone uh, analyzed those. Cornell University did. Who from Cornell? Click on, click here to view right, right. the methodology you, and this, you can learn about the, the methodology. You just rejected it outright when you saw it. You were like, because oh, it's I reject a study. It's, okay, it's not a study. It's a meta-analysis of studies. These but are that, different things. But, but I'm what explaining you're, that but to you. The problem is these studies have their own conclusions you're ignoring. They combine their conclusions to reach their let me, findings. Let me, let me, let me, that's, that's let me explain for those that want to understand what I'm trying to say. During COVID, there were a whole bunch of studies done, individual studies, peer reviewed that found ivermectin did not work. The right kept bringing up meta analyses that said, actually, it does. I said, and I said this to Joe Rogan, I reject that. Show me the actual study. I do not believe this is correct. I will not afford you some benefit to come in and make the same argument to me. If you do not have a study that is peer reviewed and cited, then I'm not going to entertain uh, uh, so, your, so your opinions. So when I bring up the Cornell University study, that's- That's 50, not a study, it's a meta-analysis. Yeah, of 55 peer-reviewed studies, whose conclusion of 52 came to the fact that there is a less than 4% detransition rate. If you go to r slash science, Tim, you can find out- <laughs> no, 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 this Come is- Come on, I, I, I asked I'm, you for- You're pulling up Reddit when I'm- No, no, no I'm, pulling up up, I'm pulling up Reddit because Cecilia, I uh, believe her last name is pronounced Jen de Jen explains and, and downplays why you're wrong about that 80 to 85% because she's the one who actually did that study. She's the one who did the study you cited. So, so Look, she explains why it's being misused. It is not true. I can say this. There are arguments about what is true all day, every day. There's arguments that M theory is wrong and that science uh, is unwilling to give up because too many scientists have dedicated their lives to it. So they argue that M theory is the, is, is, is the theory, while others are coming up with like E8 lie group theory or whatever. I totally understand that people will decide what they think is true or not. Hence, I have a bottom line standard. If the right comes at me and says, ivermectin meta-analyses prove it works, I say, don't know, don't care. We have rejected the concept of someone analyzing a collection of studies and making determination. What our standard is, or at the very least where I'm at is, if we're going to have any basic agreement on what is or isn't, there has to be a unified standard there, which is a peer-reviewed study, which is not absolute. If I have two peer-reviewed studies and the establishment narrative, when I search for it, says 61 to 98 percent, I will not accept your meta-analysis opinion the same as I wouldn't for someone who believes ivermectin works, because your argument is founded upon the same basis as theirs. Okay, so first off, the meta-analysis of ivermectin actually showed that it wasn't a... Wasn't a
in COVID-19. That, that was the actual meta-analysis on ivermectin. So it actually would back up your own uh, claims. Secondly, you and me can look at individual studies and it can take a very long time, but we should look at regret after gender affirming surgery, a systematic review and meta-analysis of prevalence, which looks at, again, 27 studies and interviews 7,928 trans people across the world. And again, in places like Italy, USA, Brazil, you name it, that meta-analysis also found a less than 1% regret rate. You have to be able to combine multiple studies because this is something that has been so... Th there is no way that I buy that there is less than 1% regret rate out of 7,000 people at all. Hmm. Thoroughly investigated globally for so long that to ignore the science and data on well, this is, on. Is, is to flagrantly. Well, look, there's I, not I, been a single large scale randomized clinical trial for puberty blockers to treat gender dysphoria. There's not been one. You, you all are very against Lupron, right? Well, I don't know much about it. I know. I, mean, I, I, I just very against is pretty strong. Okay. I'm typically like we shouldn't give. I'm saying there hasn't like, been one large scale randomized clinical trial for okay. these like, treatments. Like Lupron for when, when children go through like the early onset puberty. Yeah. And it's like an actual medical issue. Like, yes, of course. That's why saying very against something is like, well, what yeah. we're talking about is, are, are we are we going to a kid who, uh, are, are we dealing with an actual case of, say, endocrine disruption caused by phthalates and PCBs? Or are we dealing with a kid who's just playing with dolls and the parents are incorrect, right? And, and in that case, you would have a long process where they would have to do interviews with, again, Except, professionals who would determine right. whether or not it's appropriate. And people who and, go on and, puberty blockers, I want to add this, but, it's, it's for a limited amount of time. And, they want to do it only to be able to wrong. hold that off. No, it isn't. If you see, speak this to is, the actual this, doctors on this, this, is, this you is only issue. take it. No, 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 Tim, let me finish the sentence. Come on. You brought me on your show. Let me finish this. You only go on puberty blockers for a short amount of time before you can be put onto HRT. They do not want to keep them on puberty blockers. And that way you avoid a lot of the potential negative side effects we from had that. We had Helena Kirsch on the show who walked into a planned parenthood and within minutes was given the maximum dose of testosterone anecdote absolutely lived experience. so when i say lived, lived experience, experience happens anecdote. you say it doesn't happen i'm saying it did happen no i'm saying it can happen and that's, you, i'm and, saying you have and, to look at on, broader data you have to look at broader that's the trends issue i take right yeah and, and it wouldn't make sense if i brought up a single horror story to you and said this is fact it can happen. I, I, I said, we don't want that to happen. Of right? course, no one wants that to happen. But okay, then so if, we wanna happen. if we want to understand how this is actually taking place around the world from an actual perspective of science, we have to look at the data. We have to look at meta studies. We have to look at the and analyze global uh, understanding of this. When it comes to Lupron, by example, yes, it's true that Lupron is not FDA approved for the use of uh, on cisgender children. There is a product that is FDA approved for use with children that is a puberty blocker. And it has been used for a long time, for generations and decades. It's Lupron. It was just Wait, being what? done. No, but for that's for an kids. entirely different reason. That's for an entirely for different reason. Children. So to say we want for to prevent, children. to say we want to prevent a child from undergoing early onset puberty so that they can develop at a normal, healthy yes, rate pre, is pre entirely different. Is, it. It is entirely different from saying we're going to administer puberty blockers because this child fears feels they're a member of the opposite sex. But whether that's yeah, an not, entirely different. Not only that, it presents the opposite problem because the the introduction of puberty blockers to to maintain precocious puberty is to keep the people at the same level at as their peers. Like when you introduce puberty blockers, you're actually taking people out of their peer group, which can present a whole other set of problems. Well, I don't even know what Lupron was for aside. Like I've heard talk about chemical well, it's castration. Ke it's chemical for... castration, but so these kids will develop puberty like a year or two before any of their peers. So obviously, you're trying to get them in the same sort of mindset as their age cohort. Okay. So, so it's, it's, it, cause I'm not like, so is, is that what precocious puberty is? Cause I don't know what that is either. Is that that's when you have, that's on? when a kid goes through puberty, uh, way early, earlier like, than any of its peers. But yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I never really looked into it. I don't know if the, I don't think the only reason that they stop precocious puberty is just for social reasons. I'm assuming there's other, this physical, biological, health reasons. I thought it was only for social reasons. I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm assuming not. Well, that might have something to do with it, but maybe maybe not. For but me um, it's like it... totally insane that you're like all your friends are going through puberty and you're not going through puberty. It's like that's talk about being an outcast, right? Well, no, it was the opposite. Well, no, for precocious puberty, but not right. for transitioning. Like Oh, right, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um no, so the thing is, and it kind of annoys me when people talk about this, there's a, there's a difference. So when they say like a drug can be used for some reason, right? What mm -hmm. they mean is, they don't mean that the drug, they don't necessarily mean that this drug is 100% safe to use. What they mean is 
that the outcome of using this drug provides better health benefits on average statistically than, than, than not, not using, using it, it. Yeah. right so if there are health risks associated with precocious puberty or something else for the drug that doesn't necessarily mean that you should be able to use this drug for anything else right yeah number one uh, number two from my understanding when people take the precocious puberty drug for for precocious puberty i think you can take it for other reasons i, right. I believe because i think uh, aiden's talked about this but um when you take it for precocious puberty you're taking it on a very limited time scale Right. You're right. only taking it yep. till you know you get to ten or eleven or whatever the right. ages that you're supposed to go through puberty, and that's it. With with these puberty blockers and cross sex hormones, you're taking these way long, significantly longer than than kids with precocious puberty taking these fucking drugs. I think so it's, just, it's I think completely even, irrelevant. Yeah, I think they've even stopped recommending this treatment for precocious puberty. Just let them go through puberty. Like they're early bloomers. Who cares, right? Well, if it's only for social reasons, maybe. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know if there's some other reason for doing it. So, yeah, I don't. What other reason would there be for doing? I it? don't know. I'm, there could be some health ramification that I'm not aware of. But. Right. Okay. I don't know. It just seems weird to me that you would do this, unless you know, just for this we're reason. We're, we're talking about changing a male to a female in pre like 10 years old that's super weird this no whole context <laughs> is weird sure i understand well, i understand like this particular thing is not about that but like this whole topic is kind of course, weird of course right well that's why lance is trying to again so lance will refuse any framing you put out and he will try to dominate the framing of all conversations right yeah. so that's why he keeps he keep and of course he does this with the salty of a chainsaw because he keeps saying oh you guys are against this one thing and then they change topic. Oh, you guys are against this one? Because he keeps wanting, he has like this one point where he wants to yeah. bring up, you guys are wrong about puberty blockers. They're safe and effective, right? Right. And so he has to keep trying to bring it back to that when it's like, well, again, the conversation isn't just puberty blockers, puberty blockers plus cross-sex hormones, right? Yeah. Plus, you know, potential surgery down the road. Like yeah. it's, it's so much more than this one little thing that he's trying to kind of, he's trying to needle everything through this tiny, tiny little hole that he thinks he has a gotcha on. I'm with you, Phil. I think we're going to look back at this and think, what the hell were we thinking? Oh, I, 100%. I, yeah. I truly believe this is lobotomies. Yeah. Like, I mean, maybe yeah. I'm wrong, but like, I really, really believe all of this is lobotomies. Like, I, th I think that it's social contagion. I think mm -hmm. that it's uh, autogynephilia. And Oof. I think that it's lobotomies. Well, I, I think that the, the, there are there are some trans people, but I think that they're a vanishingly small number. Right. Yeah. And I think that there's right. I think that it's mostly social contagion. It's social contagion and, and stuff. I think that it's it is in extremely rare for there to be trans people. And and so there, you know, obviously, I don't think that. Well, not obviously, but I don't think that there should be, you know, any kind of uh, stigma placed on them that you shouldn't treat trans people badly. I'm pro using trans people's preferred pronouns i won't use neo pronouns because then you're just an attention whore but i'll call mm -hmm. trans men throw the non-binary under the bus look at you yeah, phil absolutely i'm throwing the them under, totally gone. under the bus if two you percent of you our say, audience are non-binary phil if you say that like you're doing expect, to... if you expect me to call you tree self you should mm -hmm. also expect me to friggin leave because you're annoying in many other ways i'm sure <laughs> Seriously, if you if you want like if I have to call you Zer, mm -hmm. I'm leaving. I don't want to engage with you because you are you are signaling to me that things about your personality are exhausting, and I do not have the energy to deal with you. Sure. Right. Well, so. I I would say it's more aligned with electroshock than lobotomy. So, okay. Well, what was it's the something that they still panic. do, but they way overdid, you know, back in the day. <laughs> They yeah, just okay. hand those things out like candy. Okay, um, okay. I mean, there are some Satan worshippers, right? But the satanic panic kind of got out of control. Sure. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Oh God, my mom was was terrified of Satan. I couldn't listen to Judas Priest when I was a kid. Because, is that why you oh, became a rocker? Man, partially. Like, Fuck you, mom. The thing is, get this though, and this is a little off, but it's it's a little lighter than you know cutting off noodles. Um, my mom swore up and down that she heard. Uh, Rob Halford say do it when they played the record record backwards mm -hmm. and I was not the biggest Judas Priest fan so when she told me I couldn't listen to Judas Priest I was do like it. okay do yeah it. exactly <laughs> and 
And so I, I was like, okay. And I was, and so I hid my number of the beast record because if she was oh not going to let me God. listen to Judas Priest, and I was the biggest Iron Maiden fan in the world. So That's I'm just hilarious. like, there is no way this woman is going to look at number of the beast because if she sees 666, she's going to throw this shit out. That's a great <laughs> album, man. Don't let mom get a hold oh, of that amazing. album. <laughs> amazing. I was the biggest Iron Maiden fan when I was, when I was like little, like 11 or 12 or whatever. I was a huge Iron Maiden. Peace of Mind's and, amazing. I love that album. Oh, God. Dude, we're, we'll go on for hours just talking about how much I love it. I uh, somewhere in time, so brilliant. God, I, yeah. I can't even. I can't even. I can't even. I love They're it. amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, but whether for, or not it's because you're looking for a different is is is, is going to be the problem, right? You you want to yes. know whether or not it's used is going to be dangerous yes. on children. Yes. And and, and, yes. and the reason for administering a certain treatment can render it dangerous. You know, so, for example, if we have been amputating people's limbs for hundreds of years, if I go into a doctor and say, please cut my arm off because I don't want it anymore, and he cuts my arm off, that's medical malpractice. For you to jump in and go, we've been cutting people's arms off for hundreds of years. This is I, medically approved. People I, are allowed to do this. this. That's a great analogy that he just said. Yeah. <laughs> that's totally good. Shame I mean, great. we've been turning people into eunuchs for hundreds of years, too, obviously, for political reasons, for, you know, singing reasons, right? They, mm -hmm. the castrados. So the, is not, yes, absolutely. So what you're describing is called BIID, body identity uh, disorder. I, mm -hmm. I forget how it's spelled. Um, it is a real phenomenon. Dysmorphic. It's ex it, yes, it's, ex sorry. it's extremely rare, but we know enough about it at this point to know that people will seek out to get operations on the black market if they have BIID. And what we found when people do that and go into the black market to have a limb removed is that it only provides a temporary amount of relief for their condition and then it returns and they have further complications from the fact that they now have a disability and or medical complications that come from My all that. Point is not about none of that happens with detransitioners though right never no <laughs> i mean it does that's exactly what happens <laughs> they're like listen i got a hysterectomy at 12 what the fuck am i gonna do with my life god it's so sad uh, it's god. like he's never seen any of these detransitioner stories mm -hmm. they're just I would be like curious. piling up the the detransitioner stories all they are is rightists pushing a right wing <laughs> oh, ridiculous I, w I yes. would be curious because I don't, I'm not familiar with the study he's talking about where he said that people with body dysmorphia went and, um, or I'm trying, they changed the name now because they have to change the name constantly for BIDD to go actually get whatever bothers them change and then I, afterwards we're still. Yeah, where did they uh, do that study? They did like a I, back, I a back that, right? alley of what do you even call it? Like, <laughs> I don't what know. do you call it when you chop your arm off? Right, right. Armendectomy? Well, I, I mean, yeah. Some not everyone has. You know, a lot of them have like facial stuff that you can get changed by cosmetic surgery. So right. But I, I would be curious. Oh. Out any kind of body dysmorphia about losing a limb. My point is about drawing a false. <clears throat> my point is about drawing a false conclusion by a medical treatment being allowed under circumstance A, but not being allowed under circumstance B. You're saying we allow it for kids who have hit precocious puberty, but yes. then we don't allow it for kids who don't want to go for pub through puberty no, 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 because they we, want to be a member of the We do allow it. It's, it's still not FDA approved. That's yeah, different. But, yeah, but but you and, understand uh, my point. I, you I just, can't claim those just, things are the same. I just Google searched it real quick. Stat in 2017, 100 out of 100 with NewsGuard. Drug use to halt puberty may cause lasting health problems. More than 10,000 adverse event reports were filed with the FDA, reflecting the experience of women who've taken Lupron, describing everything from brittle bones to faulty joints. Yeah, don't say. Yeah, that's so <laughs> crazy. You know, regarding meta-analyses, meta I... Like, I, I'm worried about, you know giving kids things on an experimental basis. Yeah, this is a huge, long conversation, and it would be so awesome to go through each study. I would love to. It would probably take like seven hours, six hours, but we could do it, but like not tonight, unfortunately. Well, so let me, let me ask you but, though. But, like, I, but I want to keep down this path because I think yeah, we're, making, me, we're let, making good progress Let me here. ask you a question, of course. right? Like, like Jazz Jennings is sterile, right? I don't know much about Jazz Jennings. Jazz Jennings. She's, she's a reality TV star, right? Jazz Jennings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that Jazz isn't trans. Uh, because That's not for us to say. Uh, I didn't say, I said I'm concerned that Jazz is not trans, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason is Jazz is dating women now, right? So then Jazz what would What does be, that have to do with being trans? Well, Jazz would then be- That's so crazy. <laughs> That's so crazy. So they, they transitioned Jazz Jennings before they even had, before they knew their sexual orientation? Yeah, Jazz was, Jazz was a Jazz child. was super young, yeah. Yeah, it was like um, seven or something What was the age? Like well, first of all, I don't know why Tim's bringing up her sexual orientation, because that is- 
irrelevant. So, right. I, I was I always forget. Was it the majority of people that transition are straight? No, or it's it's gay? thirty. It's sixty percent are same sex attracted to their biological genetic. Right. So for yeah, so forty yeah, but forty percent aren't. That's still a massive number. So. Well, I think it's like sixty six percent, or it's like a third. Right. Well, it, whatever. It's a big number. Yeah. Right, so. Yes. A by but it's uh, odd that they don't split it up either because I wonder how many of those are same sex attracted males and how many are same sex attracted females. Oh, that, the one that would be interesting. We were talking yeah. about it's not split up. I don't that, think yeah, it is. Yeah, that is interesting because yeah. that would I would be curious about that. Like says, if the um, thirty if the thirty percent is like all males, <laughs> right? Yeah. It says um, jazz began appearing on a television show at the age of six. Yeah. Uh, claiming to be transgender. So that's pretty wild. At well, I mean, I, six, feel, right? I feel like I was me too in the babysitter at about six. So, I mean, I don't. <laughs> I, uh, oh God, I forgot about that, Adam. I forgot that. I you feel were... like I knew what my sexual orientation was at six. Yeah. So, I don't think you did. I think you probably just, I don't think you understood what you were doing. But. No, I knew what I was your doing. Babysitter. Look, the babysitter oh, okay. had some big tatas, and I was like, a I "Adam gotta... was born Coomer." <laughs> <laughs> Look, does I, that? I, I do recall having a crush on one of my babysitters. That's definitely so true. did I at, at the age of like five or six. But I don't think I like. I I knew like, oh, I like this woman. She's attractive, yeah, I didn't, and I, I could like, I felt like something, but I didn't know like, I didn't, I couldn't verbalize what was going on. Right? Aren't yeah. all babies attracted to tatas? Though, is like, I mean. That's, I mean, that's like a, not a male female thing. I'm attracted to McDonald's, so yeah, totally. You get it. There's certain <laughs> things. Six year olds are... more attractive to chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably say the chicken nuggets, but yeah. probably. I mean, it's it's all breasts, though. You know, so it's I mean... all breast meat. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the kids like the nuggies. Oh my god! You're See, right. yeah. How yep, do we never totally. know? It's all about the nuggies. <laughs> It's all about the breast meat. Oh my that's, that's god! Why, that's right. why everyone wants nuggies. It's because everybody Jeez. wants boobies. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Let me read. Um, let me read some super chats here. When you're when you're attracted to the babysitter, though, you don't necessarily know. I mean, obviously, you don't know about sex or anything. You don't understand like a, what no. is the basis of the attraction. Right. But you're you just, just like, hmm, right. I'm attractive. Like, I want to touch her. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I remember I was like five or six, and I had some babysitter I was attracted to. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how, but she like somehow got me to give her like a neck massage, and I was like really into this. That's <laughs> <laughs> now obviously you, listen, I don't think. She, listen, I don't think you she, me to the babysitter too, Sitch. What are you talking? Yeah, but about? I okay, but I don't think. She, I mean, I'm assuming. I'm, I'm assuming she wasn't some. She knew what pervert. was going on. No, I'm hoping not. I'm, I'm sure it's not. She's <laughs> she like, knew oh, what he's was so going sweet. on. He's a sweet little six year old. Listen, women are stupid. They don't understand that like fucking boys are fucking <laughs> sex. But they do, they do. Queens. Look, she even got, at the, even at the age of six, those boys are sex queens. Okay? She got a massage out of you. There you I'm go. I'm sure she enjoyed it very much. Okay. There you go. Hey, I enjoyed it at six. I listen. <laughs> see what I can get. <laughs> at the age of six. Yeah. See? Uh, there you go. Uh, James <laughs> Stitch was groomed. <laughs> In the chat is saying I got groomed. <laughs> Uh, J Mac, our surrogate father for twenty dollars says, "Adam, your number one fan is an atheist anti-abortionist." I actually think it's a stronger atheist argument against abortion than a religious one. Well, there you go. That's interesting. Yeah, you gotta. I gotta know that argument. I, I'm fascinated to hear what the argument is. Right. Uh, does, does it have to do with birth rates? Because I mean, I might be an, <laughs> on board with that. I don't know. I, J Max has, has told us in the past. I don't remember mm -hmm. what it was though, but. I mean, you can believe in like it being a life outside of a religious context. So, sure. But just yeah, but I, th I think if you did a polling, probably majority religious. Uh, Pjorn Kazark for twenty dollars says abortion debate is backwards. To kill a human life should not be the default. From to kill a human life should not be the default from which we must argue for the pres preservation of the life. The preservation of life should be the default from which we must argue for an exception. Well, I think the reason it's framed the way it was is because just because that was the default position that the law was for 50 years. So that is why the argument was framed that way. Right. I'm guessing that's why it was framed that way. Uh, Josephine Whitaker for $20 says, My father died when I turned four. Cancer. I'm a man. YouTube name is an inside joke. When I was 12, my mom remarried. 
who eventually became my stepfather and provided for our family. Does that make him a cuck? Now they're divorced anyway. I mean, you I want to ask no. that question on the internet. What? What did you say? I said, you don't want to ask that question on oh, the internet. Oh, right. Yeah, Whatever I mean, I would obviously... come back. Right. I would obviously say no. I think it's incredibly uh, weird and gross and offensive to, for people to, to characterize it that way, but the Rolo would think it does. So. And cruel, yeah. Um, and cruel. And, in, and very bad for society overall. Uh, J Mac, for another $20. Thank you, Jay. Says, so these babies just need to plan a great escape once they find out mom <laughs> wants an abortion. <laughs> Being out of the womb is like base when you're playing playground tag. True. Yeah. There you go. True. I laughed when I saw that super chat originally go through. Because it's so Officer funny C just to think of the baby like Pete. Oh, time to escape. Mom's going to abort me. <laughs> Run. Right. Uh, Officer C for $20 says, little behind, but Rolo was definitely not saying it has to be two men. So he definitely was, actually, because I thought he wasn't, but now I thought about it, and he definitely was saying that. Because if he wasn't saying it, Ostracy, he would have agreed with my position, which is I said, uh, women, couldn't you argue that it's not a dual main strategy, it's just that women engage in hypergamy, which means women are, women evolve to basically seek uh, mates from a higher status. And therefore, that could potentially lead to a dual mating situation, but that's not the goal. The goal is just to be hypergamous. Mm -hmm. And he explicitly said, no, I don't agree with that. I agree with the dual mating strategy. So I disagree with that. I think he was specifically saying it has to be two or more men. Uh, also, such softening of Democrats' abortion position is always so frustrating. How is it? How is it? How am I softening the position if I pull up the studies? Is there? Well, here's he, what you'd have to he's do. He's arguing that the position is the nine-month abortion position. Yeah, but so you're saying that you're saying that overall... Now, you could make this argument, and you'd have to show it to me. In blue states, is it the, tr is it the trend for blue states to have these nine-month abortion, uh, or abortion for, for any reason? Because my knowledge, the only state that has it is Colorado. Is there, is there, this is like the new trend. All the blue states are not... All the, are all the red states going to say no exceptions, even for rape? And all the blue states are going to say, it doesn't matter. You can get an abortion right up to the, the moment. Right. You can't say that that's the position unless that's what's actually happening across the country. Right. So... Or they're I mean, actively advocating for. Right. In, I mean, you have a stronger argument that the Republicans have a far more extreme position, but we're just saying uh, in terms of the sheer number of states that are that have laws that have literally no exceptions unless the mother is going to die, essentially. Right. Which to me is pretty crazy. But I don't even think that's the mainstream. I don't think that's the mainstream Republican uh, position. If you were to poll Republicans, I don't think that's the majority of Republicans' positions. So... Yeah, I think there's a majority of Democrats and Republicans who are like, settle it at first trimester and be done with it. Right. Uh, Aiden for $20. Hey, Aiden. Aiden says, C. Van Der Luz, Hannah Klink, Den, I can't read all these names. Uh, continuation of gender affirming hormones and transgender people starting puberty suppression adolescence, 98% desistance rate. Holy shit. Well, I'll look that up. That's the one. This we is want. a recent study. It's from. 2022. Oh, wow. So, wow. So someone actually did the numbers on the people. Continuation of gender-affirming hormones and transgender people starting puberty suppression in adolescence, a cohort study in the Netherlands. Interesting. In the Netherlands, treatment with puberty suppression is available to transgender adolescents younger than 18 years. When gender dysphoria persists, testosterone can be added as a gender-affirming hormones in young people who go on transition. We investigated the proportion of people who continue gender-affirming hormone treatment at follow-up after having started puberty suppression. So wait, is this was a 98% even with people on puberty blockers? Because that's her crazy. next super chat. When kids start this shit, they do not fucking stop. 98 oh, 90, persistence oh, rate. I see. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Eight in front of ten dollars says, yeah, she meant persistence. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so that this is... is a study that shows once they get on puberty blockers, they keep going. Okay. Yes. That's okay. That's insane. Right. So that's why this is so scary. If you have this 98% persistence rate with puberty blockers and before it was a 60, 90% desistance rate. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That is wild. Wow. Scary. Yeah. Scary stuff. Uh, J Mac for $20 says determining regret is such a shaky standard. Ask any middle-aged man if he regrets buying a new sports car. I bet nine out of 10 will say quote, best purchase I've ever made. Once you made the commitment, it's harder to go back. Yeah, of totally. course. There's always the, the, uh, that's the consistency bias. Consistency right bias. There. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, well, is who doesn't, issue, who's so. going to regret their Lamborghini? I mean, I'm totally poor now and I can't afford it. <laughs> we have to justify it to yourself. So, yeah. Yes. Once a decision is made, it's often easy just to go with the flow. 
Don't change horses in midstream. Yeah. Or presidents. A logical male dating age of 23. What does right? it have to do with being trans? So it has to do with whether or not Jazz made the decision for themselves or the parent made it when they were three years old. So the question is, we want to avoid a John Money type situation, right? Where you had these two kids and the doctor told one of the young... Does, does Lance know about John Money? My money's on no. Has no um, idea what he's talking about. He's probably... He's got to have heard it before. No, right? he doesn't. He's I mean, totally he, in the dark. If, if he's going to be like, I have a reaction, if I have a... If I have a retort for the Stinsman study, right? He he probably has the same. This is what I guess. If you brought up John Money, he'd say, "I think John Money was evil because the kid didn't have gender dysphoria, didn't, wasn't trans, and they tried to transition him against his will and sexually assaulted him." Right. Okay. So that's a not, you know. So therefore, that I don't have to, you know, lose any part of my argument. That'd be my guess. But right. Lance is really stupid, so maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't give him even any uh faith that he'd have any sort of logical coherent counter argument look his, it, he's he's not surveying the whole situation though so he's not encountering things like the john money story just outside of googling for some particular study that's going to help him debunk tim pool's last video that's my point right like i heard the john money thing for the first time in the book why gender matters which was it's not even really related to the trans issues at all right yeah okay. well i mean i heard about it because i went to psych classes way back in the day but oh okay the the worst thing about john money is that it took years for it to be revealed that it was oh yeah as horrific as it was they totally it really only came it. out i think i think it really only came out when uh when david remmer killed himself so right um though they don't know john money was the person who originally coined the concept i believe that gender and sex are separate ideas and sort of the concept that gender was all socially conditioned. And he, he, there was a kid that had basically a botched circumcision. Uh, so he lost his genitals. They burned his dick off. Yeah, Ouch. It was not really bad. Um, so he lost his genitals. So essentially um, money, John money basically convinced the parents that, well, since he doesn't have a penis, it'll be better to basically raise him as a girl and kind of, and according to my new theory of gender, which I just fucking made up on the spot here, um, I believe I can raise him as a girl and he'll identify as a girl and he'll be happier because you know, he doesn't have a penis. Uh, and they went along with this. And obviously this did not work because that's not how anything works. Yeah, of course. <laughs> gender is not just this like people are not blank slates. You can just fucking change their gender. Um, and so the kid had all sorts of problems. There's all sorts of like wacky shit I'm not going to get into with how he was trying to reinforce the gender roles that were super fucked up. But essentially the kid had all sorts of problems. He never took to it. Eventually his parents told him the truth. Um, he felt so much better when he realized he was a boy and immediately started living as a boy. But because of a lot of things in his life, uh, he ended up committing suicide anyway. So Yeah. Um, that is horrible. What do you guys think about the concept of gender being iso you know, totally separate from uh from from sex because from my perspective i when i hear it described like as gender is one thing and sex is a different thing i kind of initially was like well that kind of makes sense because when i think of like like i know that humans are not other animals but other animals have male and female but there's nothing womanly about like a female bear right so a woman uh is is like or, you know, the, a woman is, is a gender. So, the, like, kind of that was what I was had understood it. But now I'm not so sure if I believe that anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and, and so I'm right. looking for more input. So, so the problem with this is that despite what all the boshes and all these people say, and they always say everyone agrees, which is all a lie. Um, if we look at the two main associate, two main organizations associated with transgender stuff. We have, they're both called the APA. There's two different organizations called the APA to make this even well, more that's confusing. helpful. Yes. We have the American Psychiatric Association, which is for a psychiatrist, uh, and they do the DSM-5. And there's the American Psychological Association. Oh, my God. It's, I it's, know. It's, it's, it's worse than just APA and APA. It's it's like... Psychiatric versus yeah. psychological. Yeah, God. It's, there's, God. Right. And it's I funny know. because it's, it's kind of been like this decades long pissing battle with each other like no we have the name first we you know we have the acronym first you change yours no no we had ours first like and neither of them wants to change the acronym 
Um, it's like WWF and WWF. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's kind of a problem because obviously both these organizations are heavily involved with conversations about transgender stuff. Yeah. And they both use different definitions of the word gender that are vastly different from each other. Oh, um, God. Yeah, Jesus Christ. This just right. keeps getting more and more and so, more, more rife with with possible problems. Right. Yeah. It's awful. Confusion but here's the thing. Bounds. Yeah. Neither of them use gender the way the leftists do. Oh, God. So there's a third. <laughs> they have their own, yeah. Because they're... So awesome. so when like people like Lance and Fosh, like, people talk about gender and it's all... They have like the blank slate theory. They're not yeah. really citing either APA. They're citing some fucking leftist Buzzfeed blank slate article. sociological yeah. anthrop anthropologist, you know, women's studies bullshit. Right? Yeah, something so that's the, made of crap. Yes. So the American Psychiatric Association, people that write the DSM, which would be most relevant in this conversation because they are the one that okay. came up with the term gender so, dysphoria in the first so place. The, the, so the American Psychiatric Association is the, the people that produce the DSM, which yes. is has has been the standard for a long time and people had complaints because DSM used to list homosexuality as a as a psychological condition. Yeah, but like that was like you know, 50 but, fucking yeah. years ago, right? <laughs> okay, all right. I just want to make sure that I'm on the same page because some of the stuff... Um, Although I'm the concepts I'm familiar with, I don't. You know, know the talking points, so definitely. I yeah, I, I'm I know I know about it, but I want to make sure that I'm I'm a little more that I'm on the same page with the details and I'm I'm not in error. So. Right. Let's Remember, because telling the truth, then you don't have to worry about screwing up. You just tell what you true. know. True. Very <laughs> true. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna see if I can pull it up. Um. So so okay. So the the psychiatric association. Uh, they define gender as gender is the public and usually leg legally recognized lived role as a boy or girl, man or woman, but in contrast to certain social constructionist theories, biological factors are seen as contributing in interaction with social and psychological factors to gender development. Right. So, so they acknowledge yes, biology. So, yeah. So they say that it's a combination of biology, social and, you know, social and psychological right. and society. Right. That seems pretty so, accurate. So would you guys, so does it make sense to say that there are things that society considers masculine that are not connected to gender or to biology, but there are things that are inherently masculine that are in, uh, can't be disconnected from gender. I don't know. So, from, from biology. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, we kind of, we had a conversation about this the other day. It might've been last week or the week before where it's kind of difficult to kind of parse apart what is biological and what is social, because I think the way that it works is there will be like, say there'll be a tendency that there's some 60% of humans, or we'll stick with gender differences. We'll say 60% of men, you know, have some tendency to have some character trait. And if that's true, then that means that part of the culture will then be to reinforce that, that trait in everyone, oh, even yeah. if it's only in 60% of men. Yeah. Okay. So that, 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 that makes perfect sense. Like because it's it's something that is biological, then culture would ought, would in, be be inclined right because it's seen it. as like yes, oh okay, you yeah. don't do this thing yeah. that like the average guy does. Well, there must be something yeah. wrong with you, right? Right. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of like you know it's kind of it can be very difficult. You could say like well maybe on the average you know, or or things like basically society will recondition things that are on average biological anyway. Okay. Yeah. Um. But I'm sure that there are. I mean, everyone likes to bring up the most obvious example is color right the the blue pink thing you know that would be the clear example presumably it'd be funny if they find out that's not the case but presumably if something that's just completely arbitrary you know a social construction yeah. Yeah. right yeah. Is, is the color thing but i don't think there's that i think the reason people bring up color is because i don't think there are that many examples of purely socially constructed gender related anything so i think most things have a biological basis now it doesn't mean that everyone born male or female has those um, tendencies, but I do think almost all of these things are rooted in biology in terms of sex differences and gender differences. Yeah. In that Chris Williams podcast with a guy, he said they had done some studies where they had looked at, you know, basically like leftist gender neutral households where they tell their kids, it doesn't matter, you know, you, if you, you're a boy, you can play with dolls, you're a girl, you can play with trucks, whatever. And the conservative households obviously have str uh, stricter gender roles. So they pull the kids aside and they, th like the kids that are raised by the progressives, obviously believe that, you know, there's no such thing as strict gender roles. You can do whatever you want. But then when they separate them to play, 
they completely go into the gender binary. And yeah. the boys want to play with the trucks and the girls want to yeah. play with the dolls. Yeah. So even though they're being taught this, they're just basically saying it because that's, you know, what they're supposed to say. But still they adhere to these sex roles. Yeah. The the toy the toy studies have been reproduced time and time and time again. Um, they seem to be pretty solid. Uh, yeah. obviously we talked about the brain scan stuff. Uh, there's also the studies that show that the more it's that you know, it's the opposite. The the less restrictive the less restrictive societies are, the more likely genders will separate themselves in terms of career choices. Mm-hmm. Easy there, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, he he goes even further and he says like the more wealthier the society is, the f- the more but, the gender right. expression is exaggerated. And he has right. some study where it's height. Even the men are taller and the women are shorter in these societies that are wealthier. Which is well, kind of weird. Yeah, yes. I, don't know I was like, that. what? Um, well, because I would think that the the richer societies on average tend to be more open societies anyway. So that would track with job, with career selection. Right, um, right. Um, but, okay, so then, and just to kind of, and we can go back to the video in a second. So the a, the other APA, the American Psychological Association, they have a completely different definition of gender. And their definition is... They want to basically, they acknowledge, and this is where the leftists all fuck up, the the American Psychological Association acknowledges that men and women have inherent, on average, inherent sexual behavioral differences, okay? That men Mm -hmm. and women have behavioral differences that can be related to their sex. They acknowledge this, okay? They don't believe in blank slate. However, right, but however, they want to use the language in a very specific way. They want to say that, well... Anything that's a biological sex difference, we're going to call that a sex difference. And anything that's a purely social difference, we're going to call that a gender difference. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so that's where a lot of the confusion comes from, I think. Right. I like the other one better. Well, I think the other one is the way that people use the term gender in reality. So yeah. I, I gotta think give it's you... better too. I got to give you a quick small compliment since you're really, really good at at coming back to things that had been started as after they they get trailed off into conversations. I've noticed. Well, I, what I do is I just leave it on my screen so I always uh, see it in my face to remember. Smart, <laughs> so. smart, smart. But it's something that I notice in in like uh, in other other shows. Thank that you. I'm watching stuff. So, but yeah. yeah, good job. Thank Kudos, you. man. Thank you. Young boys. He was actually a girl and then forced him to live as a girl, ultimately resulting in his suicide, and then the death of the brother as well. We don't want that to happen. And so that did happen already, and we know that happened. So we have to be careful about taking a three-year-old and then raising them and telling them they're female, because then if they start exhibiting traditional uh, uh, you know, gender behaviors, there may be some concern. For instance, Jazz stopped dilating. And that was the big controversy over the past few weeks, the mother going on TV saying she would force Jazz to do it. If Jazz is saying, I'm not gonna, and the mother saying, do it or I'll wring your neck, which is a, a quote, and then Jazz is not dating women, we're starting to see a pattern that may be concerning because it follows the John Money situation. Whether or not Jazz is trans or not, my concern is, uh-oh, what if? And that means there may be children who are going to be pushed down a path that ultimately leads to their suicide because their parents can't make the decision for them, but they did. So the data overwhelmingly shows that if you give children gender affirming care, especially if you have loving and accepting parents who accept children's actual gender identity, it reduces the rates of suicide dramatically. That, I don't I mean, I'm not sure exactly how true that stuff is, but it, that is such a convenient stab at conservatives in general. The well, data. No, the, the loving, the, 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 oh, the, the loving, loving parents, and loving yeah, and blah, 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 obviously. parents, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, okay. Especially so if, if you, you have progressive parents. Yes, yeah, exactly. If you don't endorse, if you don't automatically say your child, you know, if your child says, oh, I'm thinking this and you don't automatically affirm it and support it, well, then you're going to get your kid killed. You know, right. that's such a shitty thing right. to do. And it's very emblematic of. Well, of land it's land a little, land land. I don't know what study he's referring to. Studies I've seen, which I'm assuming is what he's kind of referring to, because I feel like there's like the same. Uh, you know, host of studies everyone talks about. It's kind of, he's kind of using it improperly. He doesn't, the studies don't say exactly what he's saying, which is kind of what you're complaining about, uh, Phil. What the study said was people that do have uh, gender dysphoria obviously feel better if they're in an accepting family environment. Right? Sitch, I, I, Sitch, I got to compl- correct you one second. I was complaining about Lance. 
No, 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm saying okay. Lance was using the study incorrectly, and you were right to criticize him for that. But he's but he's using the study incorrectly. Right. Okay. Because it's not the study doesn't say like, oh, if a kid thinks they have generous phoria, you should just affirm them. It just says for people that were diagnosed with generous phoria, they feel less bad about themselves if their family accepts them, oh, which yeah. should be obvious. Because I mean yeah. that's true of like any kid, right? Yeah. So that doesn't mean that that's exact. That's what should happen for right. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Right. Yeah. But then some of them try to twist it around. And I've actually heard who's I was listening to Destiny talking to um I forget what that guy's name is. He, this guy that he talks to sometimes has these crazy ideas about gender, who thinks that the only reason people have gender dysphoria at all is only because of societal expectations about gender. And if that there was no societal expectations about gender, no one would have gender dysphoria, which is a wacky fucking position, but Adically. In the case of a parent who affirms their child's gender, it can reduce suicide rates of up to 93% in some studies. It's it's not a case of, uh, <clears throat> more often than not, these are children who are approaching their parents saying they think this is something happening to them and parents pushing back and being like, no, this is wrong. You're just a tomboy. Oh, this is, you know, this is not you. This is so, blah, blah, blah. And you don't go into a doctor and all of a sudden they're like, here's Lupron. They do. You, no, but they don't, Tim. The but, average but like, amount oh, of time... Oh, 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 oh. The average amount say, of time You can't is, say they don't when we've had the anecdotes. They do. Call it an anecdote. It's an I'm anecdote. telling you it does happen. Of course, but that's an anecdote. We have to look at so data. So don't say science, it doesn't statistics. happen. Well, it happens, but that doesn't mean it, it's a broad it should trend. should not happen. Well, it's, you know, it's it's, it's funny because um, Philosophy Tube did such a horrible disservice to the trans argument. Right. When, totally. uh, you know, she said at the end of her video that every single trans person, including herself, all lied to their doctors to get trans right. affirming. Yep. Surgery and care. And so it's kind of like, mm, okay. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Lance right. But that's going hard okay. on the groomer thing here, man. He really wants to groom these kids. Has he brought it? Did I miss it? Did he bring up the why do you care about kids' genitals comment? Not yet. No, no that's coming yet. up. I can't that's wait. Coming. <laughs> I'm, on, a, I'm yeah. on the edge of my seat here. Oh, my God. I, I, I want to get I want to get through the whole. I'm hoping I can get through the whole thing. I'm getting tired, but I really want to get through the whole thing because I'm <laughs> having so much fun. <laughs> he totally tries to sandbag Tim with that. It's yeah. like, what he are does. you, some creepy sex fiend or something? It's like, oh, yeah, groomer. What the oh, fuck? Oh, God. This this is asking so, uh, we what, we have to talk about what actually occurs via the numbers, right? That's that's what matters. Like I I have here the largest US transgender survey ever done. It's in 20, uh, 2015 to 21,598 participants. And this covers people in childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. And it has all the results you're looking for. So let me ask you a question. Uh, why do you we, think we're seeing the incre uh, a rapid increase in the past few years I can of, explain that of, as well. in, mm -hmm. of young people identifying as trans? Okay. Can, can I answer that? Can afterwards? you re read the yeah, study, yeah, please? Of course. So it shows the 2015 U.S. Transgender Survey of 21,598 participants that with hormone therapy, psychological distress for children reduces by 222%. Late adolescence, 153%. Adulthood, 81%. Suicidal uh, ideation for children goes down 135 percent for uh, adolescents 62 percent and for adults 21 percent like is that this, that is dramatic is that, this that the is stanford dumb. medical school survey analysis done by jack turban uh i don't know the person okay. who did it Let okay it um but in terms of the the increase I just Tim, Googled of, this of before because the there's show. a because there was a study done by stanford medical <laughs> school that very closely fits the description of what you've just read out there which is very a scientific and what well, data that is collected. I, 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 yeah, I, I, so okay. just just please find the source of that because no, because I, I, I want I, I want to pull that apart, yeah, but I want to be sure, sure I, that I, I know you're talking about that yeah, yeah, study. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm curious as to why you think it's it's increasing so much. What's that? What's that signify? The history of left-handedness. This is the history oh. of left-handedness <laughs> in the United States. Brought he's up coming out. He's coming out with everything. He's just got he's got all the talking points. Yeah. Yeah. He reads it like it's scripture to him. He's like, this, it, this is the data, Tim. Putting person put all the information in there for him. The data has never been wrong. The data can never be wrong. Mm -hmm. Do you see what happens here? It, it, it levels out. It goes up and up levels and out. Levels. We, used to pe uh, we used to treat people who were left-handed as satanic, as the devil, all that kind of shit. You remember uh, that, right? Uh, and that's why there was a lot of people who didn't record themselves as being left-handed. And then, boom, when we stopped doing that after the 1880s and in the 1900s, it spiked. Now, this spike isn't because there was a whole bunch of indoctrination or Alex Jones was like, oh, left-handed ideology, everyone has become left-handed. This has nothing to do with that. This is naturally how many left-handed people there were. And then it plateaued. We are in a, in a situation, right? We could get that number higher if we... 
create a social contagion <laughs> among girls on social media. I know we can get that number. left-handed number up. Yeah, yeah. that's way well, weak sauce. It's I, an, it's annoying because again, everyone has that cutoff point on the graph. They don't show that earlier. The number was what it ends up being. Right. So that was the average, and then it got suppressed, I believe, because of the industrial revolution. Because they wanted to make people either use right-handed machines, and then once that goes away, it kind of goes up again. Uh, so that's number one, and then number two. If you compare, I'm actually shocked. Maybe someone has done this. I haven't seen anyone do this yet. If you were to take that same graph and mm. overlay on it the rate of uh, kids transitioning, oh, it'd be or, or having charge. trans, you would oh, God, see that yeah. the curve is like so much steeper than the left-handed right. curve. It's like straight so, up. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I can't believe that they 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 make this argument. To be honest with you, it just seems so silly to me. But they I just, love it I, though. I, I, yeah, I mean, I guess it's convincing to the to to people that are already know. convinced. Yeah, yeah. It's... <laughs> fair enough. Well, that's I, what I say I, someone's got to put the someone's got to put the comparison uh, line to show the steepness of the curve compared, and that will be the way to kill the meme. You hear that chat? Yeah, you're on. Someone it. go you're figure out. Someone who's better at math than me go figure out how to do that. <laughs> so. Yeah. Right now, where it is safer than ever for people to come out, and, and if they're queer, bisexual, whatever it is, and because of that, they feel safer expressing that. That's why Gen oh, Z wow. of all generations... I was concerned there was a trans genocide. It's so safe <laughs> that people who are even trans can come out as trans. That's how safe <laughs> it is. So this gets... I, I know that you guys have your, have your, your issues with James Lindsay, but this really... Does we have no the... issues with James Lindsay. I thought you said, well, I've heard you guys say like you think James Lindsay kind of like went off the deep end. We love James Lindsay. We just I mean, disagree on some things, but we don't yes. have an issue with them. Yeah. yeah. All right. So well, we're James so Lindsay fans. Yes. But obviously, of course. Of course. I don't agree this... with them on the ESG stuff. So on the what? On the ESG or like the Ukraine war. There's just issues we disagree with them on, but we're so still one super of the things fans. that he talks about. He talks about um, the the personalities that uh, or the the identities that Mao had, like the red identities and the black identities. Oh, yeah, right. where yeah. the where the uh, the red guard came from. And I it blows my mind that well, it, it makes me feel like the left is lying about not seeing the similarities. And it really bothers me that shit libs, bad liberals in America, don't <laughs> see that as well. Like, oh, I, yeah. it's. I, when I talk to my friends that are, that are you know, Democrats, right? That are normal people that are not steeped in this stuff. That generally agree with me for the most part on things. Um, that are in like in L.A. and in California and you know producers mm -hmm. in the music industry and stuff. When I tr tell them, hey, look, these are real things. I give you primary sources to look into not like i'm not sending them to breitbart i'm like yo go read mark hughes go read this go read you know, go read judith butler stuff go read this these these things are real and then you compare it to the things that mao said you like the whole country should be concerned unless you're a communist mm -hmm. like i really believe that at this point where i think that the whole country if you were aware of what's going on you should be significantly concerned because i do believe that we are in the middle of a, of a cultural revolution that could put us in a situation where the United States turns into an authoritarian country like China in 10, 20 years or whatever. Um, like, I, I believe that. And I think that if you had more liberals, and I mean actual liberals, not leftists, more liberals paying attention and informed of what's going on, and if you just show them the information, I feel like they can be convinced if it wasn't for the fact that Jon Stewart has convinced them previously that everything that anyone on the right says is a, is laughable and should be mocked and should be ignored. Right. You know? Yeah, so. I agree. Don't the institutions and, and, at some level protect us, though, from that authoritarianism, as long as we have... They, well, they do. To. Well, they do, but that's why they're going after Clarence Thomas. Right. You know, they, they want to, they, that's why, that's why they're leftists that want to get rid of the Senate. Well, they, they're leftists that want to go after. But the, how the, realistic is that though? I don't like, I'm not necessarily not, worried about it because of the, of the um, I feel like we have pretty good institutions in place to prevent against that. I think it's hard, but I also think that, I think that when the, the left has so successfully changed definitions or at least come up with alternate alternative mm -hmm. definitions, I think that when you mess up the definitions of words then you're also messing up the meaning of things 
in our in our government. So if 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 so, the government can't take your property, right? Mm -hmm. But if you live on stolen land, then you stole it, right? So it's not yours. So then you're not protected. Right. You know what I mean? It's like your private property. So it, like the whole like the land dedication thing, that's all that should be totally and completely ignored. Like that should never happen ever in America, because I honestly I think that that is a way to lead to, oh, this is stolen land. So that means it's not your land. Now you have to give it back. So now they can just take it from you. And you see that kind of stuff. That, I don't know if you guys saw the uh, the Denver Council. Um, uh, she's she's a person running for council in Denver, uh, and she's she's, she's like a full commie or something. Yeah, and she's saying, you know, oh, we gotta we gotta uh, you More know stolen land, and we gotta give everyone's land back. I mean, yeah, supposedly yeah. in San Francisco, they're supposed to give every like african american 25 million dollars in california yeah and i i want them to, i really want them to no because Come i do on. i do because Our i want to see taxes bail. are too high already oh it's going to be a train wreck and i want to see it um and the, re and the reason it'll be a train wreck is because you, because the people that are already doing good that get the money they're just going to take off like mad and all the people that are doing bad are going to be broke as a joke in two three years anyways and everyone's going to be like oh yeah that totally doesn't work and it was a terrible idea because as california goes so goes the rest of the country. And I think that unless something significant happens, the rest of the country is going to end, you know, t something significant t happens that demonstrates that it's a t that California is on an unsustainable path. I think the rest of the country will continue to follow, follow. And I think that something has to happen to really get the rest of the country to be like, yo, we need to make significant changes. So I'm, I'm less rant. worried about our homegrown leftists. For me, I just feel like they're kind of lull cows. I'm more worried about like the leftists in China that, you know, have access to technology and our government being feckless in fighting those ex outside forces that want to destroy I America. Used, yeah. I used to worry about that. Um, but, uh, well, I mean, I, I don't think that you're, I, I think that that is a, a significant concern as well. So I don't know that I can say that I don't. Yeah. Worry, they don't. You, you hear the stories about the Chinese government having uh, the FBI found the uh, Chinese government with their Chinese police stations. Yeah, in I mean, that's terrifying. That's, that's terrifying. that's totally terrifying, right? And nobody in America seems like, like that totally happened. And no, like it shouldn't have been just a blip on the news. It should have been something that like right. got the whole country up in arms, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, was tr I was looking into that because I, well, I was like, how they can't look, I'm an American. I'm not going to some Chinese police station, but I guess they target foreign nationals that are like chinese people that live here they're like oh fuck it we're, yeah we're arresting you for china i right. mean that's sh that should that's be something so crazy that, that should cause an international incident and it didn't yeah so that makes me think it's like you know maybe the government or maybe 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 biden is actually owned by the chinese i'm know? not going to china jail okay not in america <laughs> fuck you no. no but i mean it's like the, the it, the fact that there is well they were i mean these people were arrested I don't, it's not like yeah but the u.s should have said something to china about it and nobody did if i if i understand correctly the federal government I'm assuming they did i don't think they just said oh well you know it's fine how do you how do you know they weren't china arrested <laughs> says what? april 17th two arrested for operating illegal overseas police station of the chinese government Right, but and the, they were here in America. That, should, were... that should be an international. That's that's. I agree. That's yeah, but I think that's that's more of like the news. I don't know if it's like what's that do with you know our government being secret for China or something. Oh well, I think the government wouldn't. I think the gov. I feel like the Amer the federal government should have made a stink about it. There should. Well, have they been should. Yeah, they're not. I mean, that's. But what they're I mean. not. So that's. Do we have what, American police like, stations over there? <laughs> well, they're called military bases, but they're not actually in China. They're just in the waters off China shore. Right. Yeah. Uh, aircraft. Uh, carrier. Aircraft carriers. <laughs> yeah. I think um, I think there is a, a, a institutional crisis in our country with our institutions failing. But yes, and I do think a lot of it, not entirely, but I do think a lot of it is because of wokeness. Um, but it does seem like maybe I'm just being optimistic here. It does seem like people like we're we're I think we're approaching the tipping point of wokeness. Yes, it feels like totally. like people are becoming more bold, less afraid to speak out, less afraid to turn on stuff. I think the Bud Light thing, and is a good sign. Of kind of things going against wokeness finally and i so it seems like we're kind of reaching this tipping point now i'm yeah. worried that if you know with trump and if he wins again i think that could all dissipate in a second so. yeah because wokeness is a good uh 
tw- club for the left to kind of hit Trump over the head with, you know, call him a racist, sexist, you know, blah, 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 blah. Tim um, Scott's going to be his running mate, though. So. Well, well, it doesn't. It's not going to matter. I mean, but with the Scalia, the, not Scalia, the Clarence Thomas thing that you brought up, I don't think that's a question of, like, the left attacking an institution. I think that's more of just, we don't like his politics, and we want revenge for no, no, Merrick because Garland. No, because they keep and you talking stole about the Supreme Court from us. You they stole keep, a Supreme Court no, seat they, from us, so now we want to try to get back, essentially. Yeah. No, nah, they, they keep talking about expanding the court. They talk. They are. They're. Go, they were. Right, but why are, is that? Because they want. Because they want to. To. They want to have. They don't want the court to be able to limit the. No, no. But what is the? Power. What is the just? If If you talk to a Democrat and say, "Why should we ex- expand the Supreme Court?" What do they tell you? Because it's too many conservatives. No, that's not what they tell you. Oh. They say they the Republicans stole two seats from the democrats that's what they all say whenever you talk to them about this oh, it's really? entirely viewed as a retaliatory action yeah i think that's a justification but the real i'm not saying they, is, i don't think they should do it many, i'm just saying that's that's they're like the, wait there's too many they, conservatives let's I actually, think it's funny reason. i literally just got in an argument with my family member about this other day where i said yeah i think what they did with merrick garland was bullshit yes i think the republicans their rationale for it was a complete lie and everyone every republican knew it was a lie obviously however i don't think that expanding the court is the solution because if if that's what you do, then it was every time we have a president, they just expand the court, right? Like yes. I don't think that's the solution to the problem. But I'm just saying that was the that's the rationale for why they well, want to do it in the first place. I mean, the 400 this, justices of the Supreme Court, right? Exactly. <laughs> this may be this this is probably the partisan in me talking, but I mm-hmm. do feel like the when the left doesn't get its way, they want to change the rules. The right spent like you like we were talking earlier. The right spent 50 years working on the Supreme Court to overturn Roe versus Wade, right? The left, they don't, they get something that there's something happens that they don't like. They're like, change the rules, expand the court, make DSC, DC a state, make Puerto Rico a state. Anything they can do to shift the odds in their favor, they do. And I believe that's, that mm-hmm. ties into the fact that they're not principled. I think that it's because they are, they, their principle is just power. Well, very, I feel like the left I, is very, very both niche. sides will change the rules, though. Yeah, I, I feel like everyone wants to change the rules when it suits them and wants to keep the rules when it suits them. I don't think either side is coming from a. I don't think. OK, I don't think politicians. I'm not talking about voters. I don't think politicians are coming from principled positions. I think they'll change the rules when it suits them and they'll want to protect the rules when it suits them. Well, Fair vote, enough, voters, too. I think the philosophy in the on the left, I think the, the thought leaders on the left are probably more influential than any Democratic politicians. And I'm mm-hmm. more concerned with the thought leaders on the left than I am with the Democratic politicians, right. because the, the you're right. The system does keep the politicians somewhat in line. But the people that are the activists, the people that are the thought leaders, the people that are writing the papers that that inform the left, um, they 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 really do have the opinion that you know whatever can further the left's power is is what they want to do sure i mean well especially well yeah the socialists obviously and, the I, don't, and I don't think that that's the same on the right sorry to cut you off well no it's well it's it depends right. how far right you go right because like the for conservatives who are still like technically liberal right under the the guise of liberalism conservatives do liberals and conservatives okay democrats and republicans who still are not socialist and are not uh far right people right they do still in theory or the philosophy they're operating under still does believe in rule of law right yes even if you know the politicians are corrupt more so so right so when you talk about when you're talking about regular democrats and and people that well i shouldn't say i shouldn't say regular democrats i should say the philosophy and principle of the democratic party in in america and the philosophy and principles of the republican party in america in that they both these are both parties that operate with philosophical principles that are supposed to be under the umbrella of liberalism overall. Yes. Okay? Okay. Both of those philosophies believe in the concept of universalism and rule of law in yep. theory, even if they are corrupt, you know, yes. and don't follow them. However, you get into the problem because as you're saying, with the left thought the leftist thought leaders, the socialists, they do not believe in rule of law because yes. they think that's all a scam and they think everything's just a power game. Yes. Uh, and to you know m- use manipulation so that they use that basically to rationalize and justify them being you know this dishonest or doing whatever the fuck is possible right but you see the exact same thing on the far right with you talk about the you know the um you know the nick fuentes types and all the stuff yes. like that those are However, the socialists on the right though 
What? Well, those are the those are that's this that's that's they're socialists. Yeah, like, well, yes, they're, 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 all of his stuff is right. socialism. It's just it's just it's the difference between it's the right wing socialism. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's yes, the difference right. between national socialism and, and, yes. and right. international. I agree. Socialism. I agree. I agree. Right. And now you can make the argument that I think those people are far less influential than the far left in this country. I think Thank God. Valid, I think that's a valid. Yeah, I think that's a valid argument. So, can um, you but I don't think it's Nick a right guys of all people who was. I know. I know. Jesus. I, but what I think is what I think is a left right thing that I think you're kind of alluding to, which is that I do think it's a left a more left wing moral intuition to believe, hey, we can come in here and change the rules. And it's a more right wing moral intuition to say the rules should remain the same. Yeah. that And that falls into tradition versus tradition versus stuff, change. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that does make That's sense true. with yeah. it in accordance to that on a philosophical level. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, so. I, I should have occurred to me, but you're definitely right. And the right is also the party of law and order, obviously. So, yeah, sure. And stability. Right. Right. Ever for people to come out and, and if they're queer, bisexual, whatever it is, and because of that, they feel safer expressing that. That's why Gen oh, wow. Z of all I was generations... concerned there was a trans genocide. Yeah. So he, here's this is this is the actual statistics on people increasing. You can see the red one. So I, I I think they come back to it, but it's kind of funny because this kind of destroys a lot of the argument because the left wants to simultaneously say the reason all these people are coming out as trans is because society is so much more open, but then they also want to say. There's a trans genocide happening at the same time, right. yeah. and everyone and all the trans people are so afraid for their lives. Yeah, the, it's kind of like, the, well, the, I don't know if you can have both of those things, but the trans genocide is is just a a, a tool. That's all it is. It's a BS line that they can tell people to go ahead and make it okay for a trans person to kill a bunch right. of Christians. Though, I worry that the Republicans are going to step on the rake themselves. I mean, one hundred percent because yes. they're the Republicans. Yes, and they will, you know. I, I don't think we're that far off from a, a red state somewhere saying there can be no transitioning for adults in the state. I don't think we're that far off from that. So we're going to see that in the next presidential election, probably. Mm. That That is Gen Z. That is the amount of people who in Gen Z, it's skyrocketing. It looks so, like they're so identifying more than ever because so, their generation feels more comfortable talking so about this kind of stuff. So you don't more, think yeah. that there's yeah, like a, a transgenic... Oh, the thing that I t brought up earlier about James Lindsay and the the identities and stuff like that. What he was talking about with the the acceptability of trans, like LGBT, makes you a red identity. It makes you an okay identity. It's like it's like if you are not LGBT, right? Or I'm sorry, if you are not a a an a marginalized group, if you're not a member of a marginalized group, you can join the LGBT group say you're bi say you're whatever and then right. you get the card and then you're not just the normal boring straight person you are right. a member of the 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 new whatever the hell cool kids of course yeah and and yeah. and you see you see him walk i literally i swear to god i saw this guy's arm bands rainbow arm band <laughs> no you way see that i the swear to, mafia. i wish so i should have saved the picture but i swear to god i saw it and i couldn't believe it because i'm like how can you how can you do that again again how is it that like we're complaining people complain about socialism and like you see all the stuff that socialists do that they're doing and yet there's no socialist problem in the United States. I, I blows my mind. Yeah. So, any, well, because so, so many people have been they've been programmed, you know, by the right crying wolf. They've been programmed by media for you know 50, 100 years telling them that, you know, all they, they all they do is complain about, you know, socialists and so people are kind of like dead, you know, to that threat. And it's kind of like such a work to try to get them to actually care about you know, that stuff. I, I want to push back on that a little bit, just because like you guys are you guys are both in your late twenties, early thirties, right? Yep. Okay. Well, I'm, okay. <laughs> I mean, well, I am. <laughs> well, look, I'm old. All right, I'm pushing fifty. So like, I remember the eighties is what I'm saying, and I remember the Soviet Union. What kind uh, of like Iron Maiden? <laughs> what? I remember the eighties too. <laughs> I I lived in them, and I was I was old enough to play guitar in the eighties. How about that? Um. But the, the point being, like, I remember it, and I feel like people that are Gen X mm -hmm. should not have a, a, a soft opinion of communism. I feel like people that are Gen X should, well, you know, still I, at least right. remember and, and, and identify with the so, idea that right. communism let me, is bad. Let me be more clear. Okay. Sorry. Um, because I agree with what you're saying. I, and I, I think you're correct. I think people that are Gen X and older don't like communism 
at all. And I think that's why so much of the way wokeness and the online leftist work right now is to like, yeah, they'll tell the kids they're socialists, right? But you turn on mainstream media, no one uh, fucking yeah. talks about socialism. That and not only sense. that, like, you know, you if you talk to anyone who who own like most people, like we have to remember, we're this when we talk about online politics, we're this fucking tiny, tiny fraction of people. Like it seems like we're like massive, but we're not. We're a tiny fraction of people. For the majority of people in America that that are the boomers who just yeah. get their news from the newspaper, right? Yeah. Or from their Facebook CNN. boomer feeds or whatever. Who are not on the right anyway, because the right complains about this all the time. We're on the left. They have no fucking clue. You don't know how many people I talk to where I say, you know that the number one political streamer is a open socialist? And they go, yeah. what? They have yeah. people, they have no fucking clue that this is happening. Yeah. Like being but hidden. then you, you you should back it up with he's a himbo. The only reason people watch him is because he's pretty. But anyways. Well, no, what I usually back it up with is he also, you know, I say, and he also said America deserves <laughs> <laughs> that's usually how i back it up but uh I, I, that's better than mine you got me yeah uh but in the so the mainstream so the mainstream media doesn't cover it and so the thing is the way that the online leftists work intentionally is that there is an awareness that boomers and xers overall don't like communism so they don't allow this they try the best to like not allow this communist information to kind of go into the mainstream yet they don't want it to be part of the public discourse that there is actually a contingency of, of hiding the power level. level. Right. A hundred percent hiding the power level. Right, right, right. Um, but that's not when I was talking about like sort of the the um the crying wolf with with, with socialism, it wasn't the idea that socialism is good or bad. It was just the idea that like the right has been talking about social socialist infiltration in America for like 70 years. And so and you kind of get in this contentious thing because people on the right say, well, no, it's always been happening, and it's kind of like eh, you know. I'm skeptical oh. that it's always been happening. It's so now that when it happening. actually is happening, it's been happening since the '60s. It's, well, yet yeah, to some extent, right? But now oh, that it's, it's happening now in a, in a much greater scale than I think probably has ever <laughs> happened in American history, people don't buy it because they yeah. they felt like they're like I've been warned about this for so long. And you right. also kind of get the problem where you know the right would like to, especially not even the distant past. You know, there's the whole thing with you know with Obamacare. Remember what was the Republican? Uh, talking point against Obamacare. Socialism. Socialism. Socialized well, they, see, medicine. Exactly. And so, which is hilarious to call that socialism. And so it's sort of like they've kind of been beating the socialist stick too much and it's kind of lost its power. Of course. Same way with yeah. Nazi. Yeah, they've done the exactly same Exactly the same way with Nazi, right? Right. And racist is basically going that, that way uh, too. Racist is, racist is so gone. Yes. Like, There's so many people it, that were like, who would say, oh, I don't think Nick Fuentes is racist because... You know, they call everyone racist. Like they just yeah. automatically think that it's not true. Unfortunately, so. but yeah, it's like, and and it's clear that you know someone like Nick Frentz is yeah, obviously right. definitely yeah. racist. That doesn't mean that he's like going to attack a black person on site. You know, no, um, but he wants but, to live in a white ethnic state. Yeah, he definitely. Wants Which is to kind of hilarious him. that he like hooked up with Kanye. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It was a wacky it's, place, but it's I. I don't even know what to do with that one. And now, and now, now he it's so funny because like the the, the the ethno state and the far riders are all kind of now that hit him and Milo and the fucking who's the January sixth guy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the um the guy accused of you know being a, a groomer now. Oh, back to Alaska? No, what? No, oh. fucking the he, remember he was on Alex Jones simping for Kanye. Oh, Ollie. Oh, Alexander. Ali Alexander. Yeah, Ali yeah, Alexander. Yeah. yeah, they're all like they're all like trying to destroy each other's reputations like women now. It's uh, pretty hilarious. God, I didn't know that was going on, but it's so ridiculous. It's wild, yeah, it's so wild. So every once in a while, like grapers, grapers will show up in my in my mentions or whatever, mm -hmm. and and I'm just like, I'm like, there, are, I can't believe there are actually grapers that have the audacity to like try to taunt people. It's like you guys, yeah. have been, you guys have made complete and total asses out of yourself and you have the balls to try and talk smack on the internet right get out of here right like, throwing stones in that glass house i mean come yeah. on yeah so, that's anyway. true so you're not worried about socialism going mainstream anymore are you phil me yeah uh yes i'm always we've talked because... we've talked you out of it no I'm very no, because far the... from that because the, the the left only moves in one direction and the left doesn't sleep, so I'm it it's not a thing that. But stops. I mean, they got Hassan and Lance, which <laughs> like that's the brain trust. They, no, they've got AOC and those big old socialist. But a, look, AOC, 
AOC you is. You can't bring up Adam's wife, though, okay? AOC, look, I'm fucking pissed at AOC over this subway thing. Like, oh, okay. AOC he finally like, lost this, this enamor. AOC is only using the socialist thing to gain political power and real political power no, in that I, she's one think she's Congress actually, person. You don't think she's it actually. Well, look, I, I think the institutions push push anyone that gains political power away from socialism by their very nature, which is I agree, a good but thing. that doesn't mean that she's not philosophically a socialist. No, I think she is, but oh, okay. in, in order to in order to enact any sort of socialist change, I mean, the uh, institutions would have to come around to her. Sure, it had to be something which, pretty significant. Which I just think I, the institutions are fundamentally just the way all of our institutions are set up. It's just socialism really can't get a foothold. I, I think which that, I think is good. I think you're. I think that is good. I think that it is harder here than it is anywhere else because of the way that our uh, government is constructed. But I do not. I also think that Black Swan events are real, and mm. that obviously you well, know, that, Black yeah. Swan events are unpredictable. We've so talked about that. Like people so, LARP their way into socialism, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> like Bernie Sanders is president. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, because because I truly believe that we LARP Donald Trump into into the off into the White House. Like I really yeah. did yeah. think that. We yeah, I totally. That. So if that can happen. I mean, thankfully, Donald Trump was mostly concerned with people loving Donald Trump and mm -hmm. killing a lot of people <laughs> doesn't make people love you. Um, okay. And that's what that's what motiv motivated Donald Trump, just wanted people to love him. If it wasn't for the fact that Barack Obama mocked him, he'd have never run for president. So it's Barack <laughs> so Obama, true. Dude, if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for the White House the White correspondence, House dinner, correspondence he would dinner. never have run. It is 100% Barack Obama's fault. Barack Obama literally gave us Donald Trump. It's Bar actually it's Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, because if it was if it was anyone else running, Donald Trump would have lost. And yeah. if it wasn't for Barack Obama, Donald Trump wouldn't have run. So it's literally the Democrats fault that Donald Trump finally pulled the trigger and did it. So all the all the problems that people think are Donald Trump, they're actually Barack Obama. Look, 2024, DeSantis is going to become president. He's going to make a national yep. anti-communism holiday. It's going to be like <laughs> the no. fifth. It's going to be the fifth of July. <laughs> Tucker like, Carlson and and uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does Tucker. Tuck, no, it may not, but I think it'd be hilarious, and I think that Tucker Carlson would win. You know, actually, I think it would take. I think it would take Michelle Obama to beat Tucker Carlson. Um, I hope not, because I hate Tucker Carlson. But, me too. Um. Wait, what? You, you know, actually Carlson? having the, the push a anti-communist day holiday is actually a pretty genius political move. Oh, that you like that? Look, it, it's something that, yeah, because it's something that's like nothing, but at the same token, it would force the communists to come out of the shadows to fight it. Of course. 100%. Yeah, yeah, it's great. That should be the very first thing that, that, that Trump or whoever wins does. Like, right. there should be as much anti-communist propaganda that the federal government can produce. Look, I got because a better it, idea. Let's make it a month. <laughs> let's make it a season, because now we're in pride season. Let's make it a Canada. year, a year of anti-communism. Anti let's make month. it a century, a century of anti-communism. Yeah, I back this. Force yeah, them to come out. Joy, yeah, Reed, that... Ray, Joy Reid can redo her interview with Kimberly Crenshaw. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Mark Lamont <laughs> Hill can come out. They can all go ahead and expose themselves and then we can we can then we can approach their arguments the way that we need to approach their arguments, which is they are not arguing from a place of principle and we can just ignore them. God, right. That'd be so good. That'd be a political battle I'd love. And that's another reason why that's another thing I love about uh, the, one of the things that I, I really back about James Lindsay is the attempt to get people to realize that communism is like a religion it's closer to a religion religion than a political perspective and i think that the the uh someone sent me a link to uh to some u.s code that says that stated that communism is actually uh like not maybe not a religion but a uh i forget what the word look i don't like that framing because religions actually have some pro-social utility communism like has none i like a uh, cult better <laughs> that's fine but i just that's fine but i just like to, i want i would love it to be called a religion so that way we can isolate it and separate it from government oh so that's a good idea say, yeah separation yeah, all of church the, and state exactly all the woke stuff because then you got the you got you got all the all the protections that religions have communists can have 
right? And they right. can go ahead and desire yeah. that world and blah, blah, blah. But they can't force us anymore. Wouldn't they get tax exemptions, though? Who cares? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, about I would that. give them. I hate taxes. I, and I don't care if communists mm. pay, pay taxes. They don't have to pay. I would give them. Hassan is going to get no taxes. <laughs> I mean, he, he'd, have to, he'd actually have to start his own. Hassan, Hassan literally would. He'd say, Look, I'm a church. Yeah, fine. <laughs> That's what fine. he would do. Fine. Church is if, in if, session. If they can't pass legislation, 100%, I'm fine. Do fine they? Just do, keep them away from legislation. Do church leaders pay income tax? I don't. I don't even know. I don't know. I have no idea. But I know churches are tax exempt, but I don't know about you know the the church officials. Yeah, I mean, I, that's that's something that I would totally God, I be. Become a I'd be fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> Taxes are stupid, and you're in California, so they got to be rough on you. All right, here we're we're getting into the uh, good part of this temple okay. thing. Genocide or anything like that? I don't think that there's a trans indoctrination that is coming through media. Genocide, that is, I said. It. I, yes, and I'm saying that I don't think there's a trans indoctrination coming through media that is programming kids to become trans. I think that's ridiculous. So, and, if you, and if you want to change but, topics to talk about trans genocide, we can move on to that. But, but that, it, you, it, you it, asked me specifically, why, right, is right. There a, why is there a spike? Yeah, that yeah. is why. Okay, so my follow-up is you think trans people feel safer than ever? No. Right now there's over 400 different bills being pushed in the United States that is directly targeting trans people. So they don't feel safe? They, of course they don't. So then why are they coming out if they don't feel safe? They have more access because that generation, Generation Z, has <laughs> a lot more acceptance towards trans people than older people who pass laws, draconian people who pass laws. The boomers are the ones running the show right now. They're still the ones in government. They're still the ones passing laws. The there's question. very few Generation Z in government or parliament. You want, you want to know what, what I think? I think there is a trans genocide. Okay. And I think it's you. Okay. Because you're sterilizing a lot of these people. How so? I mean, you're they're literally sterilizing them. The, the surgery to remove the gonads, hysterectomies, and puberty and cross sex hormones and puberty blockers have a high rate of sterilization. I mean, first of all, uh, removal of the gonads in the uterus is an absolute sterilization. And then puberty blockers have a very high rate, uh, and uh, cross sex hormones have an extremely high rate of sterilizing the individual. Right. So these people can no longer reproduce. That's genocide. Is this, is this the joke you're going to go for? Is joke? You are removing <laughs> these people's ability to reproduce. Mm -hmm. And if they're a young age and they haven't had the ability, like for instance, Jazz Jennings can never have kids. Jazz Jennings also, and this this uh, probably part of your studies, can't actually feel any set, like sexual uh, feeling of, of any kind. Do you have any idea how weird this sounds right now? Like, why, why are you obsessing what, what, with what, a stranger's what, genital pleasure? That's so weird. That's such a, a weak, dishonest attempt to derail the conversation. Like, what, what the fuck is genital pleasure? Like, where'd he come up with that term? He, you can't, you can't feel anything. You can't have an orgasm. So it was a, a very, very poorly worded uh, comment. But like, we're talking about I mean, genital pleasure here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but Lance being like, oh, it's weird to talk about genitals when you're talking about like trans people like that's that's a big part of the conversation so to be like oh you're it's weird for you to talk about this it's like no this is a a big part of the conversation so this this whole thing that lance does is just an attempt to derail it and i thought least, the left was supposed to be sex positive too they're like shouldn't they be concerned about somebody losing all sexual function for their entire <laughs> lives I'm not sure. I mean, it doesn't seem very compassionate to not care if someone loses sexual function. I know. His attitude is basically like, what? Some people live without sex. You know, fuck it. It's <laughs> like, I mean, maybe Lance is living without sex, but I'm telling you. I think he's you, married. That... Isn't he? He's wearing a ring. Is he really? Isn't he wearing a wedding ring? Well, maybe he's gay I... married. Who knows? I, I mean, I... Oh, but um, isn't the general pleasure thing, it sounds like something a... Uh... Like in a like in a cyberpunk sci-fi movie, where there's like a bunch of alien prostitutes. They're like, <laughs> "Would you like genital to... pleasure?" I agree. I don't know what genitals he got down there, but I'll do any. Man, I them don't... Octurians don't matter if it's a boy. Yeah, exactly. Get the reference. <laughs> yes. I don't. Yeah, I've never heard the term genital pleasure before this this show. So, well, it's I'm just like, where'd that come it's from? A, it's the thing I talked about kind of when I had the dust up with Jangles and, and Punish Mom, where they're like, oh, they assume you're lying, so they think it's fine for them to lie. Like, right. Lance understands that the argument that, that Tim's making, but he he's just intentionally lying about it and being dishonest because yeah. he's assuming Tim is being dishonest. He thinks, oh, why do you... 
why do you, I mean, you talk about groomers. So that for, I get to just, you know, say you're actually the groomer because you care about children's genital pleasure. <laughs> it's like, well, no, I mean, what we're t- like, we're talking about, and I don't know if it came, I don't, and the clip I saw, it doesn't come up. But to me, I would have, you know, fire back at Lance here. Like, well, wait a minute. Imagine if we lived in a society where female genital mutilation was legal. Was the in norm, America. yeah. Well, just, yeah, or it's legal. And you'd, and you'd say, oh, well, you know, should a, a girl who's like five or six be able, you know, if her parents convince her that it's good to do, should should that be something that's allowed? And of course, Lance is going to say fucking no. Of course, he's going to say no. Well, why do you care about their genital pleasure, Lance? Why do you care about that? I don't know if Lance that? would say no, though. He would. Because, you know. He 100% the... would. Because women are a part of the oppressed hierarchy, you know, punching down. So. Unless, yeah, but of so course, is, it was so like is Islam, a Muslim though. thing, then he wouldn't yeah. say it. Then he couldn't say no. He'd well, be that's conflicted. A, well, I don't know. I, I I would guess he would say no. He'd be like, that's it's why, their culture. That's why I'm How not 100% you? sure. Well, no, there's a difference between their culture in a different country in, in America. Well, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Lance, how do you feel about female genital mutilation? Look, if it's none of his business, if a woman, you know, murders her baby, why is it his business if some parent, you know... True. I'll see if he's tweeted about it. Someone tweet at him and ask him. He blocked me. Lance, how do you feel about... (laughs) How do you feel about Jim, Lance? (laughs) What did you do, Phil? What did you do? Oh, you put the clip? Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, it's totally (laughs) worth it. It's totally worth it. I retweeted the clip three times, so that way I would ratio him. So it might have been the retweets that got it, (laughs) but I'm not sure. (laughs) Nice. So bizarre. That was very weird yourself. You, you guys are all right. No, no. So I'm talking about adults who engage in activities, which is a large portion of the global economy, whether you like it or not. Sure. Sex sells, they say. And when I say this person will never have this ability, you go, how weird is that? It's weird for you to fixate on a stranger's genital pleasure. That's And then he says fixate. Yeah. Like, is, yeah. He mentions it like we might want to think in terms of you know, this is an outcome that most people would probably find undesirable. And he's like, you're fixated on it. <laughs> it's so bizarre. <laughs> if you talk about it, it's so means bad you're faith. Yeah, so bad faith. 100%. Strange. That's so bizarre. Well, like, she's why, public why, about it. But, that's but see, that's, you're not making an argument right now, is my point. I'm not. I'm saying it's weird. It's not an argument. Yeah, I'm that's, just like, that's, I, that's an observation. So you're trying to make a, an appeal to emotion Did, and an appeal no, to shame. No, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just giving you my genuine thought when you say something like that. Like, well, that, why, it, was, why that we, it was a really fucking pathetic attempt at trying to make an argument. Why should we talk about that? Why, why? Tim is so good here because he totally calls out the him trying to shame him. That's exactly what he's trying yeah, to do. Exactly. Yeah. Should we discuss whether or not she has genital feeling? That's not important. It's not. She, I, that, that's not in my business. That's not important. What a dick. Yes. What a fucking dick. What a dickless. It's hmm. so bad. It's so bad. Just to yeah. think. Oh yeah, we could sterilize children right and left. Well, Fuck and them. also, the, the you could even say like, well, don't you think that if there's a substantial threat of the loss of you know that all function, sexual general function? function, yeah, right, that that should at least be discussed. You know, in sort of the context of the conversation before people make, you know, life altering decisions before they go through puberty. I mean, what that totally takes family options off the table, makes marriage difficult. Of course. (laughs) Makes relationships difficult. And the whole idea, like the right, the left is supposed to be the sex positive. They're supposed to keep this in mind. Like, you know, having a healthy sex life, that's like the leftist philosophy well, it's not, this isn't right? a principal position it's just the win and argument position so oh of course i know business so let's focus then on the sterilizing of the individual Do sure. you, are you okay with that when who's sterilizing people jazz jennings is sterile why are we going back to jazz jennings i don't, because know, any, jennings I don't know anything about her because jazz who's sterilizing people Anyone, anyone providing yeah, gender transition these, surgery, yeah. literally. Affirmative Every, care is sterilizing people. What, right? what the hell are you talking about? Like, how can you even ask that question? Who the people performing the surgery, Lance? Right, any bottom surgery is necessarily going to sterilize them. Yeah. Un, so. Unbelievably stupid. Totally. Yeah. This is well, Lance, so. Yeah, it is. He really, really did a great service to the right by going on Tim Cash. <laughs> so, the left was did, did, right to fear true. this. That is true. The people on the left are completely simping for him, though, in ways that's that because just... it's damage control. Oh, you think so? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Just, I mean, well, look at, some look of it's damage this. control, some of it's self delusion. You know, some of, yeah, some of it's damage control, some of it's people that are equally as stupid as Lance's. Right. Um, but like, I mean, look at this. We've been 
We've been on for what six and a half hours, and like we've been ha- I'm ha- I'm about you guys. I'm having a blast. Yeah, me too. And, like, <laughs> and and this is you know m- making him look like a jerk, and it's going to be clips that are going to go out. I I'm super happy about him going on, and I totally understand why the left was like, please don't, please don't. And I totally understand why they're like, oh, we have to do our best to cover because they're going to be tons and tons and tons of clips and and content like goes on and on and on you know so i i I think they're just trying to do their best damage best damage control they can possibly do is lance clout chasing is that why he went on temple even though everyone is like no lance don't do it you're not prepared you're not ready he's like oh i'm gonna print out the left-handed chart i'm ready (laughs) yeah he was he was he went on there thinking man I don't know why Vosh and Matt Bender and everybody have more followers than me and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to get that clip that makes me a star. And bam. <laughs> hold I mean, on a second Hold there. on there, partner. <laughs> hold on there. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I know it is. Totally. Tim ultimately left him off, let him off the hook then without exchange, but. Tim is a kind man. <laughs> to hold on, to hold on there, hold on there, partner. I keep adding the partner, but he doesn't say partner. We can hear it in our heads. Yeah, I know. Yeah, totally he has there. that look on his face, like partner. <laughs> <laughs> hold up there, partner. <laughs> you just, you just committed a sin. <laughs> A famous so individual on cable television. So if she is sterile for whatever reason, what does that have to do with me? Why, why does that concern me? Do why should I pass that? Look at this. Oh, God. Yeah. It's so painful. Why does that concern me? Why do I care? Someone could, someone sterilize your kid. Why do I give a <laughs> fuck? Why are you even on Tim Pool, then? You Dude, know? I've, like, why did you show up? It's so insane. It's the same with the abortion thing. She wants to kill her baby with meth. Why the fuck do I care? It's none of my business. But at the same time, he's like, oh, I got to advocate for the trans kids, the people who think they might be trans. Oh, my God, I have to save them. Like, how does he pick and choose? He's like the baby, the meth baby. Ah, fuck that. Uh, the people sterilizing them. Ah, fuck that. Come on. Have a heart. The sterilization of teenagers. This is such a weird way to frame this. Like you are removing teenagers' ability to have children. I'm not doing it. It's almost like he's never even grappled with this as the result of affirmative <clears throat> care. It's so crazy. How do you not know that that's a result? Anything. I'm not a doctor, Tim. You I don't have the ability it, to do this. Right? I support people having access to health care. Of course. Why would I want to prevent that just because do some people have bigotry again? towards them? Let's try again. You seem scared sure. of this. Do you believe that parents and doctors should have the ability to remove the ability of a child for, for future reproduction. They should have the ability to give them access to health care. Of course they should. <laughs> so why do you keep you're, you're, you're implying that every single... See, he totally has to reframe it. He can't even yeah. grapple with the idea yep. that this this treatment sterilizes them. Right. Yep. May, maybe potentially takes away their sexual function for their entire lives gender affirming care results in sterilization that is that. that is not true at all I said the, the removal there's of also the... people who are trans that never get bottom you surgery see, you could make an honest argument that says if if he really you know believed in what he was saying he could say look it's better that people not have the ability to have orgasms than it is for them to commit suicide right exactly you, exactly. you can make an is argument is it if you is it, it? <laughs> for most is I, it I really I, didn't say, I didn't say you had to be convinced of the argument okay, I didn't okay. say it had to be compelling i'm just saying that you could make an honest argument he just Look, can't i may nothing's going to make me suicidal faster than not being able to have an <laughs> orgasm okay well hey, fair enough because you know what you lost but if you don't you know if you never know that's the that is the horrible thing yes that is the horrible thing i agree i agree but i can i can conceive of why a leftist would not oh like my I can, god I, they're I fucking can, delusional they're totally I, I, delusional I, I, I totally wait I, adam if you had to choose between dying at the age of 20 <laughs> Uh-huh. Or not never being able to have an orgasm, you would choose dying at the age of twenty. <laughs> oh God, that's like, oh, that's like two unthinkable options right there. <laughs> I don't. That's like tough. Oh man, 
Make it like if you want to do thirty, I'll go like okay. No, I'm twenty. Oh, you don't hold get on the a bargain. second. I'm... <laughs> Look, you die at the age of twenty if you never have a. Your what? choices are you you can have orgasms, but you die at the age of twenty, right. or you get to live until you're you know whatever eighty eighty something, but you never get orgasms. Mm -hmm. I'll go to therapy. <laughs> so, but I I would. I would technically have never gotten an orgasm in the 80 scenario. Yeah, that's, that's just a fucking tough one. Right. Because yeah. you don't so necessarily you, you know, know what you were. You don't know what you're missing. Yeah. So I'm like 80 years. I mean, I do like life, but. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like most people would choose to live. Yeah, but you don't yeah. know if you yeah. don't like death. Well, that's a good point, too. You never know. <laughs> 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 yeah, excellent point. Yeah. Excellent point. There you go. I think realistically. Debunked. If I think <laughs> realistically. <laughs> We haven't had a double blind study on death versus life, so you know. Amazing that we haven't yet. We should have. We should right, have. One. Right? Yeah. God. Why haven't we studied this, everybody? Yeah, I think I would probably go with the life. Of, okay. Like I think, okay. like the punk rocker part of me wants to say no twenty. Right. Right. But I'm just, oh man. Okay. Yeah, that's a tough one. Why must people dis why must people choose? No, they don't have to. I'm yeah. just saying like that would be the argument that Lance or that Phil said Lance could possibly give forward to the argument if he wanted to actually right, engage with right. it. But he's not even gonna do that. So Yeah. He's just gonna reframe think... everything and pretend right. that the sterilization yeah. does it's just well, healthcare. It's probably better this way because uh, like Lance has prepared arguments which he needs to rely on because whenever he doesn't rely on a prepared argument, we see the root that he <laughs> I, goes I down. Know. So. He backs him. There's the rake. There's Back. the rake. Right? Yeah, so, you know. You believe that parents and doctors should have the ability to remove the ability of a child for, for future reproduction. They should have the ability to give them access to health care. Of course they should. <laughs> so why do you keep you're, saying you're, like you're implying that every single gender affirming care results in sterilization. That, that is that is not true at all. I said the, the removal there's of There's also the... people who are trans that never get bottom surgery. You seem very scared of this. It's scaring you. How, how am I afraid to? Because you keep deflecting when I ask you. So Jazz Jennings is a specific deflecting. example. Let's try I, it. Let's try this. Let's, I, let's, Tim, let's, let's Tim, slow down and go one point at a time. You right? think I'm deflecting because I don't want to keep talking about someone's genital pleasure who's a stranger. Nice I'm saying try. it should, I sh I'm nice saying try. it shouldn't concern nice you. Try. It shouldn't concern nice try. anyone. Nice Tim, try. your appeal to emotion is not going to work on me. I'm asking you a science. <laughs> I know I can appeal logic. to your emotion. I'm trying a logic-based question about the future of, of these people. I believe you are genociding them. I believe you and cool. in, you intend on genociding autistic individuals. I genuinely believe that. Who's autistic in this? A large portion of trans kids are autistic namely females. So this is an issue in that young, lesbian, autistic females are a large portion of those who are transgender. Do, and you, have, do you have data on this? Dude, he's an idiot. He's a fucking idiot. Yeah, he doesn't know. Idiot. He, he is. Background information. He doesn't know anything. So well, I mean, much he knows hubris. enough to, to bring the talking points for the meta study. When, for the literature. Review. Look, that's on some fucking leftist Twitter thread he got yeah, right, off of. Like, yeah, he of doesn't know anything about this topic. Yeah. What, there's autistic people that are getting I gender know. dysphoria? <laughs> really? You don't say, what, what, what? He doesn't know any any of the counter arguments against him at all. Like, he's never engaged with any of those. This is the first time no. he's hearing them. So. Uh, th and, and, and I, this is the first time I'm, like, re-watching this. I've watched some clips and stuff, but this is the first time I'm re-watching the whole thing. And I've mm -hmm. heard people say, oh, you know, it wasn't so bad. And I, I listened to counterpoints to a, a bit of a back and forth, and he had some criticism of Tim, which I thought was fair. How but, dare he criticize Tim? Yeah, I know. But as I'm listening back, I'm like, I'm like, actually, I don't know that, that I really agree with counterpoints criticism now. So I'm not 100% sure because it's mm -hmm. like, this is is just such a bad performance by by Lance. I, I mean, maybe that's what's what's. Wait, are you saying Lance's performance is so bad it's made you rethink other people's critiques of Tim? That nice um, try or <laughs> nice try, nice try, nice try move was good. It, it, I like Lance doing that. Move. It I might be. Move. It might be. That's very funny. We that's should that, do that's that. How, Lance is so bad. He's retroactively made Tim look better in all <laughs> previous engagements. <laughs> And I mean, like I said, I was listening to counterpoints and I was like, yeah, he's, he's what did he say? What did counterpoints say? I, 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 I can't specifically, okay. I was, I was, I was laying down to go to sleep and I was kind of listening to it and as I was, as I was going to bed. As you do when you listen to counterpoints. I mean, wait, what? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. just kidding. Oh.
I do. I listen. I, if if I, I like wasn't with you guys honestly. right now, I would be listening to you guys as I go to bed. Actually, I, know, I would be right. asleep, and you guys would be playing to my dog. Mm-hmm. You know, nice. Um, but uh, and and when I I'm probably gonna get off fairly soon here, and when I do, I will listen to the rest of the. Show. <laughs> yeah, you will as get as off fairly soon. Thinking of all these kids. Generally. Easy. <laughs> hey. Other people's genital <laughs> pleasure. Oh. <laughs> easy. Easy. You disavow, disavow. Anyway, do, do, I mean, come on, bro. Do you have data on what you've you've brought up? You couldn't give me one study, but yes, I've, I'll pull I've it given up for you, you not only studies, meta studies. I've given you multiple meta studies on this. I, I've given you a surplus of information on this topic. Make up six six times more likely to have autism, according to NPR.org. So yeah. I think you're trying to genocide autistic people. <laughs> I, I, I literally. Six, I, six I, times I, more. <laughs> what's the percentage of? That's what I asked you. Six you times, sixty percent. You're saying that's not how that works. That's not right. You don't. You don't. Six hundred. Sorry. No, that's not how that works. You're saying what percent of them? What percentage of trans people happen to be autistic lesbians? That was your claim that a large portion are. I'm saying I don't know any statistics on that. I've never heard that before. Well, so he's so bad faith. He just goes to the internet. He goes autism, transgender, (laughs) NPR. Look how fucking biased is NPR? If NPR is even saying this, of course we've reached the tipping point. (laughs) Jeez. NPR is like, oh my God, we're, we are doing harm here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first thing I pulled up was that transgender and non-binary, pe- non-binary people are up to six times more likely to have autism, right? Right, but that's not answering the question yet. And your question is what portion of, oh, let me Google it again. Because I, I thought that was sufficient and, and you know, uh, 24%. So that's not the majority, even if that stat is true. Six times more common, 24%. That's still not the majority, even if that statistic was true. Yeah, no. Look, he only will only accept it if 51% of trans people are autistic. Right. Uh, Anything below that, 49%, not good enough. I know. That the majority is... So 25, 24% so, of trans people are autistic, according to that data, and 6% of... So so what I think certain. is, I think that there, is, there are people who hate people with Down syndrome, and in Iceland, they've actually publicly avowed or, or, or praised their eradication of people with Down syndrome. I think that's horrifying. Like... You can you can be you can be okay with it. I'm not saying you're not allowed to believe that, right? You, I, I, you don't have to have the same morals as me. I just think it's wrong to genocide like people with Down syndrome. You know what I mean? You have completely derailed this conversation. You're, you're assuming that I'm pro people having uh, abortions for people who have Down syndrome when I, no, we're talking about. I'm not saying you do. I'm saying okay. in Iceland, they've what stated they. What does this have to do with trans rights? Right. So we see a higher rate of autistic people uh, uh, autism in trans kids. You, you we said, also you said then, it makes it the majority. It does not even based well, on the I source you corrected. pulled up. Okay, twenty four percent. Okay, uh, I still believe that this is very much an effort. I, I think I think the left is intent on genociding trans people. In what way? Removing their ability to reproduce. How are they removing? Okay, wait. Tim, Tim overstepped here. You can say yeah. that's going to happen. That's not the intention. That doesn't make any sense. That's not the left's intention to genocide trans people. Obviously, right. And, completely I mean, counterproductive. Trans people aren't really uh, a a group that does a whole lot of reproducing, so. Well, obviously, once you transition, you know, yeah, sure. Yeah, so, but it's not the yeah. it's not the intentional goal. That wouldn't make any sense. Well, yeah, Tim, but, I mean, he called like, Tim a pedo and pedo. He's like the gloves are off now. Fuck this guy. <laughs> which is fair enough. I mean, I, I think Lance is a bad person. So, says um, in Iceland, they're permitted. Abortion is up to 16 weeks if the fetus has a deformity and that includes Down syndrome. I mean, I don't know if I'm opposed to that. I, I, I'm fine with that. I'm not, I mean, like I said, the, the, it still falls within my like acceptable range for abortion. You know? Right. Six, 16 right. weeks. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. Oh, man. Tough one. Apparently, they've uh, almost gotten rid of Down syndrome in Iceland by doing yeah. this. So. I mean, based, well, sure. I mean, <laughs> how do they, I mean, is it really getting rid of it if you're just aborting the Down syndrome kids? I mean, I guess that's a good point, right? Is it, is, would, is would it prevent it from being it? passed on in the future? Yeah. Of course not. Because right. it was passed on in the, the woman goes on to reproduce. So there's something yeah, going on there. The original, yeah. The yeah. original host. <laughs> yeah, the host. But I, I assume it would lower, well, actually, I guess it wouldn't because I don't, Actually, it might not make a difference. Oh, you might be you right know what? because um, 
because I don't know, it's not like, I'm assuming there's not a high rate of, I could be wrong, but I'm assuming there's not a high rate of reproduction for people that have down, like severe Down syndrome, right? You, sh you should probably only get one abortion, mm -hmm. like you or be allowed one abortion. And then after that, then they're all illegal. Everyone gets one? Yeah, yeah Spider-Man yeah, rules? The Spider-Man rule, yeah. <laughs> like everyone gets one. That way, if you if your kid has Down syndrome and you abort them, you're not going to have more down more kids that are going to still pass down the gene. It's like, all right, if you abort and you don't mm -hmm. want to have that one, then you're not going to have any because you're going to stop oh, the the. Uh, okay, the... I'll I'll agree with this, but only if Spider Man performs the abortion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll agree with that. It only if he performs the abortion by yeah, he's got to pull out with some. You gotta whacking the web way. right into the woman's yeah, he goes, wound and yeah, get pulls out. it right out. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Then I'm on board. Wow. <laughs> That should be a TikTok. There a hey, yo. Uh, <laughs> see, my cousin Spider-Man and Elsa. Listen, I bet you there's a Spider-Man and Elsa video somewhere where that fucking scenario where the happens. the abortion happens? Probably. Yes, where Spider-Man pulls a baby out of a pregnant Elsa with some webbing. I think I've seen that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Our testicles are moving. That is not away. the Don't only operation that... Is Tim still talks about them, but I don't... I don't oh, okay. I've never actually even seen them. I only heard, I've only heard really? them. Really? Oh, wow. You're missing yeah. out. Elsa Gate. They are crazy, it. yeah. Huh? Like Spider Man playing with his turd, like shitting out a turd and playing with it. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> I know. It's bizarre shit, man. Literally. Don't look, don't look into it. On genociding I'm trans Googling people. right now. In what way? Not really. Removing their ability to reproduce. How are they removing their ability By to reproduce? By cutting off their testicles and removing their That is uteruses. not the only operation that is done. There are nope. trans people who maintain their same genitals as before. Right. Not everyone has to decide to get bottom surgery. That's a choice and, they should make. And cross-sex hormones do have a high rate of causing sterilization. It can, but it doesn't always. Also, and you can be like, trans and sure. not get any operations at all. So I think you are... So like, I'm in favor of making sure these people can always have families and have kids, right? Your position, whether you support the moral, moral issue of, of or not, results in many of them being stale. For instance, the reason I use Jazz Jennings as an example, because this is a person on television with millions of followers who wrote a book and told kids about this journey. The journey that Jazz Jennings went on resulted in a complete inability to have a family and have children. I think that's terrifying because Jazz was not old enough to understand the implications of that. Jazz will never have a family. Jazz, the, 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 the genetics of Jazz Jennings is over. That is one of the most horrifying things to me as a human being, because I think genocide is wrong, right? Why should her ability to be uh, or have reproductive function, why should that concern you? For the same reason the Uyghur Muslims in China concern me, like human rights issues. China, for instance, But has... what if she never wants to... Wait, what? why do you get... Okay, Lance, why do you care if there's some kid out there who can't get gender-affirming care and then kills himself? Yeah, totally. Like, That's what, what I'm thinking. Fucking, yeah, what kind of stupid fucking question? Why do you care? Why do you care it's about a the kind of stupid being question? Only That's the true. things I'm allowed to care That's about. What right. do you care about? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Only I can care about the health and well being of other people. How dare you? He's so dumb. To have kids. That's something you determine for yourself later in life. Exactly. So why is it our business? Because it's been removed before Jazz could have the ability but to again, make the conclusion. But again, that has nothing to do with us. She could decide to never want to have kids, and that's fine and valid. Right. So my morals would be that a, a society protects the children because there are certain things you can't know until you're at least 24 or older when your brain is fully developed, which is why we don't allow people to drink and do, dr like, do certain drugs, whatever sure. drugs are legal, until they're 21. Ooh. So for me, I'm <laughs> like... If you can't drink till you're eight, till you're 21, if there's like you can't smoke till you're 18, this society absolutely recognizes you can't drive till a certain age. That uh, the reason that the driving age is, is what it is. One of the arguments made, I think it was in Illinois, is that risk taking is a lot higher in youth than it is in older people. So the argument is once you're past 16, you go through driver's ed. That helps uh, control for the higher risk taking of, of younger people. So we set an age limit. For someone who's 10 years old, to be put on Lupron and then cross sex hormones, they will never develop the ability to reproduce. So in the instance of Jazz, again, a famous individual who's very influential with millions of followers, there was never the ability to reproduce developed, which caused complications. Complications aside, that's Jazz's personal business. But the, the puberty blockers and cross sex hormones did sterilize Jazz, 100% sterilization. Jazz was not old enough to understand the implications of that. So I, I have concerns about having children whether they choose to or their parents choose to, I think that's genocide. I can kind of see your argument because if a kid was straight, a straight kid, just a kid, and they were like, 
a 12 year old girl and she was like i don't want to have babies when i'm older and the mom was like okay then we'll sterilize you right now and they went and had the kid had a hysterectomy that's i think that's illegal i don't know but i would imagine society needs to protect uh little little kids from it crazy parents illegal. that are like jesus just because a 12 year old says they don't have babies later in life. so yeah. the I'm fact that it is sterilizing as a byproduct i think should be should be taken into account with the whole procedure that's a great i point. think I that's think, still uh, something that comes down to the individual and what they choose to do and if someone is like i want to have gender affirming care knowing the risks then why is that my business it's the same thing with someone who wants to have well, a, a surgery that can have other complications that's not my business it's it's not your business if they're an adult but you're talking about a fucking 13 year old you're talking about a 12 year old that's ridiculous that's the mm -hmm. problem if someone had uh, an appendix aflamed and they had to have their appendix out, there are potential complications that come from. And then like equating this to some procedure that we understand fully and have done for 50 years is just so disingenuous. It's like right. this stuff is brand new. We don't know what we're doing. This is all experimental. Yeah that but i'm not going to prevent them from having health care and saying that you can't have a right to get your appendix out because every major medical association in the united states agrees that that is the best way to treat appendicitis and in this case when we're talking about trans people that's another every the bringing up appendicitis is really bad like that you just automatically die right like if you have like the best way to treat appendicitis there's only one way to take the appendix out because it'll mm -hmm. kill you you right. know you don't there's not like multiple ways to treat it if your appendix gives you appendix gives you crap, they just remove it because it's a old vestige of something that we yeah. don't need anymore, and so you just get rid of it. So the the idea that it's comparable is ridiculous. It's like a penis. Ah, well, I mean that's Lance's penis, maybe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> got him! Yay! Gender dysphoria. There is multiple single ways medical... to treat. Yeah, obviously. exactly. Well, I don't, know if that's wow. true. I don't know if that's actually accurate, but well, the way you define gender dysphoria, that's not accurate, but well, okay, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. In the United States agrees on gender affirming care. Then you know what they Every should do? Every single one. You know what they should do? They should produce one single randomized controlled trial for puberty blockers and cross-sex cross -sex hormones to show that it's safe and effective, but they have not. So it's not healthcare, it's experimentation. Yes. 100%. Great point. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They weren't even hey guys. keeping track of the the prescriptions and stuff at the Tavistock. It was so crazy. They weren't right. keeping records on any of that shit. I need you, to do to look more into Tavistock so I can discuss it because I keep hearing about it and I haven't looked deeply into it. I know that it's like it was gender care that kind of stopped in the UK, but I can't yeah. use it for any kind of argument or anything because I don't know about, enough about it. But listen, I... Uh, I gotta get out of here. I gotta cool. Get a thanks for sticking around for so long, man. Yeah, thanks for. Uh, I enjoy the crap out of it. I really had a lot of fun. This is obviously the 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 company's great, and this this video is just friggin' hilarious. Yeah. So, Welcome uh, back anytime, man. Thanks. Cheers. I'll uh, I'll definitely be listening. So you know, keep the jokes alive. All right. See take you care. Later, chat. We won't Bye. bad Matthew the second you leave. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. You talk about giving kids health care. That's not health care. Health care repairs something which is broken. You use the example of somebody's appendix not functioning properly. Yeah, of course. Okay, yes. So, so what you have to do in that in yes. instance is intervene so that the body can function as, as it is intended to. Destroying somebody's ability to procreate is demolishing the organ that you're claiming to treat, right? You're but, destroying but, the biological function rather than helping to improve it. That's not healthcare. I want, I want to pull this up too. It's from University of Utah because I was reading about this recently. It's it. it well, I, I wish I wish you would have let uh, Lance respond to that mm -hmm. or attempt to respond to that. I guess would be the better way to frame it. There would be. But I think no that was a really good response. Point, yeah. 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 Seamus did great in this. It goes on to mention that hormone replacement therapy can make you sterile. Uh, and that it's important. It can. Uh, it's important to pre preserve your sperm. It says if you're trans feminine, uh, otherwise the hormone therapy may make you make it impossible for you to have biological children. 
Uh, if someone is put on puberty blockers and then cross sex hormones as a child, they will never have the ability to preserve their, their reproductive functions. So if you're put on puberty blockers, they are reversible. You can stop being on puberty blockers and you can still maintain a lot of things that you were worried about being taken away. When it comes to With Jazz Jennings specifically, um, she's actually made statements about this because, you know, I, I was just looking this up. Jazz Jennings says, I don't regret my transition at all. When I was 11, I started male puberty and I was put on hormone blockers. Those blockers saved my life and continued to save the lives of so many youth out there. If I was forced to go through male puberty, it would have been devastating. Even more so, taking estrogen through hormone replacement allowed my body to develop how I wanted. Well, I blocked she, look, I know it's Jazz Jennings and it's I know it's the personal account. But I just, I, uh, yeah, you can't say that. If I was allowed to go through male puberty, it would have been devastating. How, how does she know that? Well, how does she know that? She, she knows it because she doesn't, I mean, to conceptualize it, that's not the case. We'd be very psychologically devastating to herself. So, yeah, I'm not, that's the answer to your question. I'm not so certain that <laughs> can be known. No, obviously not. I agree. Yeah. Like, obviously, if you had, a time machine you can do this study and figure it out but we don't mm -hmm. have that kind of technology of so of course into a young woman eventually got bottom surgery and now living as a proud woman today what does that have to do with me why would i want to take that away from someone else what well, year was we're, did she we're make talking that, that was, she made this on march 31st she made it recently because that video came out where the mom said she was going to force the dilator and then matt walsh jazz. went hard and jazz yeah. was like hey matt and then so, matt was like sorry jazz th hey. th there's, a, there's a lot of questions around the morality of this the left likes to refer defer instantly to purity arguments which i find fascinating considering the left typically has a low uh, purity uh, uh, rating when it comes to moral foundations. There you go. What's he talking about? Look at there's there. your height reference. Nice. What's he talking about? Look at that. For example, when you said it's really weird talking about someone's genitals, it's a purity argument, which the left typically never makes. That's why I said it's a very weird thing for you to do. Approaching this from an academic perspective, we would make a few arguments about whether or not a person can truly understand they've lost the ability to reproduce if they've never had it in the first place. The, the, the psychological and the philosophical and philosophical implications of stripping away a person's ability to reproduce before they were old enough to even know what that was. So, uh, for example, if you take an adult human, female or male and remove their genitals by force, they will be very, very upset, extremely upset. In fact, it's a form of torture in a lot of countries. It's, it's meant to terrify. If you took away their ability to feel sexual satisfaction, it's a form of torture. In fact, female circumcision is is horrifying to the world. And it actually was huge controversies up in Dearborn, Michigan, because what it would do is it would result in women who are as adults could not feel anything when and, and they were effectively used as like objects for their husbands. So in making an academic argument, we would say Jazz Jennings does not understand. And that's fine if Jazz is happy. That's great. The, the, the argument into, into the greater is Jazz will never have kids. Fact statement. I think it's wrong to take away that from someone who doesn't understand what it what is. What if they don't want kids? They will decide that when they're an adult and have assessed the circumstances. But Jazz can't actually feel any of this. Jazz, jazz can't feel. Uh, th th this, is a, this was a study. There's a doctor who came out, did a, did a Zoom video on it, specifically, I think, referring to Jazz, that Jazz will never experience any adult satisfaction or desire. And so the question then becomes, why did Jazz get bottom surgery? Uh, my question, why do you think Jazz got bottom surgery? Oh, I don't have to ask that. She explained why. What, she, what did she, she say? said that she said that she's satisfied with it. What that she, that, that, what, should, what that should be say? the extent of it. What did she say? Um, I don't regret. Hey, he reads the same statement a second time. I know, time. again. How cringe. Because <laughs> that statement doesn't verify anything that he's trying to say. No. Look, it's a political statement. My transition at all, when I was 11, I started male puberty and I was put on hormone blockers. Those blockers saved my life and continue to save the lives of so many youth out there. If I was forced to go through male puberty, it would have been devastating. Even more, taking estrogen through hormone replacement allowed my body to develop how I wanted. I blossomed into a young woman, eventually got bottom surgery, and I'm living as a proud woman today. Yes, I do struggle with mental health and always have, but it's not because I transitioned, and it's unfortunately something many LGBTQ plus people face. Why? Because that has a lot to do with hate and a lack of acceptance that we receive in society, like I was saying before. So, so, so to all of you speaking about our mental health for views and calling our families abusers for supporting our transition you are the only abusers so what was the purpose of the bottom surgery it affirmed her uh, of, uh, gender of anyone, of anyone. It, it affirmed her gender what does that mean affirmed a gender so you have and all of us have a gender identity that we want to express in one way or another and with hers she affirmed her gender through the process of getting bottom surgery to look more and feel more like a woman why do you think jazz stopped dilating i don't know probably because it hurt but if, if this was an important part of affirmation, you'd think Jazz would maintain it. 
Sitch that's still not dilates, for me to decide. That's someone else's own identity. Whoa! <laughs> Listen, I told you Sitch, that in confidence. Sitch is still dilating to this I told day. you about that in confidence, Adam. I can't believe you'd say that on a stream. Okay. I couldn't help myself. Jeez. And so, so, again, that's why it's weird to me to try and... and I mean, you don't do that when you did go to you, the eye doctor? Did you know? Look. This is the first... This jazz... You just have the eye doctor go into your eyes dry? You don't oh, yeah, no. First. I've had the eye doctor dilate me before. <laughs> sure. I have a pretty cute eye doctor, to be honest with you. Oh, well, look at you. <laughs> the, um, the I, this is the first I have heard of this, this dilation thing, this Jazz Jennings story. And I mean, I was horrified when I heard this for the first time. Had you heard it before this? No, I'd never heard of this, yeah. So you heard it. You've recently encountered this as well. This is new yeah. to you. I was like, oh, that's horrifying. Yeah. That is horrifying. It's, it's like when you have, you know, the, the piercing in your body that, you you know, if you take the piercing out, it closes heals. up. Yeah. Yeah. Closes up. Yeah. So they, so trans. We don't need to explain it. No, I think we do, obviously. We don't need to explain for people it. Who, look, trans women have a neo-vagina. Oh, no. Right? That they need to keep the piercing in. Otherwise, it may close. So that's all, that's all you we're going to say. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> scary shit. rough yeah yeah very rough how do you explain that i hope they explain that before the operation takes place can you imagine um, the operation taking place and them going them pulling the wand out afterwards oh by would, the way uh, oh, yeah yeah you would hope it, it comes before oh right oh my god and I can't believe they have people like Lance who just suck this stuff up and oh yeah this is normal human behavior <laughs> This is what you do to avoid suicide. Yeah. To avoid suicide, this is what you do. Not great. Oh God. Impose this upon someone else, like to try and say, like, uh, you're disgusted at the fact that she can't have kids or something like that. It's like I don't know if she ever wants kids because I don't know who she is. But that's a decision for her to make between her and her doctor. It has nothing to do with me. Why? Why would any uh, trans child get uh, uh, a bottom surgery? Again, to affirm their gender. So what... as, as part of gender affirming okay. care. Why and children don't get bottom surgery, by the way. It's usually over 18. Well, Jazz, Jazz was, was 17. Yeah. Right. Jazz and was and so there are exceptions, and yes, that, but that, average the, average um, age is over Ken 18. Was, um, was was like Boston, Boston's Children's Hospital has never done that on anyone under the age of 18. The average age for bottom surgery is over 18 years old. So overwhelmingly. Why Why would... Uh, uh, I, I just don't understand why the... Um, it's not penile and virgin vaginoplasty. I don't know what it's called because Jazz didn't have a penis. Uh What's the purpose of making uh, 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 the the hole, the space? What's the purpose of 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 that? What's the the operation is because it gives them uh, it affirms their gender through the process of having a similar genitalia to a cis woman. So, what's the purpose of it? I just explained that. So, the purpose of it is just feeling, just an emotion. No, the purpose of it is it is part of affirming who they are through a surgery that makes them look and feel more like a a version of a woman that they want to be. You don't have to. There's not a template. That's not the only version a woman can be. There's other versions of how a woman can be and look, but that's the version that she wanted. So what I'm trying to understand is why create a permanent wound for the purpose of a man to have sex with in order to affirm the identity of someone who can't feel any of that? Well, first off, I have no idea about the actual sensations that people experience after these kind of surgeries, but that's not my business. And the second thing would be, I don't believe it's a wound. I believe it's an operation to have a general change. That's it. To but describe it, it as a wound is just very crude. But it's factually a wound, right? That's, I'm, I'm trying to avoid the right, the right calls it a mutilation or an abomination. I'm not saying that. But it's it's still crude to just call it a wound. After, it's, after there, it's healed, I'm sure there's no more wounds no, no, or scars it, it or anything. No, they have to dilate for the rest of their lives because it is a wound. Like, I'm being academic. I'm not trying to be insulting to anybody. The right calls it mutilation and abomination. The reason they have to use dilators for the rest of their lives is because it is factually a wound. But you're asking me a question that I can't answer because I'm not this individual. I don't know why someone would want to get that surgery because I don't, I'm cis and I don't experience these kind of things. But if someone and wants to, great. but Tim, if, and, and if someone wants to and it makes them feel better and improves their quality of life, then why do we have to get in the way of that? Well, can, can right, I so, interject so my, because... my position is for adults, I agree. And I had the argument with Tom Fitton. He said it should be banned out. Right? So I disagree. Mm -hmm. But and overwhelmingly, when you look at the data, when it happens to children, it improves their psychological oh distress. God. It removes and lowers suicidal ideation. That, it shows that, in the it, data that it helps them. That's not true, man. So the, the, the data, the data shows. Well, <laughs> it's just, I mean, 
it just gets back into you know i wish he would have realized that this i wish someone would have realized that he switched assistance with with regret oh, because yeah. that is the real question here like yeah for people you know who have generous for you it seems like these things do you know provide to some extent right um you know a, a, a benefit obviously and it varies from person to person obviously but if you got a 98 percent desistance rate you're definitely not doing any favors to those people who are going to desist naturally right. exactly yeah. but that that's the million dollar question is like well the over prescription of this uh surgery process, and this yeah. policy and this process it seems to be to me that's what the real question is what the real answer is Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. No, no, no. The, the it, studies it you have here, that I, the study you have absolutely here, the largest true. one. The, so first of all, as I mentioned, there have been no controlled randomized trial, but the largest study for, you for cited there, the, the largest study that you cited there does not say what you think it says. The Stanford University one, it was 27,000 people who were surveyed in 2015. And then there were two analyses done of these studies by Jack Turbin. And he lumped data together and did a few manipulative things to like get the results he wanted but there's two very important things to mention which is firstly this study was based on convenience sampling so they were speaking with people who were sent to them by lgbtq advocacy groups and groups that they reached out to Ooh. so you're already not getting an unbiased population sample there and then they were determining whether that person received puberty blockers mm -hmm. and other such treatments or hadn't but they didn't go over the reasons in fact the people who hadn't received puberty blockers or those kinds of treatments didn't receive them because they weren't allowed to. And one of the requirements for being able to receive that kind of treatment is some level of psychological stability, which means the people who weren't on puberty blockers in that study were more likely to be psychologically unstable, which we would expect to produce a higher suicide rate, but that wasn't controlled for. On top of that, the data actually shows that the men who are on estrogen were more likely to become suicidal. That but what he true. ended up doing, that's true, what he ended up doing was lumping them together Together. So he said people on cross-sex hormones are less likely to commit suicide because according to the sample he had of women that was true enough to overcompensate for the increased likelihood of suicidality in the men and he just threw them all together as if a man taking estrogen is the same thing as a woman taking testosterone and we could expect the same medical outcomes. So and I'm saying that's bullshit. So so to respond to you, I do have a um, number of peer reviews. <laughs> Very well done, Seamus. Yeah, Seamus Very is well kicking done. ass. Yeah, Seamus is really on point in this conversation. Studies related to this? And if they're as good as that one, I'm telling you they're trash. Mental health outcomes in transgender non-binary youth receiving gender-affirming care. February 25th, 2022. This one shows kids who received puberty blockers and hormone therapy had 60% lower odds of moderate or severe depression, 73% lower odds of suicidality. Gender identity five years after... None of this addresses anything Seamus said. Of course, said, but, yeah. You know, he'll, he'll rattle it off and give the perception that it does. I've just found this on Google just now. Look right, at this right. headline. <laughs> right. Well, no, because Seamus was specifically talking about how because of the specific restrictions you were in the study, they were limiting the sample and that would produce a result that wouldn't necessarily be indicative of the whole population. Of course. And yeah. so, right. So Lance isn't addressing literally anything he said. He's just going to read off from another study. So like, okay. right. Yeah. The social transition. This one is in the American Academy of Pediatrics, peer reviewed July 13th, 2022, between 317 youth. They found 94% binary uh, transgender stayed the same. Only 2.5% reverted to reverting as cisgender, 3.5% as non-binary trans. A UK 2019 study of 3,398 people who had gender affirming care found that only 0.47% regretted it. Another one, the impacts of strong parental support for trans youth found that parents who support trans youth, this was 430. 33 participants, double blind study, 93% reduction in reported suicides. So why do you, and why, I, well, why hold do you, on. And I think we can all have the good faith that you did as much work fact checking those studies as you did the one I just tore apart, <laughs> but I didn't have time to go into every single bit of statistical yeah, information you would bring here. Th th this is, this is the problem oh with like, job. like you mentioned, going the studies back and forth or whatever. So that's why I'm, I'm fine with, well, I'm not here to change your morals, right? Oh, and, that, and that's fine. So my question would just be, why do you think it is that in Europe they've abandoned the, these practices? A lot of it was political. If you, if you look at the history of it, especially when it came to puberty blockers and how that was handled, um, it was in large part a political decision that both um, medical groups, advocates, as well as pro-LGBTQ organizations outwardly um, uh, protested. And especially like, I know you're going to bring up Finland, I believe was one of the countries that did it, Sweden as well. Uh, and the UK. 
Yeah, and, and in a number of cases, Denmark, this, this is something in which experts, uh, experts in the fields of endocrinology, uh, pediatrics, they were very opposed to it. It was politicians who were pushing for this. And so this was a political decision. This is why I don't like when politics get directly involved in medical decisions, because, I mean, like you were saying, if you want to look up the actual organizations that support this, it's every major medical association in the United States. Every one without, like, without fail. But they're all... Did you, did you notice? Because when they used to have this conversation, they'd say every medical association in the world. Right. But now they have to say United ah. States. <laughs> <laughs> so a little interesting, but okay. Oh, there's more profit. How much, too, is capitalism driving that in the United States? Well, that I mean, sounds like that's to be what Ian's going to say, too, right? Is rich. that there is a profit incentive for um, some of this behavior, so... Which is funny because generally that would usually be sort of the socialists. Of course, bring up I was the just going to say, oh, yeah, you know, this should be alerting. Really trust this. Yeah, this should be alerting the socialist lance, but it's somehow not. I don't know why. No, right. A lot of times, if you don't get politically involved in the medical some, industry, they'll experiment on humans for, well, some, for money. And also, S some of them are, fair, some like, of them are not. If I listed them to you right now, because I have the list, you, some of these are not for-profit institutions just looking to make a fucking buck. Some of these are just genuinely concerned about child health care. And some of them have various, I mean, ideological biases. This isn't always about money all the I mean, time. I, but I'll, if you're going to reject what's, what Tim is saying about medical institutions no longer performing these operations in Nordic Europe because you're claiming those institutions have become political, I don't know how you could give any credibility to the American ones. So it's not the medical... Do you think the American okay, on, model on, Seamus, of practicing Seamus, medicine Seamus, is better than Seamus, the Seamus, model in Nordic let me, Europe? Let me answer your question. Okay. It's, it's not the organizations <laughs> themselves that have done it. Seamus going for blood there. Mm -hmm. He knows how they love the Nordic model. Are you saying that American <laughs> healthcare is better than the Nordic model? What's up? <laughs> he totally dodges, though. He doesn't answer. Distinctly, it was politicians and political organizations as well as think tanks that were pushing for it. And it was a lot of experts in the field that directly wanted it not to happen, that were fighting I, I, against I, but it. But then why is it the case that the... So the, the nation that started doing this earlier than any of the others was the Netherlands. They started around 1990 administering puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones for children who uh, purported to be struggling with feelings of dysphoria. And so they have some of the longest term data available on this. And what they found is that transitioning has no effect on suicidality. That's part of the studies that I'm interested in is the suicide stuff. Like in 2022, they measured a bunch of people that transitioned. They were suicidal. They transitioned. Now they're not. But it's like, hey, that was eight months ago. Like, how are you going to feel in four years from now? Yeah. Totally. So it's hard to say, like, now long, now they're no longer suicidal just because they're I mean, like, yeah, I'm not suicidal now. But like, we got to, we need long term stuff. I was thinking about that when the study he listed was. Uh, 2019. I was like 2019. I mean, it couldn't have been very long, right? That they transition. Right. We, we do need to go to super chats because we're we're, oh. we're way past. But I, I do want to ask another just question. Like, do you think the Earth is overpopulated? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I don't. You don't think so? No. That's a great question though, because most is of these he trying people to see are. if he's like an anti natalist or something. Yeah, most of these people do. They're like, right. climate, we need to get the population down because of climate mm -hmm. change. Yeah. I want more people. I love people. I want more birth. I, I want more humans. I love everybody, man. Well, not that meth mom. You're, come on, Lance. <laughs> we, we know your position on meth moms. I want more people on this planet. Do you, but what about climate change? Climate change is coming. It's real. It's happening right now. But I mean, but you're not we, Malthusian then. No, I'm not. yeah. Okay. But but, okay. but more people page means page more climate change. The question is, does he know what Malthusian even means? Because I would argue no. <laughs> yeah, that's the um, that's like the guy that has all the tentacles. She Seamus is like, you're not Malthusian about this, and he's like, that's the guy mm. that has all the tentacles, like the squid face, who kind of comes out and you know, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft like created him. And he brings madness wherever he goes. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that's Cthulhu. <laughs> got more mouths to feed. It's you true. got more fuels to burn. But more orgasms. It would also means more scientists well, figuring that, out that, how to that cure was, the carbon problem. That was kind of weird, right? <laughs> it, but, more, more humans doesn't necessarily mean more climate change because more humans might figure out better ways to balance out the climate. I'll just, I'll just say one last thing and we'll go to Super Chats and then... Um, I guess we, I want to try and get to the, to the members only port. Actually, uh, man, I feel bad for going long. We should go to the members portion so we can do uh, uh, audience Q and A and stuff. There's some big but super chats in here. I'll just I'll try and grab as many as I can, and then we'll we'll try to just we'll, we'll go straight to Q and A for the members only portion. But my attitude is very I'm I'm not a conservative. Uh, I'm pro choice. 
I think, you know, I've got my morality, but in the long term, I really don't care that leftists are sterilizing and aborting their children. I thought you did care. Uh, from a moral position, but like, I'm not a conservative like, like Seamus, where Seamus is very much like, we have to end this because, you know, it's wrong. I'm a, a I'm, I'm not a conservative. I, I, if, if, if a woman is going to get an abortion at a certain, uh, a certain age, I'm like, I disagree with it, but I'm more libertarian in the respect of like, people can choose to do what they want to do. I think it's certainly wrong to sterilize kids, but the end result is the future is going to be a bunch of Christian conservatives and Muslims. I, I don't like this position at all. Because I'm not a conservative either, but the idea that people are sterilizing their kids horrifies me. Completely horrifies me. Mm -hmm. I sure. thought we were past this. I was listening to another content creator. God, I wish I could remember his name. I, I think he is a detransitioner and goes after a lot of the trans ideologues on YouTube. And he brought up a point about how historically singers a lot of times their parents would castrate them because they could become like famous right. singers and they could keep the voice yeah yeah I, and i i mean i've heard about this before but i never really considered it in this context it was like yeah of course you castrate them and they have a, a life of fame and fortune it sucks mm -hmm. but it's a it's like a political or it's a a career choice sort the of. <laughs> yeah right. Well, right. and I, I, I've mentioned before, I mean, this used to happen in ancient China because you could only get into politics by being a eunuch because you couldn't get close, to, I don't know, to the, maybe they were scared. No, I think they were scared that you were going to embezzle money for your family or something like that. So you couldn't have any family. So the parents mm -hmm. would castrate their kids so that they could get them into politics. So this isn't, something that's never happened before and of i do i do think there is kind of a fame component going on here a lot of the people that we talk about obviously are famous transgender people right so it is right. part of the calculation what well no, i mean and you know regarding the specific point about like oh everyone in the future is going to be religious it's like well i mean it's even though i think there's you know, a lot of people that are probably going to end up regretting transitioning mm -hmm. i mean it's not reaching the numbers that we're going to have like you know in the future all the you know all the left breeds themselves out of existence because they all sterilize themselves because they all think they're trans like that's not going to be a thing oh yeah tim's point uh, about you know a little, a little bit of hyperbole here the so, the yeah. uh right. the total religious future is yeah. definitely off the table that's not gonna i mean happen. yeah and obviously when you know, as, as uh, AI takes off, uh, who knows what the future is going to be, a fucking wackadoodle, so. But I brought up the the castrados because I thought right. we had moved away from that. I thought we realized that's well, fucking I mean, to, horrifying. Okay, so, to, to be fair, right. To be fair, though, it's there's a little difference between saying like, oh, you should, you know, cut your balls off so you could be a famous singer versus, oh, you should, you know, do something that might sterilize you so that you don't kill yourself. Yeah, the like, justification... The justification, the justification is different, yeah, right. right? So, but I still, the, I mean, you look at that um, desistance study. Yeah, but they're not, yeah, but they they refuse to do that. So, well, it, but if you look at that desistance study, doesn't your justification kind of evaporate as a parent? Um, if they were aware of it, yeah. right? <laughs> right, but yeah. that's the problem. They're not aware of it, so, and it's being not talked about, right? So. Yeah. Well, it's being taught. At least Tim brought it up, and we bring it up a lot. So yeah, more and more people need to be talking about it. And it's so, like, I'm it's glad. A, it's a self I'm very glad to see that Tim brought it up because he's the first like really big person I've seen to change the talking point. Though he got suckered away from it, to change the talking point from being about regret to desistance, which is a factor that needs yeah. to be conceptualized and talked about. So Yes, we have to focus on false positives. So one of the things that I worry about on the right, as the right kind of pivots to this, you know, Michael Knowles type position that, you know, transition itself is just not real. Right. I think that weakens their position. Yep. Makes them seem more like denialists. Yep. Obviously, I mean, this has been happening for time immemorial. So obviously... Uh, this gender dysphoria persists for some people past puberty, even if most desist from doing that. Right. Yeah. Can't say it never happens.
If you if uh, uh, Mormonism. yes, but the, the <laughs> Jewish population Mormons. diaspora is like twelve million, and, and Christians and Muslims are billions. Yeah. So like, well, but, the, but that's happened but, in Israel, right? Where the more religious Jews have more children, and so they're right. dominating elections. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so we saw this since the year two thousand. Liberals have been effectively shrinking. Gen Z is the first generation in a hundred years to slightly move towards conservative in some some areas. Likely not because Gen Z is becoming conservative, but because there's less liberal Gen Zers than there are conservative ones. So the end result of all of this is I don't agree with that at all, because kids, um, kids on average tend to be more against their parents. Yeah, ideologies. Totally. I, I think it I think it is the first thing I think it is. Kids are moving away from wokeness. So, yeah. you know, they, they made um, it's really funny. The wokeness did the a good job of making right wing positions seem cool again. You know, when I grew up, and I'm sure when you grew up, it was like, oh, to be conservative meant you were like the the church square, lady, yeah, the nun. You know, you can't swear. You have to go, you know, be a, a square and a loser. And now it's kind of like the opposite. So yeah, individuation is what it is when you know kids are forming their identity. They want yeah, to be, be the rebel, distinct right? from their parents. Yes, but being the rebel often means being against your parents right and and being yeah. woke is not being the rebel in most situations so yeah this is just like look man i'm not going to convince you to vote the way i would vote i'm not going to convince Seamus to vote that way i would vote but it doesn't matter anyway because in 100 years you guys are sterilizing and aborting your kids end of story wait a minute not you <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying he, from I the think he's, he's left, saying, he's saying right. I represent the left to him. Do you? Do you? Do you feel like you represent? He the left? A leftist. I, I, I don't. I don't feel I represent the left. No. Well, you call yourself a leftist, but I, I am. So, I'm a proud leftist. I wear that. I don't have to hide that. I don't hide my power well, so, levels. So, so, I, I, I don't wear. Uh, you know, some kind of like that uh, hidden. What's that mean, Sitch? When he says, "I don't hide my power level," to Tim Pool. Are, are you saying you think is he is he insinuating that Tim hides his power level? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Doesn't it seem like that's what he's saying to you? Uh, I mean, maybe a lot of leftists do hide their power level. So I oh, it's yeah, it's ironic for him to say that, right? Look, right. I'm a leftist. So I don't hide my power well, level. I don't know. So, okay, yeah, I don't Kimberly know Crenshaw. It, I don't know if he means it in terms of attacking Tim or if he means it in terms of attacking other leftists. So. Oh yeah, go either way. Power my my, my point is just this, right? I'm just saying I, I'm not I'm like there's no single voice for the left. I'm not I'm not the voice of the left. No, sure, yeah. sure. I'm just saying the left will cease to exist mm -hmm. and the middle and the right will supplant it. And then the middle will become the left and the right will, will stay the right. Here's what I'll say is that LGBTQ plus people were heavily persecuted by a lot of different groups, including the Nazis at one point or another in history. And you just can't get rid and of the them. communists. If you if you and, and the communists. Yeah, and if, and if you were to get Shea rid Guevara, of man. every single queer, if you got rid of every single gay, every single lesbian, every single bisexual, every single trans person, if you got rid of all of them in a generation or two, they would reappear because yeah. they're a part of us. They're, they're a part of humanity. They're a part of all of us. They just exist. They are. They <laughs> okay. This is like. Oh my God, this is so stupid. So first of all, Tim didn't say anything about LGBTQ people. Of course. He's talking not. about the left versus the right. Um, now, obviously, you know, Tim, you know, if he's if he's citing height, he obviously buys into moral foundations theory and moral foundations being biological to some extension. Right. Meaning that left, right is biological to some extension. That's what he's referring to, which Lance probably doesn't know anything about this. Um, but I mean, Lance, you could make an art, like, and this is probably true that Whatever it obviously, it, it, like it, this is kind of like really stupid. <laughs> like Lance is making this argument so dumb. Okay, obviously, whatever it is that makes people gay, right, mm -hmm. is uh, some kind of genetic or epigenetic process that exists in straight people, and that is passed down, even if it's recessive, right. forever. Yes. Because if it wasn't, gay people never would have. The, the, like gayness would have died out thousands of years ago because gay people they generally don't, don't tend to reproduce. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> right. So making this like he's like making this like oh it's because it's a part of us. It's a part of who we like. It's just like no like just f shut up. Why do you have to make it so stupid? Even when we we're saying something that's like right, you have to make it stupid. By the way that you talk about it, like pe like there are straight people that are just flipping the gay just because oh we're out of gay people. <laughs> well, it's, well, it's just turn. kind of. It's just kind of like um, this would be a very esoteric, very esoteric reference. Um, this is like when Red Letter Media complains about new Star Trek, 
and mm-hmm. how it's like very anti-science because everything is instead of being framed like scientifically like the way that i did about you know obviously the, you know how these traits are passed down it's not like it's a part of us it lives on in the spirit of humanity the gay lgbt-ness lives in the spirit of human so it doesn't matter how much of us are perish the spirit shall live on it's like no I hate shut up that framing i totally hate yeah, that it's framing. like please lance just come on I'm old Star Trek. Show me the show me the science. Yes, yes. Every single lesbian, every single bisexual, every single trans person, if you got rid of all of them in a generation or two, they would reappear because yeah. they're a part of us. They're they're a part of humanity. They're a part of all of us. They just exist. They are they are a part of the human experience. There's plenty of science on he social it, contagion. Right? I know, but it's just like like he doesn't even understand why what he's saying is true. So he just kind of bullshitted his way through it. Yeah, a lot of bullshit. <laughs> That's what he does. Yes. That's why it's so funny. Oh, man. Yeah, but I think that chart you showed with the left-handed thing. Yeah. If Christians and Muslims start dominating, they're going to be repressed. Right? So the the idea is it's like basic math. We saw this in 2000. Liberals were having 1.45 kids and conservatives were having 2.01 kids. So conservatives were at replace. Is Tim making like they're going to push him back in the closet argument? Is that what he's saying? He's saying like uh, the Christian, this the Christian right is going to rise up in numbers and force everyone back into the yeah. What he said, wait, I wasn't listening. I feel the like the it. idea is, is, it's like basic math. We saw this basic in two thousand. Liberals were having one point four five. No, he well, because no, he's just talking about like conservative versus left. Yeah, but he he's not talking about like LGBT stuff. So he is. Why listen? Kids no, okay. and conservatives having two point zero one kids. So conservatives were at replacement levels and liberals weren't. 20 years later, we see slightly more for the first time ever conservative Gen Zers in some areas. Gen Z is about, according to Pew, as progressive as millennials. In some areas, a little bit more progressive. In some areas, a little bit more conservative, which is shocking because every generation was skewing more progressive. Hmm. This is likely due to the fact not, like I said, not that children were like, I'm conservative now, but conservatives had more kids. So it really doesn't matter what your position is if your position is less kids for the left and more kids for the right. So you think transgender people should have more kids? I would love it if trans people and LGBT people had children and families. That's my personal morality. But the end result is there is one faction that is pro-abortion, unrestricted, and in favor of practices which result in a a substantial rate of sterilization for children. Conservatives, be it Muslim or Christian or Jewish, don't do these things. And so the future is very obviously going to be an Abrahamic conservative country. Yeah, but we need a a more scientific religion in the future. This is another two-hour conversation, maybe. (laughs) Let's let's read some super chats and then we'll uh, we'll try to get the members only Q and A straight to the Q and A, uh, and I'll try and find some good uh, good super chat questions just to make sure. Carly says, as a woman who's had an abortion and given birth later in life, this man needs to do some research, but he sure has some balls for having this conversation on Timcast. Well, I respect it absolutely. I thought it was a good conversation. The Search TV. <clears throat> Lance. <laughs> yeah, what is it? YouTube dot slash the surfs TV. Yeah, uh, everywhere social media is sold at the surfs TV if you want to hear my musings. And uh, I, w- I will add that while uh, I do distinctly disagree with uh, most of the takes of the people on this panel, they've been uh, very friendly and very nice to me. And uh, they put me in a nice hotel. And uh, Ian is uh, is just as friendly in real life as everyone, uh, <laughs> as gonna, everyone uh, led him to believe. I'm going to the moon so with let me, you, dude. <laughs> let me, let me, here, here's one from Marby Dog. He says, please ask your guest if he feels the same about bodily autonomy, bodily autonomy with regards to the vaccines uh yeah i think you should have the right whether or not you want to take the vaccine so you you would disagree with the vaccine mandate uh a forcible vaccine mandate i mean for the purposes of freedom yes wait uh yeah i think you should have the right whether or not here is one from marby doug he says please ask your guest if he feels the same about bodily autonomy bodily autonomy with regards to the vaccines he did it he read he I read know. phil super chat yeah oh awesome i thought phil said he didn't read it we did it. We did it, guys. The collective super chat worked. Yeah. Good job, Phil. Uh, yeah, I think you should have the right whether or not you want to take the vaccine. So you, you would disagree with the vaccine oh. mandate? Uh, a forcible vaccine mandate? I mean, for the purposes of freedom, yes, but it sucks. That's one of those, like, it sucks, but of course, I don't think people should be forced to have to take a job against their will. Like no. if, if the government said in order to go to a school... government mandated, go, well, no, like a government mandated vaccine program, I disagree with in that, like every single human being is like strapped down and like, oh, I don't want to take it, but, but you have to kind of thing. But you would be okay with like every facet of society saying we require vaccines. Oh, when there was a vaccination, like, um, uh, what was the word for it? Like a segregation of people who were vaccinated and unvaccinated. Well, like, 
you oppose the government holding you down and vaccinating you. Yes, I, I think you should have a choice whether but, or not you should do that. But other people have a, should have a choice whether or not they get sick from you because you didn't vaccinate yourself. Kind do you, of thing, do right? you think the government should? He's so fucking dodging. Like, he can't even answer the question. Just answer the fucking question. Well, it's, it's so insane. I mean, I, first of all, I would be shocked. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked because he kind of has to take this position. I would be shocked if this was his position during COVID. Yeah, two years ago, this wasn't his position. I would... I could be wrong, but I'd be very shocked if he was like, oh, yeah, I'm against mask Take mandates jab, and vaccine bigot. mandates and things of that nature. Take the jab, bigot. Put your mask yeah. on. Don't cough on me. There you go. <laughs> your body, my choice. Get the fuck out of here. Should be allowed to mandate vaccines for public accommodation. Yeah, for certain things, of course. Like, we already do that for hospitals. You have to be vaccinated if you're a nurse or a doctor against a host of different things for mm -hmm. obvious medical reasons. And I think that serves an important purpose. Look, this is why he said the for freedom thing. He's like, for freedom, yes, but in reality, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? Look, I just, th it's, this is such a dodge. Mm -hmm. He's like trying to get out of his, uh, he knows there's a contradiction here. He's just trying to bullshit his way out of it. It's so, Maybe. It's so obvious. Yep. Yep. That's how. That's how it reached to me. So, same there, thing there, with the there, military. The military is mandatory vaccination for the same reasons. But so, so your line. Look, he's like, obviously, there's all these places it is mandatory, and it's no big deal. So fuck off. Is bodily autonomy, <laughs> but not participation in society. Well, you can choose whether or not to be a doctor. You can choose whether or not to be in the military. Well, I mean, like going to a cafe or a movie or something, right? Well, yeah, but I'm saying that there are certain things where it makes sense from a scientific standpoint. Where, like, if you're a doctor or nurse, yeah, that probably is. Sure, sure. That you should what be about going to the movies? For. It depends if that is directly going to have an impact on the broader society if people get sick so no, large. But, but that means no bodily autonomy. No bodily autonomy like up in, to a point. In, you can choose whether or not to go to the movies. That's, new, that's your choice. You can choose whether or not that, to join the military. So, so that's my point, right? You, yeah. you you don't agree with the government holding you down, but you do agree with the government excising you from society. We, we already accept this. The government does that in a variety of ways already. Right, so the, lo the limit is for we, like we already live in that Madison society. Square Garden, for instance, had a vaccine requirement, True. and I think Joe Rogan had to refund tickets because he set up the show before the requirement, True. and it was the government that imposed the requirement on all the businesses. So the vaccine mandate, there's, there's two ways to look at it. I think what they're asking is ostracizing or excising someone from society is a vaccine mandate. Right. Using restricting it's someone's ability. You have to, an ability to you have a choice to do it whether you want to or not. Look at it's, it's, it's whether or not you can have He's so uh, convenience and, and pleasure in society. And it's it's obviously a big inconvenience if you don't get to go to see Madison Square Garden, of course. So Yeah, but like okay. You You're right. This is, this is I did see that. This is a total weasel because it's like, okay, it's a de facto uh forcing, right? Of if course. they say, Well, you don't have to take the jab like, you know, I don't say the jab. You don't have to take the COVID vaccine. Um you know, but then you can't participate in like, you know, any normal avenue of society. Well, you don't have right? to go to the movies, Sitch. Look, just stay home. But yeah, you, well, yeah, but where's this? Where's it end though, right? Is it just end with the movies? Is it? Look, you don't have go to go the, to the grocery store. The grocery store, right? The bank, you know, like where does? <laughs> totally. Yeah. You know? And um, there were people. There were a lot of jobs, I think, that had these sorts of mandates. Mm -hmm. And so I'd be, you know, how does that work into all this? So. Should movie theater owners be able to ban any woman who's had an abortion? <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, it'd be very hard to justify that, right? But, um... Well, I mean, it's the same kind of lie. I, I know what you mean, yeah. <laughs> right? But this is my case. You're going to spread their Look, abortion you don't to the rest need. of us. You don't need... <laughs> it's Look, you, even if they do it for <laughs> political reasons. Look, right. you don't need to go to the movies. That's true. You, That's shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have aborted that baby. That's true. You should have thought of that before. If you want to see Super Mario Brothers in theater, you should have thought of that before you had that abortion. Chris <laughs> Pat is a Chris Pat is a known Christian. Okay. Yeah, of course. But if it's just for Chris Pratt movies, Chris Pratt should do that. Look, yeah. I, I, I think that'd be funny. I think technically, theater owners have no way of knowing if you have an abortion. I don't know. They no, like there'll be some kind of scan, right? When you there's show up. weird marketing that's going on for somehow some for some reason the marketers know everything, so they probably know how many abortions you've had. There you go. No, they'll sc they'll scan your uterus when you show up. They'll say like, "Oh, is there any like scar tissue in there or something?" Look, we did you see mystery <laughs> guests gave us like a three hundred dollars super chat? I did not. No, I'm so sorry. Totally nice, <laughs> and then he gave us a fifty dollar one, saying that we need to cool it on the. On the abortion jokes, I mystery. Feel, I feel terrible. <laughs> mystery guest, dear one, our surrogate uncle. Thank you so much for the three hundred dollars. Says I'm way behind, and Lance doesn't represent the entire left. That is true. I think he represents 
a lot of socialists though of course yeah uh however dudes however uh dudes is leftism just politicking by sloganeering why is it just regurgitate one sentence tweets why do they take what sounds like an ad and run with it to death her body her choice no matter the logical inconsistency well i can answer that it's because they have very low iq and that they really they only have one mpc dialogue tree and they cling to it for their lives yeah i think that's especially true i think that's true for a lot of people um there's they they, they kind of formulate an argument or actually no they don't formulate an argument they regurgitate an argument they've heard that they think applies to specific situations and then it's like the thought there's like a terminating thought process where that's all they can kind of fixate on now normally people in our kind of realm of debating politics online are able to sort of move beyond that because of necessity like we basically learn that we have to because we engage with people who disagree with us and we kind of have to learn how to actually use our you use a gray matter to think thoughts occasionally. Well, it's kind of fun for you and me, I think, obviously. Yes. We enjoy arguing and we want to have the best argument. So and Yes, right. And I'm sure that there's a higher likelihood of people in our field that do enjoy arguing than normal, obviously. Yes. Uh, Lance, however, is an exception to that <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't seem to be able to really put together good cogent arguments most of the time. So I think he doubly so has to heavily rely on kind of just these bumper sticker uh, slogans and arguments and phrases. But he really wants to be popular and be in front of people and people well, pay don't attention all, to him. Right? Don't we all? I mean, I yeah, mean, I'm trying to... I guess so. Has he been in... After his disastrous debate against Lauren Southern, mm -hmm. was that the last debate he did uh, before this? And that was like a year or a year and a half ago, wasn't it? I, is this really a debate? I mean, that well, like, was, okay, with Lauren Southern, it was structured. As let a me debate. say, let me. I'm going to include in debate. I'm going to include conversations with people that are going to disagree with you, right? Right. Strongly. Right. Because I feel like he has kind of like after that, he just kind of stops. Well, I feel like he never really did that many debates. He did a couple. Like he talked to us. He talked. I know he talked to Sean in the past. He did the Lawrence Southern thing. Our thing wasn't um, really a debate anyway. So. Well, yeah, but I'm including but, just having conversations with people at this. Sure, totally in, in the debate category. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, I, I mean, I think, I think it's just that he's he is stuck in Twitter mode mindset. That's all he can really operate. So I, I could be biased here, obviously, and I do. There's some truth to what you're saying like everybody likes attention it's nice to have a live stream a lot of people listen to and a platform right. you can t talk about your ideas i do i mean i wish we were bigger because i want to talk to interesting people and the bigger you mm -hmm. get the more opportunity you have to talk of to course. more interesting people so i do and maybe i'm deluding myself here <laughs> but i do feel like it's i'm more interested in just oh man i'd really like to talk to that person but there's no way they've talked to us like i would love to do a talk like how cool would it have been to do a talk with scott adams when they were canceling him because we i mean we talk about scott adams more than anyone we you watch him right. his daily live streams so that's just, that's an opportunity that's not open to us because we don't have a big enough platform. So right. Well, he didn't go on that many people's things anyway. So. But I don't necessarily know if that's well. It's not just Scott Adams, but other people. As no, well. I know. Like, I, I'd yeah, like I to talk to Brianna Greyjoy. Like she's talking to fucking Vosh. Right. I, well, I like she's right. not going to talk to us. Right. So. Um. But I don't. But, I don't get the sense that Lance wants a bigger platform so that he can talk to more interesting people. I think he wants a bigger platform because he wants a bigger platform for yeah yeah. I so yeah. to get more people to vote for fucking Democrats, right? Or really, the end right. goal is you know to vote for socialism. So. Yeah, totally. But <laughs> right. Sitch and I are not like we're not here to try to get you to vote for Democrats or Republicans or any of that stuff. Like right. we're just here to talk because we like talking to interesting people. So. Well, and, and going back to Mr. Guess uh, for a second, I don't think leftism as a whole is just specifically about sloganeering. I think leftism, in my opinion, leftism seems to heavily fixate on word games more than I, the right does. That's I don't true. Know, yeah. I don't know what the reason for that is. I don't know why specifically that is, but it definitely seems to be a lot more. I mean, it happens on the right, but it definitely seems to be a really big key feature of 
socialist thought is to play these sort of word games. And maybe it's because it's not rooted in principles. It's just rooted in power games, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, Cause like, I think if, you know, when, if Vosh was Vosh ever on temple, he was on temple at some point. Wasn't yeah, he? he was totally right. Like he could, you know, he could have, even though I disagree with everything, you know, basically Vosh says he could at least have a conversation with Tim where he would make arguments that are like a thousand times better than anything, you know, Lance yeah. could make. So he wasn't trying to hide his position on the Mac on the vaccine mandate. Look, he's completely trying to. Yeah, but he has to because he position. he has to because if he doesn't, he looks like a massive fool. I mean, well, he already does. Like I can't fool. believe he's still too late. But uh, you know, how has he not encountered this argument a year ago? Because the conservatives were continually making this argument. Oh, my body, my choice, but vaccine is not. And then you come up with a comeback. He contradicted for that. half of his talking points on Kyle Rittenhouse in the Jordan Neely conversation. I don't know. Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what Brad Lyons said. He's not really thinking ahead, is what you're saying. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Chad Father, Greg Keith for Dr. JP for $20, says, I worked 10 today and am up at 5 Eastern for another 10. Oof. Good luck. Jeez. Wow. Should be going to sleep, but this show is amazing. Phil's a great guest. A team rides supreme when A gets angry. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and thank you so much, Mr. Guest, for being eight month free will seeker, says ha 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 ha. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rubicross for twenty dollars. Hey, Mr. Rubicross says Lance makes me think, quote, hey, maybe I could be a progressive grifter too. <laughs> I mean, he somehow makes a living, and this is what he has to offer. I wouldn't even have to try that hard. True. You could do it in your spare time, just like a couple hours a week. Be a nice if, supplemental income. Yeah, you know, if I if I had the same personality I had in high school or middle school before, I think I became moral. Right. I would like one hundred percent make a channel where I would pretend to be a leftist because no one knows what I look like. And I just changed my voice a little bit with like a voice modifier you can and see that. how long I could go doing this and how successful I could be. Oh, I would feel so I would hundred percent have done that. Yeah. I feel so the, the troll in me is like, so, so excited to do that. <laughs> uh, CBDX.com for $20 says that uh, this quote debate is beyond painful to watch. Thankfully, our logic THC gummies can relieve that, or our legal THC gummies can do that. Yeah, that's very good. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah Mystery that's... Guest, is your one for another $50. Thank you so much, Mystery Guest. It says, monstrous. I am very sad that you guys are making a joke of this. Those Down syndrome kids would rather exist than not. The most help helpless among us being exterminated, and it's funny for real shame on y'all. Well, listen, sometimes we have. Look, no, very I, dark look, humor here. Look, I feel horrible when I saw that. Look, he gave us 350 bucks. Like, I then, love Mr. Guess. He's our surrogate uncle. I know. But, but I do like to make edgy dark jokes too. So. I know. I just, I feel, hor I feel horrible because I know, I know it does. Like, Chitachi always comes in the chat and makes me I feel like fucking shit. Well, listen, look, you, you, you can be. J Mac, too, is pro life. Like I, I just like I know I I always forget we have so many people who are pro life in our audience and we're listen. Just here. Let me pretend that I'm Adam right here for a second, okay? Ready? Mm -hmm. It's a comedy show. <laughs> Look, I, there's some <laughs> there's some things you got. It's a tough it's a tough thing. You got to be able to walk that line. It's a I know. Look, I don't I. It's. I comedy oversteps the line when it becomes too mean. That's where you got to mm. watch out. You got to watch out because it's okay. it can drift into that like mean spirited, sure type sure. thing. So sure. just got to keep Anyways. that in mind. Yeah, gotta get through this <laughs> basis as well. Right? Government, the government can pressure you to do it. It yeah. can take it's away pressure, for sure. privileges and access mm -hmm. until you do it. Yeah, as, as a matter of public safety, we already allow this. The government does this in a variety of ways for a ton of different things. I get concerned about that phrase, public safety, because if another, if they're like, this common cold is very, yeah. very contagious. Hey, we have a vaccine ready for it. And I'm like, you know, let's do some long-term studies. Vaccines are, can be very dangerous if they're not studied properly. Um, so maybe that's another conversation to have. 
I think it's very important not to let the medical industry govern us. Well, that's why we have a government. Also, this isn't all axiomatic, right? So you could have the position that under no circumstances would you ever support the government mandating vaccines. You could be of the position that you would be in favor of it, but just not for a, a disease with the infection and mortality rate that COVID has. There's a lot of different approaches. So uh, Admar says this guest looks like the kid of Brendan Fraser and Justin Long. <laughs> Did you get that, Just Brendan Fraser? Not, not I, an oh, my life. My life. <laughs> I've been, I've been called Brendan Fraser my entire life. It's a, it's a running meme. Um, Tim, I gotta, I, I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta read this one. There was a super chat I love how they call me a kid, you. by the way. Hey, just so everyone knows, I'm the oldest person in this room. No, I'm, 40, I'm 44. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. I, I, got close, you, dude, okay, you know, I gotta read it. I gotta read this one. This is important. 1776, as life says. Is, is Tim not younger than 24? Really? No, he's not. What? Uh, Ian said he's 24, and he's Ian was saying like he's the he's oldest one in the room. Him. Tim is not 24. No. Oh, okay, I guess we could look it up. Tim Tim's both. in his 30s. I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. What is a woman? Would you, would you like me to answer that? Yeah. Oh no. A woman is an adult human female. Tim is 37. Oh you yeah, he, it. You're he totally fucked. Yeah, he fucked up. I know. I know this. <laughs> I saw, a bunch, I saw a bunch of leftists yeah. on Twitter losing their minds over this clip. Like, this, this oh is, my God, how could you say the, the fucking Matt Walsh thing? I know. This is the Walter White in the car going, Man. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's. oh my God. I rewound it a little just so well, I can savor it again. Okay. I'm curious what the thought process is here. I got to read this one. This is important. 1776 as life says what is a woman would you, would you like me to answer that yeah a woman is an adult human female look and he's so confident he's i agree yeah. with that so trans women are not women oh also, absolutely i would answer that what is a woman females a woman is Tra hot. trans women aren't female they're male no they're female so they have female gametes and whatnot oh this is actually very uh interesting do you, do you want to talk about gametes okay so here's my guess here because I, I i've only seen like the clip i never saw the follow-up I'm guessing Lance is going to try to win this by just changing the definition of the word female. He's like, we changed the definition of the word woman, so let's just change the definition of the word female. Right, yeah. Let's talk about gametes. It worked last time. You're right. Okay, I'm excited. We're going to talk about some gametes. But the clip is, the. this is why everyone's losing their mind, because the clip is what matters. And he did say adult human female, so. Yes, yes. Yeah. But and he doesn't know what the word is going to be with the clip. Right. But he, I'm, I don't think he knows what the word female means. Yeah, he can't really, or he yeah. has to change the. Right. He's going to go off on the intersex bullshit, which he of course do. he is, yeah. which is yeah the classic, red herring. Yeah. So in in uh, embryonic development, uh, when you to have two gametes, obviously the sperm and the egg they combine, right? Usually it's the twenty third chromosome, the XX or the XY, that is going to determine whether or not someone becomes a male or a female. But that's not always the case. There are exceptions to this, known as people with differences of sexual development (DSDs) or intersex people. It's like there could be other combinations. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's on a conservative estimate, zero point six percent to two percent of the population. There is more intersex people in America than there are redheads. So there is a lot of intersex people, and that's there if you other, go with the two percent. That's well, if you go. Well, that's well, if you, that's if you go with the two percent. Seamus is completely yeah. right, but I do want to add one really interesting but thing about this. how does that this. mean a female is a male? So here's here's the neatest part. There are individuals who have XY chromosomes, which is normally what is going to be a male, right? You develop, mm -hmm. it, it's not the only factor, by the way. It's a pull, push and pull with hormones and other <laughs> stuff like that. But there are people who have XY chromosomes. So if you looked at their bones years into the future and you analyze them, a, they would be genetically male. Yep. But they have a specific condition that suppresses testosterone, which makes them develop 100% like women. That's we right. are all templates. We are all... But mm -hmm. those people don't produce eggs. Right. Yeah, they're sterile. So what does it have to do with the gametes, Lance? Yeah. What does it have to do with the definition of female, Lance? God, Lance's hubris just drives me fucking crazy. Like he's, he's like so Pete Dunning Kruger. He's so, so confident when he's saying all this just total bullshit. <laughs> I hate that. It does, it drives me crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's why he has a, an audience because you can just fake it. You just, you just fake confidence, yeah. Mr. Ubercross. Right. Come on, look, I want to start go. listening I, to your leftist content. <laughs> I believe you can do it, Mr. Ubercross. I faith. 
Sitch, where's the voice modulator? <laughs> And based on hormones, uh, the expression of gender, and and different factors, we turn in one direction or the other towards more male or female. Did you know that female. certain drugs well, don't affect men and women the same way? Exactly, and that's that's the the, the interesting so if, thing. But we can hijack is... this entire process if we take hormones. So if we take testosterone or estrogen, we suddenly can have traits that are more feminine or masculine. The redistribution, but it doesn't of change fat, the growth, the growth of breasts, the length of hair, all that kind of stuff. So the there socialist are like, wants to redistribute the fat. <laughs> so <laughs> so here, here's here's the here's here's what I'm getting to is. Uh, I think it was in 1993, they passed a law in the United States that required clinical testing to be done on men and women separately because women are affected by drugs differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they found that painkillers, for instance, didn't work on women. And so these male doctors were all like, these women are sissies. They can't take the pain. When in reality, it's like the painkillers weren't working. Yeah, they were being so uh, and they also uh, in these studies found that, you know, uh, the, the, the differences between males and females, you can't change through hormones. For instance, fast twitch muscle fiber, mm -hmm. uh, collagen in the skin, prenatal testosterone. Okay, I know. I guess he... Tim didn't really understand the argument either. It, it's not a question of fast twitch hormones or fast twitch muscles or any other collagen in the skin. Female, definitionally, even in Google, says of denoting the sex that can bear offspring or produce eggs, distinguished biologically by the production of the gametes ova that can be fertilized by the male gametes. That that is the definition of female, and yeah. has always been the definition of female, and that's why the the trans uh the more trans activist side doesn't buy into the argument that a woman is a female that's why matt walsh and those people made that argument specifically yeah yeah so, adult human female right but that's yeah. the that's just you, that's the argument that tim should be giving here. you don't need any of this other stuff just say well lance you literally don't know what the word female means if you <laughs> from what you've just given me from what you've just told me you don't know what this word means None of this is planned. Like he just said adult human female because that was the first thing that popped into his mind. And now he's just trying to bullshit. No, I, I, I disagree with you. I think it was planned because he was so like, oh, really? He was so like happy to give that answer. I bet you he doesn't know what the word female means. Okay. He just thought I can redefine female the way that we redefine women using intersex and stuff. Using intersex stuff, right. which is still not addressing it at all right so. because they're intersex people females don't exist Sitch, yeah. obviously right geez <laughs> duh right <laughs> well, how's that a, how's that that's an literally, argument? that was literally his argument how is that, that an argument argue. look how i mean is that it is if you, yeah it, it, well it's it is if you're not paying attention Dude, it's so stupid oh it's painful it's painfully stupid yeah the impact that won't change from later in life taking hormones mm -hmm. so um, i don't like the that tim buys into it too and like he kind of humors him here yeah well i guess he's trying to establish the biological sex differences through the pain studies yeah but you don't yeah. need to yeah that's a different argument totally so. yeah Male is not a female. Female is not a male. Gen sex is bimodal. I think if you ask, it's it's, the, it's genuinely not any 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 it's scientist. Not bimodal. Totally is totally Sorry. is totally is. We've so we've, we've, we've gone we've gone from the left. Okay, Lance. I'm gonna guess that to know what the word bimodal. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, he didn't say binary. He said bimodal. Saying He's... that uh, sex is bimodal to not rejecting it, or 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 are you just incorrect? I think I'm incorrect. Hold on. Do you know oh, what bimodal okay. means? I don't know. It means that okay. intersex people exist <laughs> See, and that right. there's an overlap between the two bell curves. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Yes, you're totally right. This is... I, I, well, at least he... Made... <laughs> okay. At least he made... I'm telling you, I don't know that any of this was planned. <laughs> oh, well, this part, obviously. Yeah, that's funny. I'll take a big L right there. Sorry. That, that, that means that 97% <laughs> yeah, yeah. of females will have statistically average female traits. Yes, you're correct. The reason I wanted to jump on that, though, is because... You know what he means by take a big L, don't you? You know, big, gonna... you know what that big L is? I, a lesbian? That big L. <laughs> I don't. I, I know what a, it means. That's a but lady I like you're dick. Uh... <laughs> you're saying that just because you have XY chromosomes, that means by definition you're male? That's not true. <laughs> you should have got that one. Come on. I should have got that one. Or maybe true. I should have. I didn't, the, 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 I didn't oh, you that. Didn't? Okay. <laughs> Do you know about the South African beauty queen? Where she is, yes. by, by, yeah, by all, there's a documentary on her. By all accounts, if you saw her, you'd be like, this is just a gorgeous, beautiful woman. She has all the, the parts of a woman. She has breasts. She has, you know, a vagina, all that stuff. <clears throat> but she is intersex and her 
chromosomes are XY. Mm -hmm. So if you looked at her sure. genetics, she's genetically male. And but so, so and this isn't. But, 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 but accepting. Wait, 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 wait. I wait, hate this. I, wait. Oh, it drives me crazy. Lance just fucked up so big. Oh, okay, good. What'd he do? He just said, if you look at her chromosome, she's genetically male. Okay, so he knows he's. So he does know what the, de the definition right. of male and female This is all just obfuscation. <laughs> 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 All he's doing. I don't know if anyone will catch that. I don't know if any of them will catch it, but we'll see. That you know, we want we want rights for all people, including intersex people. It doesn't change the fact that they make up a relatively small portion of society. Zero zero point six to two percent. So right. can I can I make a so point a here? biological male cannot become a biological female. Uh, no, okay. no, no, no one is saying they can. No, well, no, no, no. You just did. No, I didn't. No, no, not whatsoever. I asked you what a woman was. Yes, an adult, an adult human female. And I said, a trans woman, a female. You said yes. I said a trans woman is a woman, and they absolutely are. This is not a. Oh, now he's changing. Oh it. no! Look, this Oops. is recorded, Lance. Oh no! <laughs> this is recorded. Everyone knows he, what you said. Oh, uh, he realized he done goofed. Uh oh. Well, here's the thing. He has to have known. He has to have realized at some point that he fucked up, because it's not like he just misspoke, because you wouldn't have said. Like he wouldn't have said what he would have said, and it'd be like I'm misspeaking because I wouldn't even like I don't even know what he would have like I don't even know what he would have meant to have said, right? Yeah, because adult human female is the meme, and he said the meme. So... That's fucking up in and of itself. Look, no, but I mean it's not like yeah, that, but it's not like he misspoke. He's like, oh no, no, I meant to say you know something else, right? Because I don't know what he would have inserted there at all. That would have made any sense. So he must have realized he just fucking fucked up, and he's like, well, no, I'm I'm as a woman. Did you see the people on Twitter give him like? No, I didn't. Oh, unfortunately, I should have shared some tweets with you. Yes. People were losing their minds over this. I bet. Oh my God! I can't believe Lance let us <laughs> betrayed us like this. Lance is as bad as Matt Walsh now. True. Yeah. No, no, no. You, no, just, you just did. No, I didn't. No, not whatsoever. I asked you what a woman was. Yes, a, an adult female. human female. And I said, a trans woman, a female. You said yes. I said a trans woman is a woman, and they absolutely are. This is not a gotcha. But a woman is a female. Cis women and trans women are different, and trans women do not say that they're cis women. They don't. And that's what makes them trans. They say they're women. Are yeah, they? of course, because black women and white women are different, but they're both women. But trans but a woman women... Is... Don't you hate this argument? I like Dylan, but he made a similar argument, so... Oh, he did? Well, he used short women, and I said, yeah, but... Um, I think he acknowledged, though, I said that, you know, when you're talking about a short woman or a black woman or a white woman or a tall woman, you're modif you're, you're adding a, an, an adjective to a woman. You're saying, oh, they're a woman who is tall, right? It's, mm -hmm. You know, when someone's short or a tall woman or a black or white woman, you're not questioning the the womanness of the individual, right? Right. So it's not, this is not a comparable, uh, it's not something right. that you can compare it to in the yeah. same way. You're modifying the womanness of it. Right. Yeah. Trans woman very modifies the womanness. Yes, it's Extremely. modifying the nature. Right. And also, I mean, it, it is a level of performance of stupidity because, again, if it was just a, like, oh, it's just, it's just a short versus a tall woman thing, they wouldn't be so heavily making the argument. The reason that they're so fixated on this whole, like, trans woman is a woman mm. argument is because they want to use that to bypass other arguments about should trans women be able to compete in, in women's sports should they be able to go in women's locker rooms and blah 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 blah. because if they're just mm -hmm. defined as a woman then obviously you just win those arguments automatically should short women be able to compete in the nba because i think they're being discriminated against right now i mean i don't think short women should be able should be able to even go in the locker room with tall women right yeah i mean you don't know where their eye level is you know <laughs> yeah exactly they probably right. feel uncomfortable you know yeah Stop staring Looking at my bush. I'm not. I'm just short. Oh, are you? Are you? Why are you walking around on your knees? <laughs> <laughs> a little suspect, right? Yeah, of course. A trans woman but, and a cis woman are different, but, but you they're said both a woman is female. Women, a, an adult human female. A trans, trans woman is male. That was that's what makes them Look, trans. He said it like five they times. Are not so I, I, I just want to make a point. Wait, 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 a woman you, is you, female. You they, they are assigned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Assigned. We, 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 yeah, you're assigned your gender at birth. You're so a, we're, we're only we're only one. Is observed. We're two, right? We're two. We're two super chats in. I feel yeah. like a trans woman is a man, and yeah, he like that. He realized that he 
is in a weird corner. He's like, listen, we got to move on. <laughs> like two yeah, super don't chats. we have some more super chats to read? We got to move on. Yeah, we got to move on. And a trans man is a woman and they're both. You're both a trans woman and a man together. They, they don't, they you don't never see stop way. becoming one. You I, always are both. They don't see that. Way. I think the, the point about like intersex or some people having chromosomes that don't exactly max, match up with their sex is not the problem for or is not a problem for what is termed the gender <clears throat> binary by the left. Mm -hmm. So I think the best way to define sex is based on a gametes, you know, the role a person plays in reproduction. And Tim mentioned gametes and not chromosomes. So I would define a female as someone whose reproductive anatomy is ordered towards gestation. And then a male is someone whose reproductive anatomy is ordered towards insemination. The operating in the operating phrase there is order towards right and, because and, someone and, can have an issue with their reproductive anatomy but it's still order towards something and recognizing the bimodal nature of human sex this Seamus guy is smart we need to get him on the show more man he <laughs> totally knows what he's he doing is. he's very smart yeah it's meaning funny. that overwhelmingly there's two big trees with a slight overlap in the middle well even that overlap in the middle the vast majority of people who are are intersex are basically clearly a member of one sex but with some Ooh, feature that appears differently it's, it's, yeah yeah but with it's, one it's one parents, or two features that appear decide a bit that, differently and that's, a, that's a huge problem uh, that's a massive problem but, but, oh but, 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 but that, people who you genuinely but, but, can't but, but, tell are talking extremely about, extremely rare I, I i i look the parents aren't allowed to determine the sex of their intersex child, but they can determine the sex of their transgender child. How's that? Shut up. Shut up, Adam. It's a big problem. It's a big problem. It's a big problem. I don't like the argument that we should reform society around, you know, very, very small minorities other than just protect the rights of. So if we're talking about, you know, the issue of uh, biological males going into women's bathrooms or something like that, you have an issue of the civil rights of females versus the civil rights of trans women, and that's where the conflict comes into play. Yeah, but the conflict there is pretty easy. The majority of people who abuse women in bathrooms is cis men. Let's go after cis men for that. Well, I think the solution is easy. Just single stall bathrooms. Like, I don't know. Well, also, can I, the, bathrooms, can I ask the bathrooms here aren't gendered by I want to say everyone at home, if you didn't know that, they don't gender the bathrooms here. There's, there's no there's signs. Single rooms. Yeah. yeah, that's just that's, I, that's, and, that's, that's, and, that's, and that's the way the world should but you be. Don't my really, position has always been single. You don't have a right. Oh, my God. Tim? Cool. Mm -hmm. has a non-gendered unisex bathroom i think after exposed. this exposed okay. i think after this he should walk into the bathroom when lance is in there and just you know saddle up start washing his hands what's up <laughs> <laughs> oh you didn't know this exposed. is the men's room <laughs> exposed tim come on tim you need a female in a male bathroom what's going on here Terrible. get professional Come on. Yeah, she's. Right to be comfortable. That's not one of your rights. You know, when Tim finally gets AOC on the podcast, right? <laughs> AOC's taking a dump in the bathroom after the show. Oh, my God. She's not going to like it when Ian walks in next to her and goes oh, to the stall next to her. These are gender neutral taking a dump going in. <laughs> Look, you got to be like, what the fuck? Look, you got to listen to Ian's argument here because Ian basically. AOC's going to be like, I'm conservative now. Is that all it takes? That's all it took. It took one guy one taking a shit next, next to AOC in Tim Pool's house compound. And suddenly she's conservative. That works. A lot of people would like that. Look, you you gotta go. listen to Ian here. Ian makes okay. your okay. argument about the I only chose Ian because he was on the screen when I was making the joke. He makes your argument about the transgender stuff. It's okay, cool. good. Thank you. I'm glad. They don't gender the bathrooms here. There's, there's no signs. single rooms. Yeah, yeah. that's just... That's, I, that's, and that's, my, that's, and that's, and that's, that's the way the world should but you be. Don't My really, position has always been single. You don't have a right to be comfortable. That's not one of your rights. You could deal you with can. it. You know, deal... Life is weird and uncomfortable sometimes. That's... I don't... I, but but the, as he's taking his shit next to AOC. <laughs> <laughs> so I, now I'm glad I did choose some of the examples. Perfect. <laughs> Life AOC's is weird like, and excuse uncomfortable. Excuse me? <laughs> excuse me? He's like, you have a right to be comfortable. <laughs> Plop. <laughs> Look, the, isn't that your <laughs> isn't that your answer on the transgender? Yeah, that's why I don't. Stuff? It's not. It's not. I don't. It's not for me. I don't give it a right. That's why I don't give a shit about the right. that whole, you know, the, the argument Just, about it. There's other more important arguments that I care about. Nobody went out of their way to make me comfortable. True. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Listen. The, the bigger question is, in general, when it comes to the the transgender men in <clears throat> sports and women in sports and things like that is the rights of females versus the rights of trans people and and who gets uh, supplanted. 
Right. And so my answer to the bathroom problem would be the majority of women who are abused in bathrooms are abused by cis men. And so that we should be, if we want to protect women and go after abusers, go after cis men who attack women in bathrooms. But, but how do you trans, tell the difference? Between trans... a cis... What about cis men who are pretending to be trans women and attacking women in bathrooms? So we go after them. Of course. Hell yeah, we should. Men are trans I, I, have to, I... I can't tell if you're talking See? or they're talking. In you. That's them. Oh, I have to add one more part to that. Trans women are more often the victims of sexual said, and physical abuse than they are the perpetrators. But, but that didn't actually address what I said, right? It's like females and trans women, who gets supplanted? If females say we want a space free from males, period, then should they have their rights protected in having a safe space? Or should trans women say, no, we actually get access to the space? Dude, look, he's making my argument, Sitch. Yeah. I love this guy. I love this guy. Go, Tim. <laughs> exactly. Who wins? Do trans men take away from your experience? Do they supplant you as a man? Me as personally, man? I don't care, right? Me too. In, in, fact, fact, so, in fact, trans men make my experience way more interesting. But you haven't answered the question. Because you're saying... Of course, he's dodging. That's Wait. This modus operandi here. Let me, let me put on my bad faith Barry hat for a second. Oh, good. Thank goodness. Where have you been you, all my life? Bad I don't know if faith you heard this. Barry. Lance just said... That trans men make his bathroom experience way more interesting. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You interpret that how you will, my friend. He's like peeking under the stalls. What Every once in a while, mean? look, I've been peeking under the stalls my whole yeah. life. What's happening there, Lance? Experience. Do they supplant to you as a man? Me as personally, man? I don't care. Right? Me too. In, so fact, the, so, in fact, trans men make my experience way more interesting. But you have <laughs> hmm. All right. Yeah. It, okay. Fascinating. Every once in a while, you peek there. under that stall and you're like, yeah. ooh, a vagina. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, man. I don't know what he means by that. <laughs> I don't know what he means by that. But answer the question. Because you're saying supplanting their experience, right? You're taking away from women. There are women right now yes. who are saying, they're biological females saying, we do not want biological males in our space. Mm hmm so should Blair White be allowed to go in that bathroom? I think Blair White should go in the bathroom where Blair White appears to 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 fit in most. So why does she why, why does she get a pass? Because she's very passing. Is that why? I, yes. I'm not talking about my. That's why she gets the pass. Yes. It's in the word. Yes. Yes. Literally in the word pass. Like that is kind of wacky. Like in in I think in Florida now, there's mm. um. Uh, I don't know if it's just for schools or if it's for all public buildings. There's some kind of. Uh, bathroom ban for, mm -hmm. for trans people. So you can get you're gonna have Blair White and Taft and you know all the other people that people point to as like the passers are <laughs> gonna be going in like the bathroom. That's so bizarre. It's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. Passing is a huge component of it, I think, that right. nobody really takes into right. consideration. Although yeah. I, I should I should add, though in Florida it is um it's weird, but I guess it does make sense on a certain level. Uh, a trans woman can go into the woman's bathroom. They just have to leave if they're asked to leave. <laughs> why, why is this woman? Oh, really? No one's uh, going to yeah. ask Blair White to leave. Right, right. That's, know. The, that's the thought process right. behind it. So, yeah. They want to. They literally want to be able to ask people to leave that don't pass. Yeah, right. They're going to say, listen, <laughs> isn't that an interesting level of, you know, social, whether or not you pass? You're like... Can I go in the ladies' room without any of the ladies asking me to leave? Asking me to leave. Yeah, I mean, it It would be. It would be. That's an impartial third party right there going, listen, buddy. <laughs> You're not fooling terrible. anyone. Please move that's along. That's terrible. Oh, man. Oh, that's, that's going to send someone's gender for you up to like a thousand. <laughs> Jesus it Christ. Is, that is devastating, yeah. Yes. Oh, my. You get your nerve to finally walk in there. And yes. all, the ladies are like, mm-mm. I know. It's nice not try, good. Clyde. That's not good. Move along. I, my view is Buck Angel should go in the men's room and Blair White should go in the women's room. But they disagree with that. She's technically a biological male. I think Blair White agrees with what I just said. Uh, yes, but you're taking my position. And, and good for you. That's woke as fuck. Hell yeah. The, yeah that's based. I, I, we made I, progress. That's why, like, I don't know if you watch the show. It's not progress. I've always had that opinion. <laughs> it's based as fuck. Hell yeah. But I've, but I've always had that opinion. So, Even so, Cassandra so, Fairbanks. So, so, so trans women can company. go into women's bathrooms. Awesome. Right. Awesome. I don't know. We agree. Yeah. So my we issue agree. is. Hell yeah. <laughs> Seamus doesn't agree <laughs> yeah, with that. I don't know. And Buck Angel's biologically female. But, but you Buck think, well, I thought Ian's position was no one gave you a right to comfort. Yeah, what's up, Ian? Oh, Jeez. Do you think Blair White should have to go into a man's bathroom? Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Seamus. I, I think Ooh, Seamus, come on. We were just praising you, Seamus, so much. What's going on? Look, he's ideologically conflicted. Okay, give him a break. Okay. okay. Causes more yeah, problems. Because, because, well, I don't want to say anything that's going to get Tim's YouTube channel taken down. Let's go to here. the members only show. <laughs> Seamus can then say all of his nasty Catholic things. Well, yeah. All right, everybody, here's what's going to happen. I'm, I'm, uh, Sorry, sorry, we didn't get to the super chats. I, I, I genuinely apologize. I, we, we just, we, this is what happens. We, we, how does Tim do this, man? He gets like thousands of dollars in super chats, and he doesn't even doesn't read, read any of them. He read, he read two. Yeah. What the fuck? I don't know. Pretty rough. Pretty rough. I kind of feel like this is criminal. I feel like we should report him to somebody. Is there some agency <laughs> we can report him to? Did not uh, read super chats did not read super properly. Chats. Uh, J Mac, our surrogate father. For twenty dollars says, I am super anti abortion, but even I can appreciate a good dead baby joke, Adam. I know, I laughed my ass off so when I saw go. that. Yeah. Who doesn't like a dead baby joke? Those were you know what? That's when I was younger, those were like the rage. Look, you can't you gotta draw the How line many dead the... babies does it take to paint a room? Look, I'm gonna I'm trying to turn over a new leaf here. It depends how hard you throw it. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> Holy I used God. to know like a thousand of these fucking dead I do jokes. remember the dead baby jokes. Like a million from, of them. Yeah. From yeah. when I was about like 11. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When you were in middle school and you're like being edgy, here are your dead baby jokes. We'd sit around yeah. them at lunch and try to think up new dead baby jokes. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've got a couple here. Yep. This is the kind of thing boys do. I Do girls sit around and come up with dead baby jokes? Mm, doubtful. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. Ladies in our audience. Yeah. How many dead baby jokes did you? Yes. Have you come up with <laughs> and or spread? We go <laughs> off, right? We're going to go to the members only chat. We're going to do audience questions. Smash the like button if you if you'd like and head over to TimCast.com. Become a member. We're going to do the members only so that Seamus can say naughty <laughs> words or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but before we go, That's what they call the truth you can follow now. the show at Timcast IRL on Instagram. You can follow me personally at Timcast Lance. Do you want to shout anything out? Uh, thank you so much for uh, <laughs> watching me and listening to my radical leftist Marxist agenda. Uh, if you want to see me anywhere else on the internet, go to everywhere. Uh, social media is sold at at the Surf's TV. That's at the Surf's TV. And also shout out to the leftist mafia who's watching this right now. Love all of you. My name is Seamus Coughlin. Uh, what I'm shouting out is the St. Joseph Novena that I'm praying right okay, now. We're we on day four. That. You can find that. Hear all everyone's plugs. So, okay. Let's well, read. I like to hear who Seamus is praying for. Look, he's oh, okay. praying to help people. Look, we okay. don't and do On my shit Twitter, like I pinned it. We're praying for the working class in this country in this time of deep economic turmoil, for the unborn, and for our enemies, people we dislike, the people who got uh, fired from Vice, still in Mulvaney, and that our country will return to God. That's fucking beautiful, man. That's beautiful. You don't think so? It was beautiful. I'm looking, I actually Googled, I'm looking up uh, 50 greatest dead baby jokes. So, oh, okay. Damn. Most of these are pretty like lame, though. I just like the, I, I mean, I'm not at all religious, like, but I just I, really, the yeah. atheist is not religious. Just the idea that, you know, Seamus cares about other people. That's a great thing religion does. I don't think, like, communism True. doesn't make people care for other people. It makes people it makes try you to steal. About about it makes you care for the working class. Class solidarity. He's praying for the working class. What has fucking Lance done for the working That's, class? <laughs> well, yeah, but if you don't believe in prayer, you think it's like... A big waste of time. Then, right? yeah. You know, they say, oh, your thoughts and prayers, right? You know, they don't like it, so... I like it. I, I know you do. a good thing. Here, let's see what Ian shouts. And about. I am Ian Crossland. I agree with you. The country will return to God. I think it is very important that we, although we will focus on the things we are saying, focus very much on the way we are saying them and find a way to communicate with people that we may disagree with. That's the root of empathy and uh, communication and the unification of humanity moving forward. Thank you very much for coming, Lance. That was really awesome. And Tim, you're a badass. So are you, Seamus. Not Serge, though. No, Serge is... <laughs> no, Serge is... Look, he did the... Look, Seamus, I thought the Catholics were against the anime stuff. Why is this anime heart you're doing? Come on. No, it's just just Matt Walsh. Oh, okay. Did you see that? Matt Walsh quartering does big, stuff? That was big, so bizarre. No, I didn't know he went at the quartering, but I know he doesn't like anime. Well, so quartering kind of responded... I don't remember the order of events. I think quartering kind of responded that Matt Walsh is... Anti you know, one of Matt Walsh's rant. tweets. Yeah, one of his anti-anime video game rants. Mm -hmm. um, and then Matt Walsh was like, 
Grow I don't up. know why. I don't know why the I don't know why people who have much smaller audiences than me think they can tell me how to, you know, make arguments that convince conservatives of anything. Right. Oh no. So the Coring said this sort of attitude, this sort of like anti video games, anti anime attitude is kind of what puts conservatives in like the boomer realm of like not appealing to people. Yeah, you gotta so make, he, make the culture, right. create the culture. Right. And so when what Coring meant was obviously he meant like young people. And then so Matt Wallace kind of strongly has the position by saying, I don't know why people with smaller audiences than me think they can tell me how to be persuasive. I have a much larger audience than Jeremy of the Cord Ring. Mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, but they're all old people. Right. Yeah. So, you know. They're all 75. <laughs> right. So, you know. Damn these kids. Get Damn off my lawn. Kids. Damn these kids with their enemies. They're infernal enemies that are making everyone turn against Jesus. I like this Matt Walsh guy. He knows what a woman is. <laughs> <laughs> Anime is turning the kids trans. That's <laughs> so bad. Which is weird because, like, in a lot of a lot of animes, the the moral <clears throat> values are way more conservative than they are in like American media nowadays. So. Of course, I don't like... I don't know where he gets this argument from, but. They have a whole um, genre devoted to harem. <laughs> it's like, what's that? Yes, but uh -huh. oh. usually the protagonist in a harem anime is like a super beta male. Right. What's wrong who's with not, that? Who's that. not. Yeah. So, I, so it's not, I wouldn't say that's like a conservative. I wouldn't say that's conservative propaganda. So. Mm. Anyways. Let's do the super chats. Wait, we missed some. It's, uh, it's like a wavelength. Uh, yeah, uh, that was quite intense. Um, well, we still got more. We're going to do this members only uncensored thing. Look, the guy has said nothing the entire show. He talks for the very first time, and Tim cuts him off. <laughs> Who is that guy? I don't know. That's why I was like, no. well, well, come on, we missed one. I, this guy didn't say one thing. Who is this guy? I don't know. Who's that? Guy? Where Seamus is going to go Super Saiyan. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you putting this all on me? Because you're the Isn't Catholic. everyone going Super Saiyan? I just got a word in edgewise on air. I just agree with him on the paywall. I got to perform for up. you. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> Surge? Uh, yeah, I'm Surge.com on Twitter. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Let's go. And uh, the last thing I'll say is, is for those they're just you know you, they aren't going to be at the members show. Uh, Lance, it's this is Surge. one of the best com. episodes I think we've ever done. <laughs> okay. uh, well, so I, I, I really do think these are the these are the best conversations because we obviously clash and view the world differently, but this is where the the, the conversation it needs to happen for for anyone's views to evolve or to at least understand what the other person thinks. We're going to go to TimCast.com. Go to the front page. It'll be live in a few minutes. We'll try to make it quick, and then we'll be up, and then Seamus will say naughty words. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Why are you putting this on me? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Nice. Seamus is awesome. <clears throat> Serge is the producer. Okay. It makes sense if he, like, just oh, is okay. the producer for Tim. Gotcha. Show. That's why he didn't say anything. Makes okay. sense. Okay. He's Serge. Thank you. Okay, switch out time. John Benor, thanks so much for being a free seeker for seven months, says, S Classy, the best class. Time. That was the first one, yeah. Thank you so much, John. It's the acronym S C I B C. Yes. S C I B C. Just rolls off the tongue. Skibik. Skibik. Anonymous Coward for three months says, Thought Slime has awful takes, but I think, but I think this has to solidify Lance as the worst online leftist ever. Um, yeah. If by worse you mean like worse at advocating for their positions, then I agree with you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Siege for six months says a late thank you to JMac for six months of membership. Well, there you go. Wow. Sweet. Uh, Jack Rama for nine months. Thank you. Says, hey guys, since you are like my two K dads, last time I thought you'd like another random fact about my family. Stay tuned for the super chat. Well, I'm excited, Jack. Yeah, totally. The I'm, gay dads. I'm very happy to be your gay father. Yes, mm -hmm. with Adam. Yes. But only with Adam, not with anyone else. We've raised you very well, children. Yes. Go out and uh, be... Well, we're the gay ones. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say go out and be gay, but... <laughs> he could be whatever you want to be, Jack. Yes, totally. We don't judge uh, you. We don't judge you. Uh, Jack Rama for $10 with the, the fact. Thank you. Says, my mom has her master's degree in education. She spent eight years teaching in inner city schools in Baltimore. I was first introduced to CRT almost 20 years ago from books she was reading for her programs. Holy shit. That's wild. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. 
I would be curious because this is what so because I talked about this last stream. Who would perform worse on Tim Pool? So now we know we have Lance's performance. Mm -hmm. Imagine if we had Pyramid Scheme. Oh, she'd be worse. I feel like she would be worse. <laughs> yeah. I feel, I feel it. I feel it in my gut. <laughs> She's bad on Leftist Mafia. Like they're yes. talking about one thing and then she chimes in and everyone's like, what the fuck? We weren't even talking about it. What is <laughs> right. she talking about? Tim, you want to make another great show, reach out to, to Pyramid. Illuminati, also known as Pyramid Scheme. Mm -hmm. And, uh, That'll be a great show. She and she has lost a hundred thousand subscribers, which is crazy. That is pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, 10, I can't believe she has so many. Right? She's like one point six million. Jesus, that's so crazy. That's like such an crazy fall. I had no. Most of the time, I don't think these things really have, have any an kind effect. of impact whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it might a not have an effect. I don't know. A lot. For well, her, it was different because you know she got called out by people on the left too. So. We were doing clips and a lot of the comments, because we covered it on the Sunday show, and we were doing some clips and a lot of people in the comments were saying, oh, I am subscribed to her. Thank you for waking me up. And I was really, like, oh, yeah, there's I didn't a, think lot anyone... of, a lot of those comments, yeah. Well, it's possible people, um, because she does non-political comment content too. Right. So maybe people were following her for non-political content. Right, and they didn't really. They just kind of ignored her shitty like leftist takes, and they just didn't watch them. They didn't realize how awful, like how mm -hmm. utterly dog shit they were. So maybe that's all about on. control. <laughs> control. It's all about control. God, the true. police are all racist. It's yep. all about control. Uh, Fondue for two dollars says we need a Lance Deer in the headlights emoji. <laughs> that's a good. That'll be the next one. Let's see if we can get a good screen grab. A good screen grab of Lance. So. Mm -hmm. uh blank camp sale for six months says woo six months thank you for the amazing content well thank you for the support blake yeah it's awesome uh blank escape quarter for five months thank you says never forget tim pool smiles when he sees children cry in public <laughs> the quote trans women attraction not gay sounds like homophobia to me there you go hmm. uh fondue for two says quote are traps gay but unironically uh, Doctor Dealer for five dollars says a team funds Ponzi schemes for fun, and I'd and I'd in favor of abortion up to thirty years after birth. That's... Oh, and is a team funds Ponzi schemes for fun and is in favor of abortion thirty years after birth. S class is the best class. Doctor Diddler, you know that's not true. That's Sitch's position right there. I said I don't three think, years. Look, I, I don't years. think you should be able to abort living children. Okay. You should be yeah, able you to should... beat them. That I believe in. How about this? Okay. Let's make a compromise. We're good centrists here. We'll make a compromise out of it. I'll give kids the vote. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Holy <laughs> cow. He, he's come around. He's seen the light. If they can be aborted up to age 18. <laughs> oh, that's awful. That's awful. <laughs> Look, if they're voting, they're not going to vote in favor of that. They're going to vote in favor of staying alive. Well, the, no, these they're it's tied together, right? How about this? How about this? Yeah. You know how I say the parents get the vote of the of the kid until they turn eighteen? Yes. It starts at the moment of conception. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. What do you? The think? moment you're pregnant, you get an extra vote. <laughs> right. Yeah. There you go. And if there's there a miscarriage go. or something. Then you don't get to vote after. <laughs> it's like a one-off, right? Yeah. No, oh, I don't. No. <laughs> I don't um, Andrew Clark for two dollars says, "Adam, if you have time, watch the clip I DM'd you." Well, I don't know that we have time. What was the clip? I don't. I didn't see it. Oh, okay. Uh, that was from Andrew Clark. Mm -hmm. uh, Naxalus for thirteen months. Thank you, Naxalus. Says being into Fuda is. Gynoandromorphilia found almost exclusively in straight men mm -hmm. and often elicts stronger arousal in such people than natal woman. Well, that's interesting. Huh. What? Who are gynoandrophilic men? An internet survey of men with sexual interests and transgender women. Um... 
Oh, really? They have their own orientation now. Gyno andromorphic. So they're technically not gay. They're gyno andromorphic. That's why I was saying I don't think it's the same thing. Um, it says according to the survey, men with GAMP, I like men with GAMP, reported much higher attraction to natal women than to men. Obviously, because otherwise they'd just be gay. Although they also reported slightly higher levels of bisexual feelings control compared with controls. Well, that makes sense. Uh, men with GAMP were equally attracted to natal woman and GAMS. <laughs> so I said they mean trans women when they say GAMS. Thus, GAMP is best considered an unusual form of heterosexuality rather than a sexual sexual th rather than a separate sexual orientation. Hmm. Fascinating. So uh, the, there's a sexual the, orientation for people that are attracted to trans women. It would be uh, men who are attracted to both, uh, who are especially attracted to, it looks like, mm -hmm. uh, trans women, but also attracted to cis women, but yeah. not attracted to men. Right. Though also, which was to be expected, men with GAMP also scored higher than controls on a measure of autogynephilia, which does make sense, too. To attracted to themselves as women. The, well, the thought of it, yeah. So. Okay. You'd think there'd be overlap there. Oh, well, that's fascinating. There you go. So when someone says, is food a gay, you say, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. And you send them a link to this study. Send them a link to this, yeah. <laughs> uh, Angry Man for $10 says, if you're attracted to the same set of genitals, you yourself have, you aren't straight. It's really that simple. Well, there you go. It's complicated. You're not super straight, that's for sure. Uh, Dr. Diller for 13 months. Thank you so much, Dr. Diller, says, beat Doomer with a stick. <laughs> No one's going to beat Doomer, okay? I like Doomer. I think we should beat Doomer with a stick. I'm on board. Okay, you convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Doomer in the chat earlier. But I you've, you've won me over. Where's the stick? There you go. That was easy. That was easy. Fondue for five dollars says, when people say Lance did well, I'm reminded of the phrase, some bigotry of low expectations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. True. Is it, now, is that a bigotry against Canadians or bigotry against leftists? Or just Lance's. Or just I mean, Lance. Yeah. Uh, Naxalas, Naxalas for $5 says, outside my neuroscience work. Well, look at you. Big neuroscience brain over here. I've been learning about trans attraction and the origins of trans identity, like AGP. Would love to talk with you about it. I'd be down. Uh... Adam, would you sure. be down? What's uh, what is that? Okay, is that a send Adam show? a DM. He, Nax apparently works in neuroscience and is learning about trans attraction and the origins of trans identity, like AGBT. Okay, yeah, that could be interesting. Sure, that could be interesting. Uh, John A, thank you so much for the ten gifted memberships. Thank you, John. Uh, PC for ten dollars says, "I lived in New York City for about six years and I've had plenty of interactions with the homeless." If three, New York, if three New Yorkers thought they had to subdue this guy, it must have been pretty bad. Tim says something similar. Well, if you're going to add the addendum to like the New York modifier to it, then I guess you can say it's somewhat different than the Cameron House situation. So that's fair enough. Uh, Scott Ski 2 for $10 says, quote, every time Lance has a take, the gods toss a coin in the air. <laughs> if it lands heads up, they flip again. <laughs> that's funny. I like that. He is kind of a whatever flip flopper, whatever. Really, so it's like the reference of uh, every time a Targaryen is born, the gods flip a coin. Oh, okay. To see if they'll be either great or mad. So, Game of Thrones. Yes. Uh, Talon Lloyd for two months says, "Hey Phil, I know it's an older song, but it's madness about modern day politics. But is madness about modern day politics? Is that one of his songs? I guess." I'll send him, uh, let me copy paste this. Send I've only listened to a few of Phil's songs. I've listened to his whole album, obviously. Have you really? No. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, just because I encountered his music through the show, obviously. Of course. Yeah. yeah. He was going to come on and I figured I should check out some of the music. That is a smart yeah. thing to do. Uh, the Butter Anvil for five dollars says, I have... 10-ish years of martial arts experience. Choking someone until they are unconscious is cool. Holding it for that long is negligent homicide. Well, I don't think he ever got 
it, it did he ever it didn't seem like did he even get to the point of unconscious because it seemed like he was kind of holding him slash choking him and then very quickly his body went limp and then he let go of him i thought from the video i couldn't tell much from the video i saw maybe yeah maybe we can't tell because like obviously if he's like like if you're choking someone and their body goes limp yeah you stop and you just hold it still like as tight as you were holding it yeah like you know you can get in trouble with that obviously so well unless you think they're trying to fake you out or something right well that's possible and obviously when you have all the adrenaline going it's kind of hard to maybe have that kind of cold calm calculating rational thought process so. right you're like if this guy gets up he's gonna hit me that's yeah, what well, i would be thinking it's funny because there was some guy i don't I don't remember who it is. One of these fucking horrible race grifting trolls on Twitter mm -hmm. who he posted this video of there's like two uh, guys fighting in a Waffle House or something. Mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming one's an employee there and then um, and they're black. And then a white guy who I think is also an employee there goes up and he like puts the, one, the guy who's fighting with the other employee like in a headlock. Um, but he lets it go before the guy passes out. And then the guy immediately goes and like punches him in the face. Yeah. And it was weird because you think this would have been used as an example of like why it would have been justified to hold Neely in a headlock till he passes out. Yeah, no, but that's the, what I'm thinking. Right. But the race grifter guy on Twitter was using this as like, fuck you, whitey. What? Like he yeah, fucked really up by weird. letting him go? Right. And, and it was that's what you De get when you let him I go. Know. And it was funny because Destiny had a good, a good retweet of this which was um oh he re he should have held it on to for another 20 seconds yeah so yeah uh crack rock steady for 13 months of discipline equals freedom thank you crack rock steady says uh tim had some bad moments lance showed once again that he's a spineless unprepared armchair socialist one of his studies wasn't even peer-reviewed s class is the best class <laughs> and thank a team you. also reigns supreme nice thank you crack rock steady I, where the hell are you in the super? I'm like fucking lost. So it's helpful um, for me to read along at the same time. At least I can respond. I'm at Crack Rock Study 13 month member. I know. Okay. No. Oh, Dr. Diddler. I felt like I saw. Captain anyway. Polywog Vanderbee for $5 says Western collapse incoming strap in folks. <laughs> I'm skeptical. Also, Lance's arguments were garbage. Well, that is true. Come on, uh, guys. This is not going to be. Look. I know. This, Western we'll civilization. Don't give in to the Tim pool. We'll be fine. <clears throat> okay, uh, I found it. Okay. You want to read the next one? Is it your dad's... Your dildo? dad's dildo. <laughs> your dad's for dildo month. for one month? The, hello from, Lanz, from Lanzarote in the Canary Islands. Well, hello. That's awesome. A sweet. Cool. That's for my dad's dildo. <laughs> in the, is it in the Canary Islands? Isn't that amazing? Isn't the internet amazing? You could listen to us live. Right. In fucking yeah. Canary Islands. Always wow. wondered where dad's dildo. <laughs> there you go. The Canary uh, Grassroots... Islands. Who could there have figured it out? When they, <laughs> you, you've all heard of the Canary in the coal mine. Right. This is dad's dildo in the Canary Islands. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Grassroots had to mod for $5 says, what Phil is trying to say is you're a mean one, Mr. Sitch. When was he trying to say that? I don't remember, but that's pretty yeah. funny. I like that. You're, you're a mean, mean one, Mr. Sitch. Mr. Sitch. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Fondue. Did you see someone did, um, did you see Coach Redpill got arrested? I did. And the he had the Grinch haircut. That was yeah, awesome. Somebody, uh, somebody, uh, <laughs> Very ruthlessly uh, photoshopped Coach Red Pill as the cringe. Yeah. As he was getting arrested by the Ukrainian government. So, big oof. Yeah, I saw Dylan Burns going going hard. He was him. doing, he was rubbing it. He was bad. <laughs> rubbing was it like... in his face. Yes. He said, Did you see it was, the... Oh, it was Dick Masterson. Dick Masterson said, You're a mean one, Mr. Red Pill. Oh yeah, and he had the Photoshop. Yeah, he had a bunch of like Putin books and shit in his apartment. Like, oh, I just don't you realize you're playing with fire? What was Excuse that? Me, just... What's going? 
what happened there? Like, you mean, do you think it's stupid for a person who's in a country that's being invaded to simp for the country that's invading them? Yeah, ruthlessly, relentlessly on the internet. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea. I just, I <laughs> think you're sooner idea. or later. Look, in t in times of war, like, right, especially. I mean, in that situation, you're playing with your your own life. Sure, sure. I I honestly do feel like this is kind of a fuck around and find out type situation. Uh, very much so. Very yeah. much so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Fondue for five dollars says, "quote He should have pressed the non-lethal button takedown, <laughs> and not the lethal button takedown." That's true. Maybe that's really the problem. Okay. The the guy. Did you say his name was Daniel? Uh, uh, yeah, no shit. Yeah, he um he pressed the wrong he pressed X when he should have pressed uh, triangle. That's the way Lance was framing it. Like this is just yeah. a video game. What the fuck was he thinking? Yep, he pressed the lethal takedown button by mistake. Ouch. He he ruined his non lethal playthrough. So pretty rough. Daniel Penny, I think, is his name. Daniel Penny, thank you. Yeah. A very good horse for four months. For sorry, for eight months. Thank you, very good horse. It's cool to see Phil and excited to hear Jason join the band. I've been ex attempting to learn his song Tinnitus on guitar. It's a great week, guys. Well, thanks for chiming in. It and Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's Phil's a great name great. for it's a great name for a metal song. Tinnitus. I've been giving Phil a hard time because he's doing this, like all artist artistic endeavors. I mean, it's difficult. It is. People have different ideas and stuff. True. So, as an artist, I just I revel in it. I've worked with artists my entire life, and it's always challenging. <laughs> right. Uh, Soto for two dollars says, "If Lance didn't eat breakfast, how would he have felt?" True. What's that? I don't. I don't know what that means. I don't remember <laughs> okay, what that was referencing. Good. Soto. Uh, Stuck for thirteen months says, "Lance isn't a consequentialist. He's just tribal. If leftists think a thing, then so does he. He's a hundred percent post hoc in all arguments, as far as I can tell." Um. Yeah, you're probably right, Stud. You're probably right. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Looser Doman for five Canadian, thank you, says, if Neely was a Nazi and screaming at black people, would the response have been the same? No, they would have been, it would have been like, you got to punch Nazis, right? They would have been oh, fucking yeah. applauding the shit out of, uh, out of uh, Daniel for doing yeah. this. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Uh, Christian Baller for ten dollars says my favorite straight sex position. Mm, okay. Christian Baller says my <laughs> favorite throating girl cock. What? You want to read that one, Adam? I'll let you no, read it. You read... I'll let you read it, Adam. No, that's just that's hilarious. What? Read it, Christian. Adam. No, I'm done reading. I was kind of shocked. Christian and... asked. He, Christian actually DM me. He said, "Sitch, <laughs> have Adam read my super chat." Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I can read this. This is Christian Baller speaking, and Christian Baller <laughs> says, Christian Baller's favorite sex. No, you have to read it. Straight sex position is deep throating a girl cock and slurping up the cum straight from the tip of that female penis, Christian Baller says. Then Christian Baller likes to get cream in his ass. By the same dick. Definitely not gay, though. Christian <laughs> Christian Baller says. Well, Christian, I think that might, some people might see that as being gay. Okay. Just a little bit, yeah. No. Oh, my God. Christian, why? <laughs> I think you should have to read that again. But with the, pr the proper uh, No, first I think person, you uh, should. Look, you should have to pronouns. read it, too. He said he he literally DM me and said Adam. I said Sitch, make sure Adam reads this. No, he didn't. Bullshit. You, you want me to? I can fucking send you the screenshot. Did he really? He Christian, really did. I'm so, not joking. He oh, really man. did. Christian, you're so cruel. He says Sitch, make sure Adam reads my super chat about loving girl cock. Ah, <laughs> uh, so bad. Read it again. No, I'm time. not. Look, I know what's going on here. Christian, you already have your AI thing. You can you can just put that in your AI. <laughs> take that and take that girl cock and put it in your AI. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Uh, what's your? Oh, I read that one. 
Uh, Did you know? The justice for eight months says, when will Sitch and Adam give the people what they want? Creator Clash 3, the battle for top billing. Will A-Team reign supreme or will us class be best? <laughs> I don't think me or Adam are ever going to box each other. Yeah. So I'll, I'll pass. I mean, we one. might, we could fake it and bounce around and pretend That's to hit true. each other we for could like fake it. 10 rounds. Yeah. It would be funny. <clears throat> That's true. That'd be cool. Uh, Andrew Clark for $2 says, ask Tifa bot if we should bring back institutions. Oh, that's a, that'll be for next time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like we'll have, that No, we should ask somebody else. We got to find a different different uh, person to ask. That stream was a lot of fun, and I think people liked it. Yeah. Maybe we'll ask Bowsetta next time. Oh, yeah. Try She's to get her on whore. board with fascism. Uh, Lucifer the Doberman for five Canadian says, Lance lives in the down in downtown Vancouver near the gay area. It is hardcore in East Vancouver. He has seen some bad stuff. But I guess he's just totally out of his fucking mind here. But. Oh, really? Bad stuff how? I mean... Right. The, the gets... I don't know what Lucifer means there. Like... Like the homeless... Like homeless stuff. In the gay area? Look, the gay areas in San Francisco are usually a lot nicer. Or the gay right. areas in California are usually a lot nicer. In San Francisco, there's how do they a keep Castro. the gay, How do they keep the homeless out of the gay areas? Look, West Hollywood is a gay area in Southern California, and it's super nice. Um, the Castro's nice in San Francisco, and it's a gay area. So I don't know what that means. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ask Joker. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cyborg for five dollars says you guys are wrong. The guy is fucked. He held that choke for too long, and they will convict him. Uh, maybe, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I hope I you're wrong, know. though, Cyborg. So take that. You yeah, I mean, I justice. hope they don't. But you could be right. So, um, Fondue for five dollars says the issue isn't if he's guilty or not. It's about taking a year and a half of his life in court. Well, that is also. I mean, that is also an, an additional issue. That's true. Cyborg for two dollars said that I think they already charged him. I, I read that. that during the stream. Oh, we did. Okay. Yeah, but that's not accurate. Oh, you're right. Yeah, they um, it it, it was the the article that said that they could possibly have a grand jury, but they're not that they would necessarily. So. Oh yeah, I remember now. But I wouldn't be surprised if they do charge him just because of the pol the politics of the situation. I would actually be really I would be very surprised if they don't charge him. Honestly. Though I'd I, be, I don't think they should, but I'd be surprised if they don't. This is so New York dependent, though. And the thing that makes me think they're not going to charge him is the fact that the mayor is saying, well, let's just think about this for a minute. Because the mayor is the one that's right. having all this. Well, like, it's literally the mayor's responsibility to take care of this shit. Everyone's on his back because the subways are a piece right. of shit right now. Well, and also, supposedly the mayor was, he said he was also a transit cop. Oh so my god. He knows god. what goes on. Down oh there. my god. Yeah. Right. So it, I mean it will really be a test I guess of will he kowtow to poli like national politics. Well that's not? that's the big so. that's the big question because right. like I think New York politics is going to be let him go. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's a good question. It'll be New York politics versus national politics. Yeah. And national that's politics is going to be like, oh, we want to play politics. This is about race. our country. This is about yeah. our racist nation. We need to make an yeah. example of Mr. Penny. No, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Well, I guess we'll find we'll out. We'll find out. Yeah, that's it. We'll that's the storyline right there, though. Um. To Jake Downey for five dollars says, "Isn't it fucked that people trying to do the right thing are likely to get run through the ringer, but the criminal are let go the same day forty four times?" It's yes, super fucked. Yeah, why isn't Penny? Get, well, first of all, Penny hasn't been charged, but yeah, if, when he gets right. Penny, should be not have to pay bail or anything. Well, he'll immediately get, release. Yeah, he'll get some kind of massive. No, he's going to get maximum security prison. No, I mean, like, even if if he if they do arrest him, you know, his, his bail will be funded in a day on, you know, not GoFundMe because they don't allow that, but you know, like one of these other right. sites. So, hmm. uh, SB Elite for five dollars says, "Hey Phil, you think you can recommend getting SFO on Timcast to Cassandra?" <laughs> well, I'll send that along to uh, Phil. I seems like SFO could get on Timcast. I don't see. I don't see why not. Yeah. Seems like they have a pretty open door policy. 
I mean, they probably have a lot, you know, bigger people than Dev lined up. So if there's oh, really? a spot available, yeah, I would imagine. Oh, okay. I, like Lance is not very big. Well, that's a great point. But he's just, but I mean, he, he's, he's a, a dumb punching shit. bag. Yeah. So yeah. he's an infamous dumb shit on Twitter. Yeah, so. I don't know. I'll, I pass it along. So I would love to see Dev on Tim Cast. Uh, Big Chewy for 10 pounds says, uh, you guys see the video of some homeless person criticizing a shelter for not using eco-friendly plates and trays. Also the type of food not being healthy enough to his standards. I haven't seen that. That sounds that wild. That is crazy. Yeah, that sounds wild. That must be in Berkeley. Someone in the chat says, if the Marine gets charged, I hope he transitions and spends his days scissoring with fellow inmates. Oh, wow. Jesus Christ. Uh, Christian Baller for $5. You again. There you go. The Christian for another $5 says, look up cuck in the dictionary, and it's just a picture of Lance. There you Maybe. go. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Kyle King for $5 says, Andrew ba Brant Bronco uh, lays out the five elements. Who's the, the self-defense lawyer guy? Lays out five elements of self-defense. Innocence, imminence, reasonable, proportional avoidance. All are met for non-lethal force. Right. Has he talked about um I should check his Twitter feed, see if he's talking about this case. So in a sense he's the imminence, guy, the self defense guy. Reasonable, proportional avoidance. He's wild on fucking Twitter though. Jeez. Oh he is? Yeah. I like that. Uh Cyborg for five dollars says it's like Thanksgiving at Adam's house and his dad and cousin are fighting politics. <laughs> True. How do we not bring that up? It's a great point. Is it weird for you to watch your family members fight, Adam? What does that mean? What do you mean? Well, Tim Pool looks like your dad, and Lance looks like oh. your cousin. So. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. It's like Thanksgiving at your house. Tim does look just like my dear old dad. Yeah. Yeah. Which is weird, because you don't look Lance like Tim. Lance does look like my cousin. I don't look at all like Tim. I don't, I don't think so. I feel like I look a little bit like Tim. What do you, what do you think, Chad? I don't think Adam looks mm. like Tim at all. Uh, Become the Knight for $10 says, we've determined from the episode that Lance is both dishonest and stupid. <laughs> Primarily stupid. The entertainment comes from trying to determine the proportion of each when he speaks. That's a great point, Become the Knight. I just see used car salesman. I really do feel like, oh my God, he's just trying to bullshit his way through everything. Yes. What does yes. he do with his spare time? Is he not interested in these topics? or It's just so weird. No, he's not. I'm uh, CT for two Canadians says, bless Lance and his NPC dialogue tree. <laughs> true. True, true, true. But not too much. Yeah. Uh, Christian Baller for $2 says, most left of solutions equal just throw money at it. That is accurate. Right, yeah. <laughs> Andrew Clark for $2 says, sitch for mayor of Portland. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, that idea that I came up with is genius. Okay. You get a lot of people moving to wherever it is that you're mayor. That's true. But who cares? Just for the free drugs. Throw them in the, throw them in the, the drug resort. Oh, man. Uh, Stug for $5 says, you see if I'm, you, quote, you see if I'm attempting to steal a woman's purse and in your attempt to stop me, I trip and fall into highway traffic, then it's a disproportionate response to my theft. <laughs> Lance, probably. <laughs> true. True, true, true. Lance. He was making similar arguments during Kyle Rittenhouse, like, you're not allowed to kill people defending property. It's like, well, he was defending his own life. Yeah, but he went there defending property. It's disproportional. Mm -hmm. Lance, Lance, Lance. That's, that's proportional. <laughs> uh, Dr. Diller for $2 says, let's play a game, Lance. We should stop the people committing all those mass shootings. Alexa, bring up the demographics. And he's gone. <laughs> ouch. <laughs> Big ouch. Uh, hate facts for $2 says the per capita murder rate in Canada, 1.8 per 100,000, is the same as the U.S. with black gang violence, six per, uh, 16 per 100,000 removed from the numbers, two per 100,000. That's interesting. Hmm. That would definitely hurt the a lot of the gun argument. So. 
Uh, Dr. Dealer for two hours says that super chat is not for the purpose of blaming people by their demographics, but to point out how quickly Lance would abandon his point because he actually isn't interested in solving this issue outside of gun grabbing. Yeah, no, I fair enough. Fair enough, Dr. Uh, Jason M for five Canadian says in a univariate fashion, it's all it's all just about systems to people like Lance. He's ideologically blind to multifaceted issues such as culture and agency. True. Mm -hmm. uh, CT for another two can. What? what? Oh, I thought you were saying CT for another two Canadian. CT, stop giving us money, please. Stop it. Why do you do this to me? Mm -hmm. Why do you hurt me this way, CT? You hurt me. You hurt me deep, CT. Every time you give me give us money, it's like a stab. It's like a stab in the gut. Is stop. it really? I mean, it is. Look, she wants to participate. Let her participate. <laughs> for two Canadians says, "Quote: I have a problem criminalizing. I have a problem criminalizing criminals." Lance. Yeah, that's true. Go. True. That's a great super chat. It is. <clears throat> Listen, this is what I want CT to do. Just send me a bunch of things you would have super chatted in a DM, mm -hmm. and then I'll read them. <laughs> okay. How about we do that? Criminalizing criminals. Yes. Look, you don't want to stigmatize them. You want them to know that they're part of society. <laughs> they're the criminal C element. Right. CT says, I'm supposed to make a CT no emoji. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. CT, stop. Uh, PC for $2 says, bring out the holy hand grenade. <laughs> that's, when you, that's when you know you're trouble in the Netherlands when they bring out the holy hand grenade. Does it shoot holy water on you? It kills rabbits. Oh, ouch. Have you never seen Money Python? Oh, yes, I have. Yeah, yeah okay. I know what you're talking about. You never played Worms? That's for the the homicidal rabbit, right? Yes. It's not like a regular rabbit that has big teeth. It's just a rabbit, it is and then it kills everyone. Yeah. It is a regular rabbit, though. Uh, Well, it's never, ex it's never explained. Right. <laughs> it's never explained. I think it has rabies uh, or something. Uh, Senui for five months says, We mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, yummy. Uh, Snowy for 10 Wassy Buck says, I would like to make a correction. My first super chat, I said it was 20 seconds I was needed to knock someone out. Apparently, it can take up to as little as 18, 8 to 14 seconds. Well, there you go. Does it? It depends on the type of, of knocking out, right? Like if it's a blood choke versus an air choke, right? Because I assume you can go without air for more than 18 to 14 seconds. You're talking about like blood. So, right? I mean, we used to do that thing when we were kids where we would hyperventilate for a long time and then squeeze each other's necks and we'd pass out. Is it what? similar to that? Yeah. What? You, didn't, you never did that? No. Oh, okay. What the fuck were you doing? You were hyperventilating. Right. And then you would... Why and then you would have someone squeeze your neck? Yeah. That and make you, you pass out. Yeah. And then you'd Why? pass out and you'd wake up on the ground and you'd be like, oh shit. Why would you do that? For fun. <laughs> For <laughs> entertainment. That explains so much of your personality, Adam. You gave yourself brain damage at a young <laughs> age. And now it all makes sense. I mean we <laughs> I mean, I did it more than once. A bunch of us did it. Like exactly. A, a bunch of times. What the fuck? Why? Is that, would that give you brain damage? I mean, you don't Probably. pass out for a long period of time. That's, I'm going to, okay. Hold on. You've never passed out in your entire life? I don't think you get brain damage from passing out. There's a different, well, it depends why you pass out. I've never passed right. out due to asphyxiation. No. Well, this was the difference between the blood choke and, and the air choke. This is what you're talking about, right? The blood choke is you cut off the blood circulation, right? Right. They have. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if one has a better effect on your brain mm -hmm. or not. They're both probably pretty bad. Look, I felt great after we, after we found this game. Yeah, because you, <laughs> as Andrew Clark in the chat says, a team is kink team. I was gonna say you guys are you're doing. You guys are all giving each other boners. You've never done, <laughs> you're fucking doing this. <laughs> you've never done auto erotic asphyxiation, Sitch? I have not. No. Oh man. I, I have a thing about someone tried to choke me to death when I was five. Okay, I don't like being choked. for real. Wow. Yes. yes. Though they were they a neighbor. Were, it was the neighbor. I think I, I literally told the story. They were nine. Oh, okay. I think at the time, though it was pretty serious. <laughs> So that is serious. Yeah, yes. obviously someone trying to choke you to death. Jeez. Right. I hope your parents 
gave their parents a stern talking to. Uh, I don't think they did. But I don't know. I don't think Look, they understood how parents. serious it was. I don't think anyone, because you know when you're a kid, you don't like, you're very bad at communicating. Oh, yeah, of course. I wasn't like, this kid just tried to fucking murder me like when I was five. Like, right. I don't think I verbalized correctly. You instinctively try to keep it from your parents. You're like, oh, I'm well, I told in trouble. Them. I told them because I know that they were like, oh, you know, like no one was allowed to like interact. Like that kid was not allowed to come to our house. We we're not allowed to go to his house anymore, obviously. Mm. So I definitely told them something like they knew that he tried to choke me. But I don't know what the situation was. Right. But um. well, I made sure my parents didn't find out about the pass out game. OK. <laughs> well, right. well, it's a little bit different if you're all the same age choking each other out to get bonus, right? It wasn't for boners. It was. Just oh, for... sure, it wasn't. Sure. Maybe. I mean, there was that one time I was passed yeah. out for a long time, and I woke up with my pants around my ankles. <laughs> it all becomes clear. Okay. I thought okay. Scott was my friend. <laughs> oh come on! You it was. Why do you think you enjoyed it so? Much? Look, you don't pass out for that long. It's just, it's Jesus. a weird sensation of going from standing up to like lying on the ground. You're like, there's this jump in time. You're like, wow, that's crazy. That's so bizarre. I've passed out for other reasons, though, obviously. Have you well, ever you, passed out? You do a lot out? of drugs, so. I don't think I've ever passed out from drugs. What are, what are the other reasons you passed out for? I um would get squeamish. About, get squ wait, Squeamish like about stuff. You wait. You've literally passed out to something being gross enough. Yeah, yeah. What totally. was it? Um, I can't. It was some movie in health in my health class, and I was like, oh. "What the? F That's crazy." Yeah, they I'm gonna going, guess they were doing like some crazy surgery or something like that, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is." Just... And you passed out. I, I did, thought that was. Yeah. I didn't think that was real. I thought it was a thing like in movies. Everybody thought I was faking it obviously because i of went course. from being sitting up in health class and just lying on the floor immediately <laughs> that's wild yeah I i'm passed gonna guess out. here i passed out there was another time wait I was, wait wait uh, wait. but was that before or after you started choking yourself out with your friend this was after the pass out game so yeah. i wonder if doing that made you more susceptible to passing out no nah, i've sure. always been squeamish about shit in life i've always been totally <laughs> squeamish yeah bilbo in the chat says psa sitch and adam fainted <laughs> What's that? Oh, okay. What was I'm, not as, I'm, not, I'm not as bad as I was when I was younger, but when I was young, I was super... One time I... One time I passed out. Uh, my dad and I were going hiking, and my dad was listening to this program on the radio, and they were... It was medical stuff again. They were talking about some guy who'd, like, cut his head off and was, like, propping his head up to, like drive himself to the emergency room jesus something. christ that's horrifying yeah i know it was totally horrifying and i ended up passing out on the seat and i like nodded out and ended up like on my dad's shoulder my dad was like what the fuck that's so weird wow look at that yeah. okay yeah i'm gonna say was that before or after you started choking yourself out with your friends i mean this was after wow well, i don't no, I'm I don't. I'm not. You. No, you I'm made not yourself more susceptible to passing. No, I'm not sure about that, to be honest with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't have anything. I've never had. I've never passed out for any reason. The only time I've ever like passed out was when I was put on general anesthesia, and it it was very bizarre because you're like, I don't feel sleepy, and then eight hours later. <laughs> oh, I've yeah, I've done right anesthesia. So, Do you yeah. uh, I are you at all squeamish when? Like, can could you watch like a open heart surgery video? Um, I I don't know because I go ew and I don't look at it. So you are. I've never I've never squeamish. like forced myself to right. stare at it. I don't think I would pass out if I did. Well, the only time I'm in the only time I've passed out is when I'm in situations where like there's no escaping it. Like I kept telling my dad, I'm like, this is gross. Can we change the channel? And he's like, no, this is interesting. <laughs> I'm well, like, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I've never been in that situation. So I, don't I don't know. I feel like a this might make me pass out. <laughs> My dad's right. like, no, listen. Right. Look, you're right. gonna listen to this. Okay. And the other one was like health class, where it's like, look, you're gonna watch this. I can't even remember what the thing was. Like it might have been an appendectomy or something like that. You can look away. You can be like, oh. Uh, okay. 
theoretically, but I mean, you're fascinated by it at the same time. Oh, okay, interesting. You're, do you have a fear of blood or anything? You think is it blood or is it just like something different? What do you mean? You're not you're not bothered by blood, right? Like my own blood? Yeah, you know, some people are like, oh, I Look, can't see this out of blood. I've I can watch horror movies. Like horror movies are obviously fake, but as soon as it's like real, it's like some medical thing. Yeah, obviously, it, I'm yes. like, ugh, right? Yeah, which is interesting because it shows you how psychological it is. Of course, because it doesn't really look that different a lot of times. Have so. you watched the? Did you know the movie The Faces of Death? I think no. they've made like twenty. Oh, I do know what you're talking. Yes. yes. I never seen it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Could you watch the Faces of Death? Like I, I wouldn't could watch. I, it. Yeah. I don't know if I could. I don't want. I have no desire to. I don't like watch people die. I've never been into that. Some friends of mine thing, in high so. school were like, "Look, we got the Faces of Death one, two, and three. We're gonna watch them." Oh God. And I was like, "Get fucked, <laughs> you guys! Go, <laughs> you guys go ahead." Well, no. At first, listen. I was like, you're like, listen. Choke me out right now, and I'll just pass. <laughs> okay. I tr look, I I was like, mm, I am kind of curious, obviously, you know. And then the first one they showed, this guy was like drowned at sea and was all bloated. And shit. Yeah, gross. I know. Like people film this shit. The faces of death is like just it's basically like a snuff film. Well, I mean, yeah, they're not killing them for the movie, right? It's just no, obviously, it's just not. Uh, like, but they are filming death that has been caught, yeah, on camera. They are filming Ooh. like horrific shit, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, the first one. Um, Look, you should be happy. I'm not. You know, I can't be a serial killer or anything, right? The face of death is old, right? Yes, obviously. Because it's like a lot of the old, like all the old movies. Fucking wow, shit was going on in those movies fucking killing animals and shit like people mm. just dying with this film in it so anyways hmm. um you know what that's a good point how can we say that we're against watching people get murdered when we watched lance slowly die for the last two hours yeah i'm proud of myself true. i didn't even pass out once so. that's true you should be yeah you're you're building up an immunity I was even able to read that nasty super chat of Kristen Ballers, which made go. me completely disgusted. <laughs> Grofty for five dollars says, "Fill the remains." Hello, brother. Uh, Blind yeah. skateboarder for two dollars says, "Reminder that the Brune, the Brune decision is the latest case." Oh yeah, not Heller. Right. Oh yeah, I don't know anything about that one. Yeah, I don't either. So don't even talk about it. Orca Lance for two dollars says, "Lance kisses dogs." Right, yeah, on there the lips go. with the tongue after they just ate a big pile of shit from the backyard. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's Lance's kink. You didn't know that? I didn't know that, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, Th Thorgren Hammerheart for some months. Thank you. Says, hey, guys, hope you're both well. Sitch, uh, what the fuck was that Twitter stuff? Actual Justice Warrior and Nuance Bro, but more so Scrump. Wow, you killed it, by the way. Man, wait, are you saying that I was wrong or I killed it? Big L, you missed the big L part. Big, big L, but then you killed it, by the way. Thanks. So now I'm confused. Who got the big L? Nuance Bro L's. Oh, oh a you must mean that they got the big L. Okay. Right. Thank Actual you. Actual Justice Warrior Nuance Bro L's. True. Or so Scrump Big L. Yes. Well, Scrump, I, obviously. Look, I was so. working on the comic, so I was tangentially keeping tabs on this right what was the big twitter spat um jesus christ well it was something about the white people i saw no so i i, I said the thing which i pretty sure i said on stream before this about how um you know i do think that there are people on tw on social media who are okay it's 1 40 in the morning I'll give you the short of it. Yeah, just give us oh, the Jesus. cliff notes. Come on. Or should we just hop out on Tuesday? Because it's gonna be a whole fucking long conversation. We're not gonna remember. Give me the like the five the thirty second version. Look, it okay, the thirty second version is complicated. I said, if you look at the total, it's impossible. People are gonna people are going to revert to the NPC dialogue tree. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you type per capita in the chat. This will be a good test to see who is an NPC mm -hmm. and who is not. Okay. That's the that's the warning that you get right now. I said 
if the total number, total, 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 total number of assaults mm -hmm. and violent crimes in the in the country, if the majority of the total number of violent crimes and in, in assaults and beatings are committed by white people, I said a bunch of different points, but this is one of the points that kind of got off on the tangent with Scrump and everything. Um, if the total number of violent crimes are committed by white people, um, why is it that on social media, it seems like every video we see of an assault is of a black assailant? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't talking about interracial violence. I wasn't talking about per capita. Race so scripters said, is the answer though, right? Obviously. Well, I said, I think that, I think, I said, I think some, not all, I think some bad actors on social media are intentionally selecting uh, videos of black assailants committing violence in order to try to push negative racial stereotypes about black people being inherently violent. Yep. So, so I said that a lot of people got, though this was off the back of a broader conversation about Tucker Carlson's comments, which maybe we'll talk about on Tuesday, um, which that's kind of what sparked the conversation on Nuance Bro because he was a big fan of Tucker Carlson. Right. He was kind of defending that stuff. Um, White and people then, don't fight this way. It was, yeah, it was that comment. Uh, Sean tweeted something which I felt was incredibly mm -hmm. straw man -y, um, and and not what I was talking about, though he did. We did talk about it in the DMs, and we made up in the DMs, and he deleted the tweet. So oh, I, really? I, I do appreciate shit. it, yes. That's nice. We're, me and Sean are totally fine. Um, Sean's great, yeah. Yes, so me and Sean are totally fine. There's no uh, no bad blood or anything, at least not on my end. I don't think, I'm assuming not for his end either. He was in the um, chat earlier. He's cool. Yeah. Um. But Scrump, who I actually labeled as even dumber than Lance. In tweets? Oh, that's not yes. good. Yes. And that's I said it to good. him. And, it's, and he got very, he got so triggered at me. It's so funny. Because like, it was one of those things where I, I tweet a bunch of stuff out and then I like go to sleep and I wake up and I see like while I was sleeping, he like quote, he did the like quote tweet every single fucking thing I tweeted. Yeah. Somehow I got tagged in on this and I was like, oh, he, this is you're too like, much. Why to... am I? Yeah. I... It's funny. <laughs> Because like, the only thing I not my fight. <laughs> the only thing I know about uh, Scrump is that he used to stream with Dev. That's like, and and Dev says that he went crazy. Like that's right. all I know about him. I don't know anything else about that's him. That's all I know. Right. And he was just going. He was so stupid because mm -hmm. he wasn't. He was like incapable of addressing anything I said. He just. He literally. I'm not even joking. He literally would just reply to everything I said. The points that I just talked about. Um, about the fact that you know well, white people commit more assaults overall, he would just say per capita, per capita, per capita, like a broken <laughs> chat GPT bot that like couldn't move past some sort of like algorithmic detection problem. And he just kept saying per capita, per capita, per capita. It was like it was so funny because I'm like looking at this, I'm like this is, and I per, tell him per like, capita is completely irrelevant to the number. Exactly, of it was relevant to my you point. Can find. Yeah. Well, it's like he's just used to debating leftists making points about policing which is when you'd bring up per capita right even if say, it oh, is per capita there should be you know hundreds equal of amounts, these videos right. out there yeah. unless there is some other now some people who aren't stupid who are in our audience brought up potential reasons for why there could just be less videos of uh, white assailants for all sorts of reasons that have nothing to do with racial bias. Well, I mean, and I some found some on true. YouTube. I did. Right. I looked into these and I was like, oh, right. yeah, there's plenty of videos on YouTube. Well, yeah. Well, I remember when I was younger, when I used to see fight videos on the internet all the time, it seemed like a pretty mixed bag. Yeah. And now it seems like they're very one sided. So, right. But, but anyway, so there are there. So there could be potential uh, reasons for it, which Scrump was obviously not getting into. And I was funny because I, I told him, I said, I think. I think you're literally stealing the crown from Lance of the Serves for being dumbest person on Twitter. And he got very upset. And he did the thing that people do when they get very upset where he's like, you're so triggered, Sitch. And I was like, okay. And you're then, the triggered one. <laughs> yeah, I'm the triggered one. And I was like, all right. And he, it was so, it, he was just like, he had like, like I don't know, he probably had like 30, 40 tweets, you know, quote tweeting me that day because he was just so fucking pissed. And then he did the, he did the super basic he did the super bitch baby cuck move mm -hmm. where after so since he like when he started attacking me by the way he didn't he didn't say like he didn't disagree with me in any good faith way from the beginning where i just say oh you're you misunder you're misunderstanding my point right he was just super insulting to me from the beginning i hate that. super yeah super bad faith didn't understand my point was probably too stupid to understand my point from the beginning um 
And so because of that, I'm like, why am I, I'm not going to engage with this person? Like, why would I do that? Like, I'm not going to engage with this person like on a, you know, a serious level. Right. So the all my interactions were just me like ruthlessly mocking him. You went full academic, quack academic agent on him. You were like. He went, so we even with quack, there was some back and forth with with me and quack where I felt like there could be a conversation about something, right? Quack this is was at least smart enough to know what's going on, yeah. Yes, I feel like Quack, like even though I disagree with Quack, I feel like he understands oh, totally. the argument that I'm at least trying to make. And even though he thinks I'm like hiding my Jewish question power level or something. Right. right? And but he's Scrump hiding literally... his anti semitism yeah, right, at the exactly. same time. Yeah. That's true. But, but Scrump literally didn't understand the argument. He right. was too stupid to understand the argument. He just kept saying per capita. He kept bringing up interracial race statistics for some reason, which had nothing to do with my point. Um, and then... So, so and it was funny because then he did the the little baby bitch thing, which is that after I was like ruthlessly mocking him and making fun of him, um, he then was like, this is what liberals like Stitch and centrists always do. They never engage with the real point. They just use all these debate tactics against you. <laughs> wow. I'm like, this fucking person comes on my timeline and just f tries to insult the shit out of me. And then when I insult him back, he just runs away crying to his timeline. Mm -hmm. he, he was, it was so funny. He was like, you know, the meme of the feminist who's like shoveling shit over oh, the wall. Yeah. yeah. And then when, and then when it gets shoveled back, she's like, Oh, like attacked. it was literally, it was literally what scrum did. And I was, I was dying of laughter. I was like, Oh my God. Because so we can get him on the show next week. It sounds like he wants to come on. <laughs> Um, but then it, it was funny because he lit and I didn't even realize this. He literally fucking, he, he kept bringing up interracial race statistics. And I'm like, why the fuck did you bring up? Why do you keep bringing this up? I'm not, I didn't say anything about interracial race statistics. And he took a picture of a tweet. He said, what are you fucking mentally retarded? You sitch? Mm -hmm. And he posts a tweet and I, and I look at the tweet I tweeted and I read it like five times. I'm like, there's nothing in there about interracial race statistics. Wow. And so I say, and I said nicely. I didn't insult him. I said nicely. I said, can you point to me in the tweet where I said anything about interracial race statistics or interracial crime statistics? I keep saying interracial race. Interracial crime statistics. And his response to this was to say pigeon chess. What? With a picture of a bunch of text. Now, it was funny because originally, I know what pigeon chess is. This is, you know, the whole... Yeah, where you knock over the pieces. You don't play. Right. James Lindsay says, I'm never going to argue with Vosh because Vosh engages in pigeon chess, which is true. I, I right. don't screw that. Um, and so so I knew what pigeon chess was, but I didn't read the he put some picture of a bunch of like text. And I'm like, oh, I just assumed it had something to do with like the definition of pigeon chess or something. Which I thought was, first of all, it's hilarious that he's accusing me of pigeon chess because the entire interaction was just him pigeon chessing me, essentially, bring up things I didn't bring up, per capita, uh, interracial crime, all this other stuff. Just because he's like this, he has like the algorithm of how to debate crime on the internet, you know, mm -hmm. stuck in his brain. Kind of like Lance, actually. Like he can't actually make an argument. He's just stuck on making like the algorithmic, oh, if someone says something about crime, I have to respond this way, right? Right. Um, and But he but he posted some Twitch picture, which I didn't read. And I didn't read it until much later. Someone DM'd me and they said, Sitch, you didn't realize it. Scrump DM'd you a picture of a quote from Mein Kampf. <laughs> what why would he do that and it was a, it was a rant of hitler basically saying that when he would talk to like commies and jews they would just be dishonest in the conversation what <laughs> and i was like and this is what and it's so funny because this is what got scrump so fucking pit this is what got him so triggered which is funny so i retweeted this and i said oh my god uh scrump self-owned himself so hard that he tweeted mine at me did he do it deliberately or did he just Yes, he did it deliberately. Yes. Why? And it was and then cuz I don't know cuz he doesn't like Jews or he thinks it's edgy. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know with does him. Does he I don't know, know you're Jewish? Is it like Yes, he does. He knows. I'm oh Jewish, my yes. god. Cuz wow. it was cuz because when he started quote tweeting me. So he's basically and, saying you're being dishonest cuz you're Jewish. Yes, he was saying I was what being a dishonest a communist fucking... Jew. Oh my he, god. He said I was validating Hitler's hatred of Jews. Is what he was saying. Um, That's no, because so fucking because once he started retweeting me, all these fucking like unironic white nationalists started filling up the replies saying per capita too because they're stupid. I mean they're white nationalists, so obviously they're stupid. Just saying per capita, per capita, per capita, including fucking millennial woes who I didn't even know was still around. Fucking came out here. No what way, millennial woes. Yes. Came I was at like, holy you? shit, millennial woes is still around. 
Um, Holy shit. Right. Yeah, they're the ones that want to, you know, obviously keep that that uh, negative stereotype alive. Right. And yeah. It was funny because one of them, one of them who I actually did engage with, with, he he admitted that once he understood my argument, he said, "Oh yeah, of course that's why we're." Doing it. <laughs> I was like, "Well, at least he's being honest about it, I guess." He's like, "I delete all the white people fighting videos." Right. What, do you think I want that on yeah. my computer? Of course. Exactly. Not. But no, so I don't. It was so funny. He got so fucking triggered when I retweeted the Mind Comp thing, um, and he just went off. He just went off, and I just like, okay, I'm just not gonna so respond you, to any of this oh, anymore. Oh man! So you, so, once you figured out it was Mind Comp, you retweeted it and said what? Like, I said, uh, I don't. I can't bring it up. This guy is. Uh, look at this nice, anti-Semitic boy. <laughs> No, I mean, I said um, it was funnier than that. <laughs> you said just like, I had time to think about it, obviously. I mean, well, I funny. did. I'm not going to be like, oh, look, Twitter. Tweeting. This is a beautiful thing about Twitter. People, Twitter is where you go to test your jokes out, obviously. True. Yeah. I said uh, it was two tweets. I said, uh, so Scrump self-owned himself so hard he threw a pissy fit and started quoting Mein Kampf at me. <laughs> That's good. And then, and then the second one was... Uh, the year is 2053. The next Hitler is created, not because he didn't get into art school, but because he lost the Twitter argument. <laughs> it's so true. And it was that clip of Family Guy where, you know, Hitler's in the gym and he sees the buff Jew and that's like, mm. Oh, man. So he got very, very upset by this for some reason. I don't know. I don't even know why he got upset by it. He's the one that did it. And yeah, he's very triggered by it. So that you would call, look, he did an anti Semitism and then he got mad that you called him out for it. Uh, yeah. Why do they? Why do people do that? Are they like, oh, I, it's just an edgy joke? Look, you got I fucking millennial woes backing you up. After that, you're like, you're out of the edgy joke realm. Yeah, well, considering once he retweeted it, once he started quote tweeting me, that was when all the actual and ironic white nationalists started to flood their replies. So I don't listen. I don't know where Scrump is. I don't know if he's actually anti-Semitic. I don't know if he's actually racist, but uh, he's definitely playing in that that field. So, hmm. you know. Whatever. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why it fell apart with Dev. He was like, maybe. "Listen, Dev, you've got to start hating the Jews a little more." I'm not yeah, comfortable I, well, I with think, your level of Jew love. I think what Dev said was he went down the the Curtis Yarvin path. Oh well, we know where um, that ends. Right, but that doesn't. I mean, that doesn't have anything to do necessarily with like anti-Semitism or racism necessarily. Right. So but that's like I, that would be a shoot. separate. That'd be a separate issue. Look, you get take any road off of that highway, and you end up in an anti-Semitism cul-de-sac. <laughs> I mean, like, you can. It's it's you can, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, but I just thought it was so funny that he got so insanely triggered by it. Yeah. So there's the short version, which took like 15 minutes to explain. Orca for Wasn't five. Too bad. That's good. Orca. Uh, Orca for five dollars says, "What do you guys use to find scholarly scholarly articles and studies?" I'm starting up class again, and Google Scholar has a bunch of paywall. P.S. Fight Club. Um, does so it there's really? a really yeah, it does yeah. Ouch. So there's a so you can do is you can look for the original articles on uh, Google Scholar. Um, there's a really great website which now has a bunch of like various spinoff links to it that you can kind of look for. Uh, if you Google Sci-Hub, S-C-I space H-U-B, you can find there's various Sci-Hub websites. And they don't have them all, but they have a massive amount. If you get the uh, the little like code number for an article and you put it in there, they can find most articles and you can read them for free. So That's awesome. There you go, Sci-Hub. Uh, Grafty for $2 says, So... With stuff I could not listen to on that cast. <laughs> a furniture daughter says, infuriating for a regular listener. Oh, I couldn't stand listening to. As a regular listener of Tim Cast, he couldn't listen to the to that, the one with Lance on. Yeah. Yeah. It is kind of annoying when people are just dodging, dodging, dodging. Sure. Sure. Just reframing everything. Yeah. Uh, Loser Doberman for five Canadian says, I have to walk the dogs. Thanks for the great entertainment. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for the five dollars. Yeah. Uh, the great and powerful DC for ten dollars says react to uh, Carlin Borshenko's inside the autistic sex education. 
the presenter she shows and it says some crazy stuff about parents and transitioning autistic kids more people should know about it wow that does I'll check sound it out. crazy yeah these crazy parents transitioning their kids oh mm -hmm. Uh, Astral La Vista, Astral La Vista for eight months. So it's weird to see Ian not being the biggest loon in the room. <laughs> Ian is a likable loon, though. He totally is. Well, he feels genuine as opposed to performative. Yeah, that's true. So that is very I, true. That's a big I, part of it. Yeah. And it feels like Ian has some ideological basis he's coming from as opposed to just being like right wing bad. Yeah, no, left wing good. So. Ian doesn't like government. No, he doesn't. Uh, Bridges. Hey, Bridges. Bridges for 20 Canadian. Thank you, Bridges. I missed this one. The 20, I guess, does 20 Canadian not translate into 20 US anymore? Because it's color coded differently. So that's why I missed it. I'm not sure. Uh, but thank you, Bridges, for 20 Canadian. It says, just wanted to say how much hope Phil gives me. The music industry is The music industry is so far left in general, and his perspective really encourages me. Keep up the fight. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Thank you. I'll send that to him. Bridges is a great musician. You guys should all check out his channel. Yeah. We had him on. Yep. Talk about his uh, famous song. <laughs> yeah. That got him into trouble. His Minecraft song. She Minecraft herself, yes. I love that song. <laughs> Uh, Grofty for two dollars says thank you, Phil. Well, thank you, Grofty. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Rivek, for my classmate out while goofing around because I blood choked him. He was still moving in, around, feeling unconscious, and fell when I let go. Wow. Oh, okay. Look, at least don't look. Set him down to the ground gently. Yeah, but see, don't that could be fall. <laughs> right. Well, that's true. Jesus, Mr. Rivek. But if that's the case. Um, then you could have a situation like with this guy where he's still flailing around and you don't know that he's unconscious, right? Because mm -hmm. he's still flailing around. So, yeah. Canadian money is worth less. Oh, okay. Or did you mean worthless because it's Canadian? <laughs> <laughs> Spencer for five dollars says, "Great to see Phil back. Uh, seeing you live in Phoenix and Flagstaff, and you're right. Rock ballads still belong to music." Quote: What if I was nothing? Slaps. Oh, nice. I'm going to send all these nice. Songs. Yeah. I'm going to send all these nice Phil super chats to him just so he sees them. Yeah. Uh, Grafty for Notre Dame. Thank you, Grafty. says Phil has the best laugh. It's like, an, it's like a baby angel. True. It's just Abby for two Aussie bucks says, What are Tim's centrist credential slash views? Centrist credentials and slash views. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Well, he I said for a long time that he's a milk toast. Fence sitter. Fence sitter. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know what his centrist credentials are. So But if you look I, at his thumbnails and title sitch, obviously. If an alien. An was alien, it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't disagree with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dr. Diller for three dollars says Lance is mindlessly assuming that shoveling money at problems fixes it. Education gets the most money from state slash fed combined, but everyone still thinks it sucks. The state is not all powerful. True. That's a good point. Uh, oh, look, it's Mahler. Definitely the real Mahler. Mm -hmm. uh, for $2 says, okay, so here's the plan. I dress up like an alligator. Rags, you be a snake and we'll sneak up on Snitch while, he, well, we'll sneak up on Stitch while he's out shopping. When we attack him and Fringy, you jump out and rescue him. Then you work your magic. <laughs> uh, Rags for $2 says, right, I'm really good at hissing. Then I'll have to do the Fight Club stream after you charm him. He'll be all weak in the knees from such a handsome, goo-wielding Australian saving him. You won't get any goo on him, right? And then Fringy says, no, of course not. I'm very skilled with my goo. Sitch won't even Sitch won't even know what hit him. I'll make him a swoon and he'll be begging us, or at least me, to come on his stream and talk about Fight Club. There you go. We got to do plan. the Fight Club stream eventually. Do we? I mean, I want to do it. I mean, sure. We can do it. Yeah, we don't do it with Rags or Mahler or Fringy if they don't want to come on, so... We can do it on a Tuesday sometime yeah. if you don't want to do it on a Sunday. We can do it on a Tuesday. Or a Sunday. We can do it on a Sunday. I don't know. It's just, it's just a lot of stuff. Every time, it's always like one of those things like, oh, if there's nothing else going on, we'll do this. And there's always stuff going on. So, This people just demanded. 
Like as it was happening live. As it was like, happening. You guys got to cover this. Yeah. This is one of the most demanded streams I think we've ever gotten. So. Yeah. Uh, Daz DM for five pounds says the distinction isn't left or right. It's establishment to anti-establishment. True. That's definitely what's happening in um, the Tim the Tim pool sphere. Yes. That's yeah. Really true. Uh, legit low talker for seven months says, hey, Sitch, autopsy report. Ho hoid bone was not broken. For the, it uh, must be for the, for the, guy. for Neely, yeah. Yeah. I but what is that? that? I don't know exactly what that means. I mean, the it was still ruled that he died from asphyxiation, wasn't it? We never, the side quest on me playing the pa pass out game. I mean, this was my whole question about the chokehold. I'm under the impression he grabbed him and was holding him tight enough to restrain him so so he couldn't mm -hmm. he couldn't move, but I don't think he was trying to make him make him pass out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but as so. he's resisting, you've got to kind of go hold harder and harder. You got to hold harder right. and harder. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. assuming that's exactly what happened, right? He's mm -hmm. he's thrashing around, he's resisting. And so he's, he's holding on tighter again. Look, um, I already said I'm squeamish. I don't want to look up the high hybrid bone. <laughs> well, no, I know that's that's the bone in the neck that it, it's fractured in. It says it's fractured in, in one third situations. of all homicides by strangulation. So not always, but one third. So, mm. so yeah. Uh, well, actually, another, another says fractures of the hyoid bone are known to occur in 17 to 71 percent of fatalities following manual strangulation well that's a massive range 17 to 71 percent what the why is the range so gigantic it doesn't make any sense how does that how does that range exist so broadly okay whatever what is this anyway. other this next one is kind of crazy what's going on uh here? the chat father thank you so much Greg Keith for Dr. Jordan Peterson for eight months says, allow me to raise your membership. Adam, CRT is scientific. Bomb, bomb. I don't know what that means. I don't know what you mean by that, Chad. Did they get a a membership from JMAC or something? And worse, like, they're like not a fan, but. No, no, Chad is a fan. Oh, okay. Yeah. First of all, it's eight C months. Secondly, I've seen him. He, he's, he's seen him around, so. CRT is scientific, huh? Yeah, I don't know what you mean by that but you have mm. to be more specific. Uh, Andrew Clark for $2 says, I've got a new keyboard coming on Thursday. Cool. Is it all lubed up, Andrew? Sure. <laughs> You're a lubed up keyboard. Sounds awesome. Uh, <laughs> the Libertarian Trap, thank you for seven months. Yeah. Says Lance is unable to comprehend abortion as anything other than ending the infant's life. Other, anything other than ending the infant's life sent my sides into orbit. Love you, Phil. It's class. You. Yeah. Thank you. His abortion take was very wild. <laughs> pea brain. Right. Uh, true power Zay for three months says, as a pro choice person, I believe women have the right to eat their babies. True. Ooh, yeah. True. Step right. it up a notch there. Yes. How else are they going to reabsorb the power they lost? That yeah. was stolen from them from the ba by the baby. Let's just yeah. eat it from within. There you go. Uh, live in your walls. Thank you so much for joining the free will seekers. Yeah. Well, uh, girl, Sarah for five dollars says, if the mother's life is in danger, you can make the argument that she's acting in self defense and can terminate the baby even if it could live. Of course. Yeah. That I, this is very. Argument. I don't think. I mean, I'm sure there's someone. I haven't heard anyone. Really, though, I'm sure there's someone. I haven't heard really anyone that's ever argued against. Um, saving the mother and terminating the, the pregnancy. I feel like I have heard that argument, and I was like, "What?" It's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Wild yeah. argument, yeah. That the person was saying that the mother should be willing to give up their life to save the baby. Well, I looked it up while we were streaming. Mm -hmm. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There are fourteen states. Mm -hmm. that have a full bans on abortion except for the life of mother. No rape, no incest exceptions. 14 states. Huh? 14 states. Wow. I think. It's like Alabama, 
Louisiana. Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, <laughs> Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Wisconsin, North and South Dakota, and Idaho. I could have called half those at least. Do I think a couple of them, this doesn't say, I think a couple of them do have rape. Most of them don't have rape exceptions. I think a couple of them do have rape exceptions. Oh, okay. Let me see. Look at you slandering um, Louisiana. Alabama, like no rape exception. Arkansas, no rape exception. Um, Idaho doesn't say. Kentucky, no rape exception. Louisiana, no rape exception. Mississippi, no rape exception. Jesus, Missouri, no rape exception. North Dakota. North Dakota does have a rape exception. Fantastic. Okay, finally. North Dakota has a rape exception. South Dakota Is has rape nothing. really that common? No, but you should still have the option. Right? Uh, Tennessee, no rape exception. Texas, no rape exception. Are these states where abortion is not legal at all? Except for the life of the mother. Really? Being wow. About to die, yeah. Right. Um, West Virginia does have a rape exception. There you go. Um, Wisconsin has rape, and Wisconsin has rape exception, so... Uh, so okay, so wait, there was yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen states that have abortion completely banned. Two or three of those had rape exceptions, which is wild to me. It's, I'm surprised it's so high. And then I looked up the other version of that. I just where think the states like having being forced to carry a rape baby. Oh pretty, my uh, god, pretty wild, yeah, pretty wild. I, I am shocked that there's that many. I really would not have thought that there would have been that many because I know the overall polling data is not. Now, I'd be curious to see the polling data in each of those states. I still wouldn't have thought it would have been that high, but I don't know. So then I looked at the opposite end. How many states can you have abortions with no limitation at all? And there are one, two, three, four, five, six states. Six. Oh wow. Which I was surprised. I didn't know that there was any. The abortion six. people are winning. Um oh and also District Columbia, if you count that. Uh there's Oregon, Colorado, New Mexico, California, New Jersey, and Vermont. What? In Alaska, you'll on never the list? guess. You'll never guess California. The last one. Alaska. What? Which, that's kind of weird. Yeah, I don't know why Alaska is like that. There you go. So that's uh, and the In rest California, of the states. California, there's restrictions. Yes. Um, what are the restrictions in California? Don't tell me the odds. I don't want to know. California viability. I want my rape still. baby to live. <laughs> it says it's still a viability. That's the problem. This. That's the problem with the rape exception exception because i could see a lot of people saying oh yeah i was raped just to have the abortion you could well that is a potential right that is a potential thing but uh yeah i don't use the incep exception if the guy's incarcerated right i don't know but uh yeah so but the majority but still so every state i didn't list off which was the majority of states their abortion is still allowed though with some kind of restriction so there you go. Hopefully we do not descend into the nightmare world where all the red states have no abortion and all the blue states allow full abortion, which I don't think we're going to get there. I, am, I was very surprised to see that there were actually six states that had no no limitation on abortion, which is pretty fucking weird. So there you go. I'm sure this will come up in the next election. I'd be curious to see what Biden runs on in 2024. Rape or <laughs> well, if he'll, I mean, if I were to guess, I would say that he wouldn't, he won't answer that question, he'll hide, he'll never say if he's actually in favor of um, nine, nine month abortions, nine month abortions, right? That'd be my guess, but I'll be curious to see. Uh, my dumb movies for eight months says, I think we've proved that a slippery slope is not a logical fallacy. Lance just chucked all the babies down the cliff. <laughs> There oh you go. Kind of did, didn't he? He did, yeah. He sort of did. Yeah, there's your dead baby joke. If slippery slope Dude. is a fallacy, how did all those dead babies get to the bottom of that ravine? Oh yeah. 
Well, that's a fallacious argument, Tim, because obviously the babies weren't dead when they were going the way down. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Uh, Doomer, look, our good friend Doomer Media for two dollars says, "Unborn babies get out." Yeah. True, true, and based. A rare base take from Doomer. Get out of my vagina. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and get in my belly. Yeah, for five dollars. Says Lance is intentionally ignoring the viable parts. Of course. Yeah, that was yeah. very again and stupid. again yeah. and again. Yes. Yes. Did you say it was vile? <laughs> right. Uh, Lucius Cornelius Solo for five dollars says, "What is your definition of an enlightened centrist? How far left or right can you still be and be one?" S class is the best class. Listen, enlightened centrist means that you're anti-tribal. Okay. You're anti uh, allowing the tribe to dictate your thoughts. Now, to answer your specific question, how far left or how far right can you be and still be an enlightened centrist? Well, it's kind of like pornography. Mm -hmm. We'll know it when we see it. Okay. We know it when we see it. Well, I'm That's just, all I'm suspect if all of your positions are conservative or all your positions are progressive because it yeah. seems as though you're letting the tribe just dictate your positions. Yes. Or, or just that all your moral intuitions are so firmly on one side that you just allow them to basically guide you around by the nose. Yeah, that's so, a good point as well. Because, I mean, there are positions that both you and I take that are anti our innate moral intuitions, but I just think logically make more sense. Right. So You have to have our exact positions. Otherwise, you if, you get, if you disagree with us on anything, you've drifted out of the enlightened centrist box. What do we do when we disagree with each other? That never happens. <laughs> okay. Look, okay. that doesn't happen. Right. Trans debate. <laughs> Listen, you have a right to be comfortable, okay? Look at the penis in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> I love that I know how you define the gender uh, dysphoria now to the point where it's like, I just, you define it in such a different way. So a lot yes. of people don't understand yeah. that. Well, They're like gender gender dysphoria can come and go. You're like, no, it's a brain condition. <laughs> yes, right, right, right. Yeah. Well, no, I did say though, and and I did say, we don't know yet if people that desist is it because, like the puberty going through puberty fixes the issue in their brain, the brain, or yeah. they never had it and they just thought they had it. That's a good point. Yeah. We don't know the answer to that question. So a lot of brain development goes on during puberty that's the exactly. problem with these puberty blockers right exactly a lot of bone development goes on a lot look i just right. the whole idea the hubris that you can say oh yeah we'll just halt puberty right uh lucius cornelius saw for five dollars says there's a huge stigma against adoption someone some women would rather abort than adopt yeah i, I believe that is true that is true. Probably. I'd rather abort than put it up for adoption. Because I would worry, you know, my baby's going to be some sort of, like, you know, molested or something. That's what I would worry about. <laughs> okay. No, why would you, wouldn't you? I mean. I mean, I didn't think that until you said it. <laughs> well, the, the thing I is, <laughs> the thing is, I think statistically, because you always see these rich kids and you find out they're adopted because I think statistically adopted kids end up in wealthier families. So I think the yeah, idea of the sense. kid getting uh, getting like molested or something is probably not the case. Pro the kid is probably going to wind up in a better situation than you well, could provide yeah, but they saw, I'm assuming there's still a large amount of kids that are never adopted. I think the babies are all adopted. It's a. It's the problem is that if, true? It, if it's has some sort of sickness or illness or something, then right. they don't get adopted. Like nobody adopts the the. No one wants the baby to adopt the baby with Down syndrome. Yeah, I know, I get it. Or you know, missing limbs or like all kinds. There's all right. kinds of stuff. Right. So those, or you know, the kid's parents die and they end up orphaned, and all of a sudden, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't actually, I don't, yeah, I don't know what stats are. I, I assume that there are a bunch of kids that don't go adopted, but maybe the difference between, you know, the babies and, because I assume most people that adopt want to adopt the baby, right? Right. People want the puppy. They don't want the adult dog. Well, I have heard so. 
I have heard some people say adoption is terrible because all you get is like drug addict babies that are, you know, from drug addict kids mm. that get pregnant. And I mean, that's not true. One of my best friends is adopted. Okay. So okay. he's definitely not a drug addict. Okay. Well, that's didn't want to ask. So, didn't know if it was right. too personal. No, he's not a drug addict at all. He's very straight edge. So would you know if he was though? Yeah, I would. Know. Okay. Would it's not like he wouldn't tell me though. So. He has, yeah, he's, he has a bunch of kids of his own. like, listen, so. I was a crack baby. No, it's, it's, no. Look, if I was a crack baby, I would brag about it. There you go. I'd say, listen, I go. overcame being a crack baby. Right. What a backstory. Coming up as a crack baby. That's all. That's a backstory. Yeah. Uh, fondue for two hours says, sorry, ma'am. The guillotine is just for display. Right. <laughs> We don't do abortions uh, with this kill account. Uh, Niotsu for two dollars says, "What if the baby is female?" Yeah, then oh. the baby, mm -hmm. then it's my, it's her body, her choice. <laughs> I see right. what you're doing there. Yeah. It's a conflict of interest. Which female are you going to listen to, Lance? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, whose body? Choice. <laughs> <laughs> good question. Yeah. Right. Um, Electric's health and for five pounds says the moderate pro-choice people need to enter the discussion more. Pro-lifers go into attack mode because the average outspoken pro-choicer is mental. Um, I don't know if that's true. When you say average, I don't know if that's true. Or if that's just what the the um the algorithm feeds us the extremes. Because I'll be honest, I don't follow the abortion. I'm so not interested in the abortion conversation that I kind of ignore whenever that shit goes on my feed. So I don't pay attention enough to have a, a good comment on that. I know that you were right about the lady who came to Congress, definitely, but on, I don't know what the average conversation is happening there. Well, do you remember what that meeting was about? Because, I mean, that meeting just drove I mean, it was related to when the Supreme Court uh, oh, either got Ro rid of or yeah. was doing right. the Roe v. Wade stuff, so... Yeah, they're talking about potential legislation or whatever. Yes, yes. Hmm. Uh, hey, our good friend Vosh, Vosh for two dollars. Thank you, Vosh. You should have been happy. Uh, this made you look a thousand times better on Tim Pool by comparison. Yeah. Uh, Vosh for two dollars says my loony bun is fine, Benny Lava. Minor bun engine made Benny Lava. Anybody need this sign? Benny Lava. You need a bun to bite Benny Lava. Have you been high today? I see the nuns are gay. My brother yelled to me, I love you inside, Ed. Wow. Profound. I'm, I'm beginning to wonder if Vosh is actually like a, a chat bot and not a real person because... I'm not sure what any of that fucking meant. sounds like he might have been smoking some weed before he Maybe. did that super chat. I think it was much harder than weed. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Diddler for two dollars says Lance believes in whatever he thinks will benefit his side. Everything else is up for debate. He's a dumb little ball of clay for people with more uh, perceived leftist clout to mold into a dumb little soldier. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Mean, I think that's uh, I think that's accurate. Yeah, I agree with that. He's uh, Dr. Diddler, Jason. True. Dr. Diddler for another $2 says, Lance has the same problem with the Neely thing that Rolo has with stepdads. They think that the outcome, death and supporting kids, is bad, so the process is also bad. That's a great point. I didn't think to compare it to the stepdad argument. A just process produces just outcomes. These guys produce trash. Now, yeah. that would be interesting. Yeah, to, to kind of compare those two things. Well, the outcome is the same. He died, right? Yeah, in the case of the choking. Uh, Lucius Cornelius Saul for five dollars says, "I've heard poverty as an argument for late-term abortions when they have to save up money. It's at the last minute. Still makes my skin crawl." Oh, that's um, so sad. That's yeah, that's so true. I didn't think sad. about it. I never Ouch. thought about that. It's a that's a potential argument. Oh, God, that's painful to hear. Right. 
Uh, Metalworks for eleven ninety for ten dollars says, "I remember me and my friends joking about how we're going to end up with those suicide booths from Futurama in the future, and joked about re-rolling ourselves because we didn't like our panels." <laughs> Nice. nice. Yeah. I mean, they already have those in Canada now. There you go. Uh, Fondue for $2 says, thank you, Fondue. Follow Super Chats. Says, babies would make a really good, quote, volunteer army. Oh, yeah. Uh, CT for two Canadians says, Rolo said 100% of women are looking to trade up. So, dot, dot, dot. Yes. But even then, you could make an argument saying women are constantly looking up in a hypergamous way, which would net, which would not be the same as the dual mating strategy. So, I just, like, if you look at the definition of hypergamy, it says wanting to marry up from... No, we're redefining it, Adam. I don't like to read that. The red pill is, is taking a, a, a page out of the leftist book, and we're going to redefine a word that everyone knew what it meant. We're just going to redefine it for a political purpose. Hypergamy. <laughs> uh, John Watts, thanks so much for being four months at Free Will Seeker, says Tim chose violence. I mean, I yes, think Tim actually, um, well, I mean, he did to some extent, but I think he could have gone yeah. a thousand times harder if he was being like malicious. There's a lot of fuck ups he could have been really malicious about. So I give Tim credit for not, you know, going down that route. Uh, okay. Contrast for two Aussie bucks says end of dialogue tree. Time to talk about mud crabs. True. 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 Mm. Uh, member, thank you so much, member, for being a free will seeker for three months. Uh, the libertarian trap. Thank you for five dollars. Says Lance would be the only human. <laughs> To fail the Voight comp test. There you go. True. That was a test, if you remember in Blade Runner, <laughs> to determine whether you were, you know, a human or a replicant. Oh, he would fail that immediately. He He's like the first replicant that shoots shoots a guy under the table because he freaks out. I saw that eye flutter that he did. He was like <laughs> ready to shoot Tim. <laughs> that eye flutter was very suspicious. Lance could have been a replicant. <laughs> I, it's true he was freaking out he's like oh my god he's really on me with this i mm -hmm. said adult human female leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> i said adult human female woman 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly you can't take math when you're pregnant that's intentionally killing the baby wait portion <laughs> what hold on there a partner <laughs> right to the mother right to the mother Bodily autonomy. Uh, angry, angry Bellsprout for five dollars says Tim not understanding what meta analysis are is seriously cringe. Ask AP about them being peer reviewed. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I guess I, he wasn't being debate brain because he had some previous argument about this regarding um, uh, iverme ivermectin. So he has some beef with it, with meta studies from previous conceptions but, uh, yeah, I, yeah from previous interactions yeah but um i agree it was not a good argument it was kind of cringe especially since he was literally quoting a meta study originally <laughs> i didn't realize it so but it's funny because uh lance didn't realize it either otherwise he definitely would have rubbed it in his face of so. course he would have said listen you just gave me a meta study bitch right how dare you uh cyborg for five dollars says lance is whiphill Oh, Lance's Wim Wait. Wimplo from Kung Pao. <laughs> True. The leftists trained him wrong on purpose as a joke. Quote, you made me prove myself wrong, making me the victor. <laughs> True. Do you remember Wimplo from Kung Pao? I don't, know. He was a guy that, like, sucked at everything, but he kept thinking that he was, like... The best? The best. Oh, I love that You're, character. Do you remember this? No, I don't remember any of this, oh, but okay. I want to... He said, remember, he comes in the face and he says, face the foot style. How'd you like it? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I haven't seen Kung Pao in like a million years. So that's a, it's a movie, right? Oh, you've never seen Kung Pao? No, I haven't, but it's it a, looks funny. You would love it. You have a it's very like lowbrow sense of a, humor. Yes. A Kung Pao. Oh. It's very lowbrow. Yes. Kung Pao. Brow. There Not was... nowhere near as good as Kung Fu Hustle, so I don't expect Kung Fu Hustle levels of quality. 
When I was a kid, we were really into this movie, They Call Me Bruce, which is a comedy. Never seen it. It seems like it might be the same as this Kung Pao movie. Well, it's like Kung Pao is like a, it's a parody of, you know. A Kung Fu movie, right? Kung movies, yeah. Yeah. So like, same with They Call Me Bruce. Yeah. Everyone talks with like the sync for the audio is, is off intentionally. Oh, okay. That's like, awesome. it's like, it's like it's dubbed and it's just like terrible. <laughs> Slen, Slenzider for $10. Cause I hate that I have to spend money on this, but late term abortions involve birth. The child is alive and emerging from the birth canal when it's terminated. It's not removed piece by piece. Well, there you go. Interesting. Well, they always call them partial birth abortions because of that. They're like, they pull right. it out first to get a good clean shot. It's so disgusting. Pretty gross. Yeah. But I always wonder how much the Republicans are playing that up to make it seem like, all, you know, 90% of abortions are birth, partial birth abortions. Well, it's weird because, like, even a lot of the right-wing talking points will bring up the fact that most abortions happen within the first six weeks. See, that, that was kind of like, that feels kind of like the leftist tactic because it was for a long time, for a very long time, mm -hmm. um, when, well, not for a very long time because this didn't happen for that long, but for, for a year or two, the right wing argument was in favor of having the six, it was like, the, it was six weeks, right? Or was it 12 weeks? No, six weeks, right? The six week birth. Right. Because, they tried uh, to get it down, down, down. Yeah. Right. It was, you know, the right wing argument for, actually, this was for a long time, this was for years, even before Roe v. Wade went away, it was... The right wing argument was the, you know, we should be able to limit abortions to the first six weeks and the majority of people get their abortions in the first six, six weeks, right? Yeah. That was the argument. So we should be able to do it, which you're right, kind of contradicts the, the concept of, oh, we need to do this because of partial birth abortions or any other like wacky shit that happens. Uh, but then when Roe v. Wade goes away, what happens? All those states that were trying to do the six weeks ban were all of a sudden like, oh no, just no abortion at all. So it made it seem like the, all those arguments about the six week ban were all lies essentially well i thought the the goal of the six week thing was i i mean i don't even think the woman knows she's pregnant for like a couple weeks right sure sure so, but it is true the majority happened in the first six weeks so that is true oh it is okay yes so it's it is possible but i well, thought it was to, to kind of force women not to like once they're past that six weeks it's like oh looks like you're having the baby well, that would be the intention. It was like, you know, trying to get less abortions. Yeah. So. I think it, it was something like the, like the majority in the first six weeks and then like a huge chunk afterwards are in the, the next six to 12 week period. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was something like, I'm just skimballing here because I don't, if I can pull up the data, I don't remember the exact. Look, I'd be more comfortable if all abor abortions were taking place in the first six weeks. Like, sure. I think the sooner the better. Like, it makes me uncomfortable the longer it goes on. Well, I can't find it at the moment, so I'm just going to spitball it. This is just my get off the top of my head. It was something like 50% are in, like, the first six weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. And then it was, like, 40% were in the next six weeks. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, 10% were staggered after that. So. After 12 weeks, After right? 12 weeks, yeah. Okay. Or, or even less, something like that. So the numbers look like 12 weeks that. is, like, the cutoff. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, Fire Sky fifteen for five dollars says L M A O. Thank you, Fire Sky. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Joe Joe Sullivan for five dollars says any formal attack on ignorance is bound to fail because the masses are always ready to defend their most precious possession, <laughs> their ignorance. True. But they will call it enlightened truth. That's the thing. True. That's what is so bothersome about Lance. It's like he has such hubris about his own ignorance. Bro. Autistic people are getting trans transgendered? What? No. <laughs> right. What you, who's, they're not sterilizing them, Tim. They're not, they're not being sterilized. Right. Transgender uh, people don't get sterilized, okay? <laughs> yeah. Guardian Fortress for $3 has the little bye-bye uh, dog. Yeah. Thank oh. you. Or That's, is a fox. You're right. It is a little fox. Is it a fox? I don't know. The foxes fox are dogs. dogs. They're canines, yes. Chase Sutton for six months. Thank you, Chase. Florida Meth Gator for seven months. One, with a bunch two, of... three, four, five, six. 
No commie emojis. Thank Six you, Florida no Meth Gator. Yeah. Of course. The classic. Boy, I would love me some Meth Gator jerky. That'd be so good. There you With go. With trace levels of meth still in the jerky. You know, I'm glad that the, the Gator jerky that Sammy sent me, I'm pretty sure it didn't have any meth in it. Did you I eat ate it? it while we were on stream, and I didn't feel like I was high, so... I mean, I feel like I could go for another 10 hours, so I might right. have had some meth in my jerky. So I don't know. I feel like if I was high and watching Lance, it would be very confusing because I wouldn't know what is real and what is, what is the drugs and what is Lance. So. Uh, X Foo for five. Aussie Bucks says, wrong. Actual just worry debunked. The wage theft estimate is, is $50 billion, while retail theft is $100 billion. Well, there you go. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, Adam Gadbaugh for nine months says, honestly, jail with drugs sounds kind of based. <laughs> I mean, go. I might hang out there on weekends at least, right? Do you have to actually be incarcerated to be able to go into the jail? Well, it's not incarceration. It was a, it was. Oh yeah. You'd go there for, for homeless people. Right. So. It's a drug rehab. You go there to rehabilitate hey, your drug habit. Uh, Slens, Slensder for $10 says the only studies that show a cross gender trans brain activity are for post HRT. The brain is a hormone driven computer. So of course the brain will behave according to the hormone input. Yeah. That's, that's what I was saying about, um, it's difficult because yeah, the ones that I've seen they're after hormones and also they don't control for, for gay people. So, right. That totally changes the structure of your brain. Right. Which, so yeah. Uh, Naxalas for five dollars says there are definitely trans kids, both onogynephilic and homosexual. Uh, the issue is not whether they exist, but about dealing with false positives. True. True. Yeah, that's, that's what we point. keep yeah. saying. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, Phil doesn't agree with the concept of trans kids necessarily, but right. Uh, Stug for five dollars says Tim not knowing what he just said. Quote lie group theory. What is lie group theory? Uh, isn't a physical theory. It's just a particular mathematical construct just for anyone curious. I don't remember that being brought up. Lie. Oh, maybe this was in, was this about the, the meta analysis? He brought up some math thing. Okay. I don't know anything about what that is. I've never heard of that before. Sug says for $2, not that it matters to his point, but still, well, there you go. Uh, the most dope for some months says I knew I was gay at like five or six because I'd stare at the hot naked guys in the underwear section all the time while shopping for clothes with my family. Well, there you go. See, I thought the same thing when I started thinking about the babysitter situation. I was like, right. come on. Gay people have to have a similar situation, but they're just having they it with their hot guy babysitter. Yeah. They're well, me tooing the hot guy. How many people have the male babysitter? Look, I had a couple male babysitters that you wasn't did? all female. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the male babysitters awesome. were always cooler. They'd let you like punch a wall and shit. <laughs> what? Yeah. Were, were you wait, Were you like, mommy, I want to punch the wall. And they're like, no. And you're like, oh, you never let me do anything. <laughs> and then when you have like the babysitter, you're like, hey. Can I punch the wall? He's like, yeah, dude, go ahead. And you're like, awesome. Ah, my fist. No, I, do, I do remember having one babysitter that was like, I guess he was just messing with me, but he was punching our wall in our apartment and was like, I can't punch it any harder because I'd put a hole in the wall. And I was like, how about me? Can I punch it? And he'd let me punch it as hard as I want. But look, I'm just a little kid. I'm not gonna, like, I'm not doing any damage to the wall. Jesus Christ. And he knows I'm not doing any damage to the wall, right? You, but then, I feel like if I was, how old were you? I don't remember. I don't. I, don't know. I feel like if I was like five or six and I like punched the wall as hard as I could, I, I I wouldn't hurt. I wouldn't break the wall, but I fucking hurt. I break my fucking fist. Really? Yeah. What are you doing? Like, were you doing like sissy punches? Like you didn't know how to punch properly? Look, I'm like five years old. What Listen, the when I was five, I was already a kung fu master. Okay, I knew how to do the the you know the hip swing punch and everything. When you let a five-year-old punch the wall, he like doesn't usually doesn't break his hand. I know they. Do He's the, like they, ah! <laughs> they do the um, I don't know what you call it the the overhead, the overhead like bring your fist down thing. You know what I'm talking about? Like oh, the yeah, totally. the caveman with the rock thing where they're like hitting you. Know? 
<laughs> Where should they do? Boom. Tell? Yeah, so okay, fair enough. Yeah. This stream has drained like I feel like Adam's young childhood is filled with all sorts of like weird ass shit. Look. What's the big deal? You didn't you're choking your that's true. This is pre video games. You had to do something for excitement. So you choke yourselves out with your friends choke, and then the punch walls with your male babysitter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I never had a male babysitter and I assumed most people didn't because most people wouldn't trust their kids around males, older males that they right. don't know. So, like, did your, were this like a friend? Well, of the he family? did like, try to did... molest me. So, I mean, that was a big well, deal. Well, there you go. So, no, yeah, that he makes didn't sense. try to molest me. Come on. Like, I, I think he was from the our church. Like, my, oh, okay. My I guess folks that went sense. to church, so like right. some kid from the church was our babysitter. So. Yeah, like our babysitter was, um, well, we we had sometimes we had other babysitters, but the the babysitter we had the most was like a friend of the family's daughter. Mm -hmm. So like she was a known quantity; it wasn't like a stranger. So sure, yeah. Even though she grew me, <laughs> JB. <laughs> oh, that was the one that like like. Shoved her boobies in your face? No, I massaged her neck. Oh, that was a neck massage. No babysitter shoved her boobies in my face, much to my regret. <laughs> okay. you, didn't, you didn't do the reach around? No. The, the neck massage became a little like... <laughs> a little <laughs> grope, the groping massage? No, Adam. Was that what you did? You're like, oh, let me massage your neck. Oh, whoops, I slipped. No way! I just go grab the boobies. Jeez, look, God, what, it was a different world back then. What did the What did she do when you did that? She laughed and pushed me away. Oh, uh, okay. You can't do that. I hope you. I hope you didn't just keep trying to do it. <laughs> well, you hope. How you many were. times did you assault your poor babysitter? Am I going to get in trouble for this? I feel <laughs> like I might get me too. I think the statute of limitations for when you were five has passed. That. Somehow I feel like in this day and age that that babysitter could show up, come out of the woodwork at any time and be like, I was your babysitter. <laughs> I was, me look too. At you. I had a five-year-old Adam. And here you are on the on the internet bragging about it. Yes. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> was this last week, Adam? That's true. Look, I don't want to, I don't want to risk it. I've said too much already, so there I should go. shut my mouth. Yeah. There you go. I don't want this babysitter coming back to haunt me. Mm -hmm. Adam definitely tried more than once. True. Adam was a fucking pervert. Jesus. Look, it was an ongoing. <laughs> My God. It was an ongoing she... contest. Is she? Is she's like stop babysitting. She's like, I'm not gonna babysit that that friended kid. He's fucking. Look, first of all, I was an adorable kid. Okay, women were throwing themselves at me from an early age. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure the babysitter was totally into a five year old Adam molesting her look they think it's adorable <laughs> look a, the coomer <gasps> five-year-old is oh like my God. the coomer five-year-old is like completely adorable to girls i'm age. sure yeah. they're like oh my goodness she I probably she saw it was funny the first time i can't believe the fifth he's time so, however she was starting to get like, i can't believe five. he's so forward the fifth time however thank goodness she never brought her boyfriend around or anything oh my god right. He probably wouldn't have thought that was funny. <laughs> uh, weird. The thumbnail for the stream is the two fifty five one. Is it? No. It's oh, got to be it a is. problem on your end. What? I think it's okay. I mean, it looks fine for me. Okay. Adam was grabbing something else with his male babysitters. True. Look, we already talked about that. It's just a second ago. Twist. Now she's your wife. Oh, is that the twist? <laughs> no. That would be pretty strange, wouldn't it be? Your baby when you babysitter when you were five, you're married to. Yeah, like how's <laughs> that work? Twist. Yeah, my babysitter wasn't even born. Uh, JB Flotsam for four months says, "Give gender ideology a few generations, evolution will have its way with us. Fertility and orgasms will right the ship." <laughs> There you go. Vinny the Doberman. Even Vinny knows this. This entry he says, quote, women think it's adorable when you try to molest them. <laughs> quote, Adam friend did. <laughs> Even Vinny, Adam, is like, it's the most suspect. What did Vinny say? Vin Come on, Vinny. Look, we're <laughs> supposed to be friends here. Even Vinny. And Vinny's insane. And even he's like, that's a step too far, Adam. <laughs> uh. 
Look, we didn't have video games when I was a baby. Okay. You guys don't know how easy you have it. The only game we have is <laughs> assault the assault the babies. Uh, someone else said it's two 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 five five. I don't know. It's on my end. It's it's two five seven. So I don't know. Maybe there's something wacky going on for some people, depending on the platform they're using. Look, here. I've got somebody else was saying that we have there's issues on the thumbnail. It says on you, it must be YouTube. While scrolling, it pops up recommended. It shows two five five, but on your channel, it's correct. Oh, that's super weird. I don't know how we can fix that. Um, how about you just um, you change the thumbnail back, change it to what it is now again. What do you mean? Okay, darn. I'll do it. Ah. <sighs> what do you mean? The thumbnail is correct. It's Tim Pool and you're not. Lance. Okay, don't what worry. Are you don't don't about? don't worry your pretty little face, Adam. What are you doing? Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna just. Do something real quick. Are you going to download it and re-upload it? That's exactly what I'm going to do. I can do that. I already did it. Oh, okay. Well, I won't do it. So then. We'll see if that fixes the problem. Did you download it and re-upload it? I downloaded it and re-uploaded it. Though when I hit save, it's like frozen. So I don't know. Maybe it didn't fix it. <laughs> I'm we'll sure see. it's fine. Uh, old School for $10 says, Isn't it surprising that left-handed identification increased with general literacy? Not really. I mean, that would be expected with anything that changes over time would, in would increase with general literacy, right? Or maybe that was, was that your point, old school? So. Yeah, I don't understand the difference. Uh, Lucifer Doman for five Canadian says, Phil has survived six hours. He is one of us, one of us. True. That was, yeah. It was great. Phil stick around as long as he did. Yeah. Uh, Rotisserie protocol for five dollars says, y'all notice how Lance looks perpetually uncomfortable. Yeah, I think he was very nervous in this conversation because he realized while he was doing it how shitty he was doing. So. But he had his left-handed chart. Look, he was sitting on that the whole time. He's he like, was. Oh he was so God. excited. Oh, man, he was so excited. to. Be, I have the little chart. I think it's funny how they put him up in a nice hotel. Don't some of the people get to stay at the compound? But Lance are like, put him in a hotel, man. He's too fucking dangerous to be around here. <laughs> He'll be snooping around in our shit. Is it true, Adam, you were breastfed until you were four? What? Do you, that's... that Everyone doesn't do that? <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot. Look, I, look, I'm not sure that I was breastfed at all. I think and that explains more. That explains a lot. There you yeah. go. That's why you were so... Like, exactly. I had to get it from the fucking babysitter, okay? There you go. Hopefully yeah. not the breast milk, but... <laughs> Well, you can take what you can get, man. <laughs> Lord Cameron for three buds says, I've sent each of you messages on Twitter. Study for Sitch, Spherical Pyramids for Adam. Oh, okay. Spherical uh, Pyramids. That seems a little contradictory. I'll check it out. Sometimes my aunt listens to our show. I wonder if she what she thinks about me talking about assaulting the All this weird shit, yeah. Yeah. I hope she doesn't. Uh, I hope. Andrew Clark said our thumbnail isn't even loading for him. I know. Just I get know, over man. it, okay? Get Who gives a fuck? Like, I part care. Of, Why do you not care? Part of YouTube is out or something. Oh I don't. It's something Calm that we can't down. fix. Look, we've done nothing wrong, okay? That's all we've that matters. We've done everything right. That's true. Hey, look. Goku. That's right. So the very own son, Goku. Mm -hmm. For two dollars, Kakarot says, "Wait a minute, I'm confused. When facing an opponent with a gun, you don't actually achieve Ultra Instinct to catch the bullet midair, or at least go Super Saiyan and use your finger to parry knives like I parry trunks of sword." True. That's that's possible. why. Yeah. That is possible. Yeah. Well, if you're not an idiot, why do these people get shot? Why don't they just go Ultra Instinct and catch the bullet in midair? <sighs> Who knows? Yeah, fucking idiots. Fucking shot. lazy. Jeez. Fucking lazy idiots getting shot. Dr. Diddler for two hours says, the quote, why do you care about the genitals thing is my favorite part because it shows Lance's stupid fucking Twitter arguments deflate in real time when the person he's arguing with can reply and he can't ignore it. Yeah. True. Great yes. observation from Sitch. He's so used to argue on Twitter. He thinks Twitter is real life. Yes. Yes. Uh, one W for $2 says, 
The left got dirt on DeSantis for Gitmo as Jag. Really? Really? I don't know. Wow. About that. Interesting. Oh no, that's he was cool. a Gitmo Jag officer. Yeah, I guess so. Snopes did Ron DeSantis observe Guantanamo force feeding as a Navy Navy Jag officer. Wow. Wow. Well, did he? I mean, I don't really give a shit. Honestly. We're just asking questions. We don't know anything here. According to Snopes, they said the claim may be unverifiable. And they're pretty left wing biased, so that's interesting if they're saying that. So they continue. According to his old boss, regularly discussed conditions and hunger strikes with detainees. Uh, DeSantis has already stated that a major part of his role was to advise medical officers on legal issues surrounding force feeding. Oh, interesting. Whatever, I don't give a shit. Me. I say we should stack up naked prisoners and make them go naked more often, not less. Wow. Who's with me? Hope that's a joke. It's just Abby for five. Aussie Buck says, been playing Subnautica again. Based. Plowing through the sea life in my giant submarine with no regard for nature. Such fun. True. Yeah. True. Terrible. Uh, did I read this one? I didn't. I missed some misses. Gisby1005 for $20 says, way behind but on the abortion topic, are any of you familiar with Judith Jarvis Thompson's defense of abortion? Some interesting pro-choice arguments while granting the fetus is a person that has the right to life. I haven't, but that does sound kind of fascinating. Yeah. Judith Jarvis Thompson, defense of abortion, if you're interested. Hmm. Uh, X Hunter zero zero for ten dollars says Lance knows different stats about guns, abortions, etc. in the U.S., but he doesn't know one of the most high-profile transgender people who has a TV show. Really? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. All he does is Google shit to like debunk stuff, though. That is true. Uh, Soldo for two dollars says we will fix the laser addict's mental health problem through prayer <laughs> to our Lord and Savior Saint Jonathan Height. May you guide our moral intuitions toward a righteous future away from dangers of AI and social media algorithms. Amen. There you go. That's sweet. Uh, the sure that one. Blendscape quarter for two dollars says a team never dies. Coomers for life. <laughs> Look, I don't like that term coomer, but it's kind of growing don't. on me. Yeah, it's kind of cooming on you. I mean, if it just means oversexed, I think maybe it's applicable, but. Mm -hmm. uh, Stug for five dollars says, my limits on free speech have been pushed for too long. I vote we make it illegal to use the word valid from here on out. Punishable by that. <laughs> there you go. Oh, Junebug yeah. for five dollars says, have you considered bringing undead chronic on the show? He is a real scientist, but is very right pagan. I don't I mean, know if I sure. know who that is. I don't know who that is. I mean, we'll talk Undead to anyone. Undead Chronic? So. I do like the name Undead Chronic. <laughs> I'll admit that. Is not is he a red pill guy? I, I don't know I feel like I've is. heard this. When I Googled him, the first thing that came up was Undead Chronic versus Not So Erudite Debate Gets Personal. <laughs> oh, okay. So I don't know what his positions are in anything. Uh, marriage has zero benefits for the male anymore. Uh, I guess he has red pill. Why would anyone take a 50-50 chance to lose half of my stuff and go bankrupt and lose my kids? Uh, okay. I'm a red pill scientist gamer. There you go. You were right. Yeah. I thought he was red pill. Uh, I versus Getterix for $10 says, collectivist philosophies get their power from appealing to the lowest common denominator. It is easier to raise a greater number of dumb people to repeat platitudes than to teach critical thinking. True. That is 100% correct. It's yeah. very true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Diller for $2 says, Lance, quote, look, the Stockholm victims said that so-called kidnappers are great. It's their decision. We should leave it up to them. <laughs> That's a great uh, point. End quote. Yeah. Uh, sure, Lance, nobody copes. We should take jazz at face value. True. Jazz might be in a giant cope spiral. That's true. How terrible oh, to be like famous and just not be able to really capitalize on that. Good on Mr. says, Sitch, you said there is strong evidence dysphoria is biological. Are you distinguishing between mental and physical ailments or saying it's genetic? 
at base, I assume all illnesses have to be biological in some way. Um, well, I don't know the answer to whether it's genetic or not. So I would assume it is. I would assume it is there's a genetic component to it. So Maybe not, though. I, could be field I think development. It could be. It could be during field. I mean, it's true. I think people are whether I think people are born with either. I think people are either born with gender dysphoria or born with the capacity to be gender dysphoric. Um, and now whether that's pre, you know, in the genes or whether it happens through fetal development, I don't know the answer to that question. So, uh, vagabond for two dollars says the intersex is a common as redheads lie is so annoying. LOCA, which clinicians don't consider intersex condition, it gives mild symptoms like making women have a light mustache, makes up 90% of that 1.7% of the population. Yeah, I was I was gonna say that and then I got distracted. That whole that that like 0.6 to 1%, 1.7% thing is very misleading because including like every possible broad, like the most broadest interpretations of intersex conditions, which most people do not consider. So some people like women that. with a light mustache. Oh, really? I mean, so I'm not particularly into it, but I know some people are. Okay. Yeah. Uh, very attractive, you know, the Frida Kahlo types. There you go, the Frida look. <laughs> Kana X122 for five dollars says, typical Lance to say something bimodal isn't true, which he doesn't even know the definition of the word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lucifer Doma for two Canadians says, get Seamus on the show. We should, we'll get him again. It was, yeah. it was great talking to him. He's been on before, Lucifer. I hope you know that, right? Yeah, I'm assuming Lucifer knows. Lucifer watches all our shows. Yeah. And it wasn't, it was like a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Barron for $5 says, with socialists like Lance, do we even need conservatives? <laughs> <laughs> like they're just self emulating. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Ubercross for $20 says, dead baby joke. What's funnier than a dead baby? Dead pan delivery. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. There you go. Uh, so uh, true. CT, <laughs> CT. So true. Uh, CT for seven Canadian says making dead baby jokes is like getting an abortion. Mm -hmm. It's a competitive. It's a competitive sport for us women. There you go. Oh, nice. interesting. Nice. I like the way you did that, CT, with the two. Well, it was an accident because she said the five dot CT for another two dollars. Stop giving us money. She sent another two dollars to say that the five dollar super chat might have been a misclick. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yes. What do you mean? I guess she, she probably meant to send a two dollar. Oh. Uh, Blaine's escape quarter for two dollars says I covered the anti anime bullshit on Thursday stream. Oh, well, check it out. Blaine's escape quarter, everybody. Yeah. Corner. Blaine's escape corner. Maybe I I'll guess it's the time of the night I can't speak properly. Maybe I'll check that out. I want to know what the big deal is. Yeah, me too. Walking Tin Can for five months says, even when I dream A-Team, even when I dream, supposed to be a comma there, A-Team still reigns supreme. There you go. Even when I dream, A-Team reigns supreme. I like that. I don't know their, their grammar, though. I forgot their commas. Who cares? Just A-Team reigns supreme, all you need to know. Frog Jupiter for five dollars says the only good American tradcon animation I can think of is Freedom Tunes and the Prince of Egypt. They need to step up <laughs> for making media. True. There yeah. I mean, I'm totally in agreement there. Why can't there be conservative artists? Why is it like always left up to the progressives? Because they want to try new things. Yeah, openness to experience. Yeah. Art is gay. My son is not gonna be an artist. <laughs> True. Uh, Andrew Clark for $2 says, is an EFAP clip about our traps gay? Hilarious. Nice. Oh, uh, Lizard Doman for two Canadians says, Phil versus Doomer, how much do I have to pay? <laughs> That'd be a fun stream. Yeah. Having Doomer and Phil yell at each other. I feel like Phil's too nice. I'm Yeah, Phil's too nice to like yell at Doomer when Doomer's being stupid, right? Doomer's just going to yell at Phil. Yeah. And Phil's going to be like, why did you bring me on to be assaulted by this crazy person? Well, Phil is a longtime fan, knows all about Doomers. Oh, of like course. He doesn't know right. what he's getting at. You're right. What am I talking about? CT says, enjoy your snow cone money. 
That's true. I should get a snow cone. Uh, Blaine's escape quarter for two dollars says we choked ourselves all the time. You're fine. Nice. Someone else. I'm glad to hear Blaine. Thank you. Well, how about Someone this? else played the choke out game. Uh, mm -hmm. Andrew Haskins for five dollars says it's called an squillax. Oh, this was the the, the rabbit. An squillax, a ferocious beast with the head of a rabbit and the body of a rabbit. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. I like that. S class is a subsidiary of A team. Look Ooh. at that. Oh my God. Ooh, That's wow. even better than reigning Terrible. supreme. Look, sometimes we have to make budget cuts around here, Sitch. We need to do some staffing remanagement. Right. Um Bob? As me for one month oh. says, Hey Adam, need a hug? A handy? Maybe a blowy? <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay. You sure? I'm pretty good, yeah. Sure. Okay. Did you miss perhaps privatized subway security? I did miss one, yeah. The Bob oh, that God ha made mad. That's interesting, man. Yeah? Says pri perhaps privatized subway security. Perhaps privatize the subways. Maybe these things wouldn't happen. I don't know. Yeah. Perhaps. If this kind of stuff happens in a store, they'd sue the shit out of the store, right? If a guy yeah, but that would that customers. would be the incentivization to stop the um, right. That'd be the argument in favor of the privatization because if they could be sued because a homeless person was like fucking around on the train and hurt someone, yeah, then they would have a financial incentive to put a lot of security on the subway. So. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Clark for five dollars says yes. I've already lubed the switches. <laughs> I'm glad they hear it, Andrew. I'm waiting for the case and the plate. I've got sweep sweet keycaps already picked out too. Case is alu. I don't even know what that. What is alu? Plate is brass. This is a xylophone. Andrew Clark bought. No, it's a keyboard. Right. Oh, like I, a computer xylophone. Keyboard? Look, that's a keyboard. For you the don't mouse. Know what a xylophone is? Oh, xylophone. For some reason, I thought you were like my. It's so late. I, I know you I'm, like, I'm exhausted too. Thinking of like you're talking about like like in my mind you said iPhone I was just picturing an uh, a a tomatone or whatever the fuck it's called. A xylophone is a keyboard. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, it's a percussion instrument. Really? Well, technically, isn't a piano is a piano a percussion instrument or a string instrument? It's a percussion instrument, but it's also a keyboard. Just because it's not, a I would not call it. a xylophone a keyboard. Alu equals aluminium. Okay, there you go. Uh, xylophone's not a keyboard. <clears throat> yeah, because you hit it with a hammer. You hit the little, you hit the little uh, sticks. I'm gonna get me one of these xylophones. It's gonna be the next big thing for the stream. Okay, you play some little, some little light jazz with mm -hmm. your little xylophone. <laughs> do 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 totally. do. Wikipedia says it's a musical instrument, but somehow I doubt. I like I'm a xylophone. Skeptical. What do you mean? Of course, it's a musical instrument. What I'm else would skeptical it be? that you can call it a musical instrument? What? How else would you classify it? A children's toy. <laughs> oh, ouch! There are people yeah. that are good at xylophone. My friend oh, really? plays xylophone pretty good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. Um. One of these days I'll stop being lazy. I'll relearn to play guitar and piano so we can play on stream. Yeah, it'd be great. Equal Shadox for five dollars says for states with rape exceptions, how does one prove it was rape? Especially with the timetable of a first trimester trimester window, does the doctor decide? I don't know the answer. That's a good question. Yeah, that was I think somebody could probably be making something up. But I assume there's some I'd assume it would have to be, you'd have to file the criminal reports. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's yeah, but question. they just say some assailant broke into my window and raped me. And I right, but I guess it was. Right. But I, I guess think it might have been my boyfriend. Sure, sure, sure. Right. But um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, how embarrassing if they did a DNA test on the aborted baby. Ugh. They're like, it was definitely your boyfriend. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. 
I mean, that'd definitely be a way to stop uh, fake uh, rape claims. Yeah. Eyes full of sky for five dollars says adoption is terrible because you're a, a cuck raising some other couple's kid. Clearly, yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's yeah. the red pill position. Uh, Andrew Clark for two dollars says hot take: pregnant women are landlords. <laughs> True. <laughs> I mean, yeah, essentially, they got land in their belly and they're renting it out. Uh, Punch out twenty four for five dollars says LMAO the Daily Wire has an article already has an article quoting Tim with the hold on there a minute line. <laughs> <laughs> no way, that's awesome. There's a lot of potential memes with that one. That's true. Hold on there a minute. Hold partner. on there a minute. You know it's funny because when I first heard the stream, I thought like that was a bad line for him to give. But then when I watched it like here, I was like, oh, it was a perfect line. <laughs> totally. Yes. He's Very got that little smug look on his face too. He like, does. He's hold on smiling. there a minute. Right. He that was the decision. He's like, do I fucking gut Lance right here, <laughs> or do I let him off easy? He let him off too. He did. He's he like, let him we off got easy. another hour. I need to let. I need to play with this guy for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Seg fault for twelve months. Thank you so much for being a one year member. It says Lance clearly has an elephant. I haven't figured out if he has a writer as he never managed to actually reasonably post hoc rationalize his intuition. True. <laughs> That's a good That's one. Hilarious. I like that. Lance is just pure. He's literally pure elephant. There's no writer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, of Lance, Lance for $2. Look, Lance gave us $2. Uh, Lance says, okay, Google, what's my next argument? What's my next argument? results from a search do you hear that yeah <laughs> my phone <laughs> picked that up did you I, that wasn't on purpose no that's <laughs> okay. really funny okay google i am wearing headphones then. okay google can't hear you damn it <laughs> let me search that up for you okay google what's lance's next argument what I found it did these results <laughs> No, what the fuck? Do I like football? Oh. Anyway, uh, let's see where was I? Utter nonsense for two dollars says. Say utter nonsense it says Lance's arguments aborted my brain cells. <laughs> nice. Uh, Dill's elephant sitter fun time <laughs> for two dollars says they call them babysitters. But they never sat on me. Sad face. Uh, you, didn't get hot... the right, you didn't get the right yeah. babysitter. Right? Exactly. Uh, a hot girl sitter did hit me with a belt once, igniting a fire within my heart. And that heart yearns for... There you go. Thank you, Dill. Yearns for uh, Dil... what? Sex? There you go, yes. Is for that what it class, said? Baby. Oh, okay. Uh, he also said, A team likes haircuts, in quotes. A team likes, quote, haircuts from male babysitters. Mm -hmm. Winky face. Is this true? Hell no. Did what your male face? babysitter give you a haircut? Whatever that means. I don't even know what that means. Oh, you know what it means. My male babysitter let me punch the wall as hard as I could. <laughs> so mm -hmm. fucking weird. <laughs> I, you know you wanted to punch the wall when you were a kid. Don't, don't. Not Why? really, no. I never that never entered my mind. You want to do karate in the living room? Sure, but I want to punch the wall. Oh yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see. You were you were thought like I see the kids they karate chop the board. I'm gonna karate chop the wall. Hi yeah. Ah <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Okay, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Is that it? Are we done? That's it. Oh it's my only God. three in the morning. I know. I'm exhausted. We got to get to sleep. I know. We have to oh. argue with some person on Tuesday. Jesus Christ. Do you not want to do it? When we tell them, no way. Come on. No, we'll do it. I'm not a pussy. Look, at least I let you know ahead of time this time, right? <laughs> well, you're the one. It's your, I gave you... it's your argument, your conversation. So. I gave you a heads up. You can carry the weight of the conversation. What? 
Come on. Do you want to? Oh, be a what is this? What is this? Yeah, I believe in you, Adam. You don't need me to get the to carry your weight. Okay. You just like you hang <laughs> that didn't back. sound like a convincing okay. You hang back. I'm gonna like I'll destroy this. Okay. Maybe she'll take my side on the trans. Maybe we'll just argue the trans thing. Okay. See, look, you're trying to sucker me into it. <laughs> <laughs> sucker you? What are you talking about? There you, go. there you go. Just anything that you disagree with. We're talking to what's her name? Katie. Katie. She was in the um if you recall the uh, Destiny conversation with Brianna Wu and President Sunday. Right. I think she was the only other person on President Sunday's side. She sided with President Sunday in that debate and was super going after Destiny for platforming Nick Fuentes. So we're going to talk about you know, ethical platforming, I think. Right. And why it's... Why? I mean, why is it okay? Why is it not okay for Destiny to platform Nick Fuentes? Right. Which Sitch is in favor of Nick Fuentes being platformed everywhere by Destiny. Well, I think he makes Nick look stupid. So. Right, yeah. Well, that's part of the equation, obviously. What the fuck was that sound? <laughs> Wormy. With the cat? Wormy just came in and announced himself. He's like, uh, shit. Okay. We got to go to bed. I'm tired. I was like, was that a cat or like an old Asian man? Like, what the fuck did I hear? Wormy said hello. All Zero right. fucks. We'll show it on Tuesday. He made a great meme. It's the, it says the, I'm not a robot. You know, we get to select the boxes. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, I'm not a robot. And it has all the faces of like uh, Sam, Cedar, and Lance. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and Matt Finder and all these people. So. They all are robots. CT, thank you so much for two dollars again. Even though you gave me another two dollars, so I'm upset. Saying good night, Sitch, with a devil smile emoji. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for your very incredibly generous donations today. And thank you, of course, Phil, Phil that remains, friend of the show, for coming on and hanging with us for six hours. We really appreciate it. And thank you, of course, to Lance for. So boldly deciding, so bravely deciding to just litter the entire area with rakes and just dive face first into every single one of them. It was a bold strategy, and I don't think it worked for you. And thank you, you who have made it to the end of this 11 fucking hour stream. You are the true heroes. You are the true saviors. We'll see you all on Tuesday. What about my babysitter? Not gonna thank her. I'm not gonna thank your babysitter that you sexually assaulted. No. Come on. No, I'll thank I'll my thank my babysitter who groomed me. Okay. And thank you to all the babysitters <laughs> who, oh, who let themselves get sexually assaulted. Who by let us give them their first neck massages. <laughs> Bye-bye! <laughs>